normally when these episodes begin, he's talking about cornbread or something crazy and random. You know what? <laughs> You're right. Anyway, that uh, addition of cortosis and a whole place where you can get cortosis and everyone else can get it means that they're going to need to have a scene in Acolyte Season 2, Episode 7, where uh, they have a huge selection of it, but then it all gets blown out into the sun, and they're like, oh, damn it, that won't be able to be used later. I don't think that'll work, Well, because when they vaporized the planet, remember, all the cortosis was left? Isn't that something No, that was Ryan Frick. Said? Get your fucking facts Oh, straight. that was Frick. Frick. Yeah. Sorry, I get my Frick and cortosis <laughs> yes. mixed up all the Jesus time. It's, right. it's, it's, I'm, I know, you know I'm what Star fan. Wars is? Yeah. I'm a Star Wars fan, you are. I love, listen, I love Spock and Kirk, okay? They I'm are. a real, true, good fan. They're pretty really good with cortosis. their little lightsabers. Why do they name him Babu Frick then? If they already had a Frick in universe, <laughs> maybe Babu. Maybe he's named after it. Yeah, like oh, his family, yeah, yeah. His family discovered Frick, and they he named was it so it. tough, and he was resilient, and so they named him Frick, even though it's his last name. Uh, they named the the Frick clan. I think so. Sounds about right to me. The Frick clan. I played against them in Apex Legends. They were. Uh, yeah. They Any are, good? Uh, no, no. They they really weren't. Hmm. They were it, they were indestructible, but they couldn't do anything. So, oh, so we just had to call it a call it a draw because we were starting to get bored and hungry. I was gonna say, you eventually go to sleep too. I should be like, well, yeah, well, I guess I'll thing. be over here. Well, uh, in any case, uh, do you want to go get your little drink there? Yeah, I'll get my little drink. Yeah, right, I'm gonna go excellent. grab myself a li little drink here and maybe an icy cube. An icy. Um. Yeah, welcome, welcome, everybody. We're here once again to discuss the happenings of the week slash whatever media we're currently interested in. And my goodness, have I got a uh, buffet ready for all of you as to topics and uh, interesting things that have occurred. Some things that you will, some will be aware of. Some others, maybe not. We've got some controversial opinions floating around the internet as well as just, just realities that we've come across. Now, I wouldn't mind opening... With a question of, uh, yeah. any of you guys seen The Boys? Uh, I think I saw season, season two. two. Oh, the show. Yeah, I saw mm -hmm. season one and two, and then I stopped. Well, season yeah, two I got into season two, didn't finish it. The new thing has been that uh, there was a clip going around when like episode three or four came out with some kind of rally or, or something in universe where uh right-wing superheroes saying a whole bunch of cringe and um it seemed to me that most of the internet was like well the writing is like so bad um but a lot of people were like you're just mad because it makes fun of you and uh people kept trying to have this conversation of it's really not that it's like we should demand better from our satire like you can be so mad at people that you don't like that you'll just take any media that takes a shot at them right but you should also try and discern the difference between something being executed in a way that's meaningful or substantive versus just lol. And you're like, okay. Um, we see this in all kinds of ways with all kinds of different media. Some of it to different levels of success, I suppose. Um, but what's happened interestingly recently is The Boys did something that's now pissed off its own fans. And uh, it's not going to be in a way that... Actually, I was about to say it wouldn't be in a way that you would expect, but maybe you would. Um, we'll see. Because I told a friend about this, and they were like, yep, that sounds like something the boys would do. So, to set somewhat of a stage here, uh, you guys may have seen season one. It sounded like some murmurs there of season one being witnessed. There was... Yeah, season one was alright. The yeah, a lot of fun. bringing okay. in of Starlight, she gets uh, sexually assaulted by the Deep in the storyline, and uh, the storyline evolves based on that, right? Like, he's got... Is about how the seven are corrupted and this, that, and the other thing. Um, Eric Kripke was on record saying that it was one of the most, if not the most difficult thing for him to do in his career because he knew that not only did he have to get it right, uh, but that if he, like, like as, a, as a piece of artwork, but if he got it wrong, it would cause serious damage. Um, and he said he had to have a lot of conversations with women, some of which were very painful. And he did the absolute best to get the fuck out of the way and just let them speak. These are all quotes and try not to steer it one way or the other, and then ultimately, you know, boil it down to Starlight's experience in that moment, and then the aftermath of that moment, and, uh, you know, the story was built around that. Now, that's what happened then. Something else happened recently. I uh, decided to go and check out the context for this, because I was, I was curious. 
Do you guys know what Tech Knight is in the world of the boys? Tech Knight? Tech Knight. Is that a character? Is that a guy? Yes. Is he like, um, is he like, um, a Static Shock's, uh, white friend? Uh, no. <laughs> he's, no? um, okay. he's the boys' version of Batman. He's a multi-bazillionaire who uses his money to make technology that he fights crime with only because the boys is very clever this version uh uses the money he makes from capturing the criminals to fund his like prisons and uh you know like it, it generated basically like the idea is that he makes a shit ton of money from putting people into the prisons as best he can and he also uh has a has a butler he also lost his parents when he was a kid and uh he also just you know, you got all those facts. He's he's also kind of into um, scat and fart porn. Uh, that, 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 you know, just if you just pop that on top of the other stuff. He also has his own sidekick, Scorn. Robin, who is in a gimp suit and tied up in the tech cave, where it's just a BDSM cave. Uh, that's like the boys' very funny version of all of this. He also has a, an Alfred, who, when we see him, he says, I've cleaned cum out of too many goddamn holes to count. Oh my god. Holes? Like people's holes? Yes. Or just um, Why do you need someone else to clean the cum from your holes? The uh, a line Can't, directly cool. A line from Tech Knight an adult. in the show. Be an adult. Is uh, everyone has the same holes. It gets so boring. Sometimes you just got to make your own and fuck them. What? Oh, uh, I I guess I haven't okay. you know enough to If I ever get to the point where I'm dissatisfied with just the anatomy of a human being i'm just gonna call it there <laughs> well you know it was what? a good I'm run <laughs> it was a good run i have i have fucked so much that i'm just done so uh this is where the show yeah this is this is all the very clever sort of satire of batman um and in the episode so that the fans were relatively happy with this so far of course because this is this is the highbrow sort of fun clever nature of <laughs> The parodying the superhero genre, which uh, we've already talked about how there are so many amazing options you have right now, especially in our day and age, and this is what you do. It's like, ha oh, 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 you, you look at you go. Anyway, Huey, one of the main characters, has to infiltrate Tech Knight's manor and uh, plays bugs so that they can uh, spy on him. He uh, ends up getting himself into Tech Knight's sex dungeon and accidentally, unfortunately, because he, he's pretending to be someone else, has to start engaging in... Uh, Basically, sex stuff. You know, just uh, just you run of the mill. He has to he has to uh, get mostly naked and start uh, farting on cake. Cause... On cake, like yeah, the cake like farts. the thing you eat. C a k e. Yeah. yeah uh, uh, and oh uh, wait, wait, are these British cakes or American cakes? Because there's like a difference, right? Uh, it's like it, it's like a birthday cake, standard sort of. Oh my goodness. Um. And then he he gets uh, tied up and um, tickled and cummed on. Uh, uh, it's 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 really hey, do odd. why do you say cummed on instead of came upon? I don't know. A I little really a me. little a little decorum a little decorum would be appreciated. And, and uh, tech night. This, the tickled bit seems like almost not worth mentioning. It was like oh, he was tickled, yeah. and then he was cummed on. It's like that's <laughs> the more important part of that. <laughs> Well, that's te just te downright Tech Knight eventually figures out that he's Huey because he asks him for a safe word and he says he doesn't know it. And then uh, Huey starts screaming. And uh, just in the nick of time, the good guys come in and, and stop uh, Tech Knight from starting to surgically cut holes into Huey ready to fuck. So, as mm -hmm. you can see, just from that description, you guys are that missing out be. on the boys, right? Like you, yeah, I can't be. Yeah. I can't believe it. That's like, not a... That's not a environment. What happened to Huey's up? goal being avenging Robin? Robin. I... <laughs> what happened to the simple, simple start? Like, what the fuck? We ain't... We're just walking down the street, and now he's farting on cakes? Like This, is this ain't a story on? anymore. This is just... I, yeah, I'm glad I quit this shit. What uh... good's a cake if you can't fart on it? <laughs> so, I mean, well, my whole, I mean, we my laugh whole sense... Of... Sorry, in... my, my sense of that whole show now is like it's written by a bunch of teenagers who are just trying mm -hmm. to push the line yes. as far as possible. Like, it feels like that's the goal now. This is just shock and disgust people. Yeah, but that's just uh... how I imagine the BBC offices. So I don't think it's that <laughs> too, too far for Hollywood. They're like confused. Well, right? defense... You guys don't consider this normal? Okay. <laughs> in defense of the writers, all of the cake I eat does turn into poo. But that's uh... hmm. like, it is a connection <laughs> is what you're saying. Um, yeah. 
So anyway, I give you all of that context oh, Tech wears, because Tech Knight wears BDSM. He, mm, you don't you don't see that, but you see plenty of as in you don't see him wear it, but you see plenty in the place. He probably does, yes. Oh, I guess that's how he bruised his dynamic duo. Yeah. There's, there's, there's lots of connections to be made. Lots of puns to be made as well. But um, there was an interview with Eric Kripke, the showrunner. And the interviewer asked, uh, in regards to this latest episode, let's start with Tech Knight's sex dungeon part. Where did the idea come for it? And why bring Huey into this situation now? And before I uh, continue the question, just so you know, uh, well... I, I should ask this. I'm, I'm, I'm being quoted. Does anyone care about spoilers for the boys? <laughs> no. Nah. No. Not no, if this man. is what they're showing as the TV bit. program. No, Especially that's after all right. what you just said? Like, who's going to care after that? Like, no. I mean, I, the closest I'd get is that I'd care to not hear, maybe. But yeah. I, I guess. Uh, the only one I didn't... I was, I was looking at the screen. I didn't see a light for Fringy. How are you feeling about it? I don't... Okay. Well, I don't uh, care about the feel, feel <laughs> fair warned, anyone in chat who's been enjoying it. Fair warning. Uh, okay, so, Huey's dad in the prior episode died. He had to euthanize him because he'd, uh, I think he'd been hit with some, some kind of V compound that was making him have an uncontrollable superpower that he was, he was killing people with. And so, they euthanized him to stop that from happening. And from what I gathered, it, it, it's considered like one of the better portions of the, of the series. I watched uh, a clip of it, and Simon Pegg is doing the best acting he can do. So I was, uh, yeah, I was like, okay, Ooh, yeah, fair enough. Okay. Anyway, that happened mere scenes before this episode, okay? So the question says, uh, why bring Huey into this situation now, kicking him while he's down by having him sexually assaulted by his childhood hero after his dad just died? That's the question. And you know. Uh, we were just talking, I think, before we went live about how the, the nature of when you have access to the people who make these shows, it would be nice to ask harder hitting questions than, wow, how do you make such amazing things, you know? So, <laughs> how are you so good? Uh, Why are you so great? Kripke's wow. response was, well, that's a dark way to look at it. We view it as hilarious. Oh, well, what? next question then. Oh, <laughs> uh, took care of <laughs> just wrap that up in a neat little bow. Said obviously, Tech Knight is our version of Batman, and we wanted to really play around with that trope. Batman's fascist underpinnings as a really wealthy dude who hunts. I, I, you can just pause me whenever you want because this is just filled with cringe. Um, Batman's fascist really <laughs> is anything I just don't like. Yes, I yeah, can just throw that on anything. Batman's fascist underpinnings as a really wealthy dude who hunts poor people. That's that's one of the things that criminals fascists are known for famously operating as <laughs> vigilante, that? libertarian, outside of the law, chaotic, neutral. Uh, or... I just, uh, like, what about the rich people he fucks up? He doesn't, doesn't just he... fuck up poor people. He, and, and, and he... They see crime as a, as, uh, a result of poverty. That's where they go with that. It's oh, yeah. No criminal they don't see people as bad. They're just poor. Regard, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, every criminal um, is a victim, really. Tech Knight was already set up to. Oh yeah, sorry. So it ends with saying he hunts poor people and profits off the incarceration. Which does Batman profit from incarceration? No, no he, I don't he think so. Probably pays a lot of money to these institutions. He probably gives a bunch of donations to like the police department and stuff like that because maybe you know, there's like a Gotham's story where crime. where they write that to be the case. But I've always assumed that uh, Bruce Wayne attempts to do all kinds of reform with uh, his money, not. Mm -hmm. Not like, well, oh, the more people I get in prison, the more bonuses I get. It's like, okay. Yeah, he'll give it back. The idea of him like looking at profit has never been a factor. Like, that's just, I've never seen that in any form well, of Batman. He, he would have a vested interest in making Gotham as successful as yeah. possible for the sake of his business alone. That would be good. If you have a terrible crime-ridden city, then maybe some places would make money from that, like the jails and stuff. But on, but, but it's ultimately not going to be good for everyone. I almost it, it's it's certain that Bruce Wayne takes the opinion that a rising tide lifts all boats, you know? Like if I make the city really nice, it's going to be good for everyone, including myself cuz I'm in it. Well, sure, yeah. Uh the like, continue if the he stories... was given a check under the table every time he dragged somebody into Arkham Asylum. <laughs> <laughs> <So, laughs> but from, another grand from... Batman, thanks. <laughs> from the Bad stories that I have heard of Batman, when he does turn like dark, it generally is he realizes no matter what I do to this city, it will never be enough. So yeah. it's never that he's dark in any way, it just realizes that this is pointless, so I may as well do something a bit more severe. 
Um, mm -hmm. So, he carries on to say, uh, Tech Knight was already set up to be a freak, so we were kind of already halfway there. Then the notion came up of, he should have a Batcave. But let's be honest, the Batcave would be a sex dungeon. Like, even the real Batcave is just this side of being a sex dungeon. It's really dark and there's rubber suits everywhere. This I'm, is uh, just projection. I am, <laughs> I'm struck by how cynical all of this is. Like, it's well, actually is... kind of shocking, like, how cynical all of this comes across as. Doesn't this well, make like complete sense? diving instructor office is going to be... The person oh, who that... wrote The Boys saying this? You're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense that you would say well, that. This, this is, is really the orc video stuff. all over again. He's like, when you, when you look at a bat cave, didn't you see a, a dungeon full just of, like, sex. rubber outfits? He's like, no, that was just you. The... Isn't that what <laughs> it's just, like, it's so cynical. Every It's like, ah, yes, let me read in and invent all of these crazy negative aspects about Batman. Because that's like, because wouldn't that be interesting if I put that in my television show? All of this, like, cynical, made-up bullshit about, like, yeah. the dynamic of Batman. It's like wouldn't he's looking think it was all shit? for any... I don't know, it's just fascinating. It's like, god damn, like, it's so, so, like, negative. <laughs> like, that's so, all you see when you a... Batman, it's just shocking. Like, someone like that's the only one who can make a show like this. What an immature reduction of the Batcave, just based on a few things, like the fact there's rubber suits down there. The Batcave is awesome. Like, mm -hmm. all that filled with memorabilia of all his enemies is sort of a, re a reminder of, like, what people are capable of. There's a and... lot that you can do with the Batcave in terms of uh, establishing or conveying something about Batman's character, but I guess he just views it as like, well, yeah, I mean, it's just like a dungeon on the ground, right? Like a dungeon. Ooh, I have an idea for that. Yeah. It's such oh, a simplistic damn. take. It's, it's crazy. And it, he, it, the way he's saying it, by the sound of it, he sounds like every, he sounds like he thinks everyone should have this same take on Batman. Like, this is the correct take. Rather than try to explain his well, perspective. I get what you mean. He's saying up. it as though we're all on board. Okay. Like, like yeah. you, you all know. Yeah, you, we all know. Yeah. This is, yeah. He's saying this like this yeah. is like the common take on Batman. And we should all agree <laughs> with it. So there's no reason to be upset. Like, what I, are you guys talking about? I, I am like... I'm also like still stuck on the fact that he thought like it would be funny to follow up a character. Oh, we'll be coming around to that again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So, and yeah, he said... Isn't, like, his, isn't Batman's rogues gallery full of... like? The penguin's like a rich politician. Well, right? yeah, the idea of describing his rose galleries like socioeconomic conditions is going to be really awkward sometimes. Like, because mm -hmm. like some of some of them are so far divorced from like normal life and society that I don't even know. Like, what's poison ivy's? You know, what's well, her, if we like, start, yeah, she's if a we start, she's a she's a biologist. She's a botanist, have right? Harvey. Or something. Yeah, a yeah, botanist. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and not Harvey broke. Dent That's is right. like a famous lawyer, lawyer famous yeah. attorney, right? Mister Freeze is a scientist. Um, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's uh, so much world renowned scientists. Slayface is an actor, right? Yeah. Like all these super, super poor people, I guess. That's like highlighting that that's. Eh, well, yeah, and of course, like what Rachel Ghoul. It's like, well, he's in charge of like a massive underground society. So, you know, like he's probably not struggling to afford rent. Yeah, but and so I just point out Joker literally burns all of his money constantly. So it's like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so it's, uh, I, it, it seems like his. I, whatever. <laughs> anyway, what's, what's, what yes, to, he has said next? So, he, so like I said, even the real Batcave is just this side of being a sex dungeon, really dark, rubber suits everywhere. It's not much of a push to add a couple dildos and then a weird urinal that turns into a face mask. But why? That is a, that's a, that's just a pretty big stretch. To be clear, he said it's not much of a push. Like, the, they fit right in. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> just, there's no, there's no, caves are, Caves are many things. Caves are not sexy. Um, and so he says, and in the comics is a great storyline where Huey goes undercover disguised as a superhero, and that was the story Jack had always asked us to do. So part of it, uh, part of it is always be careful what you ask the writers for. Then we finally had this web weaver character that's the idea of Spider-Man going down to be kink tickled in the Bat Cave is too good to pass up. Oh yeah, who could say no to that? That how is like, how is this not one of the most over sounds... the writers have issues I've, and he's sexual? Just got a fetish. <laughs> yeah, this that's what I mean. Like, this is why them. Is it, why is it too good to pass up? Like, that would be my question. Like, what are we get? What are we gaining from this? Like, they, I just like, like, elaborate on any of this shit. They like, see it as a race downhill to be like, yeah. it's like a competition to see who can be more depraved. Mm -hmm. It's not too good to pass up. It's too bad to put in. But then it's they just... did it, I guess. Um, so the, so. the, the, what I'm reading from this article, uh, cause they have opinions from, uh, Forbes 
they say kink tickled. I'm sorry, this wasn't kink. This was entirely non-consensual. The fact the show creative views it as hilarious and waves it off as some kind of funny sex dungeon scene is more disturbing than the scene itself. When asked if there was ever a time that Amazon said this was taking things too far, Kripke adds, quote, I love uh, that it's just such a perfect setup that he doesn't know his own safe word. It's a beautiful comedy setup that he's trying to find it the whole time. And they say, uh, "People rape? What? Oh, not yeah. knowing your own safe word is just about the furthest thing from funny I can think of, and I'm absolutely baffled that someone in charge of a major television series could be this tone deaf. Obviously, uh, people are getting a little bit upset that uh, he said this. Uh, I mean, yeah, obviously. Um, and I'm calling your own setup beautiful. There was this wonderful meme that was if you created. You insulin, but you didn't have any. <laughs> uh, to properly identify the issue, you see, when uh, when it was Starlight." Uh, he, he took it incredibly seriously. He said it was one of the most difficult things in his whole career. When it was Huey, it was just hilarious. Oh, Jesus, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, wow. Well, that's why I brought it up. Wow. Uh, wow. And what, <laughs> what happened to Starlight is w far less than what you've described in this scene. Well, uh, I, I'm not looking to find out which one should be considered more traumatic, you know, especially when he was on a surgical table about to be filled with holes for Batman to fucking well, with, exactly. you know? But I, this is what I mean, it's like, I don't think anyone wants to have the competition aspect, just the, what is wrong with you? Like, how do you, why are you doing this? Uh, and I think Eric Kripke has not realized, uh, he can, he can do this with like aspects that everyone in his audience already agree with, I guess, like making fun of things. But when you make fun of stuff without realizing your audience is more, uh, yeah, not he's... ready for this, like in terms of this brazen attitude, because it's a, it's a common thing. We actually, I think... It was a pop culture detective, a guy as John McIntosh, right? Uh, oh, he has a yeah. oh, he has a video all about how um, media kind of has failed in regards to not taking uh, male sexual assault seriously in any way, shape, or form. They make it comedy <gasps> all the time. He's becoming the monster he once fought against. Um, and so yeah, uh, there there was another uh, Forbes article, or rather, this could be the same author actually. I, I need to check, but anyway, they said uh, the more I watched the current iteration of the boys, the more I realized just how much better Gen V's first season was by comparison. I haven't seen it, so I can't comment. But they go on to say the show has plenty of gore and sex, but not the main focus. It also has a coherent storyline and characters you want to root for. If the boys ever had that, it has now turned them into an absurd, uh, uh, turned them into an abused Huey in a powerless starlight. Now the show is trying to give A Train some sort of redemption arc. That, given the nature of the show, seems like they'll be setting him up to be violently killed shortly thereafter. It's not been an enjoyable season. The politics have gotten too dumb, way too one-to-one -one paralleled with real life in a way that's not clever, even if I actually agree with those politics. And this desire to have viewers talking about the new sick thing the show did the next day is overwhelming all plot development, which after six episodes this season comes down to, quote, Homelander thinks everyone is inferior and wants to take over the country. Like, I mean, of course he does, and his world's smartest person has he has working for him has not concocted anything resembling... An interesting plan to make it happen. Meanwhile, the show has no idea what to do with the rest of its Central Boys cast, giving them disconnected, undeveloped storylines and isolating Butcher with his brain tumor hallucinations. So, <laughs> what? <laughs> as someone who dipped around season two with the rest of you, as, in terms of my investment, it died in season two. Uh, mm -hmm. it seems like the boys are doing great. Just, the uh, thing is, if, if if I was Homelander and I looked around at all the degenerate crap that everyone else in the world was, I'd think I was better than them as well. Like, it'd be very difficult to look <laughs> at this tech guy and be like, no, no, this guy's definitely my equal. He's like a creepy weirdo. I think it's just... I have uh, a yeah. feeling that back in season one, in particular, part of it is owed to the fact that, you know, it has a novelty to it. But I feel like way more people were talking about it. And even in season two, there seemed to be a decent amount of discussion surrounding it. The but then after on. that... There does seem like there just doesn't. I don't hear anyone talking about it. So the I, boys uh, just strikes it? me as a show that is essentially coasted by on being the edgy, like satire superhero show, and so it doesn't. And so like it, it doesn't matter, you know, how, how particularly poignant or interesting any of the satire is. It kind of just like coasted by because look, it's like there's Superman, but he's evil. Look, people's no, heads exploding and guts flying everywhere. Like, wow, that's pretty edgy for like a superhero thing. I'm starting to, I'm starting to wonder if like it even goes all the way back to because I'm, you know, season one I liked, but there was it was, was not gonna... like a, it was we, it was not it was like an right. overwhelmingly like, positive reaction to it. There yeah. was plenty of like 
you know, there's some stuff here that's like, you know, interesting and worthwhile, but it also feels like there's a lot of missed opportunities by way of doing satire. Something that we've, I'm pretty sure we've talked about before um, was the, you know, the, the question of like whether it would be inter more interesting uh, if like the Homelander reveal was pushed further back. I know you've talked about that before, Mola. Like, if, like, wouldn't it be interesting if Homelander, it, it got revealed that he was evil, like, at the end of season one rather than the beginning of just, like, trying to expand out a lot of the ideas? But it really does seem like, especially with what you've been relaying, it, well, it's, we... it's just, like, become more and more and more just shock value yeah. rather than... Well, is any of this shocking? Um, um, yeah. it's, it's, I guess... <laughs> Isn't it just mainstream degeneracy? Like, satire is supposed to satirize the mainstream idea. But at the moment, the mainstream idea is... Yeah, you can do all this stuff and you shouldn't be judged for it. So they're just pushing against an open door and pretending they're edgy. I mean, the boys... Well, it's is, more enough. To Rags's point, right, about the way it gets shared, like, every other day I do see a clip from the newest episode of The Boys and it's just someone's head exploding, someone's whole body exploding, or the one talking about how they can't wait to rape to death some character and you just, you just sort of... Yeah, that's the shock what they value do. Is what they, it's what they prioritize now. Yeah, it's well, I actually thought that article was pretty on point. The and I appreciated yeah. the idea of you know I might agree with one thing or the other thing, but it's just it's being done with the you know the deafness of a child at this point. It's, it's not. Yeah. There's nothing uh, art, artistic about it. It's it's kind of pathetic. You just sort of look at it and you're like, Ugh. it's like the scum of TV shows, and. Uh, just reading reading up about that new event where a lot of the boys fan base is very fucking pissed off with Eric Kripke for his I mean, that, that's not comments. surprising at all like it's it's uh it's kind of crazy um it's it, i think it's 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 it seems like it is the just like oh well that, that it's it was hilarious it's like what the like do you not realize like what you've what you've created here Simplistic. Do you remember the flashback yeah. scenes with Homelander in season one, where they showed him as a kid briefly, like in the lab, and like everyone testing him and whatnot? There's a lot of stuff I would celebrate about season one. I think when we were watching it, we almost wanted there to be more nuance in the seven, that they weren't all just kind of monsters. Yes, um, yes, and that's uh, adding to what Freya yeah, was saying. It would be nice. It would be nice to get a little bit more of that side of Homelander and not revealing that he's, he's you know, a monster right away so we can appreciate his yeah. backstory a little bit more. Well, I, it's just, more there's not, I don't know that like, there's anything particularly time. interesting just about, like, well, what if they were all, like, psychos? What if all the yeah. heroes were just, like, psychos instead of... I, I don't know, that's... It does it's seem like that yeah. basically Glory. the idea is, like, what if each one of them is, like, insane in some specific way and Homelander is the most insane? Isn't that crazy evil Superman? Isn't that a crazy idea? Wow, no one has ever... Like, no one oh, yeah, ever this... think of that. That's this Whoa. started up back when Evil Superman was boring, but still kind of, now, you know. <laughs> yeah, now, now, it's, now it's like it's. It feels like it's gotten to a point of can we like cut cut that out, cut please? Shit. Like, can yeah. we actually can we go back well, to optimistic Superman? The concept of deconstruction came up on uh, the recent open bar. I think it was it was kind of frustrating thinking about how a lot of these would be filed under deconstruction, as in. Mm -hmm. Superman or Batman, like Tech Knight, him being, you know, he's, he's a he's a big old famous billionaire and he's using his money to make more money from prisons by putting poor people into them and also he's he's a sex person in his dungeon. He <laughs> like and then he goes, oh, it's deconstruction actually. I, mean, I, I don't mind if like some of the characters on the team are like psychotic or degenerate or whatever because I do find that the idea of that interesting like taking something like the justice league and it's like well what if you had some superheroes with the sheer amount of power that they have and they are just totally self-interested they don't care about the people at all they just want they're just in it for their own i'd love to explore all kinds of characters i just feel like they kind of did that with all of them essentially they painted them all with right the yeah line. yeah problem. so but it's that it, yeah. be interesting but yeah. i agree it's like they're all scum so it's just like there's nothing to contrast the scumminess with yeah it it just feels like you're sitting in sewage like yes. the whole season uh and it looks like fans are starting to feel that way as well, well with mean, uh, of what course, like i i'm sure it's been pointed out before but i mean it is kind of like rich to be like ah look at those corporate superheroes huh meanwhile it's like the boys has become a franchise for amazon prime like, yeah where they you can laugh at men getting sexually assaulted hmm yeah like i, I interesting i the boys I can't believe like how much season two killed my interest, and there has been no point where I've thought, "Man, I wonder what I'm missing out on with the boys." It's very yeah. much been a case of I don't care anymore. I just am not. In I don't want to watch this show. Never but even been mildly curious. Yeah, the entertainment value was in the, like the humans, the boys 
killing the scum. You weren't supposed to be reveling what the degenerates were doing as the superheroes. That was kind of like, that, that was a reason why they needed to be taken out because they were engaging all of this like, horrible stuff that they were doing to people. But you were rooting for the humans. Yeah, and now it just seems to be you're, you're in the superhero world. Well, and it's like, I, look I, at this. It's like, yeah, but the, I want to stop that. The opening act, right, being uh, A-Train just runs through casually the yeah. main character's girlfriend and doesn't care, moves on, and it gets like covered up and almost settled. And you just, it's horrifying. And then heroes shouldn't be allowed to do that. That's, that's wrong. Looking back, that's The Boys Season 1 is so much more grounded than it ever became. Yeah. You know, and it, and it wasn't grounded when you first saw it. It was insane. Um, you know, because when they blow up translucent, was... uh, all the flesh and stuff, which was actually the one of the first times Eric Kripke was revealing he didn't actually care that much about how to write, more so than how to shock. But uh, now it's it's a completely different animal. I uh, I get the impression as well that they need to find ways to basically like prolong the conflict because you can't get rid of Homelander or uh, or uh, Butcher because they're like the yep. favorite characters yeah. of everybody. So <laughs> it's it's like oh, so the story in a sense either you got to be really 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 creative with how you can prolong that conflict or you have the opposite problem of a whole bunch of stupid writing essentially keeps it perpetually. Um, well, I have a feeling static. Too, that the uh, once the show ends, I think it's ending with season five. I, I'm not 100 percent sure, yeah. but once it does, yeah. uh, it's going to age horrifically bad because you'll get all of your uh, your story will be complete. It'll be shit, and um, mm -hmm. you know, Homelander will be killed. He'll be horrifically, violently torn to every last shred you can imagine by all of the characters, and they'll celebrate that they've defeated the bad guy, and then the show can be like, you know what, a better world. That's where we're heading. Um, and then, the, uh, and then they'll be like, "Well, hey, can you watch the other boys spinoffs? This yeah. is like really lucrative as a franchise for. So, can you keep it going? And it probably, it, I, I, yeah, I, I'm bored of it. It's, it's like, I, it's, it's, it does strike me as it's essentially coasted by on. Look, we're like the edgy satire superhero show, regardless of whether or not anything about it is particularly interesting or clever." I don't know if the show is still doing this, but I think the what what made the first season strong was that it was told from their perspective of not only Starlight but like the just the regular dude that uh, his Huey, yeah. girlfriend gets yeah like splattered by a train, and it's just like. Uh, I, th what, yeah, I think it, it really grounded that season having Starlight being just like this ambitious superhero who wants to like do good in the world and then goes into this place and the whole t story is told from her perspective where she's looking around and getting a sense of these people and going what the fuck is this yeah, like, it's, it's I don't I don't know if the idea. show still has that grounding element um, it, yeah it was super grounded what happens when a normal guy has to essentially like, when when he is um you know greatly wrong traumatized when someone he loves is killed and he's just a guy and he's up against not only this insane, massive institution that's built around these superheroes, but against, you know, them themselves. How does a guy like that go about getting revenge? Yeah. Um, you, that is a very but, yeah. interesting yeah. idea. Um, just seeing him basically find his confidence and, like, decide he's going to do something about this. He's not going to lay down even against all the odds that you just mentioned. That really compelled me and i remember even this the, you know the scene of him breaking down in the convenience store about it he was a really good character in season one and it's like they just deleted that and made him like a, a, a punk in season two it's a big part of the reason i was pissed off i feel like every character got destroyed in their own way in, it's like in different um, ways in satirical power scaling like they 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 believe they have to out shock the prior season right so it's just gotten to a extreme extents where uh yeah. they, they were always bound to make a mistake at some point it looks like he did uh See how things go on ahead, but I don't think this makes for a good ad for anybody to consider watching The Boys. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Earlier on in The Boys' run, I kind of suspected that this the show would be at risk of going down this road, where it's just like, uh, in future seasons, they're just going to latch on to, like... Like, they've, gotten, they've obviously gotten too carried away now with what at least they perceive to be the show's narrative hook, which is, what crazy fucking shit's going to happen this... Who's, whose dick is Homelander going to blow off with his laser eyes in this episode? And this, like, leaning into that as if that's the thing everybody's tuning in for, 
rather than um, like an interesting exploration of people with insane amounts of power over an entire city or the world, I guess. And just how they're all sort of self-interested and, and um, it's an examination of power uh, uh, among people that shouldn't have it. I, I do think that is quite interesting, but they're just, they don't seem concerned with that at all anymore. I don't even know who the main character is at this point. It seems like yeah. it's shifting over to Billy the Butcher. I don't well, even so that know was always star- a, what. Having yep. the cool factor was through the roof, right? Uh, Caleb and all in black saying swear words all the time and taking no shit from anybody. So inevitably he's big. They gave him superpowers in season three. Oh, no. All oh, right. That, that's when I stopped watching. Them. When it they could... That- them having oh. not having powers was a big part of it too. Yep. Like having to work around that, like because you you you're right next to Homelander and a scene you're dead. You can't put them in that situation. But just giving them powers now. What's the point of this show? Like, there's just uh, well, yeah. They, they only it, it seems like point. we only really were sort of teasing that idea a bit when we uh, translucent when he was in the first season where they had the box and the fifty cal and yeah. the little shocky stuff and like look at all the stuff that we had to do and we got to learn about the powers we have to exploit the weaknesses we have to get into the vulnerable points and That's every fun. superhero has their own special power so you'd fight them in different ways and you'd have to use cleverness and subterfuge and whatnot to you know do all that stuff and i thought they were setting that up to be like oh this is what the show is going to be about and yeah mm. I thought it was going to be a big it, part yeah. of it like the, it was, i feel like they committed an entire episode to like figuring out how we're going to get past translucent and it's just how can you ignore that element completely that's what keeps it grounded i thought they really there would have been a way to execute it for the record but um because uh Dispro, did you see season three um the the time I stopped is when they started getting superpowers, and I even remember the moment where I just like noped out of it, where one guy can teleport, and the entire point of his power is, lol, he can't teleport with his clothes. I'm like, I'm done. Yeah, like, if, if that's as much as you can do with it. Uh, so yeah, I, I saw that they could suddenly give it to humans. But I seriously doing like the, the like Sue Storm Fantastic Four, like, ha oh, oh, ha ha, look at that, she has to, like, were they actually doing that? With, I mean, like, it's always Yeah, childish. he would teleport inside somebody. So they'd kind of explode, but he'd come out the other side with no clothes on. And covered in blood. Yes. Okay, right. Jesus, okay. The Boys. Uh, uh, check it out on Amazon Prime. <laughs> the, thing, <laughs> the thing is as well, even with the scene that you described, the, like we've, we saw that ages ago in Pulp Fiction. Like we, we've seen this kind of stuff done, but it's definitely about the tone. And Pulp Fiction kind of ended that about as well as you could. That these people now have to face extremely severe consequences, and that's the right thing to do. And it is just treating it as a comedy, as if people should be enjoying it rather than repulsed by it, is just mm-hmm. really weird to even think of as a, a sort of a reaction that you'd expect from people. You'd be surprised if people are thinking yeah. critically about what's happened in this show. Like, you shouldn't, ne- like, how could he be like, oh, that's funny. This, I thought it was funny. That's just, it's so strange, like, to have that perspective, you know? I didn't even know The Boys was meant to be funny, actually. <laughs> I always thought it was meant to be, like, it was kind of gross, and you just wanted these people to be stopped. But laugh out loud funny is never something I really associated with it. They had good jokes, like the cancer scene with the, the kid and A-Train. That, that was, like, genuinely hilarious, the way they played that in season one. They did have good jokes when they set them up properly, but then they got addicted to that. Uh, just, like, the, the shock value, the, the turning it into well, a comedy. Surely a good just, example like, would be A-Train the Girls Get It Done marketing campaign. That would, people, oh, when they yeah. first saw that, were like, hey, that's pretty funny. That feels real, and it's, uh, it's a good little lampooning of things in real life. And then the show said, yeah, but it's true, though. Yeah, they became the thing that they were parodying. In the same season. Like, and they, so, and like I couldn't believe that. Yeah, you get a bit of like, oh, okay. That's <laughs> 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 yeah. somehow a lot less funny, but all right. Like, you, well, well, that's why I never saw it as like, funny. Because it's, it's like you could be like, oh, oh, well, Homeland is Trump. And he's like, oh, but then the, the, the writer comes <laughs> out and goes, no, he is. He, no, he, he just is. It's like, oh, so you're not, you're not joking about this. You've just written him that. Yes. It's that and, line of truth in the element of... Um, like a lot of jokes are funny because there's an element of truth to it, but they're not funny when you just like believe the joke at face value and that's just what you think of a certain people or the world and that kind of thing. And then it's not a joke, it's just you telling us what you think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what Homelander thinks, not you. Like let's let's actually develop characters that we can follow properly because he they just made him a meme. Like <sighs> I, I don't know. Homelander really could have been something. And the praise that he seems to be getting is just, it's embarrassing now. 
Um, yeah, the idea of the super practically omnipotent superhero who can do anything he wants, except that he can't control people's perception of him, and mm -hmm. he is kind of like an egotist, and he wants to be praised, and he wants yeah. to be beloved, and that's not something you could just force yourself into, and that's his incredible like limiting element. That's his you know quote unquote weakness. That's a super interesting idea. Well, we had the right actor. We had the right actor for the job. Uh, I can see how people would think it's like a comedy on the surface. I mean, I thought it was a comedy when I first heard about it because, like, even if it's it's not a lot of sort of punchliney sort of writing, like the inherent premise of like the whole thing being a parody of the Justice League and every sort of superhero is like a is is a parody of an individual superhero where you're looking at all of them and be like, okay, Homelander's Superman, A Train, it's the Flash, I guess. Tech Knights Batman or whatever. And it's like the whole thing is sort of like a the the idea of parody is sort of baked into it at its core. Um, I just describe it as satirical and that obviously brings with it a lot of opportunities for comedy payoffs. But I mean the show season one did plenty of drama payoffs pretty well too. Uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it, it could be very, very tense, especially when you have characters like Homelander and whatnot who could just kill anyone whenever. And they're a bit, a little bit moody and a bit unhinged, so it can create really tense scenes. Like, oh shit, what's gonna happen? Huey going into Vought was an extremely tense scene to sign the papers and face off with A Train in season one. And in season two, he literally infiltrates a Vought by himself, like the entire building. And there's no security, there's no nothing. Huey by himself, like it's just you. you uh, That's how good he you, is. You destroyed the stakes completely. Like you, this should not be possible. You already established what it took in season one, and then you make a joke out of it in the next season. Anyway, uh, that's, that's uh, a little, little taste test for, uh, we're going to be discovering some hyper cringe in the form of media, but we're not doing any more boys. Now we're back over to the classic. <laughs> Star Wars. No War. boys. Star Wars. I love Star Trek. We don't typically do much article reading on this show, okay? But we got I got flashbanged with like five bad ones all in a row. <laughs> so I was thinking, okay, I gotta figure this out. What am I gonna do? And I think the only thing to do right. is to actually read some of these fucking articles, alright? They've been getting around. Um, oh my goodness. Before we get to the famously shit one that everybody's oh. been talking about, that actually is the uh, image for this uh, particular video. We'll first check out one that's titled The Acolyte Showrunner Speaks Out on the Star Wars Show's Review Bombing. Oh, oh is that what they're is that what it is? Review bombing. That's what it's it is. It's not that people don't like it and are leaving reviews. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people who feel similarly. It's review bombing. Oh, it, yeah, it's it's the same thing. It's just how you word it. It's just like the whole, you know, Gamergate was targeted, organized harassment of da da da. It's like it's just the same, you know, same shit, different day. You know, it's the same lie, different. Well, hey, we don't know which lie is going to be used. <laughs> you gotta True, see. that's right. That's where the fun comes in. So, Leslie Headland, showrunner of Star Wars The Acolyte, has spoken out about the review bombing campaign against her Star Wars TV show, and she thankfully seems to be in good spirits. The Acolyte struck a nerve. I kind of just gave it, I'm sorry, I'm already, it's like spoken out, <laughs> talked about. <laughs> yeah, spoken out is like something you do if you're not already like super yeah, she's privileged like a... and... Speaking out as though she's like restricted in any like, way, shape, the, or form. The show runner, like <laughs> breaking your silence. Yeah, yeah well, she has a bigger platform than any one of us. Technically, everything's exaggerated because they're not just getting together, like reviewing the show on their own. No, it's a campaign, which implies some kind of organizational structure yeah. to it that people have got together to go. We we all hate this. Let's get together and dive on this thing together. It's like no, she she can't even handle that. It's individuals be doing something. She needs to frame it as like a, a she's. She needs to frame it from a victim's perspective from the very beginning, which is just so mm -hmm. frustrating. So, the Acolyte struck a nerve among certain audiences well before it even premiered, which made the Acolyte a target of review bombing on sites such as Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic before its first two episodes even premiered. Okay. How can you leave a review for something before the... I thought they restrict you on that. Out? Do they remember there was uh there was a there was a feature that used to be on Rotten Tomatoes that they got rid of right wasn't it Captain Marvel that got rid of this feature where it was like anticipation oh, was. score yes. or whatever? Yeah. Well, <laughs> Captain Marvel was the <laughs> one that that was the 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 last big one where they started to like mass delete reviews and stuff. So that's what got a lot of people to be like, oh, this is 
Rotten Tomatoes is just one of those shill sites that, you know, is bought and paid for and is in the pocket of all these big companies who want to keep a good reputation on things. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they changed the way the site works for Captain you, Marvel. I almost isn't I there a feature right, they removed yeah. outright as well? Yeah, there's, there's something they removed. I think there's there was two like something they removed and something they changed. Because I, I think there was they definitely like removed something straight up to to protect it. I can't remember what it was called, but it was basically like a, a meter to imply what the audience thinks or how excited the audience are, and it was really bad for Captain Marvel. So they were like, uh, actually, we don't need this. <laughs> this is a meter that is not helpful. <laughs> can't see this. Yeah, um, I think it was. Something like that. Anticipation meter. I think you're right. Something like, something something like that. Yeah. Now, the Star Wars TV show is sitting at a 14% user score on Rotten Tomatoes, and Ooh. Headland has oh, finally gotten to speak Jeez. her piece. That's how I felt. I was like, I'm surprised it's as high as 14. 14? 14 out of 100 people have <laughs> on brain <average>. damage. <laughs> well, well it is... was 13, but then they had a lightsaber fight, and it went up. Uh. Ooh. <laughs> Naturally. See, they need to put that in the first step. Oh, well, she, she she did make that the first scene. That was probably the idea behind that. She's like, see, look, lightsaber. You like that. <laughs> Yay, lightsaber. Well, then you I the like character lightsabers. that everyone wants it. When prompted by Collider, Headland is given the chance to respond to this phenomenon. Okay. <laughs> it is technically a... I guess so. It is so. technically it is. a phenomenon. It is. I, I guess, yeah. <laughs> It makes Not it sound supernatural, it. though. Like, like, it's come out of the ether to attack him. <laughs> it's like, is gravity a phenomenon? Is like, I, I guess, sort of. You can say In the same that, way yeah. that, like, Tuesday afternoon is kind of a phenomenon, <laughs> but not, <laughs> like, not, like, really. But technically... That's the best way to refer to time. <laughs> this time, time is a phenomenon. phenomenon. It's like, I, I guess. <laughs> um, which she insists was expected. Okay, Headland shares the truth that, quote, If you're in the Star Wars fandom, I think you already know what review bombing is. It's ever, it's a universe... What's with all of this, like, why is it written like this? Instead of Headland said, not Headland shares the truth that. Why is it <laughs> written like this? Because, you know what? I think the article agrees with her. That's my impression. Yeah, it's no. defensive. <laughs> yeah, it's defensive from the very beginning. It's just a little guess. Uh, something that goes back to the Star Wars prequel era with Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. Why specifically Revenge Wait, of the why Sith? Why three? Wasn't I thought people one... were really... Why did Phantom Menace where it started? Yeah. I would have thought yeah, you'd think the... Phantom Menace or Attack of the Clones before Revenge of the Sith, yeah. No, for the for Anakin, all the people shitting on his performance. Uh, Jake Lloyd or whatever his name is? Oh, well, I think she's talking about review bombing in general, but I would have thought that out of the three prequels, if one of them got review bombed... It would be, it would be one of the first two. Because people Attack really like Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, everyone... Why would they pick that one? A Who wrote this? A weirdo. <laughs> While Headland isn't quick to dismiss it, she does reveal that her and her team were expecting such a response. Quote, It's not that it's not concerning, but I think it's pretty expected. Okay, now I'm getting a little bit more like, it feels like it's actually repeating itself. She, she insisted it was expected, so you've already said that, then you have some other quote, then you add some extra stuff in that's confusing, and then you're like, oh, well, she said it was expected. Why, why, why are we doing this? <laughs> they added that she didn't think it was concerning, so there you go. Um, I guess I'm just saying it's like it's, it's waffling. Be... So, would, so if we go back and we look at all of the pre-show interviews with her, will she be talking about how, um, um, how it's going to be very... Uh, how it's going to be divisive and it's going to make a lot of you know, white males angry, how it's going to be really contentious and, and that sort of thing, or is she just going to be talking about how amazing it is and how everyone's going to love it and how everyone thinks it's great? Well, I was actually going to ask out of uh, curiosity with relation to these quotes, how does it work with the shows that weren't review-bombed in the Star Wars universe? They never addressed that. Yeah, like how do they score away Andor? Or um, no, Star Wars Visions, was that review-bombed? Was Bad That'd Batch review bombed? Well, what about uh, yeah, like what about uh, like the animated stuff? It's such yeah. an easy counter, and these people never ask it. They do softball questions, just waste. Well, they'll say time. something about, about like... woman director, woman lead, something like that. Well, that then why would it be expected? Well, because she's a woman and she knows that, so she'll yeah. But why would it be, be expected like... specifically for Star Wars if, the, if all the other women. Star Wars projects are being headed by men? Which I think yeah. is the case, isn't it? Like, well, but is is that the formula about, though? John Favreau, Dave Filoni, 
uh, Robert Rodriguez. You're like you're just running through the list. Tony Gilroy. So like, what you know what I mean? Like, yeah, how many so women are they talking about? Led TV shows have been review bombed in history that she's appealing to. Zero. Well, uh, uh, did Ahsoka? Did Ahsoka have like massively negative reviews when it when it came out? I'm pretty sure was like, like the middling was broadly. Positive. I think so. It wasn't like overwhelmingly negative. Obviously, there were people who were about it. Episode five would have been given you know ten out of ten everywhere, but. Yeah, I don't know about. Uh, I'm not sure what of history she's. Oh yeah, because exactly. Obi Wan Kenobi was. Uh, what was her name? Uh, Deborah Chow. something. Chow? Chow. Yeah. Deborah okay. Chow. So that'd be the only yeah. other one then that you could point to, and that was re that. Remember, guys, <laughs> it was only after that show came out that people started to say, "Wait, that kind of sucked." When it was coming well, out, people thought it was great. You say that. We, we, we remember. That is that is true of the people who did like the show, but uh, they did do their campaign before the show even started that everyone was going to hate it because it had main female uh, Reva, right? Like, Oh, yeah, they started that way. Oh, oh, right, oh, right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Reva. That's the only example of them, like, preemptively trying to strike and, like, and, starting like, it early. Almost everyone was guessing that she was going to be made out to be the redeemable Goodman at the end. Mm -hmm. And it was incredibly predictable, <laughs> frustrating nonsense. Uh, and no they reason. destroyed everything about what we like, about both eras at the same It's just funny. It's like, ah, oh, you review Bob. It's like, ah, oh, you made a terrible TV show that doesn't yeah. deserve appreciation. But all right. And Deborah Chow is one of the worst directors the, the, on planet Earth. Like, the shaky Kramer shit was just Well, unbearable. people liked her stuff in Mandalorian, but uh, not when she was given yeah. her own show, I guess. Obviously, we were. Well, that's we just fans. because that's because Mandalorian's a man. It's in the name. <laughs> Headland <laughs> raises a point that perfectly summarizes what's now happening with Star Wars and reviews. "Quote: Does anyone take that seriously anymore?" She's hey, absolutely guy, right. I took it seriously enough to write articles about it. You're <laughs> being interviewed about it, so. Nope. Yeah. What what isn't it interesting? About? Isn't it interesting the difference between the opinion? Because she's not talking about the critics here. So the professionals are, oh, of course, they matter, but the plebs. Does anyone take the plebs seriously? Yeah. It's just really <laughs> condescending attitude to they have. They sure the do when they're paying yeah, and they're watching. You know? <laughs> yeah, would you say if we were praising yeah. the show, would you have this attitude? It's just so What's this terrible. plebeian doing in the cloud district? Obviously our show is great. Come on, silly. Yes, uh, the quote, does anyone take this seriously anymore? And they continue, she's absolutely right about the fact that, especially within the Star Wars fandom, audience scores and reviews are no longer as reliable as they perhaps once were. No longer as reliable as they perhaps once were? Why aren't you more confident oh, the, about that? Yeah, that's who's the hot, audience scores. The, the audience scores aren't more. as reliable, but the reviewer no, I'm, scores. I'm more on the, the perhaps. The perhaps that's yeah. really interesting. It's like, you like at least commit. Very, <laughs> it's been really strongly worded so far. It's like, well, but you know, perhaps they're not as reliable as they were before. It's like, oh, you think perhaps. you'd be willing to commit when like, this is like the third <laughs> time you're trying to make this point in this paragraph? Like, commit at least. Like, it's so. These are words. Well, yeah. then, of course, not used uh, by actual weasels. Addressing <laughs> the, weasels the, the point, what would uh, what would you guys say? Have have aggregate sites become less or more reliable as time has gone on, or neutral? Um, I have no idea. I don't <laughs> I, know, but that mostly I've, speaks to I don't know what I thought of them years ago. I've never taken it seriously I ever. I don't trust them. Yeah, I don't trust life. them now. That's for sure. I doubt I ever did. I just. But I certainly I just, don't now. I yeah. don't know how I could ever be making like definitive arguments about how, like, how could I possibly know? I, uh... I think people are more open to the idea that critics don't have all the answers and you have to like cross reference and like actually go and do a little bit of research for yourself. That's like, that's usually how it starts for everyone, right? Because they probably had more credibility before because people didn't understand how they got to the scores they, they had were... beyond like, it must be professionals and it must be statistical. It must be, you right. know. Right. These days, it's like, who fucking knows where these numbers come from? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that they're talking specifically about audience scores rather than, like, people's perspective on critic scores, which I would say <laughs> it seems like the attitude on that has become more negative just across the board. Yeah, like, whether me... it's, you know, film, television shows, video games, that people are becoming more and more um, cynical about uh, review scores from, like, professional outlets. Seems that way. But again, that just seems like it. If something is definitively stated as an audience aggregate, I feel it's taken as seriously now as it ever really was. You just sort of see the number and you're like, eh, I wonder if that means that or that means that, or if it's a fake number. Critic scores, though, and critic reviews, I feel like they have actually just shrunk over time. Worthless. In terms of, yeah, yeah. Like, if there was just any prestige to it, 
nobody really thinks much of it anymore. Especially, it was just too many examples of the review skills being in opposition to the audience. Yeah. Um, and I mean, if the audience don't take you seriously, there's no one left to take you seriously. Mm -hmm. I find the most use now in, uh, is the ratio between the two. Like if they match up or if they're both yeah. zero or one's way out of proportion compared to the other one. Like, isn't this like 14 and 80 something, this show right now? I like <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, Which, when you I mean, see it, that, it's... like, that's just glaring. Anyone who understands math, like, some, there's a problem there. There's some type of disconnect. Like, and I, I think, yeah, the, the, the ratio is what gives you the most information. I think what I'm fascinated by, I suppose, with articles like this is what is your, what's your goal here? Like, do you think that you're going to essentially convince people? that their negative feelings towards the show are wrong. What's your goal when you tell them something like this, that they go, oh, you know, actually, I like that show. What no, I think so, yeah, that's the hope to convince us all to stop being so mean. Yeah, I think okay. it's a shame. So they try and get all the people negatively reviewing it and going, these are the bad people. You wouldn't want to be like the bad people, would you? Yeah, but that, and I mean, so that's not, it, it's, it's shifting not the blame. Authentic. Shifting it's not going to be an authentic people. reaction. It would just be that people just stop talking about what they think. Yeah, that's what they want. Uh, because they you blame it on the audience rather than her <laughs> lack of talent. Then, yeah, <laughs> then that, right. that would be much better for her, right? It's become more and more of a recent and habitual thing for Star Wars projects to be bombarded with an onslaught of bad reviews for no good reason. Oh, Didn't they just I mean, say this, say this so, went back to the prequels? They did. I'm getting confused by this article. We're going back and forth like we're on a ping pong table. Back and forth. Like, it's it's always been me. a thing, but it's much more of a thing now. The... Oh, the ball. Okay. And um, I just like for no reason. It's like, do you think Do you think that there are people who have criticisms of the show? Because the second you concede yes, then there are reasons that you would oh, think are okay. Yeah, you've opened yeah, the look, dialogue window, so is unfortunately the, is the for you. Is the show perfect? And if it's not, and somebody di like dislikes some of the choices that were made, then surely yeah. you have to accept that there may be some good reasons. Maybe you think it's overblown, but you would have to concede that there must be some good reasons. Or you think the show's perfect, I guess. <laughs> then there's yeah, no I, reason I don't to understand. Dis dislike it. Ev everything Disney shits out is solid gold. What's, what's with all these <laughs> bad reviews? And then Just you're like, coming out what, of happened in well, episode, what happened in episode four of Boba Fett? Um, uh, Something that will hmm, genuinely stop uh, them from being seen as credible as well is uh, if ever they were to admit any of their shows lack quality, it'll only be in retrospect. It'll never be as they're coming out. It's never, well, it's, it's, we see really it with Marvel, right? Where they're like, Oh yeah, you know, we made mistakes in phase four and it's like you didn't say that when they were coming out. You said <laughs> no. <that was> right. <laughs> well yeah, the truth I... is like we can't say it was coming out because that, that we have to give it its best that chance. Undermines the project. Yeah. I mean it's kind of the same thing that happened with DC, right? Yeah, the Flash is the best superhero movie ever made, they said. Mm -hmm. They all said it was advantageous for them at the time. That's all. It's advantageous for us to play it up now before it's out and then after well, it's out we've made our money we can say no it, it'll be good if we say that yeah we might have made some mistakes and we're learning our lesson and all that stuff we've commented before and how simultaneously they they've like failed in almost every aspect of how to even promote this shit too because a part of the uh multiverse of madness assembled promotional material mind you they have in there the boast from the writer that uh his original scripts are thrown out and he has to start stuff in the first day and that'll get thrown out and it's just a matter of trying to stitch these fucking things together in the middle of whatever amount of time they can find. It's like, why would that even, why are you, you're, you're saying that like it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, they're proud of it. Like he's saying it like this is like this achievement. We, you know, we did it. We weren't even prepared. We had no idea what we're going to do in the, in the, the second half of the movie. It's just, that, that's disgusting. That's ridiculous. Like how is this your thought process for creating a film with this so much on the line? Characters that you didn't create. Continuity that actually matters. Well, and, and like, well, that one made money, right? But yeah. if it hadn't, they probably would have, in retrospect, been like, hmm, maybe we should have given yeah. more time for that. Crazy. Well, I, well, I guess making money doesn't necessarily, because, you know, uh, Thor, right? He's looked back on that. Chris Hemsworth, that is, has looked back on Thor. Oh, yeah, I was talking about um, yeah. Bob Iger specifically, right? Where he said about the Marvels oh, that it was, they made, a, they made a mistake there. <laughs> yeah, the Marvels was, a, it it was, it was yeah. yeah, pretty much. He said that there wasn't enough supervision uh, yep. over the production on that one. Which is funny, it's like they want to simultaneously kind of throw it under the bus, but also not. It's, uh, it's kind of funny. I mean, I, I wish the interviewer had pushed further, been like, are you saying this, uh, the director needed to be told what to do because she didn't know what to do? 
And he'd be like, no. <laughs> I would never say that. <laughs> I this just is the time for honesty. Yeah, you know, just get some get some actual interesting answers out of them sometimes. But um, yes, uh, onslaught of bad reviews for no good reason, which attempts to drown out both the praise and the valid criticism. Really, the valid criticism. Uh, it's getting drowned out by the the mean old review bombers. How does that even make sense? Everyone's fucking reviews are on there. Go have a look at them. Go find the valid ones. No, how's it drowning? Yeah, you can talk you can talk about them whenever you want to. You don't have to be prompted to do so. Oh, they, it's so, appealing okay. to people who don't even use the internet. It's like we all know that you can go scroll through and see exactly, you know, see all of them right there and get your get all the information you need. This crazy deflection she's doing is bizarre. Um so the next line is this happened back in two thousand eleven to Revenge of the Sith. Uh, okay, so what what what, what? Okay. Big what? review bombed. The Revenge of the <laughs> Sith? Oh, sorry. I thought, I thought you were going to be more... Yeah, 2011. I think you're six years too late on that Buddy. one. Well, so is that is that the point they're making? <laughs> that something happened... What happened in 2011 to Revenge of the Sith? I think uh, they don't know what they're talking about. Nothing happened in 2011. Was there like, like a remaster yeah, re-release? Or a... Uh... Was there like a Red Letter Media video that came out of Revenge of the Sith? <laughs> that would be very <laughs> funny if that's the way they've... Uh... Who would be referencing that? Yeah, I, I, I got that. Is that... <laughs> I think she has no idea what she's talking about. I got the date wrong. That's... <laughs> I, so I, I didn't even entertain now. that because I, I don't... Know. I just wouldn't have thought they could get that that wrong, so... Um... I don't know now. Now I'm confused. Yeah, but this is a woman who said when they ask you, when they asked her, like, "What's your favorite Star Wars movie?" Said, "No, this is the writer of the. This is the writer. Oh, this isn't her. This is the article. There's no quote. Yeah, it's not in quotes here. Maybe it's yeah. Maybe it's it's probably just typo. Yeah. Mm. But typo. I don't know. But usually a typo is like you hit the wrong key rather than you just type out in full the wrong year. (laughs) I'm locking my vote for confidence. I'm trying to find them. Because you might be. What if? What if they are re- referencing when the release of the Plinket reviews were? Well, apparently the Red Letter Media review for Revenge of the Sith was 2016. So oh. when did the, when did the Phantom Menace one come out? That was 2016. Wait, are you checking the YouTube upload date? Oh no, it was, just, it was said in chat. <laughs> because <laughs> I got here. So Klaus's review of Phantom Menace was published to YouTube in 2009. Okay. Um... Okay, so it can't be that. Up, 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 up. I'm looking for a actual becoming very popular. Blah blah blah. Subsequent Plinket reviews have covered the James Cameron films Avatar, Titanic, Star Wars Episode Two, and Episode Three. So does it have a date for Episode Three? No. If mm. that one was 2011, which very well could have been, is that the date they're choosing? <laughs> I, I like how we have to do research into what the fuck well, they mean on a this interview. It you was know? That the uh, the Blu-ray for the originals got released in 2011. Oh, maybe that's it. Yeah. So maybe there was something to do with that. Okay. Oh, yeah. It would be nice if they included that context. If, the, if it would be nice if they told us what the fuck they meant. Yes, <laughs> that would be that would be very helpful. Well, I mean, I'm also entertaining happily that they think Revenge of the Sith released in 2011. That's just yeah, funny. 2011. I, that's why yeah. I'm sticking to that. Like, it might straight up be just incompetence. Like, <laughs> um, so anyway, but also uh, has also since oh, happened. Oh my god! Right ahead. I'll say some cringe. Sorry. Continue. Interrupted to say there was stuff coming. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I saw that I couldn't help myself. I see cringe coming. Cringe inbound. Um, my well, cringe star is going off. I do think it's funny though that they followed up with what again referencing Revenge of Sith after saying it's only recently it's become more and more of a problem. And it's like you know they went to Revenge of Sith, then went forward, and then went back again. Uh, but has also since happened to an extent with Star Wars: The Last Jedi and more severely the Acolyte. So they've bobbed back again. The passion Star Wars fans have for the franchise can, like the dark side inside the Star Wars universe, corrupt dark side certain referenced. audiences. I, dude, cringe. That's I cringe, yeah. That's pretty lame. <laughs> you guys are Sith. <laughs> Don't like the Acolyte. That's right, we fuck. <laughs> what are we supposed to do with that? Like, that's the dark side when you give a negative review. Uh, Yes, I'm just like, becoming the Sith glad. because you don't like the acolyte. Jeez, <laughs> Rings of Power did the same why thing. Why can't you be? Uh, why can't you be like the Jedi that we're implying are evil? I guess or something. 
Rings of Power literally said if you give them a bad review or argue against what they're doing with the show, you are patently evil. Yep, <laughs> Patty, I remember that. I remember that. Like, both of them. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They do use their own version. They have the dark light. But just trying Aladriel to like, Aladriel will smite you if you. I, uh, uh, I like you. the idea that the person who wrote this wrote that and had a smile on their face, like. <laughs> Star Wars. I, I slipped in a Star very, Wars reference very in here. Clever. Very clever. Who do you think you're convincing with this, though? Like anyone who actually understands what's going on with the franchise can see right through this. Like I just, it just makes me wonder. Like, like just the lack of the, the lack of self awareness is just shocking. And then they have a shrine of Mark Twain, and they bow before it. It's like, are you pleased with my wit, Mister Twain? <laughs> he just God. says no. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> just 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 like, no, I'm very <laughs> disappointed in you. All right, bye bye. Like the dark side inside the Star Wars universe, it corrupts certain audiences to react in vitriolic ways when their expectations are not met or are subverted in a way that dissatisfies them. You could just say it was shit. Why? No, yeah, why then we couldn't reference Star Wars, Wars in the Force. That's, what, that's what's bugging me here. Is like, what, can you seriously not entertain the idea that people just don't like it? Yeah, well, no. Coupled with all the criticism, valid criticism, there is obviously a lot of vitriol, but I don't really blame people for being angry given how much Disney has been shitting the bed constantly <laughs> with this IP ever since they I bought think, it. I think, um, it feels like there's something you've got to, you know, like it's not, how, how is it, it's not going to be good enough to just be like, whoa, yeah, they're just all like pissed off and angry and it's, that's irrational. Anyway, like, okay, do you think that's going to make people like less pissed off like that's not going to solve the problem that you have which is that people are very very unhappy with the series as it is i i'm just mm -hmm. becoming increasingly fascinated by these sorts of this doesn't solve your problem <laughs> no. you, like it doesn't, even, it doesn't even address it. it doesn't even address it that's one of the most frustrating Salute, things about it. You're, like these series are actually like becoming less and less commercially viable like you can't just keep saying well, yeah, but I mean, you're just like pissed off and angry for no reason. Anyway, oh shit, look, our next film is making less money. Oh my god, that one actually <laughs> lost money. Jeez. It's like, it yeah. It really is the, uh, is that you're supposed to like it kind of energy. But this is not the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and over <laughs> again. Like, and that's what's so shocking about the acolyte. Like, you're still taking this stance, this approach. They need, they need Voss to sit him down and have a chat with him. Oh, man. There's no um, analysis on their side People... either as to the nuance in how each project's been reacted to. Like, TFA was not bombed. So TLJ no, was. TFA, TFA had, yeah. like, a broadly very positive reaction. Very positive, and, yeah. and, and, and remember, TLJ was, it split the fan base. Well, yeah, like, and, and in, in its really few, it. arguable in its first, like, week or so, had pretty positive coverage. Everyone was like, yeah. woohoo, we did it. And then a lot of people started being like, hmm... Wait a minute. There, yeah. there were those so feelings who were sitting there in their soul. They were like, I don't know. I'm feeling really bad about it. I feel a bit empty about this. Going going on on here. My shitey senses are tingling. Uh, you going to say something there, John? I saw you go green before I was talking. I was. I'm just thinking about what I was going to say a bit more. <laughs> just, I guess it's, it's, our way. it's just like a, a rock in a hard place where Disney and all these critics their defense force are just digging their heels in so much and then the response to that on the fan side who are, have just fucking had enough is to just be more and more not it's not all vitriol but they're like they're getting more and more angry and then the, the other side doubles down more and then yeah. and then it gets more the, the fans get more upset and it's just this terrible vicious cycle oh it's crazy how, yeah, um, how much difference the, it would make to have brand new showrunner in who's got a decent amount of experience new project and he just makes clear or she or she that uh they've made some mistakes and they want to uh, make it up to the fans somewhat by trying to correct the the course and that they're going to be focusing on blah 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 and they explain character stuff Story stuff, plot stuff. God and then forbid they, show, they talk about character stuff. Their show is even a 5 out of 10, you know? And then they say, we're going to do better next time. The main thing was we're hoping to entertain and inspire. Just all this stuff. Instead of what happens to be like 90% of the discussions, which is, why the fuck do you hate us? We hate you. And then you're like, we hate you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, yeah. it's just throwing, flinging shit at each other from across the bridge. It's like, there's no communication whatsoever. And what you're describing is communication, like addressing the fact that we've had like, you know, a big issue with this franchise and we're trying to fix it. Like, just, that's it. Just say it. There's, a, there's enough people that love this shit that just a little apology 
you know, no, a massive apology, yeah. a heartfelt <laughs> apology, uh, and like a, an actual attempt to make a proper show and like a legit trilogy, a, 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 a one great trilogy would get people on board. I think that's all it would take. Give us some yeah, characters that are worthwhile. Like, look at us trying to, like, even Soul, we want him to have a character. Oh we God. want, like, you know, the show is shit, but look at this guy acting his ass off, man. It reminds me of Hiddleston in uh, Loki season two. Oh, just no, in service yeah. of garbage. No, he That's, tried so hard. He tried so, he tried hard. so hard. It's just the emoting, and it's, it's all for nothing. He gave a shit. The man's an actor at heart. They care. They care about the art form, and we can see that they care. And we can see that this shit's just a waste. And that's what's so frustrating about this pattern over and over and over again. How can they not see that? People don't just want good stories. They need them. And it's like... Part of life. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, oh, fuck. I don't know. I've, I've had something else in mind. But that was a good that. statement on its own, honestly, because I agree with you. Uh, and it's part <laughs> of what makes people angry, I think. Yeah. It is interesting yeah. the, how much the idea of like day life you just think about stories and I feel like anyone I mean. anyone in this it's... panel could break down right now just off the top of their head what they love about stories and what stories mean to their life. Can this person? You know, I would love to, I would love to see like them just describing <laughs> the art form of storytelling. Just not Star Wars, just just tell me about storytelling and what it means to humanity. You fuck. Like explain it. <laughs> Make sure you add that at the end when you ask them in real life. <laughs> yeah. <You're fucked. laughs> that would make the interviews a lot more entertaining. Fuck yeah, they would. <laughs> All right, Just this spice is it up at the end, yeah. <laughs> this is precisely what's been happening with the acolyte. The sheer uniqueness of the project has caused it to be met with resistance from the oh very beginning. God. There we go. Oh, there's there our it theory. is, boys. There's he our analysis. It. It's unique. <laughs> Uh, you've nailed this it. This has never happened before. Sorry, I've seen some more cringe. The uniqueness of the project. Up. This is a trend that the Star Wars fandom cannot continue. If this continues to be the response to the new Star Wars projects, then this galaxy is going to fizzle out. Oh, 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 Stop with the memes, oh, man. You maybe suck. It should. Oh, I was going to say, what, oh. what would they expect our response to be to that? Anybody who okay. they label as like the vile uh, review bobbers is like, oh, okay. I've been comfortable with Star Wars stopping as a solution to this problem for a while now. Same with Doctor well, Who. It's, yeah, yeah. I, I, it, well, yeah. There's a lot of franchise as well. Like, if they just stop installments, I wouldn't mind. It, like, if, if there were no more Halo games, wouldn't bother me. <laughs> like, yeah. it wouldn't bother me at all. Um, we, have, <laughs> we have crossed into the I you know, hope I, they I don't, don't make don't any more, more phase of media. Of Rings of Power, I gotta tell you, I don't. <laughs> oh no, I need more of that. I need more of Guy Ladriel <laughs> fucking <laughs> bullying the whole kingdom. Give me this because fuck you. <laughs> Just stop, you know, like that was their whole approach to season one. I, I need don't to see more of that. Funny though, they think they can hold it hostage like that. You won't get any more if you don't let us. You know, like, <laughs> I was about right, to yeah. say, I was gonna <laughs> ask if you read that one out. That that might be the part of this that pisses me off the more. Like you're not gonna get any more if you keep acting up, bro. Yeah, you're acting fine. as if like, I guess I'll go. All to Care about we must the other things out there. The right is not even like addressing quality. The headlock with a pistol in his head is like I'm gonna do it, and then the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I don't. Just, I don't even know that person. I was gonna say, for it's like a Shutter Island level reaction of you. You say, "Look down." And the the guy that got the headlock is a corpse, and they're like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> what? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He, re he finds out his gun, he just splits it in half and yeah. realizes, oh my god. <laughs> stop, stop, he's already dead. Yeah. Horrible. Uh, Star Wars, everybody. <laughs> just awkward oh, corpse. The corpse, yeah. It's like these article writers and the show creators, they seem to think like, oh, oh they just hate us for like trying to make something, anything. And the fans are just like, just give us something good and like, We'll give you a positive review. You just got to give us a reason. Like, it reminds wanna... me of watching your guys' Acolyte coverage. And uh, it was a really interesting watch. And a Theo said something in particular that stuck with me, where it's just like, Famous it feels like they're, they're, they're writers. It's like they don't even want the job. They have and no like, interest in the art form of writing. I really yeah, agree yeah. with what they were saying. Yeah. Yeah. No, the he was uh, struck by Un how little interest they had in the craft of storytelling. Yeah. Unbelievably yeah. uninspired. That's the yeah, everything in the show. It's like you could just hear the dejected sigh of the writers before they have to, oh, I guess we have to write yeah, a scene uh, with these characters. It's four fifty. I want to go home in ten minutes. Jeez. They could wander yeah. around yeah. on the ship for twenty minutes. I guess that's easy to write. Uh, so well, like, so, so, so can't contact anybody. How do we stop him? Power goes out. 
Why? Uh, power, power goes, goes out. Power. Why? <laughs> How does power that happen? <laughs> yeah, How many again. times does the power go out? It's like, ow, oh, twice. Sounds about good. Yeah, it'll delay But enough. all of that is defended, not through, like, the story or anything. They just kind of hope that it'll, something will get revealed in yep. the future that yep. will cover the plot hole. So people are like, well, he's doing it. It's like, you have nothing to, like, they didn't show us that at all, apart from the right at the very end where he turned it off. But you never showed us, like, breaking the ship or anything before. It's like, no, it's definitely a mystery. It can't possibly well, it, just be unexplained it, bad writing. It is it's so bad that people He gets half it. his message through. He says, my whole team died, and that gets through. They get that. They, they, they operate on that assumption. So the idea that he doesn't want messages to get through isn't even true. Yeah, but when yeah. she tries to send a message, he shoots her. Like, that's, it, it <laughs> I don't contradicts know, itself. Yeah, no, I agree. It every, is going every, every time. Every time something stupid happens, like you almost think, okay, maybe they're setting something up. Maybe she's fucking with the tech of the ship, and then it ends up just being like a complete coincidence. Like you, you're, you're giving the show more credit than it deserves. Yeah, in our and, desperation for it to make sense, we instantly yeah. fabricate something that doesn't something that exist makes that would make sense. It's always <laughs> Even better than the next episode. Well, that happens all the time because, like, oh. before uh, before the last episode, we were thinking, oh, hey, you know, uh, or. Uh, we were like, well, what's going to happen to where this thing can't happen in the plot? And we came up with all the ideas. And we're like, oh, they just chose the laziest, shittiest one. Okay, what was the then. point of the tattoo set up? Like him pointing out, like they, they just waste our time and they just don't set it. Like the, the beaver telling soul is like as big of a stain on his character as almost anything else. Because the fact that he couldn't <laughs> figure out himself, he needed this stupid little creature to figure it out for him. People still like, fight I'm, I'm over whether or not guy. it was the beaver or himself. It was Beaver Man. This guy was <laughs> hugging and crying and clueless. Like that's all. Well, I think all that I've come to love about Disney Star Wars is how how many times I can imagine someone who's very defensive and enjoying the show, right? And they're like, "No, it was this, and it was this, and it was this, it was this." And like halfway through that episode, they're like, "Ah, Soul. He's the one who's sabotaging the communications because he wants to get more out of May." And they turn to Leslie Headland. They're like, "Right?" And she's like, um, <laughs> she's like yeah, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah, yeah." <laughs> In the same way, it was like, oh, over her writers. <laughs> um, you know, Holdo is being a retard in TLJ because she thinks it's a mole on board, right? And Ryan Johnson's yeah, like, yeah, uh... yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just makes sense. Why didn't oh I think God, it? And he pulls out a little head. notepad secretly and he's yeah. like, <laughs> he's like, hey, uh, you know, oh, I, I, maybe I wouldn't want to spoil anything. I, I wouldn't want to, yeah. Just is you would think you would not know. You would think you would go through that with just like a group of friends or some people you trust and get someone to find the holes, like find like find the holes in this logic, like just, you know, piece this up for me and then see if it's actually viable before you send it out to the world. If, if someone could just casually break your whole story or, or write something better just with a random question, you're a moron. Like, it's just you didn't really think your, your story through. And it's just frustrating seeing mm -hmm. it at the highest level. To continue. There was once a time where new Star Wars content wasn't developed for years, and that time could be returned to if audiences aren't careful. The oh, golden thank age. Oh god, don't tempt me <laughs> with a good time. It is funny, right? It's like, do you remember what it was like just having the first six fills? You're like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I do. Yeah, I really do. Was Often, nice. I think about it all the time. Yeah. Such a funny Those thread. Those the days. <laughs> I do you think they felt when writing that that they this this person in the, with the article? Do you think they were worried? Like you guys are going to ruin it for me. Like, what if they stop making them shit? Food for thought, <laughs> that'll give yeah. them food for thought, right there. They'll be thinking about that. They won't be able to sleep at night. They'll be thinking, <laughs> "Oh my god, are there going to be less Star Wars projects?" You be, what does it mean to you? Best be careful. Like, what are you saying? <laughs> they really think it's a threat. Like we're just these addicts that need Star Wars of any kind. Doesn't matter the quality. And Wouldn't they... the plea be to yeah. say instead, like, if you guys don't stop your remove re review bomb shenanigans, you're going to deprive all of these people of Star Wars content. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean you should take that away from the people who do like it. Reviews oh. losing their credibility is a dangerous step in the wrong direction. Oh, this is the same energy as the you should really listen to a game journalist article that just well, came out. When they say reviews, does he mean or she to mean uh, the audience or the critics or both? Just reviews in general? Oh, probably critics. Well, no, and... because the critics gave this a good score, but people are ignoring that or a lot of people don't give a shit. So it could be both, but I'm I would lean towards critics because they like to protect their own. And you have to ask, like, how does something lose its credibility in the first place? Mm -hmm. Professional critics don't come with innate credibility. You believe in them when you think that they're giving you a good answer. And so sure. if you keep disagreeing with them, mm -hmm. they lose their credibility that way. 
yeah, yeah, yeah like they're, they're, media. they're considered reliable like tastemakers eventually right once they're once you see enough of what they say before seeing the thing or even when you've seen the thing and you're like wow shit that's actually pretty true and i didn't think of that that, that sort of stuff but um when yeah, they say they enough bullshit by the, the row, wrong metrics yeah, yeah. The, the opposite effect will happen when they do the opposite when they say shit that we're all like i'm sorry what what show did you watch and and it's you know, just like slapping in the face to all the logic they use for their other yeah. videos or analysis. And then it's you like find out their site is directly funded by Disney, and you're like, oh. <laughs> oh, there, there it is. Hang on a second. That's why yeah, Fred Rider Media shows, is, is extra shows. frustrating, because we know that they're genuinely passionate about storytelling, and they have an understanding of how Sometimes. this works. Sometimes. You know? Uh, or it, when they, yeah, when they want to be. Um, but just the, to be... Oh, just destroy your credibility like that over time is so shocking after taking all the time to build it that they did. Um, what's happening with the Acolyte right now is utterly disappointing. And if Star Wars fans intend True. on continuing this franchise, then these types of responses have to stop. What I think is funny about that is that when you said what's happening with the Acolyte is disappointing, I was thinking of the Acolyte, and they were right. thinking of the response <laughs> right. to the Acolyte. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it is really it is really fucking disappointing what's happening with the, the Acolyte. It's a really shit show. You know, <laughs> someone in chat just said it. It was really fucked up that they were writing this article with this starving children in Africa. I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, man. Another fucking ridiculous part of that video. Holy yep. shit. You gotta read the last line of the article. The Acolyte, episode 6, is now streaming. New episodes premiere Tuesdays at 9 p.m. ET on Disney+. Plus. This commercial brought funny. to you by Collider. I just find that really funny. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yes, let's end the article with like a little promo for when you can watch the new episode of this show. Of course. Well, what yeah, do you think? I was like... There, I like how there was like barely any of a quote in that at all. It was maybe like two lines and the rest of it was just like... Wow, wow, let me spin this off into like some broader thing that's really monotonous. <laughs> yeah, if you deduce that now. A few sentences were mildly interesting in a meta sort of way that was not intended. Yeah, yeah there was like two or three sentences worthwhile throughout that whole thing. And so out of touch, talk to someone yeah. you disagree with, someone that you think yeah. isn't a monster, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> if you can find that kind of person. Um, touch grass, as they cool. say. Oh, yeah. Uh, get that grass and has touch been it. known Just to rub help. it all over yourself um so uh i know we're, we're still heading to that dreaded article but first i want to show you guys something that i happen to find find it founded uh, fleened because <laughs> uh after i'd uh, uh happily enjoyed the acolyte with the some of these fellas i wanted to see what um Saul's theory was uh reacting to it with uh, he was Ooh. hit with immense boredom, not a huge surprise, but uh, mm -hmm. something his uh, his fans made him aware of was... Because he's always like that, or what do you mean? Oh, I, I think <laughs> the, the, with, with particularly episode uh, six, it seems to be generally oh, the that take was... is that oh, nothing yeah. fucking happened. It was funny, oh, that uh, was... friend watched like, that was... our, um, our EFAP TV episode, and they, they asked if, um, you know, the copyright makes it so you have to cut out like a lot of the events, so to speak, you keep in like bits of dialogue. Events. But you, do, do, <laughs> like, that? you have to cut out like a lot of the. And I was like, I was confused. What are you saying? And they were like, well, it just seems like nothing happened. I was like, no, nothing happened. Was, uh, that's that's what the episode that was. was. It. Yeah. Anyway, the uh, what's up? What's up next is that someone made him aware of uh, an answer to a question he was looking for. Who is the law master behind this show? Um, behind Leslie Headland, because obviously she doesn't know anything about Star Wars. Now. As we knew, uh, Tony Gilroy had advisors as well as he would fact check with Wikipedia. Now, we covered a video that made fun of him for that. I stand by to this day that that is better news than someone who relies on, oh, let's say Pablo Hidalgo, which is who Leslie Headland relies on. You can see him credited in the episodes as Lawmaster. Um, <laughs> this is the motherfucker, by the way, who said the hyperspace kamikaze makes complete sense. Um, so totally makes sense, guys. I find it all very amusing, but uh, I was like, oh, I'm curious to check out this um, this interview that she must have had. Uh, and I did, and I've made a little compilation of it. So if you, uh, you all, all right. jumped in, it looks like we are. Fabulous. I'm jumped in. Yep. Yeah, I want to see what's right. up with Star Wars Theory. How are things going? You My know? First... No, it's not him. It's someone interviewing Leslie Hedges. Oh, okay. Okay, I mixed up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Interview with a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's a good movie. I don't know. 
question because uh-huh. like I know the the dumbest argument that people have had about their show is about Kayati Mandi and I'm like here's the thing yeah it was deemed not canon anymore and as someone who I know you also love a non-canon bitch in Mara Jade what is kind of the deal with Lucasfilm and the stuff that was canon that is now no longer canon how do they kind of tell you what you can and cannot do with it well definitely with with uh well, there's Pablo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hidalgo. Oh, so Funko Pops where, Pablo where, 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 is all. <laughs> 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 on its own. Like, how, how do you find out what's canon and what isn't? Oh, it's Pablo. And she thought that was enough to answer the question. As, uh, it's such bad news because he's just famously not reliable at this point as a creative in Star Wars. So being, you know, saying he's the core of it all, you're like, oh. And then, Some of course, the Funko Pop detected. Much, argument yeah. invalid. To know, by the way, that he's relied upon and then Dave Filoni approves, that's the team. Kathleen Kennedy's whole project, Pablo Hidalgo's The Lawmaster, Dave Filoni approves the scripts, Leslie Headland heads the show. That's the Down Syndrome Avengers that are in charge of the Acolyte. This is insane. And the thing is, they, they can't use the excuse of, oh, well, that's not a problem because we threw the EU away, when also, whenever other people raise criticism of the show, other people defend the show by going, oh, no, this was explained in the EU. Yes, like, they want yeah, the people, people constantly say it doesn't wrong. matter, and then they use the thing that supposedly doesn't matter to try and invali- uh, invalidate your criticism. Yeah, well, it's like Cortosis. Well, that's from the EU. Oh, well, it was explained in the episode afterwards. But it is bad script writing to have this guy magically turn off lightsabers when you haven't explained something that wasn't even canon, apparently, so you have to tell us what that was before you do it, not afterwards. Yeah, that's the preference. <laughs> Instead of just being like, blah, 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 and then be like, we'll explain it later. Yeah, yeah we're like, where what? the fuck was this the whole time? If they actually had a training montage or a training of any kind in episode three where we actually got to learn something useful, we ah. could have got the setup for Kratosis then. We could, they could have explained so many things. That flashback is one of the most worthless flashbacks ever in terms of like how much information you get out of it versus the time. Yeah. And they could have set it up right there. They did nothing instead. Fucking power of two, like ugh, nonsense. Always the person that I go to and say, "Hey, I'm thinking about doing this thing. I think it works for." You think she got told like, "Hey, put some like Lego, you know, like Star Wars figures in your background." Yes, I yes, dead eyed Funko so. Pops. I don't believe those well, are there naturally. Those yeah, are not what the, we call in situ. The better question would be: Is this room even hers, or is it a room that they made up for it? <laughs> that's, that's funny. You know what? It looks too it clean. Does. It looks it looks like the, it. I wouldn't rule that out. It looks pretty designed. I just don't believe it. It's hard. I just it's. I find it so difficult to believe that the people who make these shows actually give a shit about Star Wars. Or yeah, she reads books. It it genuinely is that <laughs> uh, the the fact that she would have asked at every stage. Just am I even allowed to do this thing? In fact, she was asked on the red carpet or whatever. What what your favorite? Star Wars is, and she says, all of Star Wars is my favorite. It's... I love that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's so funny. All of so them. So you don't have an answer. Just you don't have an answer. Report. Anyone who likes a franchise would never answer a question that way about it. All they would be them. excited to tell you exactly what they like and why. They would be able to break it down. Like Henry, you know? But this. But uh, hey, what a t- would, it be, would it be better or worse if she were a hyperfan? Uh, I guess it would be more baffling if she, well, maybe it wouldn't, I don't know, like, I, I was about to Good say, if, you know, if you were a hyper fan, I'd be baffled you made this, but I'd go, well, then again, the thing is, is that people can be fans for, like, disparate reasons, some people can like something for reasons that are really substantive, and sometimes people really like something well, that's Ryan for Johnson, very shallow right? reasons. Yeah, well, that's, that's a that... good point. J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson are both people who consider Star Wars, like, part of their soul for their whole lives, and yeah, then they made yeah, it, they made it's, it's never like, the choice that they made, so you know, just because you're this passionate could be, about something doesn't mean you make something amazing. Could be a yeah, but you would genuine. get the details correct. Like, yeah, but the Oscar um, Isaac interview when they're asking him what he likes about Star Wars, he can actually again, the explain thing is, the three the, movies, the OT. Sometimes like, people like why. won't get the details correct, even when they say like it could be that you know you could have the wizard say no, they they really do like this series. Um, but they they just like don't really understand it much. They, you know, they just then, like the sound effects on the iconography. They don't mm-hmm. like the more deep, less um, you know. I suppose, uh, I, that's I suppose thing. the thing is is that if you were like a mega fan of something and you made something and it sucked, at least there was an attitude of well, you went in with like I guess good intentions, probably like Dave Filoni uh, kind of thing, like uh, James Cameron, Ridley Scott, or uh, Shane Black. <laughs> <laughs> they, I, I feel it would be hard to judge them as non-fans. You know? 
good intention. It's like, do you want to be betrayed by an outsider or one of your own kind of thing? <laughs> like, you know, is, is it better when the dagger comes from the front or the back? <laughs> you know, mm. the whole the whole background there looks like set like a set deck decision. Like a, the shelving unit looks like it was yanked out of a prop nice, warehouse yeah. or something. Just it's like, too nice and it's too sterile, is what it's sterile. That's it. It's like clean, but not in an organic kind of oh, way. Oh, wouldn't it be a funny yeah. question? You just put it to one of the figures at the back. It's like, why do you have that one? <laughs> you know, is there any it's reason the, why you've got that one up on your shelf? The little red and white one. They say it's the fast one. I don't believe this is her bedroom or something. I don't know if this is supposed to be like a writer's room. Or I, would, like I can a never little... go to sleep with like five fun that, Funko Pop staring at me. No way. Suck out your soul. Like a, is that a Razor Crest, the one in the big box, or is that like the? That looks like a Razor like, Crest. Like, yeah. like okay. a drop ship. No, yeah, oh, that's the, the Razor yeah, Crest. Yeah, that's the Razor Crest. The drop ship has like, the thin, like thin wings that angle true. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the right. Razor Crest. I, I like the Razor Crest. I think it's I like a really the design. I hated it's, the ship yeah, after it's... a while because it just, I was, it was bugging me how many times it got it's destroyed too much on it. It had yeah. way too much plot armor, and then it got vaporized, and the only thing left was yeah. a fucking knob. And I was like, okay, well. And then, uh, so goofy. I'd be so curious if you were doing the interview, and you just say, hey, what's that? <laughs> You're not allowed to <laughs> What is that one? Why do you have it? It works for, you know, these narrative reasons. Uh, but you let me know. You know, I know that in Legends it's this, and I know that in Canon it's this, but I'm not totally up to date. In Sorry, that of... felt a bit Freudian. <laughs> I don't know, like, you let me know. Well, wait, no, I know these this Bring stuff. Freudian Freudian yeah, that's who's trying to defend herself there real quick, but no, exposed it. Well, well, yeah, you don't know imply anything about, you don't know anything about Canon. Mm -hmm. know anything. She's like, oh, no, no, she wanted no, to cover no. herself real quick, cover her ass. Nope. Well, she's, she says, I'm not totally up to date on the enough. Canon, and it's like, why not? Go Why are you your fucking job? Why are you in love with it? Why aren't you obsessed with it? Well, the thing is, is, you're literally. It's our job to understand why the fans like it on every single aspect of it so you have those things to work with, not just focusing on the superficial elements. If she and, is uh, of the mindset that it is legends and thus not uh, canon, then. Surely we have to conclude that she doesn't actually have a lot of work to do. She's got to do the animated shows and the live action, and she's done. Now, you could say that's still a lot of work. It's like, well, not for someone who's going to be well, considering this career. I, I guess she needs to read the new books that they've come up with, right? Like, the High <laughs> Republic stuff. The new books she contradict the fucking movie. You know, like, the, the, the novelizations of the movies. They contradict the movies. That is really funny. Because the... Well, uh, the I think she actually does have a decent amount to read because the High Republic aren't there like more uh, actually kind of a few books that she should have read. Well, I don't. I, I have no. This is the thing. I don't know enough There's about. Three novels. Uh, what? No, more than that, actually. Yeah. Because uh, what what I'm referring to obviously is the when when TFA came out, there was a bunch of holes in it, and the novelization tried to fix them up, and then TLJ absolutely countered what was in the novelization for TFA. And then the novelization for TLJ got counted by the Tross one, right? Because everybody's just trying to... How, how, can you imagine trying to fix the problems of a, of a film that counters the fixed problems of a film with holes in it? You're, like, what... What a nightmare. And they actually did seem yeah. to try, because a lot of different, like, uh, portions of these stories were put online of just, oh, this is what happened to this character, or this is why this object is here. Like, there was a story for how Maz Kanata got the um, Luke's lightsaber. Because they never remember she said a story yeah. for another time. <laughs> oh yeah, it was the the gambling thing, right, with the Han Solo. Or no, he that's... was drinking. He sold it for drinking. Or was no, that... that's how he said his metal. metal. That's his metal. Yeah. That was really that's fucking the depressing. One. The metal for essentially saving the universe. He sold it for drinking. From a new hope. And I... Yeah. The metal from a new hope. Yeah. Oh, that's fucking a slap. Oh, yeah, because you know how Han Solo oh. is a fucking loser, right? It's yeah, such say. an iconic scene. What a way to shit on that scene. I, uh, I decided I, mm. I decided to just like look up a list of, of High Republic projects. There were a lot, but I feel like I don't hear about it ever. No one ever no. talks about it. No one. I, no one ever no, talks about it. Ryan was saying it's like, like, like it's just crashed and burned that whole section of the, the law. Nobody cares. There's, there's like they there's tried to do their own thing and they couldn't leech off something else. There's a and lot. It didn't get off the ground. Like the, the it's because it, they've got phases for them. So phase one was called Light of the Jedi. Phase two was called Quest of the Jedi. Phase three was called Trials of the Jedi. And like each one has like three novels, three young adult novels. They've got like comic books and like audio stuff as well. 
There's like a lot of stuff, but I've not heard anything about any of it. Like it's that's fascinating. How you guys feel about it? Um, as a I I I suppose the reason I bring it up is she she probably should have read a decent amount of this right if she's doing the first. That's what I was saying. That it era. wouldn't be too difficult to I would imagine absorb all of Disney's canon, but simultaneously I would have no problem with checking to make sure with someone else double checking you know here and there and stuff, but. Uh, mm -hmm. as I mentioned, checking with the guy who did one of the possibly most damaging law breaks that wasn't character related in all of Star Wars. Well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, all right. She yeah. would have to learn about the High Republic given that yeah. uh, the green character is from it. And a, you, you know that weird line where um, she's like, Yo, you're, you're nauseous whenever you go into hyperspace. That was apparently from all that series of books oh. and nobody knew. So it just came out of nowhere. Yeah, everyone that found that line that odd. That character was specifically nauseous, or that that could even yes. happen. Like, I, I thought it was like an in joke between her and her wife or something, but Ryan said no. It's from the original like High Republic lore for that character. Who's gonna know that? Know no that. one's gonna know. That. <laughs> <laughs> Why was it so important that that's the bit of lore that you put out and picked in your show? <laughs> Ryan is single handedly keeping the High Republic. He's <laughs> 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 like one fail. And like, it's <laughs> a new a new book comes out, and he's like, huh. Oh, I guess I gotta read it. I do like the idea that <laughs> his, house, the lore. <laughs> his house is filled with everything Star Wars that they've ever made product-wise. There's a section for the High Republic. You're like, why do you have that? He's like, research, okay? Research. His room That's looks it. like her room should look like. Yeah, his Star Wars <laughs> knowledge is incredible. Let me just throw it that out there. Scary. It's, it, it amazes me. every. It's not just the knowledge, but how quick, like, he's ready to break it down right off the bat. Like, uh, so I'm glad I that we've been able to channel <laughs> Ryan's turbo autism for Star Wars into the Force of Justice. You know, <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> he's not, yeah. Ryan, Ryan should play a Star Wars trivia game sometime. That would make a lot of sense. No, nah, that guy gets too much shit for I like being like. Hope he's on my team. <laughs> they give him too much shit for like other things outside of his control, like just like the way he, you know some of the controversial <laughs> things he says. Is but a from, question from one. See, he's just a lore master, you know. That's like seems to be mm -hmm. his biggest thing. You should be consulting him. That yeah. in canon it's this, but I'm not. That's totally ironically not a bad in idea. In terms of oh, how yeah. you guys feel about it, this is it, what they should do. Um, as a, as a, as a studio. So I don't know what went on with Kiari Mundi. I heard there was some drama. It, <laughs> it was you don't. You don't. Need, I heard there was some <laughs> she drama. Even know. She doesn't even something know. I did. I guess. Do you, well, do you believe it? Do you believe she doesn't I'm know? Not, I, I'm she not knows. sure that I'm convinced that, that, by that. Yeah. She wants to be dismissive of it. She wants to be dismissive of it. That's the tactic. I mean, she's grinning at the moment. That is Jupiter's yeah. delight. That is like she's laughing. She does not care. It's not just that she doesn't know. Like she doesn't yeah. care. That's no, I, I just, I hair. think she, I think surely, like she, someone would have told her, like, okay, so you got to know, like, this is a thing that people are annoyed about. So just, you know, bear that in mind. It was, it was all over the place, and the, the people the making content? fun of the people making fun of it were all over the place. It was all over the place. So like, she's yeah. on Twitter. Oh, no, what went on with Kiari Mundi? I heard there was some drama. It's the grins. Look, she, they, yeah, yeah. It was about a birthday. Yeah, that's a way to summarize. Oh, but I was like, it's not. It's not <laughs> it really. Yeah, but I was like, it's not deemed canon anymore. And I like looked that up, and I was like, yeah, because it was like in a card and all this stuff. But and I was like, listen, I know Leslie is like me, and we love non-canon characters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, non-canon canon is, is the well. Wait, <laughs> like, hang on. So we love non-canon characters. Like what? Um, Which ones? What? As in, like Kiari Mundi, who wasn't alive? <laughs> like, what, what he, well, he's a canon character. I'm so confused. What, what to make of that? Is uh, I, lo I love me some non-canon characters, but I also well, she did mention Mara Jade at the start of the video. Well, so, it's not that. I mean, it's the, she clearly has no idea what the controversy with Kiari Mundi is, despite apparently being very familiar with the uh, legends or EU, whatever you want to call it, non-canon at this point. So why wouldn't she be at least more familiar with uh, his role in the story as it was yeah. before she changed it herself? But it's how quick they're willing to yeah. brush it off. Like, she doesn't even know what the controversy really is about, but she's like, oh, whatever. Like, that's her attitude. You can see it from the smirk. I'm not sure. Just, there's a lot of tells there. Yeah. I'm just, know. I'm trying to imagine the writer's room. Were they to actually bring on somebody as a consultant like Rian and how overworked and frustrated he would be like being surrounded by inept writers who are suggesting like what if this happened and he's like fuck no no you can't do that because this and this 
to the point where he just ends up killing himself one day. So I can't <laughs> fucking do this, dude. Gotta love, gotta love them non-canon characters. Gotta, we had to non-canonize all of it, you know? We love them so much. <laughs> it's the only option we had. Yeah, like the Palpatine yeah, thing. I yet. am the canon. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. The canon is, is the best kind of canon. <laughs> For like half of the characters I love, what I can't you, what's the joke? anymore. They're just, they're gone. They're gone. They what? Well, I, don't, I don't understand <laughs> what the I don't right, even so funny, why would they you be do... laughing like yeah my favorite yeah. characters they don't exist in like the mainline <laughs> continuity anymore they used to be good but we got rid of them this is really gross <laughs> oh canon is just like this weirdly arbitrary label for no reason whatever I, don't, I just I suppose I just don't what's funny about it the, the things that you like aren't part of the timeline anymore I don't know if I, I got the impression maybe that they're laughing because they don't know how to feel about any of this yeah, it uh, all feels very yeah, fake and it, it, it's, it's weird, isn't it? Like, <laughs> we're having fun. <laughs> They're not canon anymore. <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> like, yeah. They like, even... <laughs> They're addressing something they don't really have a, a, a position on. Like, they haven't really thought through this, and they're just kind of just flip-flopping through it. It's a weird conversation. And then Jaina, they're gone. <laughs> Mara Jade's oh, gone. <laughs> my, 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 my twins. But speaking of twins, great. Twins are always a theme in Star Wars, which I do think is very cool that the show is like, yep, it's everywhere. Twins are just in Star Wars. <laughs> Why is that good? Well, so twins before are... before we go there, twins in Star Wars, can you guys go ahead and name the many twins of Star Wars? Well, there's the... <laughs> uh, uh, do we count the dyad in the forest? Does that count? <laughs> I don't count that. <laughs> like, so the, no? The, All right. That's some bullshit that they made up in the third movie. What? So Luke uh, and Leia. Yeah, the forest is nonsense. It's Luke and mm -hmm. Leia and, and... And then who's <laughs> next? Yeah, who who next? Well, obviously there's Luke. She, like she said, that's a, that's a Star Wars staple, the twins. You know, it's in everything. Yeah, there's... um Oh, the Tatooine has twin sons, right? <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> so that we got the Luke and Leia, in. the yeah. twin sons. Two, yeah, balls of fusion in the sky. That's that's pretty cool. Okay, if we're doing sons, we've got um, like, Keanu Moody like has twin counts. brains, right? Oh wait, would you guys, if you had two brains, um, would you want them stacked like vertically, like he does, or horizontally? Horizontally, <laughs> otherwise the top one would overheat. <laughs> really? <laughs> With the middle the overheat, way. the top one has more. Uh, <laughs> wait, you, well, now we've got the three brains. I thought we only had wait, two. Wait, 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 wait. Why? Why? It's a brain well, no, sandwich. We're not, no, we're not. We're not passing through it. Why would the top one overheat? What do you I'm mean? Because it's closer well, to well, the because... sun. <laughs> well, no, we're not brains. The twin <laughs> sun. Yeah, brains. Why would the Why would well, the top you, brain as overheat? Humans, you lose most of your heat through your, the top of your head, which is why your hair yeah, to keep the, the heat in. But the one and brain so, that we have doesn't oh, overheat. So why would? What? <laughs> we, so the one brain that we already have, arguably some of us don't have any, like myself. Well, yeah, but now you're doubling the amount of heat in the brain. You'd have to Wait, come so, up with, but you'd you said come up with like head. sideways yeah, why the, would the, the middle brain to lose a lot of heat. Don't you mean the lower one would overheat more likely, or? Yeah. Because it well, would, assuming... it would, the heat would go out the top of the head, right? It would, you would lose heat out the top of your head, so the top brain yeah, would the be able to go. would be cooler, uh, naturally. Like, you'd need, like, right? Adam on his head to, like, be cone-shaped, so I would, like, <laughs> we can, we can all agree our heads are heads are up with two brains. First off, so we, are, wondering. we already have cone-headed people that we could use as an analogy, you know, but but I, I yeah, I, I guess I just don't quite follow the, the top one went overheat, right? <laughs> I, I just don't. like that that was the first <laughs> issue you highlighted with the whole thing. <laughs> You just yeah. you seem pretty sure, like you'd already thought this through. So I was just yeah, curious. yeah. What yeah. But that, that's why you're. That's why your brain is there. It's it's literally just like, your brain would be the most sensitive thing to temperature. No, oh. that's not true. What about our testicles? Right, <laughs> they're specifically within well, you know, another organ to regulate your temperature. It's what's within them, which is very sensitive to temperature. No, 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 no. The 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 the, the, the sack of flesh is there to regulate the temperature of them. They're very sensitive. Yeah, but of the content production, not the very... test, not the testicles per se. Maybe the answer is in the EU. <laughs> Welcome to the Star Wars <laughs> <laughs> Hey, this is a more interesting conversation than anything about, about the Acolyte, to be honest. That's what I think is why everyone sees, though. Well, because yeah, so, Jakob, right? Doesn't he where, have his stacked horizontally? Or does he just have at? one massive brain? 
Ryan probably knows the answer. Like, yeah, Ryan Coyote knows. Mundi's brain. Which, which of which Coyote Mundi's it? brains overheats the most when he thinks really <laughs> tough about also, things? Also, testicles horizontal. Well, aren't well? Just to be clear, aren't aren't they? I, before I before I make myself sound like a freak here, aren't aren't they horizontal? I well, think that's what he's saying, right? Well, yeah, exactly. They're horizontal, and there is there is a sort sort of verticality, and, and literally the biological explanation I was given in school is so they don't bang together when you run. <laughs> so, <laughs> is it so that when the the, the space becomes less, the they're e e e easier to slide above and below as opposed to uh, crushing? I guess I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I can believe that. That's what that's were we just, talking yeah. about? <laughs> I, I don't remember. <laughs> Twin <laughs> we're conversation about... between two Star Wars fans. Talking about brains, twins. You can see what's happening to ours as we well, watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Video. How many twin? How many twins are there in Star Wars? It's so, Luke and Leia, twin sons. Luke and Leia, twin sons, twin brains. Um, it feels weird to say it's a definitive staple of Star Wars, especially when looking solely at the uh, pri prime six movies, even the full nine, if you want to do it that way. Add the Solo movie. Add the Rogue One movie. The idea that like twins are always ever present as a force, like no. Yeah, I don't agree with that at all. But uh, there's probably going to be a hell of a lot more in the extended stuff. Uh, well, it, Luke and Leia being twins is so fundamental, they count as ten twins or something. Uh, <laughs> Wait, was, is she referring at. to a lot of twins that they decanonized? Were there a lot of twins that they decanonized? Well, but that's that's what the I was only saying. thing it could possibly be, like EU stuff that she's referencing. I still think it would be weird to say it's a definitive Star Wars table when the prime mainline content has one set of twins. Well, and also just that the majority of characters aren't. Most of them aren't. Allegedly. So. Well, like, she, like this Bruce said, she mentioned Mara Jade, so I'll give her the benefit of the doubt of potentially referencing EU characters. But explain! Like, I, I wish they would stop giggling and actually explain what the hell they're talking about. Let them giggle. They're having fun. <laughs> Dude, just in Star Wars. <laughs> when you guys were, or, like, <laughs> orchestrating May and Osha in the beginning and trying to navigate exactly how those two characters would function as twins and also like represent kind of the light and the dark as the other twins have done in the past kind of Luke and Luke Leia, and Leia? what the twin what? rule but okay oh so just mentioned the, the clones that's like infinite twins yeah I was gonna ask <laughs> that oh, if you reference yeah. anything like that as a concept like the clones they're not technically I, I, twins, I, doubt, I doubt it yeah, yeah. All my brothers I just wanted to bring it up like but this thing she says here about how like Luke and Leia representing what what'd she say like Luke and Leia representing the dark side and the light side? What's going on there? Let's roll it back. Also like represent kind of the light and the dark as the other twins have done in the past, kind of Luke and Leia uh, exception to the twin rule. Uh, I'm sorry. What the fuck are you uh, talking uh, about, lady? Okay. Wait, did she say that Luke and Leia are the exception when they're the core twins that Star Wars is built upon? <laughs> like it's applicable to the but twins the other except twins, those. I but guess but the other she must be about, speaking like, about uh, trying to find EU. a connection that doesn't really exist, though, in the the whole idea, you know? Because like you, Luke and Leia, they're the main ones. They're the the ones that if you ask most the ones, people, yeah. they would be the ones that people talk about. And it's like, no, they're both good guys. So, you know. But how did you guys kind of navigate how that would all work? Because they're not exactly here's the light and here's the dark. They both kind of have that gray area. Um, no. Well, May is evil. Nah. May is crazy. Yeah. She said she would kill her. May is crazy. <laughs> May is a crazy, evil psycho person. She's a murderer. And a Osha, is, Osha doesn't have much conviction, I guess, in her like Jedi beliefs. But yeah, she May, just blows with the wind. Uh, oh, she's the most flip floppity <laughs> character I've seen in a long time, man. They, they, she doesn't know what she's doing. Wait, which one? <laughs> um, the, uh, May. Like, actually, no. You know what? Both of them actually. <laughs> like, well, yeah. I mean, Osha oh, his dong, and then she's totally yeah. cool with like you know all our people. After being episode killed. six, Osha is already catching up to May in terms of flip floppity. Yeah, that's why yeah. I caught myself. She has both to be evil, them. right? Because she's like, well, this guy murdered all of my friends, but he's hot enough that I'll just. But he is hot. hot. That's, that's <laughs> the evil. She's a complete oh, fucking moron. That's the only answer. Like, well, I can't believe you killed Yord. You could like, I can't believe that actually worked. Yord isn't... literally was doing his job. Can we get justice you for Yord, folks? Yord. It is like Yord literally. That would have won me over we've seen it before it's made me laugh. it happened it's you a consistency in star wars universe when someone kills someone you care about if they take the shirt off in front of you or if they get naked <laughs> that's like double Wait, that's what i'm saying i can't believe they attractive attractive the day. so explicit like han i, I messaged you about this Mahler. ray should have been pissed about han solo's death but Ooh, kylo took his shirt I off so Mahler, 
you know, because he likes <laughs> me, <laughs> Rags. Because <laughs> I was in shock that like how we how is PLJ the inspiration? I can't believe I we got to the, so I messaged we've... Mom. <laughs> I needed like <laughs> Miss Stalin. Mom, they, they killed Yord. They killed <laughs> Yord. How is PLJ <laughs> the inspiration? It's like, it's like he's working like, no. on Bush theme when he's reading the book. <laughs> He's like, sir, oh and, sir, they've killed Yord. So I was, Yord, he was a, a, a moron. He was cringe, but he was chewing his job. He was trying to do the right thing. I liked so Yord. Yord snapped neck. I liked Yord no, like the most the right before his neck got snapped. I was like, this guy's, oh, well. <laughs> I guess now, now, now who do we have reaction. left? We have fucking Mog. <laughs> 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 Mog the Beaver Man. Don't you shit talk Mog, damn it. Angry no, green. Mog isn't the Beaver Man. That's Brazil. Oh my god. No, oh yeah, yeah, no, no. He's the fucking rodent, man. He Mog looks like a beaver, some type of rodent of some kind. I I he's there just to be shit on by the green lady, which I don't appreciate. Oh yeah. Well, I'll have you know that we have grand expectations for Mog. I would even go as far as saying that we hope he gets his own TV show. But I've seen speculation as Star Wars fans tend to do, and you know, we can all get excited. What if he's young <laughs> Palpatine? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, you... <laughs> Holy shit, now that I'm thinking about it, it could be... <laughs> People were saying that's impossible up. for many reasons, and it's like, yeah, that but what matter. if? <laughs> that doesn't that matter! That doesn't matter at all! It doesn't matter whatsoever, we got some coaches! Yeah, he's in this show! <laughs> yeah, he's on the table! Born. Luke Skywalker could pop up! <laughs> any second! Pop from could... behind a pillar! <laughs> well, yeah, with like, the will between that? worlds, there's nothing they can't do. Yeah. Mog. Did you know that Mog, if you rearrange the letters, it actually does spell Emperor Palpatine. Oh my god. It's crazy. <laughs> it's the Docs of Who defense. theory right now. <laughs> Palpa oh Mog. God. You know what? I hope he's Palpatine. They... That will make me so happy. Please. Please make <laughs> Palpatine. I'm begging you. They named him Mog. <laughs> they didn't like him. <laughs> There's no way. The They're haircut. like you. You look, yeah. Your hair and your face and your accent and the way you talk. You just, you're just such a goofball. We're calling you Mog. On the note, and of... even the lady when she saw the bodies, she looked at them and looked down and looked at. She was like pissed at them for like dying. Like, ugh, fucking losers. Like no remorse whatsoever. It was such an awkward scene to watch. And like, I, like I said earlier, comparing that to Order sixty six, where you actually get to feel the weight of these Jedi's dying. Jedi dying should mean something, and they just brushed right nah. past it. It's crazy. Uh, on the note of the shifting motivations and uh, values of May and Osha, by the way, I also saw this. Like, man, you just don't have to do uh, any work, uh, do you? Uh, me, me, oh and Mark God. were watching this episode, and we both were like, "Are they gonna kiss? Are they gonna? Are they gonna kiss? Like, anything could happen right now." She on this show, they could the kiss, smile they could have a conversation, they could fight. <laughs> like, I'm just anything could happen in a show. This shit, like, I couldn't believe what I was witnessing. Don't have to earn any of it. Just have no. events occur, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then. The relationship she had with Jackie was the proof of that. It was like <sighs> we don't need to develop it. Just whatever we need to happen off yeah, screen, happen off screen. Fuck barely it. got Go over the shock that they apparently had built that up uh, to have this is now a thing. You're like, okay, you want to slow down there? The thing we talked these. about, where uh, hyperactive pacing uh, sprinkled into the slowest fucking show you've ever seen. That's exactly, mm. that's so true. And it's definitely not a new trope to mm. have. Um, Very true. All know, that she said was true. Uh, the good bad enough. twin and the good twin. Like the light. It's so, yeah, it's almost <laughs> it's like. It's literally trust. made fun of as it's one actually, of the it's, oldest, it's like stupidest a, things a writer can do. Yeah. It's seriously, it, it actually is something that I find hard to move past with this show that the idea, the actual pitch for the show is what if there's a good twin and an evil twin? I can't believe that. The Jedi are good. The Jedi are it's bad. It's just like in real like, life. This is, this is, you know? This is the people wrote that quote, right? Thought the reason it's made fun of is people. because of how much work you don't have to fucking do to say, turns out, ages ago, another person was born at the exact same time as you that looks exactly like you, who's been doing all the things that people thought you were doing, and they're evil. You're like, it's wow. So weak. Yeah. They got Ooh. bangs and a leather jacket, and they went a different way. <laughs> yeah. Cut from the same cloth, but took different paths in them. <laughs> Cut from the same hair. It's a, it's like a phenomenon. It's not an impossibility. It's just like, wow, that's cringe. And you, and you sit there like, oh yeah, well, I think I nailed it. <laughs> I, I, did it better than you ever. Can do it. Like, 
you can do a lot of things with with twins. Like one of my favorite movie payoffs of all time, like you know, involves it. But it's just you. Well, we don't, don't have to. We don't have like to go far. Nonsense, House of know? the Dragon had twins. Yeah, yeah, just right there, right there. I'm, why am I blanking on that one? That's such a way better execution of actually having a meaningful scene with those two guys. And and they yeah, built it's it up like that was something. Season. Like I don't. I think they could have done it way better, but like they did something. They There's did a, a thing. Weird. It made me feel something. There's a weird the amount component. of parallels that occur sometimes with the shows coming out at the same time, and that was one of the big ones. At the same time, you had the good and evil twin uh, switching positions to trick people and shit. But then when the next episodes came out, you had both House of the Dragon and the Acolyte having a scene where one of the characters is completely naked in front of another one to essentially show there's nothing to hide, but for different contexts and different reasons. Yeah, so like, yeah that's a good point. It's so weird that that happened in both of you know what I mean? It's like there's no reason no, for there's, that. There's, there's another so one actually. Um, you just gotta uh, show your bro your cock, you know. Sometimes bro your you cock. Just gotta, <laughs> the bed you scene. Just gotta throw it out there, you know. The bed scene in Rings of Power, where the girl goes in and finds a plant here, that was on part, and then the bed scene. The wait, man. the bed scene. Which scene are the, we, which the bed scene? scene where she goes, <laughs> there were the scene multiple goes, bed scenes in Rings of Power. I'll have you. The know. scene where she goes into the old man's bed, and it's similar to Allison going into wait, the no bedroom. Chair. She's getting <laughs> <into> the bed. <laughs> bedroom. <laughs> So, <laughs> thank you. The scene where they were on the bed, because I know like Hal Brand was in a bed a couple times, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. and we had but the the old crazy the king. <laughs> no, different version. He was in he was in the bed like his whole life or whatever. <laughs> Getting misinformation from a dying king happened in Rings of Power and happened in House of the Dragon. They just did it way uh, better in one show. Tar Palantir was his name, right? I think so. The girl with the big tits—that's all I remember. Like, no, that was that's the different. That's. That's a different. Wait, we're talking. About I think there might be more than one things. of those. We're talking about the old crazy <laughs> king from it's Numenor. Still door is little <laughs> Numenor. <laughs> Nor. <laughs> you know, I hope they label Mordor we see it in season two. Mordor. Yeah. No, they need to call it Unknown Planet. <laughs> so they call it. <laughs> you see, a lot of people in our chat when we got to that part was saying, "No, that's the name of the planet. It's called Unknown Planet." <laughs> Unknown. <laughs> so, woo. Anyway, take it away, Leslie. Light twin and the dark twin, and then they switch places, and then they switch back. Like, that's a pretty... That's her realizing how shit that is, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, oh yeah, damn, everyone's oh, done well, that. That's pretty... That's fucking lame, actually. <laughs> wow, what am I doing? Now that I said it out loud. Wow. Hmm. I got paid for this? <laughs> We're watching Realizing Live. Like, that's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> places, and then they switch back. Like, that's a pretty... There's the moment. <laughs> I would say reliable way of telling a thematic story. Reliable. Story. It's not reliable. No, it's not. it's reliably it. made fun of by everyone. It's so, <laughs> it's so reliably made fun of that the Simpsons made fun of it back in the nineties. Yes. Yeah. It's a really Dude, they did a really good job too. The episode's great. I did. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, there, there, Hugo. I understand. <laughs> All those years up in here. Eating fish. Well, I bet you've never even looked in the mirror, have you? Here. Yeah. <laughs> Punches him out. It's fucking great. <laughs> Utilizing uh, twin characters. Um, but I will say, to answer your question, so much of that was a mandala. Like, as a writer, you know why you're doing something thematically. You can definitely justify. A like, all she said so far is. Twins, one good, one evil, and that's great for the theme. And Amanda helped. What? I'm still what? waiting for her yeah. to get to that point. Especially a choice like that one. You can also justify it um, character-wise, narratively-wise, personally, you know, feeling bifurcated as a person, as a human, as a woman. Like, mm -hmm. you can make... A person, a human, and a woman. What is a bifurcated genders? woman? I don't know. Sounds like a cyborg. <laughs> oh, like, never <laughs> have it. Just they expect us to do the heavy lifting, and we have to think and like piece it all together, write their story for them. The thematic element describes anything that's divided into mm. into two branches or forks. Oh, all right. Uh, well, yeah, it's like well, life journey. Split into, I'm, I'm, split I'm into two forks. That sounds like women get to choose a subclass. Sweet. Tetricated. Ooh, words. Ooh. <laughs> all of those choices but somebody has to actually do it <laughs> and i felt like a mandala when she understood her name the, is amadala the breadth of what she would be <laughs> doing dug, you know dug so deep into he's not a, she's not being impressive uh <laughs> no, no. 
Um, terrible. She's, she's, she's been a little bit distracting in terms of like eat some really bad delivery. Yeah, I don't want to be hyperbolic. I'm not going to call it terrible. She's she's low. She's though. firmly in bad. I yeah. think. I think the fact that she's had two opportunities, two different performances, and both of them are bland completely. Like I, I, I think I, you have two different flavors to try. That's why I think she might be pretty terrible. You yeah, if she pulled off one really well and the other one bad, it's like, well, you know, maybe that's yeah. just you know that that that, that happens, I guess. You know, two obviously shit characters. Should, like that's I think I mean, she needs I, to be judged harshly I think, for that. I think what's I remember that a lot of the you know like the review aggregate summaries were saying that she was great, and I presume that it was like, oh, well, is it is it actually just because she's playing two characters but you know like it's a flat performance both yeah. both ways especially I when did... you put him up against soul you know it's like oh damn sucks for you you know being compared to somebody who's quite good at their craft i immediately think of the nutty professor scene where eddie murphy is pretty much playing his entire family having an argument like he's playing mm -hmm. like most of the people at the table it's incredible i love that scene and then you i'm supposed to be impressed with this shit well, I mean, some of the, again, the line deliveries, you lie. It's like, oh, yeah, shit. That, oh, you want to try those, that those get into the realm of terrible for me. But when she's doing the, um, you know, let's go this way, I'm like, mm. mostly <laughs> bland. Yeah. Mostly bland. Yeah, most, most I, of the I think, time, to throw a bone, I think when she got, she tried to help the guy and then he just left her and then she screamed, she sold that moment of like being in fear, of like not just being in fear, like being afraid, but motherfucker just screwed me over completely like she captured that moment oh like everything you're talking about on the prison ship yeah 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 that one moment was okay high yeah, praise coming from uh, dark hour over here dark hour i'm sorry <laughs> i was distracted by thinking <laughs> it happens sometimes so mean they're old early on deciding their walk no, that there's anything wrong with Dark Hour. <laughs> no, he's a fine. He's he's a fine gentleman. Rags his brains melting. That's Message is smaller and everything. <laughs> he does. I need to get back to him on what movie I'm going to cover with him. Like early on, deciding, you know, what their sort of animal familiar might be if they had one. You know, what? deciding um, who was born first, or like who was a born spirit first. animal or something. How do we get to this? I don't know. But, uh, I'm actually a little lost. Characters. It was like, oh yeah, what's the? Well, it's like what's her name said that, that she compared them to the yin and the yang, which I, which is <laughs> because <laughs> like, I know okay. that symbol. Well, it's just oh, it's it's is it is it actually just because it's like a dualistic symbol? Is that it? Probably two things. We're talking about twins. <laughs> <laughs> about twins. How'd we get to like spirit? Yin and animals? yang. That's like two things. Yeah. <laughs> the twins are kind of like two things, too. So really, you've, it's it's like the same two you've things. You've developed that way further than she would, okay? Like, you've, you've, come on now. <laughs> I can count to two. Second. Um, just going into a bunch of really granular things that uh, that I'm, I was very impressed by, and I don't think the whole... Sorry, I... I'm, this is a I'm, Biden I'm, interview. So, What's happening? It's so, <laughs> this is so, horrible. like, empty. Yeah, I know. There's she's nothing being said. She's really struggling to get out. Like when she finally figures out what word she's going to use, you you sort of go, oh, that wasn't much. She's taking a long time to say nothing. There's never a payoff after all the stuttering, and it's kind of like, yeah, this is frustrating to listen to. She's not saying a damn thing. Well, she's Again, like that in a lot of her interviews. In the interview where he's like, "This is the gayest Star Wars ever," she actually starts giving a different answer to the one she gives, um, and she she goes, well, why, why would that be an issue? And it's only when a Mandler turns to her and goes, what, you have a problem with that? Does she go, I'm into it? So I, I think that um, she's very easily led with answers and probably on her own doesn't really know what the resp like, right response is. She's constantly thinking about how she's coming across rather than yes. actually telling us how she feels. Which like, I suppose is, is part of the problem with these interviews is that the reality is that it's kind of baked into their format that there can't be like too much said. Because they probably have an attitude of well, you can't you can't like spoil what happens in the story, so that mm -hmm. limits the things that you can say. It's got to be positive. You can't like it's it's rare that you're gonna have in an interview. Yeah, no, there was this thing that we were working on that we 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 spent like a long time figuring it out, and like even in the final you know in the final version of the script, like this plot point, like I don't know, I'm feeling a bit iffy on it. You know, like that's not the kind of thing that they're mm -hmm. gonna be saying in an interview like this. It has to be all positive, fun times. That's the reason why so many of the interviews just have like the same questions being answered over and over and over again. Yeah. What's it like to write for Star Wars? 
But well, they know this stuff. Uh, yeah. How excited were you to learn that you're writing for Star Wars? Like, I, yeah, I, that's, I you're so right. that's most of the questions. Uh, okay. Just kind of like a waste of time. I don't really... The only time that any of these interviews are relevant is when there's a particular like clip that goes around that's either something that people find really funny or they say something really embarrassing. Yeah, when, you, um, when it, we catch them slipping with contradictions, like the guy um, from The Boys, the whole thing with Starlight in season one, like everybody remembers that. If this is where it's gone to now, like you well, trap yourself, what, like you know, that guy's completely it's, trapped. I guess it's just weird to me that there's like a whole industry and a big part of. You know, it's like part of the thing that actors and directors and stuff like essentially agree to when they participate in the show is not just making the show, but going on these press tours. And it's like so much of it just seems like it's it's like you've got a whole industry built around essentially maybe there'll be a few clips that people find interesting. I don't mm. know. Do people often sit do, down? Do people watch, watch these? these no. <laughs> well, that's what well, it, it's so, it is what we're doing right now. Well, yeah, I, I, I find yeah. this absolutely fascinating. Sometimes, most of the time, it is vacuous, but sometimes. Yeah. You'll get a sense of, oh my god, this is this is the person behind it. It makes complete sense. Mm -hmm. It's all coming together. Yeah, it yeah. all feels. It makes yeah. Ryan Johnson was an example of that. The guy from the boys. Everything that you said, even when you were describing the scene with Huey, I was like, this would be nonsense if it wasn't the boys. Like that, I can see this happening in that show. And then when you hear the thought process of the guy who made it, it's just, it all connects. I think Fringy, what you were talking about earlier about like you know when. Uh, people the crew are discussing the show on a video or whatever like they are under a bunch of restrictions like you can't spoil this you can't spoil that but mm -hmm. like to me it's with this video it's abundantly clear overall that she hasn't thought about this project nearly enough as she should have yeah and like when what rag was saying about like the a yin and yang that's two things and that's sort of like the characters they're two like that i that i think that is actually about the level of thought that they put in. i wouldn't be surprised i, I legit mean, think that a bit like uh like an you know you think an iceberg right good old good old like i i'm i'm sure this will connect some way hemingway's yeah. like iceberg theory of writing that you don't need to explain if you write it well enough, like a lot of a lot of stuff will just be implied through the prose and through the dialogue that you know that that underlies what people see, so that people can like gather that depth from the story. It, applying it, I suppose, to somebody talking about their own story, if like this is the best that they can muster in terms of describing their own story, mm -hmm. it doesn't bode well for that story. Because if you really, 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 really were into it, even with a level of restriction on the things that you could say, it would just be apparent in the things that you talk about that you really yeah. had a clear idea of what it was that you were making. Um, you'd have answers to questions. You, you, you'd just be able to do it because you're just so into the work. I exactly, want to add to yeah. that. I want to add to that, Fringy, by saying the creator of 12 Angry Men, which is a way simpler movie than the Acolyte TV show, the story that's being told, don't you think whoever created that would have so much more to say about what's in oh, the yeah. story and why they created it? Like, there'd yeah, be I mean, so course. much more. I'd, I'd actually be interested in hearing the thought process because it's one of the best character studies ever in terms of like really seeing that the dynamic of the room. Compare that to this girl who's just desperately trying to you know, make it sound substantive off the top of her head has no idea what she's talking about and clearly doesn't care it's 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 how much she doesn't care is what's really off-putting about this for me like how are you not like uh, this is your job man uh, why are these people yeah. in charge it's constantly frustrating uh, I, and i know what you mean about like the the simplicity of uh 12 angry men because like it's hmm. just a bunch of guys in a room but i think a movie yeah, like so that is more. really difficult to write because like you've got 12 people all dynamically you know listening to each other and thinking of their own things and they all have their own motivations and every single line of dialogue is going to influence everybody in the room's thinking at the same time and you've got to consider yeah, all of those points of view like that's i think it should be like one of those i, I had a, a high school teacher sit us down and made us watch it and i was the first person to complain about what the hell is this old shit no way and after like five minutes of it <laughs> i was in love i loved i was like amazed i went right home and i watched it with my sister like again and um, it's just one of those movies that I think almost everyone should see at some point just to understand, like, you know, human dynamics and critical thinking and, like, perspectives. And just so much to learn and gain from it. Compare that to the Acolyte, where this lady is talking about, like, spirit animals and nonsense and the twins and making shit up. It's, yeah, I mean, not yeah. only in terms of writing, but... Logs is a uh, beaver, as we... As we... <laughs> as we uh, he's know, Palpatine, created. excuse you. He's Palpatine. Mm -hmm. Young Palps, young Sheev. You can be a beaver and be Palpatine at the same time. That's okay. There's no contradiction there. 
<laughs> Palpatine during his twink years. Like, holy shit, man. This is <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> disgusting. They will make that show if you allow them to. <laughs> yes, yeah. they will. That, I'm, I was very impressed by it. I don't think the whole, again, the whole theme wouldn't work if, if her performance wasn't how great as it is. Oh, yeah. well, that explains it. All right. Like, I, yeah, by that logic, if the performance is bad, the theme will fail. So, well. Yep. <laughs> there's, there's she just so many says that. To that, that you I should find be able funny. to just say these things. It's that, it's but it's fair. also just saying that with a straight face. Like, yeah, the performance has been great. Come on. It's not been. I think something it's... that really strikes me, we've talked about it many times, is uh, how many TV shows we've watched, House of the Dragon being uh, one of them, where it... It gives actors opportunities, and that as a writer, you're gonna want to try and generate those, you know, high stakes, high emotional moments. So it actually gives them something to fucking bite into. Uh, what Amanda has had to do is several small seconds of loudness. Yeah, That's she just yells. Pretty much. It's she not very um, yell and not very well. Com well, compare that to the opportunity they've clearly already missed, right? So if someone said, they've definitely discussed their ideology, they did that in episode six, and you should be like, no, they didn't. You had him giving his basic, like, almost surface-level take of his position, which is, no, nah, Jedi don't want me to exist, so I have a right to kill them. That's his big opening gambit to this whole conversation, and she does nothing about it. When you could have had her say, that's horseshit. You basically just justified you can go around killing everybody, and you were the one that attacked them twice. You actually did it yourself, but you also did it with uh, you sending your little acolyte to go kill people. She knows all of that, and then he can Don't have you. to he can have to defend himself a bit more deep and go further and they further. They never elaborate. They never no, they, fucking they, they, elaborate. That's so frustrating. No like, one everything about the show challenges them on anything in a meaningful way, and they never have to answer. Yeah, we want like tier one thing. to two to three to four, like digging yeah. really far in, and maybe even having him have to be like, fuck, okay, yeah, you're right there, but... And we get that in Health of the Dragon well, so often, yeah. like the auto high tire heist, you know? The, the oh, yeah. Speaking I of get, softball uh, interviews, I mean, they do it in the show, too. <laughs> the impression I get from the scene where she's like, oh, you killed Yord, and then he says, he arrested you for something you didn't do so doing his job right? non sequitur then, uh, <laughs> yeah, doing, like, doing his goddamn job is this and then the response is you killed Jackie and it's like yeah you know what you would have been like her Padawan so that would have been you think that was going anywhere <laughs> he's just like where the fuck was that he's going like, you're thinking of a, a reason I'm, I'm, yeah, it's like it's I'm not like you guys like, are going to live happily ever after it's like what kind of response is the impression, that yeah. the impression you get is that she's sitting off in the side nodding going yes these are great replies like this is like really think about the dynamic between the Jedi and the Sith, why not? Dude, there's one tier above thing. Be... Go ahead, Jesper. None of this was meant to be in the episode in the first place. Like, after that fight scene, he was not meant to be in the rest of the series. But she said that when he, they got him into the outfit and they saw, like, his muscles and stuff, suddenly we realized the entire fan base would rebel if we didn't put him in more of the show. So she literally says she had to rewrite the episodes to oh. fit him in. Oh, so she had no idea. Like, there was no plan for it. What was originally going to happen to him? After <laughs> nothing, that even more nothing. Did Marsh <laughs> she said kill him? That, that <laughs> fight was meant to set him up for a season two arc. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Well, I, I don't mean, even know what to say about that. Right. Like, that's pretty. That, I guess that's what they were doing this show. But um, oh, and I so will give him his. To, okay, now I'm starting. It's all starting. So the solution to the problem is all right, let's have her put the light on his back so we can get him out of here. <laughs> we'll bring it back. Yeah, it's almost, yeah, this free. Is it's almost as genius as there was an evil twin the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I, a lot Very of people were talking about the choreography and like moments of it being decent and like, but then being ruined obviously by the writing and the plot armor for Jackie. I think the one thing I was really most impressed by was Smilo himself, his movements specifically, his athletic ability was clear like he wasn't like like ahsoka the le le lethargic jedi um fight against anakin is just embarrassing but this guy can move he actually had a fighting style that like like it, if you saw him um you see all the average jedi in like a silhouette of them you'd have no idea who's who smilo you can actually tell there's a fighting style there which i appreciate and that's one of the things we're always lacking in these series like everyone just fights the same and for a brief moment i did i did appreciate that but then they ruined him within the same episode um which just sucks it's just they just can't get any characters right even the superficially cool ones well and it really mm -hmm. isn't like it makes the you know the the witch the third episode with the witches with destiny right destiny yeah 
I was like, I was like, uh-huh. no, you should have written that down before the interview. Like, <laughs> Dude, it would have been so funny if she said, Destiny, is that the name of the episode? Then the creator's like, um, <laughs> we'll go with that. Yeah. So that sounds good. That you were typing right. like IMDb. Like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> episode names that I had. But I love in Destiny where it is you you that's where you see their differences the most because it's like when you see them and they're older they're kind of like more comfortable in themselves and they're like they they're like oh my sister is actually alive that's crazy and we don't what the fuck see are you the, talking like, about <laughs> okay so <laughs> i'm gonna do my best to, I, the, the thing is i want to preface this with i'm going to disagree with this point entirely but i think her point is you see the differences between the twins more overtly when they're children than when they're adults, because as adults, they're both like, and she just said, oh my god, my sister's still alive. As if that accounts for the fact that one of them is this wholesome engineer who's just trying to make ends meet while the other one is a Mech psycho neck, assassin. Please. I don't understand. I would appreciate it if you use their made-up terms. <laughs> Mech neck. We, we use their made-up terms a lot. I... <laughs> but, um... Yeah. Yeah, she's not addressing the differences between Star Wars two characters. Fans. Really well, no. Um, I, I mean, I might have to repeat my rags. What, what point did I just make? Just to check if you're even listening to me. You were making the point that, uh, and you said you're gonna. You prefaced it with. I'm just trying to start at the beginning. You prefaced it with. You're going to disagree with it, and then you said that. Sorry, let me think here. You <laughs> said it was strange that they were. Uh, when she learned that she had a sister, that it was strange that they would be so different in... Hmm. Okay, so I'll give it a shot. <laughs> so the point that you were making is that the argument was being made that they were, like, more distinctive when they were younger, and that the mm -hmm. argument for why it was starting to become more blurred when they were older was to do with the fact, like, just simply that, oh, well, uh, you know... My sister is alive, and that that was meant to apparently be like enough yeah, of a reason to explain. My their, point of disagreement is like, one of them is a psycho assassin, the other one is a chill it's just, mech. It's neck. just a little. Yeah, they're not addressing that mechanic. the difference between the two characters, which is just weird. So I think it's, it it's like nuts to show. say their their differences are clear with their children, but not with their adults. Like what? She sounds like she's describing the marketing rather than the show itself. Like, did you watch the episode where one is a nutcase saying, fight me, you well, fucking, I, I you think, know? Because like, really of anything, you'd expect them to drift apart further and further as their lives went in totally different directions. I suppose the yeah. thing is, like, I don't, it, it, it seems to be that that seems to pass as a good enough explanation for why either of them could be having doubt about their uh, ideology, which feels like it invites a lot of Whatever. questions because it was, it was seriously like, after episode four, I was baffled by it, that essentially May's rationale was, well, Osha's alive, so like, I don't care about doing any of this acolyte stuff anymore. So the question, so, you know, the, the answer to who is this person is, oh, well, she didn't really, she didn't have an ideological opposition of the Jedi for the thing that they did, that she believes that they did. Um, she just wanted it's revenge. It to hinge entirely one, on her sister being alive. For one person out of all of them. So, like, no, I guess she doesn't hold it against the Jedi for everybody else. Everyone else, yeah. That also died. So all of that is just, like, bizarre. That's not, yeah. that's not how people work. It's impossible to understand her character after that one scene of, like, what do you really want now? And I feel like it's been a frustrating pattern throughout the show of not exploring people's perspectives. Like, why do you not want to be a witch in the, in the, in the flashback thing? Why do you want to be the Like, is it as simple as you just like the robes and you saw that they had, like, this stick that lights up? Like, explore the little girl's perspectives because it's going to be so important to the rest of the show. And we got nothing. The Jedi yeah, are good. Both the of them are bad. empty. It's just, it's so bad. Like, why do you not want to be a witch? I'm genuinely curious. What did they do? Like, what, what, what have they done? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I would like to get something. We could have got so much more out of that flashback. Yeah, how come their so brainwashing much. hasn't <laughs> taken a hold of you? Yeah. <laughs> they seem pretty, like, yeah, I, I just don't understand, man. That exists when we see them as kids. When you guys were- I guess I will concede uh, the difference between them being Jedi are good, Jedi are evil. Also, I'm gonna <laughs> leave, I'm gonna kill you. It's like, I guess there's a pretty strict differences between the two of them. <laughs> yeah, they, they are definitely <laughs> different, so. We're working on making sure that those twins did have that energy, so it played in. How did you kind of navigate explaining all of this to like these young girls being like, okay, well, eventually, <laughs> you're gonna play these two who one thinks they're dead and it's a whole fight 
but we have to understand it here in order for it to work when we see them reunited. Well, we were so lucky to have um, Leah and Loren who are just both so gifted and and so no. natural. At what? I mean, most people agree the kids were. Uh, <laughs> they sucked ass. No. They were pretty I'm, shit. I, I think you Flanagan has did, spoiled us. All right. I'm not a fan of this idea of like, oh, they're kids, you can't critique their acting. No, but what about the time when oh, we praise can't. kids for their acting? Exactly. Like the, we praise people. Yeah, it doesn't you can't have both. If we could praise kids for great performances, then we can point out the ones that aren't that talented and need to go go back to the drawing board. Those the two moment girls, you put yourself in the public terrible. domain, you, the public can judge yes. you. Yes, you have to well, be ready for criticism. That's I, exactly I totally buy what, into this shit. what Brooks was saying. It means if you if you make it off limits to criticize the acting ability of a child, then that means, what what does it mean when we praise yeah. one? There's no exactly. meaning there. And I you want to be able to praise it. the children that actually pull it off. The, the, the know, blind man are kids. Work. Um, at the same um, time, we all usually concede, like, hey, you know, it's it's usually it's not great. If, if you look at overall results of all kid actors, they're not it's not fantastic. But well, yeah, yeah, it's what I liked about Ahsoka. Is young Ahsoka fought better than adult Ahsoka? Uh, <laughs> she did everything better <laughs> than adult Ahsoka. That's that's such a fantastic point. We're saying that we can't judge kids, but what about what yeah. the kid does better than the seasoned actress? Like, what are you well, talking about? It goes about? to the it, it just it's <laughs> goes into the directing. How are they directed? Because yes. obviously. Her name is Rosario Dawson, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. She was clearly, I think, told to play this boring asshole. Oh, God, yeah. And the mm -hmm. kid, when you see them, you know, the, that contrast there, so much of it yeah. is obviously... I want to be fair like as well. Them she was like, way. I want to say 14-ish, uh, Ariana Greenblatt. She's going to be in the Borderlands movie, and she's in... Uh, she was young someone else recently as well. But point being is that... Uh, these kids were what, like nine, something like that. It's it, you know Very the younger young, you get, yeah. the the more difficult to find actors that can pull it off because it's mm -hmm. uh, the emoting and understanding these things is difficult. Well, the... I just want one quick um one quick example. I just want to throw in a uh, Bly Manor is was adapted from The Innocents. So the two kids that you saw in Bly Manor, I've seen that performance basically like twice now. Both pairs of kids did fantastic. The kids in The Innocent and the kids in Bly Manor. So I just like I'm so against that like. We, once you're in the public domain, like this Bruce said, like you gotta have thick skin and understand criticism is a part of the jig, part of the gig. Just to be clear, they're not in public domain. They're <laughs> well, the you rights to their likeness. You can't, you can't just, can't just buy just their images. <laughs> you can't enslave them um. for your project. <laughs> it's like, well, they're in the public domain. What do you? It's this, they signed up. For this. <laughs> uh, when filming Hill House, the name of the actress who played. Uh, young Nell, I think her name was uh, Violet McGraw, and she was mm -hmm. six. And I remember, what? yeah, if you some of the best stuff in that season is like, holy fuck, she's like, <laughs> it's like actually hard to compete with for a lot of adults. The uh, you know the really uh, cried on cue and uh, just capturing a lot of what she needed to, especially that young, it was crazy. Um, mm -hmm. That's yeah. especially when it's such a mature and deep story too. Yeah. yeah. It takes a real special kid to be able to pull out that type of performance, and it, like, like, and it's something that's that tonally dark, like, to be able to pull it off. Makes really, me really wonder how you up. like explain it to kids. Yeah, to, like the context of what it is you're acting out. How do you like? How do you explain it to them in a way that's like appropriate and digestible for them? Um, I want now that you bring that up. I wonder if there is a specific type of genre where the performances are generally a little bit better. Like um, our horror movies with kids generally better acted or thrillers. What I, I wonder if there's any like, who's got the numbers on that? I'm kind of curious now. Like, what would be like the approach to get the best performance out of a child? I don't know what genre would have the best acting hmm. for kids I, overall. Uh, like, it's a curious question. I'm not sure. I, I legitimately have no clue. Mm -hmm. I'm just and gonna I mean, assume horror is the worst though. The, <laughs> mm. I mean, horror is just automatically going to be asking them to do scenes that are very high on the emotional meter, more than likely. So yeah, yeah, terror and, and you know fear. The the other issue with children in that kind of scenario is it's often used as a shorthand for well, you have to care about this person because they're a child, and so they don't bother to give them a personality or anything or any reason why you should care about that character. You, they just assume the audience will because of their age. Mm -hmm. I can. I can so imagine in Revenge of the dog. Sith, all the younglings in the chamber. George Lucas was going to direct him. He said, 
okay, now uh, Anakin Skywalker is going to come in here with his lightsaber and he's going to he's gonna chop you up into, into, into tiny little pieces, little Jedi pieces. So I want you to act really scared, okay? All right, action, go. <laughs> I can picture that whole thing. He's like got his hands on his waist. He's talking to all the kids. Anakin's going to come chop you up, all right? And then we'll have to see. He's, he's going to brutally murder you in a second with his uh, lightsaber. Yeah, they're, so, like, they're not capturing it. Oh, and he's like, I don't think you understand just, just how horrible Listen, this is. I, <laughs> Listen, if you don't look more scared, I, I will gonna, fucking kill you. He's going to okay? snuff out your little lives. You know. Like a little candle. He's riding on this Revenge of the Sith movie, okay? <laughs> You'll feel no more joy. I don't want people to be making memes about this for decades. Decades, all right, this is a very serious scene. I've taken money from some very dangerous people. This has to work. <laughs> Both so gifted and and so natural, and obviously, like you know, whenever you put a, a kid actor in Star Wars, you your heart worries for them. <laughs> Just like like he's, even as we were doing the auditions, I was like, mm. so she's talking about Anakin's Jubilee. actor, isn't she? Um. It, like so, I we can't talk about them. It's just Rose Tico and Jar Jar Binks. Because we can't talk about them. he's like famously considered tormented by the experience, or whatever. I don't know what the the true uh, ultimate facts are exactly that as to whether or not Star Wars or his participation in it had any effect on the trajectory of his life as it was heading anyway. I remember under... there's, there's quotes from his mother about the nature of his uh, personality before and after Star Wars that implies it wouldn't necessarily have been Star Wars. However. Let's concede for the for the sake of this argument that it is. It's 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 weird for her to be like, you know, you got to find some great child actors when it comes to Star Wars. But uh, you know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we got to be careful. It's like, if that's a true worry of yours, you could have written it so you didn't have to bring in these children. You know I mean? Adding, adding to that, that story, I mean, that police mugshot of him came out years later, but that may or may not have had anything to do. Star that's that's, that's why I wouldn't want to claim any way which way. Is the, there's a lot there's of There's no proof of it. It's just a narrative that's juicy for people to jump on, you know? But like, well, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Dude, yeah, people so. paint the narrative that goes all the way back to him, through to Jar Jar, through to uh, Rose Tico, through through to all the, through to Reva, and the people like us to blame. You just sit like, what the yeah. fuck narrative are you painting? The, the narrative, the appeal of the narrative is is, is everything. It's not about the truth. They, nobody gives no. a fuck about that. It's just whatever narrative is juicy. Let's go. Yeah, uh, his mom said something to do with it being a result of his schizophrenia, not um, and teased in school, not not like Star Wars fans particularly. But at the same time, just you know, watch this again with that in mind. I, I feel like this is really weird from her. Whenever you put a, a kid actor in Star Wars, you your heart worries for them. <laughs> just like, why are you laughing? Like he's, even as we were doing the auditions, I was like, mm, what am I doing to these young women? Uh, Girls, young women is what, yeah, I just say girls, but um, I don't know if you truly believe that, which I don't even know that you do because you were laughing. Uh, why would you mm -hmm. not why did you just, hire them at all? Yeah, why not write it so they didn't they weren't necessary? You can talk about them, they can exist. You didn't need to see them though. It's not like we achieved anything in that freaking episode, we could have assumed 99% of that. Oh, yeah, well, we've already said that the third episode didn't need to exist. Uh, I'm sure the fourth, I say, uh, fifth, say, seventh, I'm guessing, would be the flashback now. That'll probably clear everything up. You know, I everyone can't... is anticipating this flashback. What if there is none? And they just fuck it, that's all we got. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no one is like ruled is considered that option. What if they're just that stupid and we're not gonna get the second half? We have to just piece it together. I can understand being concerned with casting kids like in any major property, like especially of this scale. Like even if you know the script calls for somebody of that age and like maybe they do a really good job, but it's just that knowledge of like this is gonna alter their the trajectory of their life significantly yeah. and i just hope it works out for them you know like, putting them into the public yeah. and having that kind of spotlight on you i don't know man just you know all the stories yeah. if so, you openly admit that you worry for the welfare of these young women and what you're putting them through when the script requires them being in, in so far one episode that's about a half hour long that was completely superfluous in yeah. terms of information then don't have them in yeah, mm -hmm. and especially such a, an, an iconic episode, and everyone is going to remember that. Like that was just, <laughs> it's insane. You know, and, uh, I don't know. And, yeah, it felt a bit like compensation. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know how kids get fucked up by Star Wars. <laughs> uh, uh, I, 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 I was worried about what I was doing to these young women. Okie dokie. Really weird way to put it. Uh, I actually auditioned a, 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 you know, several identical twins, and it was, 
you know, I cut them to, together when in making the decision. And with identical twins, it was very difficult to tell them apart. Please tell you know, them really apart. To... Oh my God. Are you serious? So to be serious? clear before, everyone should be laughing their ass off at what she just said. To be clear, <laughs> the kids in episode three are not identical twins. They, you can tell very distinctly the difference between their faces. And this was something that was brought up by people. Like, why did you choose non-identical twins to grow up into identical twins? That's weird. And she's just told us the reason for that is because <laughs> she had trouble when casting identical twins in telling the difference between the identical twins. Oh, is that <laughs> what she said? Because I heard yeah. her say that, and I was yeah. like, yeah, just, a little confused as to what she was saying. I, I saw shit. it coming. I'm like, there's no way you're about to say this, are you? There's no way she meant that, right? That's too stupid. Oh, yeah, right. That's why I'm saying we should all be like... laughing at this. That's such a fucking stupid <laughs> thing to say. It's crazy. <laughs> I, I was Get still in like decipher mode. It's like, That's like I arrived on set for the identical twins casting day, and I would you believe it? Apart. They all look the do. same. <laughs> the, the what are you gonna do, guys? They look the same. I thought I was really, really drunk. <laughs> oh my god! I'm seeing double here for a mandlers. I don't even know <laughs> what. Like, what, what? <laughs> Such a stupid point to make. I'm gonna have to. I'm dumb. Roll it back, just to be clear. Imagine losing the casting for this role because you looked <laughs> like your identical twin I know. on the identical <laughs> twin tryouts. Yeah, you like that's the reason you lost twins, and you lost like, two non-twins. Like how? And this is how you find out. Yeah, yeah, you're like, man, we we did so good. We really we practiced a whole bunch, and we're really good actresses. Well, how come they didn't pick us and they picked these losers? How about and then you watch this now? interview and you're like, fuck, we we look too much. We're too identical. She I'm probably traumatized those two kids. Though. You're a little like, too. You're know, hating looking alike. You're, I don't want to look like you anymore. Like ruin their fucking their relationship. It's fucking and so she, ridiculous. She chose the entire wrong thing to do because if her thinking is, well, it'd be different for the difficult for the audience to tell that like which one's the evil one and the good one. Well, the way you do that is by giving them different clothes or a different hairstyle. Even but a she decided to get all the name tags different and then give them the same stuff. I don't even mind the challenge of them being completely identical down to the clothing, but their characters being different enough for us to be able to always tell the difference, even just from expressions. We should be yeah. able to know two seconds into a scene who it is. If, yeah, You're not going to get mixed up if we know characters. The extent. difficulty is they don't have different personalities. So. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just so, they have like, one expression. So I, just, <laughs> I want to be as crystal clear as possible. Twin. You write them to yeah. be identical, and you're annoyed that they're identical. <laughs> I just yeah, got too confused. Big, well, if it isn't the consequences of my own decision, <laughs> the way you phrase that just hurt my brain. Like, how? Why would you? <laughs> so stupid. You didn't foresee this issue, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> and then she says to oh, a casting man. director, "We need some non-identical identical twins." Yeah, they're too identical, bro. Like, this isn't gonna work. Can we? Can, can you call Susie and what's her face back? Like, it's just so stupid, man. Yeah, and the email, like, and for the example, story line. not being able to tell the, the 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 twins in House of the Dragon, not being able to not being able to tell them apart was a good part of the story from the very moment they were introduced. Alicent calls Eric Arik, and it's like, yeah. okay, that's gonna be a factor throughout. They set it up from their introduction. It's talent versus this bullshit. They, she made the story such that one of them was going to be mistaken for the other in episode one, and then they get flipped in episode five. Like, what? But you don't want them to look the same. <laughs> that would be too I'm confusing. I'm going to bamboozle my audience, but not me. Nuh-uh. You know, I cut them to together when in making the decision. And with identical twins, it was very difficult to tell them apart, you know, really to, to track the, those types of the, the performances that you're talking about, the differentiation between the two of them. So wait, wait, wait. Um, she couldn't. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. she couldn't tell the difference. Just, what did she fucking pop a label on what? <laughs> just, what what, what are the name tags? Tell? Damn it! What's what she just said? The difference in the performance, even you can't tell because they're twins. They, I feel like, like what? this delves into you got to be careful because this is actually criticism of the actresses at that point, right? Like I can't tell the difference yeah. between you two, yeah. even though you're playing different characters. They'd be like, oh. 
Well, the like, thing is, ooh, the most yeah. stupid thing about this series is that they've had the same hairstyle for 16 years when they've never seen all each that, other. Yeah, for you sure. Could I don't think it's problem. the stupidest thing about this series. I was about to say, are you sure? <laughs> it's the stupidest thing I think. I okay, like, well, let's not get to. <laughs> originally, <laughs> originally, it's, it's one of the few things I can oddly believe. Is like, yeah, I, 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 sure. I think why not? <laughs> you got to remember Pocket Send, like, and like the stupid way Trinity died, and turning off the Force on and off. I yeah, think the, that's my biggest. Thing. The, pre, the understanding pre of the Oh, the man yeah. who there's, lives in a force oh bubble like there's a lot of <laughs> <laughs> the fact that they didn't just fucking recast him they like made him look like a freak like with the stupid they made him look like an old baby <laughs> yeah <laughs> <no>. <laughs> why would they do that like, why did they make this baby so old <laughs> is this oh one of the God. twins who didn't win in the tryout dude you know what it was she cast an old person she said they look pretty old I don't know <laughs> I <laughs> right can't tell apart from the rest of the old people in this room <laughs> I would rather get a young person and age them up than have an old person oh my God. it all makes sense once you hear the interviews all the decisions it's the Simpsons it's joke the, uh, we have to color a horse to look like a cow and then when you need a cow you have to get a bunch of cats <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look right on film okay that's so good <laughs> fucking hell like what's our budget do oh, whatever's the knife. most expensive yes the most obst obstructive stupid poor looking poor quality and expensive thing you can do and they're like alrighty consider All it right, done then. it's not my money Simpsons one of just you remember when they were they were coming up with the idea for you know basically like the idea for the third character of Itchy and Scratchy is like give him something like you know they have like Poochie but less bad and then Crusty's like yeah <laughs> they didn't walk out and all the writers like so are we all fine with Poochie yeah, <laughs> <laughs> <Dude. laughs> yeah. this kind of reminds me of the attitude on like so the evil twins right yeah 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 good all idea. Right. <laughs> So we, it was, it was one of those things that I was like, okay, you know, we do have this adult actor playing both roles, but if we don't have this differentiation between the two of them, I'm not sure we're going to understand uh, how important um, the um, uh, come on the differences between they between them. I feel like there was no oh, logic. Really, like there, there was Wait, actually what? no logic to any of this. You, Holy can you play shit. that again? I'm, I, I, I can, get right? Lost um, bear in mind Please when listening to this back. again, I feel like what's going on in her head might actually be a concern of a minefield that she, depending on what she says, would be really insulting to the actresses. Because she's, she's saying, so... Amanda can handle it. Amanda can perform both sides. We all disagree with this, but that doesn't matter. But the kids shit. Amanda can do it, <laughs> but when you, when you have the kids doing it, you need to be able to tell okay. the difference between yeah. the character, and it's like, well, but obviously that would be fine if the performances reflected it, surely, because that's what you've done with the Mandler. And so, I think that's what's making it take so long. She has to find a way of explaining this that isn't basically shitting on the the ch child actors. She's yeah, stepping around that the dog shit right now. She's trying to like skip. Well, yeah, I mean, it, she's I she's I worked herself into this. She didn't I, need to I say this. She... I think she already let it slip, though. It was a few seconds, like 30 seconds ago, where she's saying, like, even through the performances, you can't tell the difference because they're twins. Like, that's, like, that, you, that's yeah. not the part you say out loud. Like, I thought that's the part she's trying to dance well, around. So why you what, even dance around when you're Brooks, already let it slip? You probably shouldn't have so fucking said the identical twins look too similar. That's another thing you should probably yeah. avoid saying. If we don't have this differentiation between the two of them, I'm not sure we're going to understand uh, how important um, the... Um, um, the differences between they between them are, and that's something an adult actor can, especially if they're a genius like a mandala, like, you know. But uh, an, an adult it still sounds actor... like she almost kind of stepped right back into yeah, the, she did. the minefield right there. Like she didn't actually get around it. She basically just said, "Well, yeah, an adult can handle it." Yeah, which is so awkward. <laughs> like, damn. All right, Rip. you didn't need. To... You didn't need to. You didn't need to do this. <laughs> well, at, that, at that point, she stepped on the pressure plate for the mine, and then it's just like, oh fuck. Oh well, <laughs> like, I gotta take my foot <laughs> off now to keep, to move forward. I, I, know, I, I, I know everybody in chat's put uh, genius. Yes, yes, uh, Amanda is genius. <laughs> Amanda's genius response to the fans too. That was a good move. I'd love to know that, Leslie's please. reaction to that vi that music video. Oh, you know I she would say it's genius. That was amazing. Stunning. Oh, yeah. Yes, very stunning. It's harder for for child actors to, um, you know, em emulate two separate performances. Mm. Um, I thought you were going to say a moat. So what's yeah, interesting like, is I, I, they are two literal different people, the twins. Dude, 
They sucked. How about we just admit it? Like, yeah, those, come those, on. She's so saying Amanda was such a good actress, she can play two people, but these two people weren't good enough to play characters separated enough so that you'd yeah, notice. She's not even, oh my god, she's not even aware of what she she's really talking about here. She didn't have to do this. No, she didn't, she didn't have to get into this at all. She could have just said, we hired oh, them, they right. were great, and they did what they did. <laughs> but, yeah. well, I actually, I didn't have a problem with them because Amanda can't emote. So when they were playing them deadpan, I'm like, yeah, this is just like how she isn't as a doll. <laughs> I think it's gonna fit. Yeah, that's right. That's fair. I I forget this woman's name. Is she the showrunner? Leslie Headland. Yeah, is that her title? She's the vampire mm -hmm. for sure. That's okay, it. is she like the head of the writers' room too? Does she even set foot in the writers' room? Does she write any episodes? Uh, she wrote or some of the scripts. Yeah, she wrote some of the okay. scripts. Okay, and I think she directed episode one. Right. Okay. I was just wondering. Yeah. I mean, you you would think she'd have some more things to talk about, given that. Uh, she directed the first two episodes, but yeah. Right. Yep. Uh, when they're when they're Jeez. in the same room with each other, and they already have the experience of being twins, and they already have the experience of, you know, most twins in Hollywood, they're playing the same character. They're mm -hmm. being switched out. Yes, they're actors. They're familiar with playing characters. They're supposed to be... She's trying to explain how what she said isn't mean. She's like, oh, they're used to not <laughs> playing different characters. That's why. Out, you they're know, outing. Like, She's so drowning. they're used to it's so funny because let's say for example the twins she's saying they go to show a to play twins and they're supposed to be one to one or they go to show b and they played the literal same character but they switched off screen so that you get more time right like okay but you've already just established they've played more than one character right on show a show b show c so they're familiar with playing different characters correct so surely they can play different characters between them you know, it, 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 she's trying to get out of what she said. I just find it funny because it's like, just she's say it. Just herself. say you think they're not very good. Yeah. Just say it. <laughs> trapped herself completely. It's so funny to see her try to spin, like, dig her way out of this hole. You know, like, so they're used to doing exactly what the other twins did. May cuts her hair, and I'm like, girl, you still got that thing on your forehead. And you smell like burnt hair. hair you got oh, I like how she shrugged what? when that's just like a true observation. Yeah, well, the, it's... the very prominent mark on your forehead. This well, was funny to me because... Thing. I still don't know if Sol shot her because he knew she was May, or he shot her, and then when she fell over, it moved her hair, and that's when he knew she was May. I think no, what we're meant to assume told is him, Basil, Basil told her. Yeah, yeah, Basil must have. That's my understanding. That's why he was it's so to, odd. Next um, because Basil's running way. through the uh, the floor, right? And she looks down with, like, concern yeah, and then goes like, to speak teleport. to Sol. And so you're thinking to yourself, oh, is is that, like, the ticking clock? She has to do something with Sol before it's too late and Basil gets to him? And then they show us Basil gets to him, I guess. Is that is yeah. that the visual language that Basil's supposed to be <laughs> detecting? It's the so lame. The like, why... opportunity to see Sol actually do some detective work and, like, actually use his brain, have some agency for once. Well, but no, just, he should have been able to... He's a Jedi. Like, he's yeah. a Jedi master. He but he, he should have known from the very beginning, and we should have saw him manipulating her throughout the episode to get information. Instead, he's crying and gets told by a beaver. It, it's it is. I, I think. I think what um what she would say is no. You you forget there was a line where um where May said like when he was talking about how he couldn't tell that Smilo Ren was Smilo Ren. You know when they met him on uh in episode two, and she said, oh, you know, like sometimes you see what you want to see, and I think she'd say, yeah, that's that's why he couldn't tell. Oh, yeah, that's definitely why. The reason I, I wasn't sure is because when she falls over after she's been stunned, it kind of zooms in on her forehead, and then it goes, yeah. May. So was that them just reminding the audience, just in case you forgot? Like, yeah, maybe. It, might, it, it might actually be. You know what? Be think about simple. Reva. Anytime you think about a question like that, remember how they handled Reva, Reva going to Luke. Showing Reva. the young Reva, Reva and then doing the flashback. Like, don't ever forget, they think we're <laughs> retarded. They think we're dehydrated and, like, on life support watching this shit. So, yeah. They <laughs> That's how it feels. <laughs> Legit. Yeah. Hello, Star Wars fans. <laughs> Peg is down. Dehydrated. <laughs> 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 I'm still watching them. now. They must be. <laughs> Seriously. So, <laughs> they could just move your hair. The they could just move <laughs> and they'd be like, huh. She's um, like, it's okay. It's 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 interesting. It plays out very interestingly in the next episode. No, it didn't. She knew the problem. <laughs> this so this is she's they they've seen episode five up to this interview. She talked about episode six that it plays out very interestingly. The tattoo is like no. No, it was it's like it's no. forgotten. We we were waiting for the for yeah. them to do something it, with the tattoo, it, it, but it never happened. It, it is we're fundamentally that Basil Basil Lee, he was like, Hey, wait a minute, I can smell that you're not the same person. That's it. That was it. That's the only reason that it got revealed. It's because oh, he could God. smell that she was different. 
So she should have said, pay attention to Basil. He's the key to everything. He's the key Truly to solving he this mystery. <laughs> Basil's the key to everything. Yeah, he's like, the, know, he's like yeah. the Jar Jar Beaver. Ra mm -hmm. So, but one thing, Rags was mentioning how every fucking time you could pretty much rewrite these things on the spot. And something Dricker said on Open Bar was actually stuck with me of they should have had Yord survive the fucking battle, and he's the only one who can actually translate for the beaver, which would have made more sense. And then they could have actually he shows the up for the thing. next episode you with the next race. <laughs> 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 and he has to turn his whole his shoulders to look around and <laughs> break his neck back into place. No, they should have had him die. Yor didn't deserve to die. Yor, I thought you were dead. <laughs> I was. <laughs> I was. <laughs> oh man. I, I won't say. I, I don't know if it was the the greatest idea, but she was definitely. <laughs> she was she thinking. She was, I got. <laughs> uh, uh, the, we just we just got it straight from the showrunner. Okay. Yeah, not a great idea from the the character yep. decision. It's like <laughs> okay, all right, all right wow. then. Well, it could have changed um, it at any time. I think what I find funny is that it is as simple as you know why it wasn't a good idea. It was because of the the mark on her forehead. It's not because Soul would instantly be like, "Wait a minute, you're." I definitely can tell like you're not y you. Well, and if she was only going to try and kill Soul, she could have done what? it whether or not she decided on this stupid fucking parent trap shit. She could have killed kill him. him when he was sleeping, when he was on the ground, <laughs> like before it even started at the end of the episode. Well, yeah, she she could some some people right don't there, yeah. quite remember the events even. When she knocks him out with the stun gun, knock out uh, Osher as well, then go up to Soul and just stab him in the throat several times, and then do whatever you want with your sister. It's over. Easy. This show could have ended so many freaking times. It's crazy. Yeah, and um, like, no, let me it, cut my hair with a lightsaber so that I can pretend to be Osha. And hopefully he doesn't notice big scorch marks like all over on my. No, she kept her highlights. Are they? The are they ever gonna address like the crazy brain damage that Asha probably has getting knocked out like every other episode? <laughs> like no, I don't understand no why they. No, no, not in movies. It's yeah, not it's, it's the pause button of people. So you of just that. hit them in the movie, head and yeah, they're on pause. She shouldn't be able to speak. She shouldn't recognize Soul at this point. She didn't even spell I wish her she own didn't name. Speak, but, yeah. <laughs> it's like she should have CTE, well, all genius. the brain damage, but nothing. Ugh. This, and I'm like, yeah, she was, we'll put it this way. She was thinking emotionally, you know, like she was definitely. Oh my she was being God. retarded. Thank you. <laughs> all right, well. She was thinking emotionally. That covered then she was being do, you think, do you think this I, is a I, I, the I, decision was made and then later on Leslie realized, oh fuck, that's dumb. Yeah, shit. I think I find it I find it funny <laughs> that she's saying she was acting emotionally when like her expression the whole time was completely static, stone mm -hmm. face, like neutral, not like angry. And I mean it's like what what was the emotional thought of all right here, let me let me cut my hair with a lightsaber so that I can pretend to be Osha and then pretend like and, and get soul back up get him on the ship and then stab him while i'm on the ship instead of just getting him straight away it's like well, well that no. doesn't sound emotional that sounds calculated in another interview leslie said that her plan because she started talking about the show as if it was in two parts so you had the first half of the arc and the second half arc and she said that oh um may second half was to infiltrate the jedi and find evidence that they're like evil guys so she can take it to osha and prove that she, they're not the good guys and she should join her i'm like but you then in the next episode blew up that entire arc in 10 minutes but that's what she was going around telling everyone it was going to be oh wow that's <laughs> that just sounds like not true at all yeah <laughs> well it's really so good a constant supply of golden nuggets from uh showrunners because you know just let them talk let them talk. Let them explain everything about the the art they've created because you get a lot more answers than let you expect. Let them say, yeah, that's that's the case of me not knowing what to do with the script. No, oh. so or uh, this is this is uh, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer's Unforgiven. You know these sorts of yeah. Or uh, this is Jeff Lovitz. He's writing the script. He's, he's writing, writing as he goes along. <laughs> I love that clip. That might be one of my favorite clips ever. Bill Murray is the king for that. You, you can tell Jeff is like, uh oh. He just like, cold sweats <laughs> instantly. Like he just drenched in that moment. Like that's one of the most beautifully passive aggressive things I've ever seen. <laughs> well, you know that that's probably happened because uh, Bill asked him something and his answer yeah. was like, I don't know. I don't know. And Bill knows that this is not the way. He's old school. He knows that, that you know, the, the, the talent that used to be involved with these projects <laughs> and like this is what it is now. Like you're writing it literally as you go, like. I yeah, just I mean, love that of... he was honest enough to roast him there. Like, that's amazing. There is a degree to which 
any and all films are created as they're created, so to speak, uh, with scripts mm -hmm. and stuff. But, you know, Bill Murray's from a time where films would be made or broken based on how good the script was. You know, it moves around a whole bunch of people and then someone says, I'll I'll put the money in for this. This looks pretty good. That sort of thing. Yeah. You don't really do that anymore, huh? <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you what, gotta... is, what does the king desire? Just turning it into content, and that's why you get this. Ugh. Anyway, uh, Disparu, it looks like you're out of time, which is, uh, you know, regrettable, because I was actually going to be... I think you'll find the rest of this interview rather interesting, but maybe you can check it out <laughs> yourself uh, and see, see what you think. Just yes. Insights. In any uh, case, uh, before you go, if you want to let everyone know where they can find you, what you're up to. Uh, yeah, Disper on YouTube, a lot of Acolyte stuff, obviously Rings of Power in the near future, and uh, mm. I can imagine their marketing as it leads up to that it should be uh, interesting to say the Can't least. Can't wait! Yes. <laughs> I think it'll be great. It's so I'm weird. ready, I'm hyped. To complete Acolyte and then be like, all right, on to Rings of Power. <laughs> hey. Acolyte, I have no idea what it's going to be. Rings of Power, I can't wait. Passing I the baton of it. cringe. <laughs> we got to keep it I... going. I'd forgot about it. Then I just saw this thing, and it was like, in two months, Rings of Power. I'm like, oh, oh wow. This is going to be great. <laughs> and then, of course, halfway through Rings of Power, or like a, a couple of weeks in, uh, Agatha starts as well. Oh, so you get That's the double whammy. Made. Oh, it's been released. Done. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I like it's they do the, around that's the most shocking information that they would release it <laughs> can you believe it they could have released that why? thing <laughs> well that's the thing I think it's one of those shows that's been finished for years and they've just kind of kept it back oh, you mean like Ironheart like, oh we're gonna have to release it at some point yes exactly oh, like Ironheart that's the one that's my, oh. my golden wheel can't wait for that bitch but imagine being like, they... <laughs> a part of Ironheart and excited to share it with the world and then finding out they're not releasing it yet and then you get told not five years, years later they're thinking about you're, releasing it. <laughs> you're a different <laughs> person by the time it comes around. Like your yeah. life is a complete, like, you know, it's probably like a mother now. Like, well, yeah, just, they change careers. They're not even her. interested anymore. Yeah. It's like that <laughs> show is finally <laughs> coming out. You're like, oh boy. Oh, my, my but God. my favorite thing about Agatha is they keep trying to be like, no, this will fix it. And they change the title. And it is literally just that like putting lipstick on a pig when you keep changing the title <laughs> of the show five times. What can what will get the people through the doors? <laughs> can yeah. I ask you one question before you leave this room? Who do you think had a better story? Kelnaka or you ask Captain? Two questions. Uh, huh? What? No, just one. Kelnaka. Oh, okay, yeah, fine, Kalnaka, brother, motherfucker. Although... Two questions. Two questions. Kalnaka or Captain Phasma? Who had a better story? <laughs> in completion, the Wookiee and the Acolyte, or Captain Phasma? Why are you yes. saying that that was? Why are you saying that was two questions? That's one question. Because he's going to ask, ask you a question, question, which is that would be oh, a question. I, I, I think. I he's think the Wookiee. The, the, Wookie, Wookie. the Wookie's entire <laughs> plot did. line was just I'm going to walk home, yeah. and then he did it in the next episode, and then he died. And I well, think he, that's he sniffed out the kids. He broke the lightsaber. I think he achieved more in terms of like he sniffed <laughs> out the kids. He sniffed out. Yeah, <laughs> like, there's no kids here. He's like, <laughs> that's well, that. they were looking at him through the people. And it's like just hide. It's like wait, don't you realize if you can see his face, he can see you. That's how that works. Like, <laughs> but that's yeah, why you cover your eyes it. whenever. whenever <laughs> yeah, you yeah, think someone just look sees at the you. ground. That's how it works. And they can't, they can't see you if you cover your eyes. So. But yeah, pleasure to be on, guys. Always fun. I'll Always see you around. Yeah. great yeah, to see you. Later, man. Uh, talking to you, man, too. Spell, I saw some people asking, spelled D-I-S-P-A-R-U. That's uh, Disparu. You can find him probably making a video per episode for most of the shows that you both love and hate. No, mainly the ones you yeah. hate. <laughs> he's, uh, he's much more interested in uh, the entertainment value of ripping things apart. Um rather engaging videos and he covers a lot of articles and shit and i was i was curious because i thought he hadn't seen this this interview because barely anyone had but i found it so interesting this is actually cut down by the way the the full is a half an hour long we're checking out the 20 minute version because uh Oof. there's some stuff that's normal in there i cut out all the normal stuff oh, <laughs> mostly looking into the, the best bits yes this is the the director's cut yes it is for this you said hmm? for this interview yeah, yeah. So there's about up. there's another like ten minutes to this interview, but uh, some of, some of it'll be like, I love you know this planet. It's like, yeah, that planet's so cool. Yeah, I like that planet. I'm assuming great. I'm assuming nothing interesting or useful then. No, nothing up. that we would have anything to say about really. I'm just like, hmm, mm -hmm. okay, because uh, we've still got some banger banger content left in here. She was thinking emotionally. Basil's like, here I come. Like, yeah, Basil's like, I got it. <laughs> 
little worried. Somebody sent me, I got That's a lot a of tweets moment. from the um, episode five because, you know, people were just sending me a bunch of screenshots. Uh-huh. And one of them was like, it was like, I hope Pip's okay. And I was like, or, or like, I hope Pip comes back or something. And I was like, he's there. Like he's, Who? <laughs> maybe it was. Little droid, droid. I think. Yeah. I but he's not like, okay. Yeah. May, may, uh, he's been killed. May he killed, died. May killed him. Yes. Yeah, isn't that and funny? Like, hey, <laughs> the, she's, about? She's like <laughs> making fun of people who didn't see that Basil picked up Pip at the end, but simultaneously probably has not recognized that when you remove the memory of a droid, it is no longer what it was. You have reset yeah. the droid to factory settings. That droid is yeah, not like, the droid did you, you knew. watched Toy Story 3? You didn't shoot have around you Rise the Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. <laughs> it's well, look what happened it. when Buzz, Buzz got, not to, uh... he got reset. Not to toot your horn, but I think you covered it very well with the uh, What You Bring Me meme, with Morty saying, No, I'm oh, yeah. alone! Oh, yeah. Ah, hello! <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's exactly what's happening. She, uh, it, You can't reset the droid and just be like, Oh, no, he's temporarily evil. No, you killed him. She killed he's him dead. without remorse because she's still evil. That yeah, little guy that it. Osha built a relationship with, which she obviously would have, is dead. And I don't even know that yeah. the show will be aware of it, so Osha will not be able to react to it in the way that she would, because the show Isn't doesn't. Isn't that know. sad that even the 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 writers for the Rise of Skywalker realize that? Even <laughs> they knew that. Oh, and as has been pointed out, she just admitted she was receiving a whole bunch of tweets responding to about this particular uh, thing. It's like, ah, oh, but you didn't know anything about Kiati Mundi, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Nothing at all. <laughs> Nothing at all. <laughs> I never did. <laughs> <laughs> you have to edit that into something eventually use that at one point. <laughs> i was well aware because i was like well my favorite character is dead which is a wookie and so i was like i'm gonna follow the other furry little interesting it really illustrate that's gonna be crazy wow. as a writer right to hear that that yes, your favorite because... character was basically wow. the not character they did no work for him and it was just wasn't right a character he w- yeah like, he's in the not character tier he's like a wookie who uses the force once but he's not his a character. character his character was that he was the wookie who, who was a jedi wookie that was it like the premise was his character was his premise we didn't even get a chance to like develop it whatsoever he, he cooked yeah. and died like it's such a it. shit man like i really wanted to see a whole episode with him mm-hmm. and like he was the like the first two deaths were pathetic maybe they could have been redeemed by having an entire episode <laughs> where it's like almost impossible to take this guy down and we really get a cool like fuck I this show that, for, not, for denying us a jedi it's so funny to think of <laughs> indara's know. death as pathetic and then you get an even more pathetic one. yeah how <laughs> you going? and then the grass off screen like how is it aged to where her death was the most like I didn't even want to say the best executed, but it made more sense than the others, like, pretty much, like... Ugh, it is, so it is a bit surreal that they would have. It's like, hey, look, the pitch is a Wookiee Jedi, and then he gets killed off screen when you, there's, like, an immense amount of potential that you could... T- I could imagine if you pitched the idea of... Have you ever thought about doing, like, that there was a bottle episode that was just following that Wookiee's life? That's like, what on I... a mundane day, you know, on uh, the day that, that leads up to Smilo only... Ren showing up? And seeing what he's and and it's a silent because he's got no one to talk to and even if he did you know he's a Wookiee just going Whoa. I can't do the Wookiee sound yeah but can they pull um, that off though did they have the talent to have I don't think I don't think it was pilot. even an idea that no. they would have considered is the point I'm getting at I don't think that's too <sighs> that's a bit too wacky it's a little bit too kind of interesting I don't know um, man one of my I, favorite episodes of Breaking Bad is the Fly and like it's oh well, I mean I, look I I, I mean a I lot of them. I love it's bottle so episodes get so I love much. Them. It's like we are squeezed and they core the, the creativity out the most. Like that's where you, you get your best answer. You have nothing to work with. Remember Kill Bill Two with uh we watch the bride set up to take down Bud and then she gets completely subverted by him. Wouldn't it be really yeah. cool if that was the episode where we see a chunk of Kelnaka and then we get the POV of Smilo Ren doing all he needs to do to get that assassination done and like he does a big action to start it up and then Kelnaka's a trap just gets set off and Locke is just yeah, looking at him, pretty... like we're yeah, nice, and yeah, and then calls in for the uh, you know the Jedi Order that he's got him, and then and Smilo has to try and convince Keldaka that this was you've made a mistake that I you know just just you, you generic fucking Weasley Sith man stuff. I it, that could be so interesting if you're ripping off Kill Bill, which they already are. Why not go all the way and like because I think that's that's one of my favorite kills out of them, the Bud dynamic, the fact that she just gets completely owned in that one. 
compared yeah. to how successful she was with Vernita Green in the first one. You know, we see we see all, all three all of the kills that she 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 goes through or the the hunts are very very intriguing. And you could they tell could not get this. Tarantino more, more, didn't want to repeat any of them. He wanted them all to be different. Yes. Yes, and that's what I love about those movies. Every single one is a different adventure, different dynamic, different stakes, and different approach. And they just didn't learn anything from that, except you and I have unfinished business. Just ripping off the line, like directly. That's pathetic. Well, you see it a lot with um when when like with these bad projects, the way that inspiration decided is that they're really hollow. I mean, you know, we mentioned mm-hmm. it before, right? This is Michelle Pfeiffer's Unforgiven. That's a ridiculous statement to make about <laughs> Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. I know we laugh about it, but like, really, that's that's a ridiculous thing Wait, to say. Wait, hold on a second. Who said that? <laughs> say that oh, again. That, that was, uh, I, I think it was Jeff Loveness. It was in Michelle the, was Pfeiffer's the, Unforgiven. Hey, is that have what you seen? Seen, I'm like, I'm forget- you seen my Quantumania yeah. video? We, uh, it's in there. Yes, in and the, I've seen Unforgiven. Yeah, Given, so I'm trying yeah, to wrap uh, my head around that. I don't remember that quote being in there. It was in the Quantumania assembled, I believe, and it, it's. It's something that you laugh at, but like if it was to be taken seriously, for for like a writer to say that is like really absurd, um, and it it just says a lot that that's it, you know you know how like people make fun of oh it's this film is like Jaws or something these incredibly shallow and hollow this references. Is, this is Jaws the meets of- Joker. Like this is this meets that. I, I've I've never hated that. I I mean I've never liked that whatsoever. Even from like VHS. I can't remember which one it was, but it was like, this is Star Wars meets The Matrix. And I remember rolling my eyes at that, even when I was a little kid. I've, I've never liked that pitch. Well, Just show me I what think, you um, huh? I think it's, you know, how, how do you, how do you uh, compare the difference between something like that that is completely hollow and cynical compared to, you know, to bring it back to The Simpsons, one of the greatest, uh, like, gags that they ever did, the Indiana Jones um, parody with Bart stealing the... Uh, That's <laughs> Bart fuck, stealing I can't believe... Jar. That's one of my favorite okay. Simpson jokes. I love that, that the way that it, <laughs> Homer screaming at Bart's bus as it drives away is one of my favorite <laughs> moments. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's they really just nailed funny. it. It's um, so you fucking can tell funny. That's a that's like a really loving and and thoughtful. It's yep. I, I, th- I think it's one of those things where you see it fly by and you think that was hilarious, but I mean it's really like really clever and intelligent and, and thoughtful as a uh, as a reference. And I think it's important to understand the difference between that kind of level of inspiration or homage um, or pulling from um, media that you like as a creator yeah. compared to, oh, well, this is like that movie, but it's for the most shallow thing, like a line or a shot, maybe, that, or um, or just like a vague similarity in premise. The most simplistic comparison ever. Right? That's such a fantastic take because you can't make that scene in The Simpsons unless you truly love Indiana Jones and understand what made it good. Like you can't just mm. you can't copy it shot for shot and just like, hey, look, it's like the other thing. And we've seen it. TL like the 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 the, the um the end of TLJ where they basically rip off the um the scene in Return of the Jedi where um they're this when they get caught in the trap and it's just it's so fucking shallow to see them trying to just take copy and paste and not even understand what made it special and there's so many examples of it it drives me nuts like i remember Mahler, you like losing your shit over um snoke taking off the handcuffs for ray because that's what the emperor did Ugh. but he there's a there's a reason for that in 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 return of the jedi like they're just trying to copy it shot for shot just for the sake of it dude i like, get so cynical about that that so i assume when they're filming it Ryan Johnson's thinking about, oh, I can't wait for them to make the tweet where they compare the two images. Yes. 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 He's giddy. He's giddy. They think it's this achievement that if anyone can point it out as a reference, then they've achieved something. Whether or not the reference is good, like Fringy was saying, it's so, the difference is is mind numbing. And most people don't understand the difference. They give them full credit either way. I hate it. 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 Sir, I just want to clarify something because I I didn't know this or I missed it or forgot about it. But Jeff Loveness said, that quantum mania was michelle <laughs> pfeiffer's unforgiven yeah. is that this, a real quote this is really funny yeah. to me because why are you laughing we've known about this and <laughs> have complained about it delayed. since quantum mania came out and we were just like, this is very serious <laughs> this is a work I, of art that Fuck is me, absolute, dude. the that delayed is reaction insane. is if you allowed to process that too because it's like there's no fucking yeah. way he could well, actually obviously realize. you've never seen unforgiven or you would have already known <laughs> it's when a, you well, such a combination mania, of... that it was like oh of course oh it's like i'm watching unforgiven again Oh my God. There are some That's quotes so cool. that are the perfect amount of, I guess, shocking but also forgettable. Where you've heard it before, but a year later when you hear it again, you're like, "No," yeah. you're like, "Yeah, it's real." I just love that we discussed that, but he was like, "No," in his head this whole time, and I had to ask again just to make sure. <laughs> that was. Fun. Right I mean, 
I, I, I heard somebody mention Michelle Pfeiffer's Unforgiven. I didn't understand the context, but then <laughs> somebody, I think Frankie just said it was quantum media. I'm like, what? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no. When you piece together yeah. the reality of the statement, it's like, hold on a minute. It takes a while to digest. It's, it is. Yeah. It is. Uh, There's no need to a shocking like... fucking statement. I can't believe that. There's no need to treat it with any kind of seriousness because it's. Uh, there's nothing of a connection between those two films but, or the experiences you, of those characters. The fact that they actually believe that is you kind of have to take it seriously to well the thing is thing, is i think yeah. the movie with that asked, they're making the movie he, with that in mind yeah. if you asked him why he'd say well it's like you know her character like janet's kind of having a bit of like a moral reckoning with uh the decisions that she made in the past when she yeah. was in the quantum realm and that's like unforgiven but and and then you just look at them like with yeah. you just look at you just be like flabbergasted, just dumbstruck. Oh, well, you know, her, yeah. the people of her new life have to get all these like trickle pieces of information of an old life she lived, just like in Unforgiven, when the characters sort of give away pieces of William Money's old life. And you're just like, stop, just no more. Stop it. No need to. Well, Quantum Mania is so fucking embarrassing as a piece of bad. No merit. It's like halfway through Quantum Mania when no I started merit. to cry. I was like, oh, this is just like Unforgiven when I, when I cry. <laughs> <laughs> so it is uh, Modoc, just cry. like Unforgiven. He was. Uh, I can just picture Modoc being an Unforgiven. It, it, it kind of matches. <laughs> Modoc in a coffin in front of the saloon. <laughs> like, is that Modoc? Oh my god! Now, now I'm getting like PTSD flashbacks from your video. Them talking about Modoc's death and comparing it to like Boromir, oh. right. and like they, uh, I just. Oh what? yeah, I think what? he said like I remember he said like oh yeah, Corey stole doing like a death of a salesman performance here while laughing. Which I was just like, yeah. oh, all right. Laughing yeah. at him, not even understanding what they could have achieved with that, that scene. I think it, that is an utterly, that is so fascinating to me that they don't realize that they created the most sympathetic, like the the only character who goes on a coherent arc in the entire film is Modoc. Well, tell me realize, what I am. I don't know what I am. That is the one whose death is treated like a joke. Yeah. That was sad for yeah. me, someone who hadn't even seen an Ant-Man movie before that. But then when I got the context for Mahler's video, I was genuinely annoyed. Like this, there was a character here that you just fucking it, stuck this into. This, you know, I uh, I talked about it when we were doing season two of Halo coverage. But like, uh, Mr. Mandibles, the show's version of the Arbiter, is like accidentally the only character who like goes on something of a coherent story arc that's thematically <laughs> interesting. I think it's entirely yeah, accidental. A Pershing and Mandalorian, there's usually a lot of cases like that where they accidentally make a well, good character. Kind of... John Walker, another one of those? This to me is I think the what they definitive... did with Pershing was intentional. His you're talking about the like the one the, the Pershing episode and the I would say that was intentional, three? but the fact that he was a good character from season one, I think might have just been a fluke. I, I do think it was a fluke that he was probably the most interesting character, yeah. but um, what what very very little we got of him, I do think they accidentally ended but up making him the most interesting. All those character. listed examples would be my evidence that we aren't uh, solely going and looking just for anything to hate, hate everything fully. It's like, no. as far as I'm concerned, we keep I the thought... receptors open at all times, waiting for something good to happen, and a lot of the time we're like. Do this and it might work, and then they don't do it. You're like, Duh! <laughs> like sometimes something saying? little, something, something good in a shitty movie kind of like gives it an even extra highlight. Like Max, uh, Max Power in, um, oh my god, yeah, uh, his oh, performance, yeah, Woman 84, it, yeah, yeah, his performance is even Max more, more worthy, Ward, right? Max, Max yeah, Ward. I'm thinking of Max Simpsons, you got me with the Simpsons now. <laughs> 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 I keep making, I always make that mistake, Max Lord. I feel like his performance is even more praiseworthy because the rest of the movie is trash. Where we might yeah. not, have, you know, yeah, might have another thing to balance it out. You teary eyed at the end, and you're like, "What the <laughs> fuck is happening?" The, the scene I'm with him in the something. Uh, All the God, scenes with him uh, and his son, and the flashback just, of him that we, we basically didn't that, elaborate. We just fought that silly cheetah lady, and now here I am watching. <laughs> Watch your Maxwell um, Lord get me all teary eyed. Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, this shouldn't have been in the same movie. That's crazy. You remember the the scene oh. on the uh, like I don't know where they are, but the, the, is it the the car chase sort of scene and Gal Gadot's on uh, Max uh, Lord's uh, car. And uh, she uh, she, uh, she delivers one of her clip. famously awful lines. I saw that getting shared the other day, saying <laughs> she might be the worst actress in history. She's pretty bad. She's pretty bad. Everybody in grave danger. I need oh you to God. give me this code. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, wish that's, uh, Fringy, it's not that oh, good. 
She's so bad. I wish to remind everybody, we had to fight people when we were reviewing the first Wonder Woman up to when 84 came out. The whole time, we were just collecting clips, being like, she is awful. She has always been awful. <laughs> Terrible. She's one of the best examples of someone being charming enough to distract most people from her acting. Like, she's, she's hot, she's likable, she seems like a nice lady. But damn, she sucks at acting, man. She just can't <laughs> portray any emotion. She just can't get the job done. And her emo, it just, it, it, oh, even the scenes where they're just like posing, there's just nothing going on behind her eyes. Like there's no thought process. There's nothing. Mm. It's pretty sad. Her's dead, which is a Wookiee. And so I was like, I'm going to follow the other furry little thing around. It's not the last time you see him, though. It's not the last time you see Kalnaka. So good because I love a Wookiee. They're my good. favorite characters. She in doesn't all of know Star. yet. He shouldn't even. Does she not know yet? <laughs> well, it's not you... the last time you'll see Kalnaka. Are we talking about the flashback? Well, there'll right? be another flashback. There'll be another oh, flashback. oh, the flashback. That's right. That's um, right. That's right. I find this so interesting. We kind of brought it up, but just the the being told as the showrunner that this person's favorite character was the one that you had no lines for, essentially. But secondly, that um, she's saying like <laughs> Wookies are just my favorite characters, and you're sort of sitting there like, do you just I mean know, species? Because well, well, you yeah, are racist. Just say that Wookies are your favorite, like Chewbacca being your favorite character, but Wookies exactly. in general. It's like saying humans are your favorite characters in Star Wars. It's just it's saying boring. it's basically saying nothing. It's saying nothing, and well, it's just like. Honestly, well, I think I, it's as simple as she likes Wookiees. I was know? gonna say, oh, I'd be inclined Wookies, to say fun. that uh, I would share what she's feeling, but she's doing a really bad mm -hmm. job of explaining it. What I'd say the better vision is Wookiees come across as a variant on a humanoid creature in Star Wars that provides a lot of curiosity about how they operate, which is why a Jedi Wookiee immediately makes us all wonder about a couple of things in terms of operation. Would he wear robes? Would he care to? How does he look when he's using a lightsaber? What, I don't know, you could get down to all the specifics of what kind and color does he pick and why. Does he talk much with the other Jedi? Does he work with them? Does he get angry does when he's he using it or is he force? controlled? Yeah. How is his ability to use the Force? Is it better? Is it worse? How is it conveyed through language to a Wookiee? Yeah, this... you know, does he think about it in like uh, English, you know, slash basic, or does he think about it in the Wookiee language? And what does that mean? And how does it all reflect his general operation? And then, even more interesting, this is a Wookiee that's apparently a little disenfranchised. He's uh, he's going a bit rogue. He's off on his own. It's like, oh, okay, we got we got all those. Yeah, yeah. everything's like, well, ready to go. The then she's like, he's dead. That to happen. Yeah, but they. Oh. You think they went through that? All oh, that big Why discussion. Grill just grass. Do you... <laughs> Why does he not bake it like a civilized? <laughs> even that. Person? I don't even know. that. I want to know. Is there any benefit? Like, there's interesting questions we could ask. But do you think that they went through that conversation that we just did, going through all the components? Or is it just I don't as simple as we got a Wookiee Jedi guy? Just... They didn't do anything with him. So like I think it's yeah. even worse than that. It's it's it wasn't even it's it's as if they weren't even tantalized like he wasn't by the meant potential to be a character. A... Yeah, pretty much. He's supposed um, to be reason... his, his job is to make people go, ooh, a Wookiee that's a Jedi. Interesting. That's why that I brought up Phasma. mission successful. That's why I brought up Phasma, because apparently Phasma was only in the movie because it was a piece of concept art that Kathleen Kennedy saw and said, I want that in the movie. Yeah. And she doesn't have a fucking character. And that reminds me of Kalnaka. We're like, I want a Wookiee Jedi. What are we going to do with them? What's this well, I, think, I don't the, know. I want a Wookiee Jedi. Right? He shows up in the uh, in those books, I think. Which yeah, but in terms, in terms of their... Yeah, that'll, be, that'll make their the four people who read that book really upset. <laughs> I was about to say, that makes it worse, doesn't it? There's a fucking blueprint yeah. right there for all the characteristics, I, I assume. That does make it worse. And they don't do anything with it. It's, it. That that is worse now that they had something like Captain Phasma was concept art. He actually was a character. Well, and they still could. I can't even say this, it. but Phasma was more of a character because she had a couple of lines. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, you know, he performed some actions and had some lines. That beats out Shit. Keldaka, but now. Fuck man. Uh, but yes, it was uh, seemed obvious to all of us when they announced that this was going to be a main character, or rather, a character involved in the story, a Wookiee Jedi. And they absolutely did nothing with him. Obviously, he's going to be jumping around using his lightsaber in the flashback episode, so we got that. We'll see what they do, but uh, I'm not exactly hopeful. Yeah, but this is the thing. Like, how she said, like, oh, you'll see more of him. You'll get to see a Wookiee. Rather than, we will develop his character, it'll be super satisfying for you. Can't wait for the payoff. It's in reference just totally, to like... uh, the Super Chats just came in, it would be funny if she said, oh my god, yes, I love Wookiees too. Who are your favorites? So that she's like, oh, uh, Kelnaka, Chewbacca... I love um... <laughs> oh, the, the, bla the, the black one from Boba Fett. What else? Is yeah, there? the black one from that was. Oh yeah, his. Oh Boba... yeah, his his knuckle dusters are legendary. Uh, <laughs> the oh, arena. You know, you know who I Tawful, Tawful, Tawful. That that one from Revenge of the Sith. Remember Revenge him? Revenge of the Sith. 
Yeah. Yeah. He had the little gray kind of on the side. Yeah, we like end. him. Her saying, I can't wait to see a Wookiee is like saying, like, oh, I can't wait for season two of House of Dragon. I can't wait to see a dragon again. Ugh. No, it's, there's so much more substance that we're fucking dying to see. And it's just. Ryan, what are more Wookiees? <laughs> uh, Give us Ryan, more Wookiees. Where are you, Ryan? We only got three. Ryan, tell us. The Wookiee family <laughs> from the Christmas special. Isn't one of them called Itchy? Oh, if, Itchy if, and uh, and Goopy and, and Grumpy. Stinky or and if he was Grumpy. here right now, he'd probably take a deep breath and go. And yeah, you know, down, like a whole Wookie family tree. He, could, or he, he would list it all, and you would feel awful listing it all. <laughs> he would. <laughs> all the time, he itchy, would do that. Yeah, yeah. Stinky. <laughs> Stinky. <laughs> itchy and scratchy. <laughs> the Wookie. <Gee>, scratchy. <laughs> Oh, it's sad that any attempt to make an interesting character in these shows, it's never about giving them some emotional thought provoking dilemma or whatever. It's just like eventually you'll see them with a lightsaber and they'll swing it's it around. Superficial. Shoom, shoom, every shoom. Every like, time. Fuck off, dude. Every fucking care. time, man. I fuck I hate lightsabers now. I yeah, mean, they've ruined it. Dude, there's there's a bunch of shots in this show because uh, I watched some of the acolyte and there's like, you know, the shot where you, like there's a whole bunch of Jedi and they all have their lightsabers yeah. and they're all a different color. It's uh -huh. just it comes off as so fucking juvenile because it's they're like candy flavors or something. You know what I mean? Like I just it's... imagine them like signing like in the Jedi process or whatever where they it's like okay you get to pick your lightsaber what color do you want? Uh, I want the blue one or the, the orange one or whatever. There's just no meaning behind it now. It's not special. It's not like. The moments in the OT with the lightsaber, your role, or it's just some element of your force training, or yeah. your like general attitude. Maybe it's your connection with the crystal, or some force bullshit where it could change you over time as you blah blah something. You know, know. what'd be interesting actually, because you know how Luke made his lightsaber in Empire. It'd be cool if each Jedi, like a part of being a Jedi, is making your own weapon, and there's little differences that you can see. Like we can get you being able to get personality and character yeah, through their weapon construction, but each of them are are responsible for making their own weapon, or they receive one. They make their own. I thought that was like the the last one of the last things in your Jedi training was making your lightsaber. But what I would want out of that is to be able to get different character in terms of their approach for making the lightsaber. Everyone has a different tactic with, you know, not some stupid whip lightsaber, but something a little bit more interesting in terms of like what well, makes them different. They're, they're, they're remember, tactics, in, you know, in Ahsoka, David Tennant robot should have been a character where we could have learned a shit ton mm -hmm. about lightsabers and their construction and oh, what they mean God. and the differences between them. How come this Jedi is green and this Jedi is blue? That Man. could literally be something that some random well, person is just like, that could have been some awesome. Jedi have green lightsabers and some have yellow? And is like, oh, I'm glad you asked. Maybe All the time they spent me. staring at each other doing nothing. We could have had that robot giving us really good information. <laughs> well, that, that robot is... Question is um, the robot just stares. Uh, that <laughs> robot is, to Luke would be one of the most valuable things in the history of anything that's possibly the most valuable yeah. thing on on the in the universe to luke it, the amount of the answers that robot had he was jedi. he was training jedi in the in, in the very like the, the temples themselves like i can't i can't think of the, the Imagine being Luke and knowing uh, he knows all of what happened. He was there, and he's got all the data bags for everything. He's just like, just... And just... Ahsoka didn't tell him, I guess. Well, but Rags, uh, or... they, they gave us plenty. They had Ahsoka say, you're just like your dad, and then Luke smiled at was... which... That might be uh, the Darth biggest, Vader? Waste, most wasteful <laughs> conversation. You're if, just, just like Darth think... Vader. Can you think of a more wasteful conversation than Luke and Ahsoka there? How much more we could have got out of that? Ooh. Like as it, it's aging so badly when I think wasteful about it. Wasteful like, conversations. So we gotta, you have to have a fucking a top a hundred, you know. There's a lot, but that's one of the ones that comes to mind in terms of that you could have so much could have been achieved there and we didn't get anything. It crossed our arms. Like would have been funny if uh, Luke said, Do you mind if I, you know, borrow him for some time? I just wanna, you know, learn so much Can about I just, my like, history. Download him? Yeah, and then Ahsoka's like, Can no. I can I get a zip file of all the no, ancient Jedi no. knowledge? I'm trying to I'm trying to restart the Jedi Order here. All right. <laughs> She's like, throw nah, me a bone. It's, it's it's my robot, so no. <laughs> throw me a silicone. No, I need to watch all of my uh, answer machine messages from Anakin on here that I haven't watched yet. Just, and I was and like, an, an, cool. like an interstellar scene with Luke watching all the messages from Anakin over the years. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, though, <laughs> we joke, but like. 
Imagine him seeing those messages from his dad when he was a Jedi. Yeah. Like what? Yes. Hello. I'm, I'm half joking, but at the same time, there's a story there. Like I, I'm picturing Luke crying at the end. Of we it. often like, my father criticize them. He evil. We criticize oh, them for how man. badly they they do what they're trying to do. We do commit to to criticism for like an opportunity cost of why wow, you could have gone this direction, done this story, blah blah. But mm -hmm. the sheer amount of things they could have done by now and haven't is insane. They don't understand the audience whatsoever, or what they want, or they they do and don't care. It's possibly they're both. The own characters, though, it's just it's. I'll never expect that like every single one who's a part of this these projects loves Star Wars and is passionate about it. But it should be your job to be knowledgeable and understand why other people love it. Like that should be the number one priority. Why do people love this? Why? 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 Figuring that out is going to make you all the money. But they just don't give a fuck. Yeah, what we were talking about earlier about like how the, the writers don't seem to care or have any appreciation for yeah. the job that they have. And as somebody like who writes stories, I find that particularly fucking infuriating. Where like yeah. I mean, I'm not a huge Star Wars guy. I'm not the guy to pick for like writing Star Wars, but if I somehow landed well, that. Well, if you job, had to pick a science would... fiction franchise to be interested in, what would what would you choose? What would be your science fiction IP of choice? Well, I'm not. I wouldn't be against writing for Star Wars. It's just it. It's not like because I like the world of Star Wars. I I just yeah, don't so think fun. like it, it, it would Halo be my go to. Right? Oh, right. Well, I kind of I wanted to go down this path of the Star Wars writers room because like if if I was there, even though I'm not a Star Wars guy, I would be like I would rub my hands together and be like, okay. Let's make a cool show here, guys, and let's actually think about it, and we can have fun doing this. It doesn't have to be a chore. Because I think it, you can have this positive feedback loop where it's just like, if you're writing material that's actually good, it's just like, oh, okay, this is interesting. Then what happens? Like, and, and trying to keep all the characters, like, um, their continuity sound, like, between from scene to scene. It's just like, yes, mm -hmm. that they're doing this because this and the past scene. And, like, I would be on Wikipedia, or w Wiki, Wikipedia, whatever the fuck, just looking up shit. And, you're you know, describing like, passion, though. Well, yeah, you're describing uh, passion. I just look at you like a it's, freak. It's, it's, it's yeah. a good attitude. <laughs> what? It was, it was really fascinating to see people, like, hold that against uh, Tony Gilroy, that he would go to Wikipedia to look things up, when that should be a... I, should be I, standard. You know, how much... Bare minimum. Know about something. Imagine if Leslie looked at Wikipedia. To, well, you I know? just said, like, how much he knows about Star Wars... And whether or not you think it's enough or not enough should be secondary to he's willing to check to find out for sure to make sure that the story he's creating can mm -hmm. either maintain continuity with, with other stories or better yet, you know, from the perspective of a writer, leverage things that already exist to bolster his own story. That kind of proactive approach to writing where you're looking for opportunities yeah. with uh, whether or not it's something that you've created originally for yourself or something that already exists of looking to seize those opportunities to do something really cool. It's kind of, I think it's the reason why we've been a little bit fixated on the Kill Marker part, because in the mind of a writer who was more passionate about Star Wars, more passionate about storytelling in general, you'd think they'd go, okay, so we've got Wookiees, and we understand them to be this way. We've never seen one that's a Jedi before. Wouldn't it be interesting to see what a Wookiee Jedi would look like? I'm sure there's a lot that I could do there as a writer, as opposed to looking at them more like, well, that'll be good merchandise, or yeah, I mean, that'll be good in the marketing, we can lure them in, but like, that, I don't really give a fuck about that, like, I'm focusing on this other idea that I have here. Um, it's a really, it's a really bad attitude to bring into storytelling. And, yeah, you and, should see everything point, as an opportunity. Yeah, don't go much farther than that, just the merchandise and the superficial aspects of it. Uh, yeah, the, the fact the writers don't care is not just a hypothesis, like, it's demonstrable. You look at the episodes, I mean, you guys know this, you've covered all of this stuff, where it's just like, they're not even doing the bare minimum basic shit of just, like, like writing things in scenes that don't make any fucking sense based on the scene that just happened. And it's just like, exposition. are you not paying any fucking attention to what you're writing? Like, you, shows... like you have, like, no short-term memory, like... It's, it's one of the ridiculous. best shows to explain poor exposition. Like, the exposition of the show is painful. Just people yeah. telling them their entire backstory explicitly, things that we should know it happened five seconds ago, and just no faith in the audience. Like, they yeah. really think but we're like, stupid, and it's a frustrating pattern with all their it's, shows. It's, uh, it's like Theo said, they don't seem to... It's, it's, it's unfathomable that somebody who has an interest in storytelling could write the way that the Acolyte is written. Yeah.
Yeah, and I so cannot from a normal, passionate, good writer storytelling. Yeah, I, I cannot fucking understand that mindset at all. She's like, dude, you're writing for Star Wars. Fuck, People like, would kill put, to be put a bit of effort in it, right? I'm extra. Have some fun Star with it. Exactly. Star Wars and Marvel, those two properties, you can do whatever the fuck you want in terms of the options Clearly. for creative ideas. And it's like they, no one has any inspiration for both of these properties over the last few years. It's insane. You have so many opportunities for creative yeah. ideas. And there's nothing they you can have think of. You have such an immense opportunity to make <laughs> a cultural impact here by making something cool. Like, why not? What else are you going to do? This is your job. You're getting paid for it. Fucking do a good job and have fun with it. It doesn't have to be a boring chore. In fact, the, the more you mm -hmm. sort of invest yourself in it, the more fun you'll probably have. Like, the, the reason it probably sucks is because... Well, it's, I think the reason it sucks is that they don't care and they're totally ungrateful for their jobs. They're just looking for any excuse to just fill episodes up with a bunch of bullshit and so yeah. they can all go home at the end of the day. Well, like, yeah, they have it that much like kind of career kind of advancement. Of content. Yeah. Come along, get a job, put it on your resume, move on to the next thing, um, rather than demonstrating much passion, for, particularly for, I guess, what you could call more nerdy intellectual properties like Star Wars and Marvel. Yeah, and even if it is a like hard work and a slog or whatever, and you know by the end of it you're just like fucking hell, I'm exhausted. That was really hard. At least you can point to it and be like, "Hey, I made that show. People remember that show because it was high quality, and I had a positive. I left a positive mark on the Star Wars IP, and you know you look back on it with pride. And this is just so mediocre. I don't know how anybody can really be proud of this. Well, you have can have actors all the time when they look back and talk about. I reference the uh, shooting Helms Deep. In the Lord of the Rings, yeah. where actors and mm. in interviews would say, man, that was fucking miserable. It was cold. We had to wear all that shit. And we had the rain machines going, and it was on our faces. And Dylan and I, we had all to do all these takes, and we had all this blah, 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 blah. Talking about how miserable it was to actually shoot it. But, like, man, look at it. It's, product. you know, 20-plus years later, and it's still phenomenal, and people love it. And that we want People are willing to suffer for the project, and they understand that's what needs to be done for the... For the in the end, for the end project to be good. Like, even when you guys interviewed the, the dude who made the descent, him saying how badass the girls were and they were willing to suffer in the cold just to make sure the end project yeah. was good. That should be a part of it, the sacrifice and knowing that, you know, it, it's, it's, but that's lost on these people now completely. Everyone is so soft and they've ruined art with content, just pushing things out and not taking the time to look at these, these obvious fixes. Yeah, it's that, that feedback loop of, you know, good work creates more good work, bad work creates more bad work. I mean, mm -hmm. like people are willing to sit through that hell of filming Helm's Deep in the rain because it's just like, this is fucking Tolkien we're doing. This is Lord mm -hmm. of the Rings and it's a good adaptation. Peter Jackson's a good director. This material is going to be fucking, this material is solid and this is going to mm -hmm. be a good product. So I'm okay being uncomfortable filming all this shit. That was probably the if vibe. You, if you, if you've got a script that's bad and everyone's sort of, you know, maybe in the gr actor's green room, they're all looking at their sides going, fucking hell, really? This is the material? It's like, okay, I'll just say my lines, I guess, because I have to and whatever. And then they don't care. They get in front of the camera and then they say their lines with no real sort of passion or energy or emotion because, yeah. um, you know, there's nothing to bite into. I like, think Ian I mean, McKellen commented on the difference between acting in Lord of the Rings and acting in The Hobbit. It's not inspiring just being on a green screen. I can't really like, you know, having real sets is going to make, hopefully make for a better performance or at least want to commit and get more, getting the actors immersed so they can perform. It should be an element. But how are you going to do that when you're in all this green screen bullshit and just losing the, the, the artistic um, I think I'd, I'd want to go a little bit more. I think it, I think it, I imagine it in, in some part depends on like, if you think about The Hobbit, really the difficult part would be acting against, like, no people, right? Yeah, like you're not having someone to bounce back. back. I think Having, having I think people around, like, if you were doing, you know, performance capture, right, motion capture, like the kind they do for video games, you may not have a set. You can use your imagination for that, which is really an interesting part of the performance yeah. of being able to imagine, oh, so there's a car there, like, this is where the building is, stuff like that. But, I mean, as long as you've got other actors, you can bounce off. That's, what, them uh, working that's around that's it could be really awesome. interesting. Like, didn't Thanos have something where he was wearing, like, something, basically, the, because he's super tall, right? At the point where they... Oh, yeah, they'll, they'll have, like, a picture of the, the sticks, I, right? Yeah, I, I think fire. that's pretty cool, like, seeing the work around we get the end product. I'm not dissing it entirely, but I do remember Ian McKellen, like, specifically describing the difference and, like, 
well, how much that was more he had nobody to act time. against. It was him sitting yeah. in a room just on his own, like on yeah. his own in a room with nobody around, which of course is very divorced from not only the general like acting, you know, just mm -hmm. general acting where you've got other people around, but definitely like compared to stage performance. Yeah. I love a Wookiee. They're my favorite characters in all of Star Wars. And I was like, cool, this one's a Jedi. And then he died. And he was like, bye, <laughs> off screen, off screen yeah. death. Why are you proud of that? Why are you laughing? Why aren't you pissed off? Aren't you shouldn't you be asking her why? Why did you do this? Why did you crush my 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 sweet dreams? Why? I wanted to see this. I'm more fascinated by her just saying, like, off screen, ha ha. You realize that's, didn't that's bizarre, expect that, right? did you? I'm surprised you pointed that out so quickly. She knows exactly why it's stupid. Like, if you didn't even get to see it, like... Ugh. Which, it's like she thinks it's a good idea that you didn't yeah. get to see anything with Killmarker, which is really weird. Isn't it clever? You didn't expect that, now, did you? Considering, um, your expectations, I didn't know. I'm pretty sure Mola mentioned it. I can't remember if it was in episode 4 or 5, but the normal storytelling vocabulary of UT's Killmarker in episode 2... You expect mm -hmm. to see him in the next episode, or at the very least, you expect to see more of him later down the line. We have a flashback episode next so already. It's like, hmm, that doesn't seem like where we should go now. Uh, and then you come back, you get a little bit of him cooking his grass, and then he's dead. It's just like <laughs> you kind of, you like set up, it, it's it's not like you subverted expectations. You just conveyed, yeah. you just conveyed like contradictory, just storytelling, just like normal ways of, of sort of conveying to people what they should expect to happen next. It wasn't a subversion. They just cut it off. Like, completely yeah, cut off. We should have had just, a payoff of some kind. Well, it feels like a lie. Immortal. Subversion yeah, implies yeah. they're replacing something with something well, else. Like where we didn't get anything. Up in, uh, the Last of Us 2 trailer in a part oh. where he's definitely dead. <laughs> that was <laughs> like, <liar>. <laughs> Yeah. It's like when you when you're when you're taking your kid to the dentist, but you tell him you're going to Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, not what you expected, huh? <laughs> if you cry, I will beat you. <laughs> he sees the dentist and says, "Liar, you're with him." Liar. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Kenobi. Oh my god. <laughs> They fucking had that line in like what was it episode five or six? Like you turned them against me. They actually used that fucking line in the show. That line mm. with a uh, mayor something. I can't believe that. Are they not aware of how cringe that is for Anakin? So strange. First kind of death, yeah. <laughs> Which I the first time I watched that episode, I was like, oh great, Kalnak is coming back in the next episode. And because me and my roommate fully had missed the Kalnak was dead in the chair, and then I went. <laughs> It was like so this is curious uh chris gord seen the first four episodes ahead of when they were releasing and uh one of the things he'd mentioned to uh on one of the streams at some point is that you do see kelnaka injured but he's not dead it's like well he's dead <laughs> he's, he's... <laughs> um i don't know if i doubt he saw something else i think some people just i think some people legit would have thought no way they killed the the wookie jedi off screen so he's probably injured like, is nope. that what he was just assuming? Like I, 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 I never got to it. ask him because obviously I haven't, I haven't spoken to him since I saw the episode myself, but I do... The other thing to keep in mind is people have survived, you know, perforations from fucking lightsabers. Like, slashes you'd think would do a lot less damage than uh, stabbing. But who knows? Well, I mean, yeah, especially with the Wookiee. You know? Like, who knows if their anatomy is something... Like, if it's, you know, just the surface. They have four stomachs like those other Well, maybe Chewy, <laughs> Chewbacca's Wookiees have no stomachs, and so any hit from a lightsaber oh, is dead. That's, that's why he has to grill his... It's why he has to grill his grass. Exactly. He has to turn it to, like, a... He has to inject <laughs> it into his veins, because he doesn't have a stomach. <laughs> I could totally buy Wookiees have, like, a thicker hide, and, like, if you're gonna oh, kill sure, a Wookiee, yeah. I want to see him properly pierced, not, like, a little slash. Like... I don't know. That's just, that's just it's a waste of so many yeah. ways. Especially when they know, like, look at Jackie's death. They know that they have to, like, really make sure we know they're dead now after Sabine and, like, Reva. They have to double down. Um, Reva. Why not show that with the Wookiee? Like, doesn't it apply to him? Like, I just don't believe that would kill him. No. I'm not showing it was a crime. We don't even, Stupid. like, we weren't even excited about anything particularly in this show in terms of the events laid out once you get a few episodes in, but watching the Wookiee do anything would have been nice. Yeah. Could have been fun, oh, he, but he's just... gone. Like I was like, I missed that he was sitting in the chair. He's not. He's it's so it's so weird to watch like obvious negative comments being said like with smiles and <laughs> so laughs. Like, almost, almost as if well, it's almost like 
It's like you're saying things that are negative, but you're you're like convinced that they're positives. It's it's a really it's strange. This is toxic positivity. No, I think this, they know it's negative, and they're just un it's uncomfortable after. No, they're I, trying to just I, smooth I, it over. I'm not I'm not sure what to make of it. I, I'm that's why I'm I'm so curious about it because you're, you're, essentially, you're essentially saying like, yeah, I was really excited for the potential of this character, and then you just kind of like didn't do anything with him. But it's being said with laughs, um, as if it's a positive, almost like it was a good choice that was made in terms of writing. Um, it's like you have to suck up to the king after he kills your sister or something. <laughs> and you're like, I was really looking forward to no, <laughs> going I, to my sister's not, birthday I, next I, week. <laughs> no, I, no I, I'm more, I'm really very much thinking about it more so through the lens of like coming away with broadly positive feelings about like everything that comes out from Star Wars. Like, Always, you know, anything can be viewed in a positive way, even when it's obviously something that you weren't expecting that you're not happy about. Um, I don't know. Well, it's, no, no, it's, I'm, it's I'm with you because it's, um, it's a sense of uh, we wouldn't change a thing when delivering criticism to her except the emotional uh, aspect, which is bizarre. When saying, yeah, me and my friends, you know, we got the idea that, oh, that, that Kelnaka, that Wookiee Jedi, we, we, you know, you've set him up, he's... Uh, properly introduced, he's got his own little place, he's got a reason to be brought to, like, every character needs to get to him. Seems pretty strong, it's like, yeah, everything, and then he was just dead. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, <laughs> wow, that wasn't where that was going emotionally, but I guess you can take it that way. This whole interview has been so fucking awful. I mean, not to sound <laughs> rude or anything, but I'm glad we're covering it, we're having an interesting discussion, but, like, everything interesting about it is unintentional. Like, I f otherwise, I feel like I'm getting nothing from this interview. Or, like, Some... And I don't think any fans of the Acolyte would either. It's just a bunch of nothing and mutual dick sucking and both of them talking out of their ass and being too insecure to, like, correct one another. It's just, I feel like oh, it's just so worthless. But it's only it valuable for all the wrong reasons, you know? Like reading between the lines and seeing, oh wow, they're like they're clueless when it comes to making this show. I mean, the sorry, I didn't mean. <laughs> no, 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 you're, no. You're I right. agree. It's uh, the the nature of her having walked into a minefield of her own creation when talking about the skill of the actresses of the twins. Right? It's just like, why did you even do that? Yeah, she trapped herself yeah. and she's trying to like swim around it, and it was just embarrassing. And she also let it slip too that their performances. You know, even though they're twins, she couldn't tell them apart. Like she screwed that up so bad. Like she's gonna cringe watching that back. It's pretty bad. Um, and the conversation itself is just fake and empty and just a lot of nothing. Yeah. Someone said, uh, "I bet you guys a hundred dollars they wouldn't say any of their criticisms to Leslie if they had a chance to interview her. Certainly not in the tone that we are right now, because he no, gets to be." Well, like, if I actually officially set up an interview You're with wrong. Leslie Headland, I would probably take a long time constructing questions ahead of time to try and. I would like to convince her I'm interested in answers. I'm not just trying to, you know, destroy her, quote unquote. Same, I'm not interested same in with that. Ryan Johnson. Yeah. Same with d and I'm not just going to bully them, but I would yeah, try the, to the, get genuine answers that are useful. I don't need to affect a different tone because I don't need to convince Rags, John Fringy, and, and Brooks that I'm, you know, good faith. I assume they think that of me already. But Leslie has no reason to think that of me, especially if she got a very bad summary of who I am. But yeah, I would rather absolutely. ask her questions in such a way that shows that I'm invested in her work. At least I know my shit about the acolyte, right? And then I'd be like, "Why did you make these decisions? Do you understand, you know, the nature of the criticism?" And then I get into like review bombing and the concept of it, and, and ask you some of the questions about how we saw some contradictions in the interview in the in the article. It would be different tonally, but it was because I want to get answers out of it. I don't want to just feel bad. Questions related to like an attitude on the broader, you know, the the broader uh, state of Star Wars. Yeah, and what because something I'm really curious about in terms of. I am just fascinated by the comments along the lines of, yeah, no, I mean, I, we expected everybody was going to hate it because, you know, they're bad people and I, and stuff like that, where you just think, well, what is your, what do you, what do you look into achieve? Like, what do you think this is going to achieve? Do you think that this is sustainable long-term, especially when we see like the declining interest in these projects as time goes on? You know, Star Wars, where it is right now, it's in the worst place it's been, I would say, in terms of popularity. Like, I Never. think it's safe to say that that's the case. It's um. And of course, you know, audience reception is uh, very divisive slash negative. And um, I, I would be curious, like, from the minds of the people who are involved in these projects, like, why do you think that is for real? Like, why do you, what, seriously, what do you think is going on? Mm -hmm. And I would 
I was just going to ask her a genuine question. One of the first ones would be like, what is the main differences between the thread and the force? Like, what, what does it mean to you? Like what, like go elaborate on that. Like give us an opportunity that your flashback didn't achieve. Like, I want to hear it from you now. There's plenty of things we can ask to try to get something out of her. We're just like, yeah, know, what do you wish you could have put in the episode that, you know, you couldn't for any regret restraints or money restraints, <laughs> but like, you know, some reason <laughs> why it didn't make it in, you know, elaborate on what you've set up to us. Do something human. De he's dead. He's dead, baby. He's dead. When you uh, were... <laughs> right. He's dead, he's baby. Dead, baby. <laughs> he's dead, baby. Uh, <laughs> all you Kalaka fans, uh -huh. so he's dead, baby. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah, baby, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what the hell was that? <laughs> Dude, it we're sounds like... Uh, who was that character in the, the... What's his name? Um, The the guy, John, and I'll be in the chief, the, the, uh, the producer guy. What's his oh, name? Oh, Skylar Loveheart. Yeah, it's reminding me of that. <laughs> like that uh, attitude. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> the the epitome of LA douche. <laughs> like, yeah, <doesn't>... Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no respect for art on any level. It's just money and bullshit. She just seems so disattached. Like she doesn't even understand why that is really disappointing. And like just you can't just laugh through that. Like that is a clear like even people who like this show. Everyone must have been disappointed that we Dude, didn't get to see a Wookiee Jedi do anything. The How reasonable answer to the question could go. be, I didn't set him up for anything. He wasn't even given much characterization. Sorry, sweetie, he's dead. You know, like, you could have been rough with the answer, but that's, it feels to me the tone is underlying. Like, he's dead, sweetie, baby. Mm -hmm. he's, he's gone. And yeah, there's not much on. to... I, like, I would even argue that Leslie's kind of confused, reasonably. They're like, why are you invested in the character I didn't give anything to? What the fuck? Yeah, that's what I mean, but she's so disconnected. Yeah. She doesn't that's even what, understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we, we've gone over why people were, why even we were. You were I think, uh, Fringy, you're not quoted as, or, or is, is one of you or me or someone on uh, episode one or two, that Kel Naka will likely be the best character. Yeah. Yes, I probably said something like that. But, uh, he did something oh well. smart immediately. Oh, well. <laughs> and, like, that, 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 that shot him to the top on like know. you know not the killings and not like jackie dying in the worst possible way or a neck break you think well, i was about to say yeah I think, I think possible Yorn, way i think yorn got the uh i think well no the two mm. jedi who got they got speared and then their heads locked off that's uh that's no fun for them i guess it'd be really quick uh i yeah but it's not it's, it's, it's just like I, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out, like, how would you even quantify which one was the uh, the worst one? I, I just want to say, Yord's best moment of acting in the whole show, I think, was when he told Asha to run during that fight. And then when he got killed, she, we didn't even get a reaction from her. She didn't give yeah. a shit. I uh, wait, no, we she, didn't... she had she, she had a, a shot rea a reaction shot. It's just that she I don't even really remember seeing like, like an actress. I don't it's even remember. Same... Oh, maybe that's the case. Maybe we did get a shot, but she Her just expression didn't was just basically <laughs> you know totally what? static. That yeah. might be it, yeah. <laughs> that pissed me off, though, because, like... So much for that relationship. He cared about her from the very beginning. He, it's just... Ugh, it's the only piece of the well, show he, that, like... Uh, that's, another, that's probably something I would have asked her. Is like, what, what were you trying to make the relationship between Yord and Osha? What was it? The old friends that are sort of awkward with each other, maybe, and then... That's it. Looking looking back at his scenes now, it's just weird. What was the point of the shirtless thing? Was it really just to shit on him? Was he there literally just to get shit on and get his neck snapped? Was that it? Like, ugh. I can't believe it's... I can't believe I'm defending Yord. What is, what's happened? Hey, look, he's I dead, baby. Like haircut. Now, he's now dead, I'm having, like, a different thought. I'm thinking about, like, how, um... <laughs> it, it, you, think, you think about how, like, when Luke got his hand cut off, that that obviously looked incredibly painful and it was sold by Mark Hamill? Fucking and how, the shit and how out of like, most, most of the time, like, ever since then, when people get these really grievous injuries, they, they have, like, either a minimal or no reaction to it at all. Mm -hmm. His you performance... Know, that, like, that's, that's been the case, that there's, like, very... You don't, you don't really sell, like, oh, wow, that's... Your hand's gone. Or, yeah. like, wow, you just got stabbed through the gut there, you know? Like, that's... Wow, that's gotta hurt. It's, it's not it just his never... reaction... So, go ahead, sorry. Oh, it's, I was... No, actually, you, you continue with your thought. It's not even just his reaction to the initial blow of losing the hand. His body language afterwards when he's crawling on the ground and he's kind of guarding that side. And like you can just mm -hmm. see he's now he goes from fighting to crippled in an instant. And his performance betrays yeah. it the entire time. It's, it's just a, fantastic. It's a one-two hit, too. It's 
it's him acting when he loses the hand, and then when Darth Vader says, "I'm your father," then you have that right behind oh. it. So it's like, yeah, oh, it's good. like the double whammy of like, oh, oh, your day. Your day is not great. Yeah. You're literally you crippled now, and you're gut. fighting this now. Holy shit! Stabbed in the gut. Like, it's just like, oh yeah, no, nah, that's that's nothing really. You know, like nobody nobody yells when they have these really bad injuries. Like the it's fact not... that we all knew Sabine wasn't gonna die is like the death of this franchise working. Like that, pr you've ruined one of the most iconic weapons in all of fiction. Because I yeah, don't know. I now, yeah, yeah, they've ruined lightsabers. I have no idea yeah. what they're capable of. I am now analyzing this on like a meta level. Because you you can't you cannot trust your eyes they deceive you so it's it's just he's, he's fine don't give them that much credit <laughs> like they don't I'm no longer <laughs> thinking about the mechanics in the universe and what they actually mean I'm thinking of ah they wouldn't kill her in the first episode or whatever they've, second one they've it's proven fine. they don't have a passion for mechanics and rules and that's that like, is true that's disgusting to me because that's what well, makes yeah. stories that's just what once makes it I click stop, once I stop caring about the things that I see like mm. why am I here. If what I see doesn't matter and I have to get into the the meta this, the writing that, it's like, well, what why why are we going through the song and dance of even having the moving pictures? And well, trying to get it, someone into a matter. trying to get someone into a story, like to watch it with you, that it doesn't have the same like bias that you have for the genre or whatever, it's gonna be a tougher sell for them. You need fucking rules, you need logic, you need something that they can attach themselves to so they can take it hopefully as seriously as you do one day, you know? It's it's really difficult introducing people to shit content like this just rules make the story so much more enjoyable and so much more rewatchable and i just don't understand why they don't care about them especially well, in a series like this like isn't the whole point of having visuals to convey a story instead of it being a book or a, a radio play or something that what i see matters what i see yes. means something that it yes. conveys information to me to have me think things or figure things out <sighs> I just and you I you want to be rewarded for paying attention like hey this person has this much ammo this 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 and then it pays off yeah. in the end and you have an understanding it's so satisfying like set it up right there but uh, then we get this shit we're like soul why aren't you using the force how you how are four jedis losing to pocket sand like this is just you can't do these <laughs> scenes it's crazy pocket sand is is really deadly <laughs> it's, it's a secret that, it's the secret the jedi <laughs> wouldn't tell you <laughs> Holy shit, man. Forbidden magic. It's just... <laughs> Josh Pocket. Have I told you the story of Dark Pocket the Sand? <laughs> <Pocket plant. laughs> Holy shit. It's Force Healing and Pocket Sand. Those are the two most OP abilities. Stupid. Like, were, was it important for you guys to like highlight, like, he's still a dude who very clearly, like, something happened that turned him into this, and it's not yes. just, I need him for evil's sake. Absolutely, yeah. He he always had to feel... Oh my good luck like he was operating from a, a place that where are you looking leslie i think what you're saying it had to be clear the men with the guns who are telling her to answer the question <laughs> <laughs> she's noticed the, the, there the are disney. two guns now there was one before <laughs> the, the, the men from disney with the guns off screen are prodding her to answer the question <laughs> I think Simon Pegg in the, in the, the which, which one, the hostage video he did. That's what it felt like. Someone's the right hammer was just block. cocked back. That's what made her look. <laughs> oh shit! Reading from a a place that I think what you're saying. It had to be clear that his character was always operating from. Uh... Dude. They, I, so to be clear, yeah. to be absolutely fucking clear, because we'll play this one more time. The answer, <laughs> the question she's looking to answer is, did you want to make Smilo Ren more than just evil for evil's sake? That's the question she's answering. And she went down the rabbit struggling hole right now. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Play that back. And evil for evil's sake. Absolutely. Yeah. He, he always had to feel like he was operating from a, a place that. I think what you're saying, it had to be clear that his character was always <laughs> operating from. Uh, we haven't said damn. anything yet. <laughs> get there eventually. Okay, a human place, although that's a, a human place. <laughs> human place. Fuck off. What we, so what that was, was said in that big seconds, stretch bro. was we wanted him to be human. Isn't that crazy? I, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Said, like like this, what? We wanted to write this human character to be like a human. Oh my was god! Was all that was said in that. <laughs> 
So we cast a human actor to play this human <laughs> character. We, ha- we casted an human, human, human actor. That's why you just uh... gotta calm down and be <laughs> simple. You know, we like ensured that, that he had no identical twins with which I would be confused. <laughs> be confused. By. I didn't want to get confused. It's surreal, isn't it? Because it's like I hate this show, but like I can say more here. Watch. So the idea with Smilo Ren is that he has a rationale for his ideology. It didn't just spawn from nowhere. There was a history that informs who he is now. And when confronted by other characters for what they perceive to just be like completely evil with no, you know, like no, it, th- there's nothing to explain it. You know, he surprises him with his explanations of where he's coming from. I hate this show. And like, <laughs> I don't, use I don't, him I, don't as a I think this, against the Jedi think this is stupid. The I don't even believe that, that these are like actually accurate ways of summarizing this stupid character. But like, but I can imagine the lie that you would tell on an interview. Yeah, exactly. You could well, just how did it take her 20 something. seconds to say human? Is because she's completely disconnected. This lady doesn't give a shit about this project. It's just How this, can you this not who this character is? The like, main what? villain of he, your he, show. He's the only potentially interesting character. That if you're going to have someone to say someone to say something about, it's going to be him. I don't know what the fuck they're going to say about Asha. Uh-huh. I this is, that. This is, Kylo so this is episode Kylo? five, so spoilers is not... You can just refer to the things he says in that episode yeah. to explain where he's coming from. He's a goober character. He's stupid, but... <laughs> you can you can say something other than well we needed to make sure that he's human, <laughs> but in much, with Lord. much remember when uh, a lot more words and with a lot more empty pauses. Dude, at this point you want to trick her, be like, oh, you mean you wanted to move away from people like Palpatine who are just crazy? Like, just see what she says, see if she agrees. And then she say, yeah, 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 like yeah, she said it like that. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, they, but it's one of those ones. She's looking for a lifeline, waiting for someone to help her. And so she it'd be interesting to ask her, like, yeah. hey, what's your thoughts on Count Dooku? You said you love all the films. What's your thoughts on him? <laughs> Count who? Hey, you love all the Star Wars. What's your thoughts? <laughs> what, uh, how, no, what would you have, ask her this? Like, what do you think a conversation between um, uh, Qui-Gon Jinn and Count Dooku would have went? Well, you now, know, like, now I'm just imagining, like, asking her a question. Did you take any, you know, was there any particular Sith character that we've seen before who you took inspiration for when uh, crafting Smiler Ren? And I, she'd probably say something like, well, you know, all of them have she something. She'd say all of them. <laughs> so really, like, yeah. Yeah. She would say all. Oh. And the all easy them, answer is, Darth like, Mato from Palpatine, from, she definitely like, ripped Captain off. Dude, Maul. She definitely ripped off Kylo. Like, Kylo's broken mask in TLJ. Smiler, yeah, Smiler. Yeah, Smiler. Well. I, yeah, hmm, the, the, you know, the, the red out. rips? Literally the same thing I, Kylo's mask did. They did the same thing to him. Well, that's why everyone thinks he's a Knight of Ren. Is the mask matches style. whatever that means, whatever that whatever that means. Like they could have developed a Knight. Believe me, I agree he's with you have on a really that shitty What another missed opportunity, nine. man! What another fucking missed opportunity! Wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't that be uh, wild if they actually went down that route and they said, "Hey, yeah, oh, this is one of the Knights of Ren," and then he just dies at the end of Episode Nine when Kylo Ren shoots him with the gun. <laughs> like he was there. Yeah. That was him. <laughs> That was him. <laughs> that was yeah. That was them. That was. I mean, the it's not he he, his, his lifespan could be infinite when it's Disney canon. Who knows? Yeah. Strange word to use in Star Wars, but for the sake what? of the answer, Wait, what's a strange word? Human Go is back. a strange Human. word to use for Star Wars. I assume she mean. Wait, that's what she said. Damn. We'll throw it again. I'm pretty sure that's what she said. Uh I want to say a human place, although that's a strange word to use in Star Wars, but human. Place. Oh, so that's the Leslie, thing there are said. plenty of wow. humans in Star yeah, Wars. A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back aren't human stories at all because it's I, in space she, and there's lasers. And <laughs> I actually don't know what could be more. I think I think that this is actually a surprisingly, if anything, Star Wars has a problem with showing too, too many humans. non-human. Yeah, characters. it's the opposite. Yeah. Like, yeah, Can we had, get a point of view this from would an make, idiot? This would make sense had she said, how did you want to characterize Kelnarker? And she said, well, we wanted it to come from a human place, which, that, you know what I mean. Like, that would make sense as a misspeak, sort of, because human, what she should say, like, you know, personable. Yeah, like person, or, yeah. yeah, but ultimately all of them are based after what we understand to be human characters, right? That's, there's nothing wrong with that, maybe with variations. But instead she said, yeah, how did you, how did you create this human character? Well, we started with them being human, which... I know. Odd. Star Wars. <laughs> like, what? Right. <laughs> Even that was step Star one. Wars. What do they think of next? That's such a shitty answer, though, because, like, some, one of the most appealing aspects of it is the aliens. I remember you guys wanting to show with Obi-Wan to be about him yeah. and the Jawa at the beginning, because that's more appealing than whatever we're probably Oh, that Jawa get. was epic. He seemed like a little yeah, man. little traitor. He could have been fun. 
and the, the, the they could have played off each other. It could have actually been funny, and like you know, they could have got some wholesome scenes from it. You could do something. And uh, even when we saw Boba Fett as the washed up clone trooper, it's just like th there's so many things you could do. Um, no, tomorrow Morrison playing the um, you, you remember the scene in Kenobi where he saw like the broken down, um, yeah, yeah, this, uh, when he goes to the cyberpunk city, yeah, do something with these scenes that could be so satisfying. And it, the fact that they miss up, they, they pass on those opportunities is what shows me the most about like how much they really don't care about this series, they don't know what makes it work. If they don't think that's interesting, how the fuck can they like this? Like, I just don't get it. Yeah, well, and it's quite telling that the showrunner of The Acolyte considers humanity a foreign element to Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, what, what could be more human than you about, your sister? What's more human than Luke looking up at the twin sons being like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> no human, like, this week, I am no, hum, no human has literally ever done that in the history mm. of the world. Just like Luke finding his parents dead and wanting revenge. Like, what's not. Human nah, about that. passion. What is not revenge, human about justice. like the way he, he persuades Han to um go after Leia? Like she's rich to reward. Like everyone loves that scene because we just get we get it. We get what he's appealing to, and we get the dynamic of their relationship now. It's such a good scene. How is that not human? You fucking headlamp. Like this lady is just <laughs> she's so dense. It's crazy. No head headlamps are bright. Why would you use that? As <laughs> a, <laughs> oh, nice. That is true. This is the most non-illuminating uh, interview yeah. I've ever heard. Yeah. Or in a way, actually, it kind of is, just for the horrific Yeah, it's reasons. illuminating and but also it's being very, fucking yeah. vapid at the same time. It's just, ugh. For the sake of the answer, from a human place, meaning that as a human audience member, you would be able to follow... Well, hey, oh, calm down. Yeah, as a... yeah calm down. <laughs> and oh, yeah. relate... We got some dogs in the audience, remember? Yeah, what other yeah, audience? Not all humans. Are you fucking squirrels watching this? What's she talking about? Yeah, We're all like humans watching your show. Now that we've established <laughs> that this show wasn't made for me. Well, isn't it crazy? Right. Firstly, I wanted to say we wanted to make the character human, and we wanted people in the audience who are human to be able to, you know, get them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you a robot? <laughs> but we wanted to make a show that was by humans like for humans. Thing <laughs> that as a human audience member, you would be able to follow and relate with maybe not his maybe not the murder but you could how bad is this answer is this murder? seriously what is, oh. what is this because you're the same species as this character you can really relate to them we, at least that was what we wanted I'm except so for the murder part other species <laughs> except for the rampant murder you watch their show <laughs> for the killing how do you slip that in like she's so dense man <laughs> It's just, and if you had talents, you could have us be like have you know those murders be justified. Murder isn't always just this fucking black and white thing. Like you could you can add you know a little bit a little bit of complexity to your story, other than something more than the Jedi are good, the Jedi are bad. Like it's pathetic, man. So hearing these things from her is just insane. I definitely relate with what he's saying. Mm. You, you know, when he says, "I want freedom," Anyway? they're like, "Well, yeah, everybody. You know, how can you not want that?" <laughs> <laughs> He wants How freedom. Want freedom. How could you not want that? <laughs> what? Everyone I mean, can relate to him. Like you, you know what? I I'm coming around to this character. I think I I, I just realized I too love freedom. I yeah, just how couldn't you? Man. Writing 101. Whatever character you've made, the people aren't related to. Just have him say, "Hey, I like freedom. Freedom is my jam." Free, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's you so know what? Fucking weak, man. You'll grab a plenty of the audience, the human audience members, of course. Um, when he says the reason I'm doing this is because you say I I can't exist. Like it's it's a very almost countercultural mm -hmm. idea for what you know. How? I rewrote that scene so many times. I, I can't and tell you. This that... is the winner. Wow. This was the winner of all those rewrites. What were the other ones like? <laughs> I <can't>, um. <laughs> You know, like how you can get tangled up if you have maybe four different answers to a question at once, so you're thinking about multiple things. She managed yeah. to just get tangled up with a thin one thought. She's already like losing the thought. So the question: How did you deal with making sure your big bad villain was going to be human? Well, he's human, and he has human stuff. Like our audience. Like this our stuff audience. Happen when you're being honest. Like when oh, you're yeah. being honest, you can answer the fucking question. There's a no couple of explanations. One of them know? being that she really doesn't have much on him. Like she's just like, I don't know. He's, he's he likes freedom. Uh. He's countercultural in that way because the Jedi control, which obviously is her point of view, that the Jedi are mean and control everything, which we have not been shown yet. 
She's describing things she wants us to interpret and write the show on our own, but these things aren't in the show, and that's been the pattern with this this crap. It's like the people who defended Boba Fett's arc with the fucking Tuscans, and like like if he was like actually learning something in the culture. Well, he wanted it. freedom too. Pathetic, man. Which yeah. is important when you're a slave. Oh, it's stupid, man. I don't know why the fuck she agreed to do this interview. <laughs> She's got nothing to say. Seems like she didn't do any sort of planning. Joel, you know the this questions works. aren't even hard. This is probably one of 20 she did it all in one day. <laughs> and, and it's and the now, kind of thing where they're looking at the clock the whole time, like, yeah, 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 come on. Now yeah. that we've had... in the Star Wars room. Yeah, I was going to say, you just took it right out of my mouth. Uh, now that we've had a little bit more time with this interview, do we think this is a set? Like, I'm much more convinced now after seeing just how fake the entire interview is. I wouldn't well, be surprised I've... if the entire thing is. It's just a... Now that either image, she is... You know? Now that she's moved or the, the webcam, like... Tilted over. I think she and just. We can see more of the background. Seat. Like uh, we could see that there's way more Funko Pops than was originally thought. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Then there's the three over there. So that's uh, comes nine. across then 10, 11, 12 up top. So I think there's a dozen Funko Pops. Look at the way those books are just. It's yeah. like this is the book part where we put the books stacked the wrong way. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's weird. Something it feels calculated. I don't know. And these dead-eyed what? Funko Pops are killing me. What pisses me off most about the shelves is the fucking typewriter in the middle there. I'm a writer, you guys. Here's a yeah, vintage typewriter. It's like wearing a hat that says screenwriter on it. It's like oh. wearing a tattoo that says damaged. <laughs> <laughs> what a terrible decision that was. Oh my god. I'm in Hotep. Well, more insight to come. But when I finally got you brought her here, I was like, Thank you, Jesus. Like, I, I was like, it's so important what the first few lines this person says, so that's exactly what you're saying. Like, you just get locked into his point of view as um, a character, not a bad guy. Okay, so she's referring to the fact that he said back to, Soul says she was a child or whatever about Jackie, and then his response is, you brought her here, which is something that we brought up as being like an actual interesting line, but they didn't Best do anything is, further. Oh. That was it. That was it. And uh, it, in terms like, of oh, you're responsible. It no, doesn't that never got developed. It doesn't tell me a huge amount about the character because I already knew he's willing to kill children. Uh, that line doesn't tell me anything more about him in terms of. I mean, I killed someone who was attacking me, whether or not they're a child. I guess that line a... does more for Soul, like yeah. us seeing how he reacts well, to that. And that's I what just... it's a prompt for. Soul could have yeah. said something back, or we could have done something with it later. But like, that's why like, we like the line. It's like, oh, oh, it's a challenge. But then we get nothing. I'm like, oh. Right. Yeah, it's so annoying, man. This show literally should have just been Soul and Smilo. Like, it should have been about them. Him, you know, a former apprentice gone rogue or something. Like, these two actors could have done something. They're the strongest, and the rest is just a waste of time. What was the point of Jekki and Yord? Like, all the, the way this show is aging. It's aging badly already. It's not even done. <laughs> well, Crazy. they didn't get much of a story before they were killed. It was just like, oh. Yeah, we didn't, didn't do it. And my problem is they feel like they probably achieved fantastic arcs for those two. But, like, they just... They were just getting started. Like, I was just getting to... I just learned her name was Jackie, and she's dead. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? You establish a relationship or potential, like, you know, that Soul, soul liked Osha. Uh, Jackie and Osha liked each other potentially. I was... In my mind, I'm thinking, is there a love triangle in the future? What, what's the future for these characters? Oh, no. Next snap. He's dead. Just nothing, man. Well, in retrospect, the whole, um, man, I'm going to miss you when you're gone because we have gotten to know each other so well. I now realize, like, oh, they were speedrunning because they knew Jackie was going to die next episode. Yeah, but, it all makes sense. You could piece back. Because I didn't think decision. she would. I had a my bets were, were that she either. was immune. But um, I didn't think she go. would take a single blow this whole season. Your doesn't surprise me at all. But what frustrates me is like, why make him like the most honorable character? Like at least doing something good, and then just not even giving him any reward for that. When and yeah, just a it's all super unsatisfying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just it feels like anti story a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah. Like, why you just you kind of go, of like, why am I here? What's the point of all this? Of all the dramatic payoffs, of all the drama you could have mined from these scenes, you chose this? It just is shocking. Like, I don't know. And I felt, I think him saying you brought her here tells you almost everything that you need to know about the character, which is, oh, like, yes, I'm brutal. Yes, I, I just did something. Uh, unforgivable but you brought her here um you know, like... i he did he attacked it. them he, he did it yeah so yeah like the the idea of like ah 
what a clever what a clever retort you brought her here for me to stab her yeah, you I killed like her though her. <laughs> just <laughs> like you forgot that component leslie like what the hell he did it he didn't have to he could have he could have not done that but he did and then it's like ah oh, but see he was clever in pointing out that if she if she hadn't been brought here he wouldn't have done it in the first place like, well, yeah, yeah okay, like, so let's just really broaden out now? here. What was the mission? It was go and find the Kelnaka who is likely targeted by whoever this Jedi killer is. They took, they didn't, they weren't explicit, but let's say for the sake of the argument, they took at least one Jedi Master, like fucking six Jedi Knights, and possibly two Padawans or something like that. It was, you know, so that, that kind of collection. There's probably more, probably less, but point being, that's a pretty solid, strong group. Like, uh, t taking a Padawan with you just to go meet Kelnaka and possibly encounter someone that they're going to need to take care of. It's not the worst decision ever. You could get, like, arguably Qui-Gon was more dangerous with Obi-Wan if, if we're going strictly from the perspective of just a Padawan. But, or is it going to be that they're a child? In which case, we, that would be interesting to explore, but they don't. What is the limits? How does it work? Is it based on age, experience, or aptitude? How, how, do, how do the Jedi do it? But instead, we just show her going, and then she dies, and then he's like, you brought her here. And you're like, okay. They, I remember, he said that also, after he referred to her as an it. Like, she wasn't even a person. So, you know. They also established like, that Obi-Wan was almost ready for the trials. Jackie was using the stick. Like, well, that's my ago. point, right? It's, um, there's, there's discussions to be had here. And the thing is, why didn't why don't we have that chat? Why don't we have Soul talk about his regret for bringing Jackie or why he would have thought it would have been fine? And if it is as simple as he never expected there to be this much danger, well, this is why they can't do this because if he did, he would have told her to back the fuck up and leave, get back to the ship now. Um, and that would have been yeah. interesting, by the way, if he had done that and she defied his orders and continued to fight. The one of the most interesting yeah. parts of the episode oh well. was when. He used the force on, I think, Asha to like basically get out of here, like to safety, like get back, like yeah. showing some agency and like some urgency, and that he wants to protect these people. It's just there's so much more you can do, and it immediately made, made me think of so many other shows where um, c c let's think about compare Soul to the Captain in Underwater and how much more he, how much more work they show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, you know, he's such a good example, and the small, yeah, tiny dude had like 15 minutes of screen time yeah he's like a memorable character because of that he cared about his his, his crew it's so easy to, it, it's it's so important to do and they just that was the best opportunity instead they shredded his character put him on pause and had him just crying about it the next episode it's well, just, something like, that's what i meant about missed opportunities because if he had told her to leave and then she comes in at some point he doesn't expect and saves him from milo ren and he like yeah. notices it, is impressed, happy, and then they start working together, and you get your rousing music, and then she dies. Yes, oh, like it's it's even so more depressing because it's just like fuck. Like I should never so have entertained that you were ready. Of course you weren't, you know. And that was my fault. That, mm -hmm. And had we got a little bit of you know proper build up with her in the episode instead of her just being a know it all and the, and just shitting on Yord, all she did was shit on him. We never really got a chance to get character build up and like see. Her attachment to soul like the dynamic between soul and yord soul and jackie like i don't know what it is like there's just nothing and those deaths could have meant something and it's just if, if you don't know how powerful a death scene could be then why are you even writing a story it's yeah. only um it's only as tragic as it is on its face there's no deep underlying extra tragedy past isn't it sad that a young you know woman was killed doing yeah. her duty you know that's just it that's all you've got there's no personal connections or stakes or anything like that. It just kind of skirts by on what it is at the face of itself. Yeah. And to be clear... First draft, face value shit. Uh, Soul's conversation with Vanessa before he leaves, the indication is that he thinks this will be a slam dunk on May. Like, you, they're going to go there and she's, she's done so as soon as they catch up to it, which is a fair thing to assume considering he defeated her on his own pretty easily. And now there's loads of them. So what I'm getting at is there's a conversation to be had about how much danger he believed he put Jackie in. Like I said, it's damaged because he didn't tell her to fuck off the second it got serious. That would have been way better. Um, you think and so... they can salvage... Hmm? I was going to say, do you, think you, do you think they can salvage Soul at all by having a scene? Not really. Showing his regret? Uh, we're at the point now, I said this in our coverage, that as soon as we get the rest of the season, we can be definitive about the criticism of him. No matter which way you take him now, uh, his several actions in past episodes aren't going to make sense. There's like three modes he could be on, and all three of them won't make sense. Yeah. 
which is unfortunate, but that's where we are, I suppose. Um, point being, this was a interesting exploration in potential, but all we did was have the line. I would never argue that this line made it so that I fully understand Smilo Ren as a character. Oh yeah, not even close. She seems could, to be arguing The, the amount of different contexts he could be saying this and meaning it. There's a lot Almost. of stuff you could do. Almost everything that you need to know about the character, which is like, yes, I'm brutal. Yes, I, I just did something uh, unforgivable, yes. <laughs> but you brought her here. You mm -hmm. know, like you, you, you recruit children and you train. Can you oh read that into it? That he thinks he you know did something than, unforgivable? You know what's worse than recruiting children? Killing them? Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say outright murdering children is probably worse. Then again, I guess you Especially... wouldn't consider that murder because she was attacking him. But to be fair, she was attacking him because he attacked her. So... What are you going to call well, it? Well, especially <laughs> if you're like, if you think that the Jedi are bad and they have kind of taken, you know, all these people. So if anything, Jackie's a victim of the, the, the Jedi brainwashing. Yeah, trying to portray it that way. Like, he just killed a child, but you recruited a child as if that's worse. Like, come on. Well, this, this isn't something that was properly explored in the show at all. It's so fucking weak. We're touching on realms of conversation that she wouldn't even have entertained entertaining. The, uh, we go further down the rabbit hole, right? It's like, you brought her here, and then it's like, well, fuck you. You're, uh, she's trained to be a Jedi. She's trained to just stop people like you from killing everyone in the world. You're the one that needs to be stopped. And then you'd be like, yeah, she's brainwashed by your insane cult. And it's like, if she's brainwashed, then why are you killing her instead of trying to unwash the brain? It, how, how is that the righteous decision from you to just kill children, as you call them? Refer to them as its as well? What's that about? Yeah, instead of having that conversation and back and forth. Wait, what? what? What I hate about the shit writers is, especially with episode six, it's like, you want me to think that Smiler Ren actually has something reasonable behind all the insane shit that he does. Like, fuck off. Good luck with that. And then you're you like, see, the Jedi, you know, they're indoctrinating children and forcing them into battle earlier than they could possibly handle. Then they get killed. Isn't that awful? It's like, you're killing them. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I wouldn't have to kill them if they weren't here. <laughs> Like you, <laughs> you attacked. You, you didn't have to. It's funny that he was like, you know, May is giving up my identity. It's like could have just killed her. I would have been that over. And he did try. Remember, he threw, uh, like, he threw all kinds of shit at May and Osha. Yeah, if we Osha... learned about his character that he doesn't want to kill any more than he believes is absolutely necessary, could be something. Could be interesting. Some type of code. Some type of code. Some system he's using. Like it's, it's he killed the children something. in self defense. <laughs> <laughs> not, nothing told, to work with him. He told May that you can't use a weapon to kill a Jedi, and then he just does it. Like God, you asshole. Oh, that is weird. By the way, someone just highlighted. Maybe. Is she calling Jackie a child? And the show entertained her and Osha having a relationship. Weird. How old is Osha in this? I can't remember. Obviously, it wouldn't be a Mandela's age, right? It'd be. Was it 16 years plus however old that she was in the flashback? Was so like early 20s? 20s then, right? Mm. Mid, well, mid 20s, maybe? If how old were the other kids in the stick training scene? Like, that'd be a good tell. Well, I, I mean, it's already, it's already enough to say if she's calling Jackie a child and Osha's an adult, feels a bit weird. Hmm. We don't know the age specifically, I guess. Here, you hmm. know, like you, you, you. Mahler. It was 120 years before the Phantom Menace. It was a different time, all right? They just, <laughs> things were just different back then, all right? You can't judge a them long time ago. based off of the morals of the rise of Skywalker or wherever we are. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know where we are anymore. You recruit the children and you train them and you bring them into situations that they shouldn't be in. And now you're. <laughs> you trained them to come and find me! But that's the thing. You should have done that. Now I gotta kill them. It, like, what? How is this? How does she believe this is coherent? He sought he them out and them. killed them. He can't. Like, it, it's one thing to have led them into a battle the with, like, they were creatures. In the first place is because Jedi had been killed. Yeah, what nonsense is this? Jedi. They were investigating. They got there. Another Jedi was dead who was just sitting in the forest minding his own business. And then, then he came out, whipped out his lightsaber, and yeah, they engaged him. But it's seriously, it's something that um, Smiler Ren has said a couple of times. His logic is, well, they don't tolerate the Sith, which means I have a right to basically, like, kill them all. Um, and he said that enough times that it seems like they think it's a compelling argument. Of like, well, I mean, they don't tolerate my, uh, my view on the Force, so I, I gotta get it. 
one of the most destructive, backward-ass fucking pieces of what they might actually ironically refer to as philosophy, to say that when my enemy will not allow me to be free in this world, I have every right to kill them. It's like, bro, they have every right to kill you now, because you exactly. just said that. Like, they're missing that big piece. You just there, skipped like, yourself oh, into justifying their initial actions. Congratulations. It's, it's as though, like, he's back on Unknown Planet, like, well, yeah, they should just leave me alone. It's like, well, they certainly aren't now. Um, so, I mean, it's if, so if, fucking short-sighted, and there's conversations... I don't mind a character coming to this conclusion and then having that conflict laid out. You know, fucking rooftop style with Daredevil and Punisher, having that kind of aggress like it could be a, a that enforcer character we've memed about for a long time was previously his master and they get to have it out you know because whatever situation that means them both are able to talk to each other and he's like you guys won't let me be me so i'm gonna have to kill all of you and it's like oh you wonder why we won't let you be you yeah like someone to <laughs> actually address the situation realistically and roast them because they would never have the patience to have a scene like the daredevil and punish no the daredevil and punish a rooftop scene they would I could never see them saying it's a boring that. scene that one <laughs> like, like, it's one of the best <laughs> scenes in all of marvel period it's yeah, just it's good shit it's and it's it's fucking anyone who loves the superhero genre needs to love that scene it's like there's so much more to it than just fucking people punching each other it, like Severely the philosophy lacking in a lot of this character. content, just the exploration of characters. You know, what have we yeah. got right now is, well, he's human. <laughs> All right, yeah, sweet. I'm liking him already. This is great. Yeah, he's human, and you guys brought kids. Like, that's it. That's, yeah. There's nothing more I mean, than hey, that. You know how we like all humans. Mad at me? You know? Like, yeah? yeah? Oh, yeah, let's, let's get that in full. Just to make sure, because Rag has already said the obvious counter. <laughs> And now you're mad at me? No, you I know? didn't really get that in full. That was five <laughs> seconds, really? I mean, we'll roll you back even further. We're here. Mm. You know, like, you, you, you recruit children, and you train them, and you bring them into situations that they shouldn't be in. And now you're mad at me? Absolutely fucking yeah. insane. When this, this yeah, is what she's nuts. saying is going through his head after he stabbed to death his Padawan. You're mad at me? <laughs> like, I was just, look, I was just, I don't know how to make a joke of it. He went there to murder them. Like, I don't, I, I got nothing. They mm -hmm. went to go, they went to go try and save Kelnaka because they're like, oh, he's going to get, you know, whacked like the others did. We got to go and save him. And in their mission to stop, you know, that from happening, to stop him from dying, they were attacked and well, almost all of them murdered by this Sith who's like, oh, Ooh, yeah, but you came here. Like, this is not a point whatsoever, but even if it you was, be... how does she justify the red shirts getting killed? Well, I was Those about guys to say, yeah, killed like, killed what about the killing about of them? everyone else that aren't children? Yeah. He's saying, like, let's ignore Jackie for a second. What about I mean, all the other he... guys that he just murked? Are we going to talk about them? If he was looking to de-escalate the situation, why did he kill Kelnaka, <laughs> float on down <laughs> spookily, yes, say nothing, and then pull out his <laughs> yeah. lightsaber? This is what I mean. <laughs> like, his justification was like he, he, he was exposed thanks to May. He's like, technically not yet. She hadn't told anyone anything. And even if she had, no. it's not hard for you to disappear, my dude. Yeah, exactly. And, and I mean, you know what might have helped you in terms of not exposing yourself? Not telling her to go kill some Jedi. That might have helped. Why you could have, it's like, a big galaxy. <laughs> just go someplace and train your Padawan and, and just don't bother anybody. Mask. They'll Turn never find you. Mask. Turn it into a frown on mask and, and, then, and then you'll be good. <laughs> it was unreal. Uh, I, I See, they treat this world like it's tiny. That's why that's not an option it's within not the a story. Galaxy. You know, it's that's not... why it's, that should be an option within the story, but it's not. This place is just like a couple <laughs> planets right next to each other that you could just go to in 20 minutes. If it was an actual world where they respected the world building, then those options would be, be explored within the show, but they don't. Fucking stupid. It's not just how annoying it is that the character himself has obviously not explored any of this, because she thinks this is all very compelling, but that uh, it's completely missed opportunity for like interesting conversations. And then, of course, the whole nature of the show, like we go back and watch it, and then we're like, wait, he's actually trying to argue it's their fault when he antagonized and killed all of them to begin with. And it's like, why? Well, we haven't even been clear yet. Do the Jedi come and kill you if you're using the Force outside of their purview? They probably have a very robust system of rules and regulations on what to do when they encounter Force users. It's like uh, we were talking about on the, the Witch episode. Destiny, or whatever it's called, right? There should be a whole 
protocol that they run through and they should send specific people who are mm -hmm. charismatic and diplomatic about this and they should have well this happens or this happens and da 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 and if it comes to it you make an ultimatum you don't want to maybe there's some sort of a like a like a, a dowry like sort of bit of reparations or payment that's made to the person because you're essentially taking the kid from them and saying hey because we're doing this, we'll give you this. It's something, right? But there would it would be, be similar to this. What happens when the Jedi encounter a Force user who's like an adult, and he's he or she is too old to be trained, or like, what, what do they do? What's that process? We we we're never gonna fucking see that. And I'd like to. Sounds like it could be interesting. Sounds like it could be dramatic, intense. Full of it's, interesting standoffs and, you know, emotional moments, the separation between parents and kids, or maybe, what if the person who was Force-sensitive and is the adult, what if they have kids of their own, and they're married, and they're living on their planet? It's like, what, do the Jedi just take them? Or yeah. are you safe once you hit an age limit? Like, what What if he says, well, can my family come and live with me on Coruscant so they can live down the street and I can visit them? Well, that seems pretty reasonable. Do the Jedi do that? Could you, you know, explore any of these ideas? Yeah, and 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 it yeah. should get complicated because like the way Leslie's selling it is that we I could say uh, there's there's just some guy on a planet who's force torturing everybody with lightning. It's like hey 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 low low electricity so they stay alive. And the Jedi turn up and they're like we we think that's bad. And he's like so you won't let me be free. I see. Well, there will be consequences for this Jedi. You have overstepped. You are controlling the world. And I just be like are we are we gonna entertain the fact that they. Stopping people from doing evil shit will have its benefits, depending on the, the situation. And then, of course, if they come across someone who is just sitting down, he's reading a book, and they're like, you have immense force powers, we can see you floating that boulder right above you, which, let's just say he is. He's like, yep, not interested in you guys, though. And then they kill him. I don't think any of us are going to buy that, you know? Yeah, so there's no way. You have to figure it out. You don't want to make him cartoonish. We need, uh, we need this to be better explored, and we, we're through six out of eight. So... And this is the show that could have explored it, which is frustrating because, like, understanding the philosophy and the approach that the Jedi take, it would have been, like, basically installed here. Like, this is where you would have showed it. And we, they just have no interest uh, in explaining the difference between the thread in the forest, the difference in between, uh, or, like, the approach that they take to get the children. It's something that's been a part of the entire series, but they'd never, they have, like, no desire to explore these things. That's what I mean about them being disconnected. Like, they well, really aren't fans of this shit. If there's some kind of miscommunication that leads to everyone killing each other in the next flashback, then that should not be reflective of the Jedi. Rather, it should be reflective of some mistake that was made at that time, and it needs to be, you know, responsibility needs to be taken for it, whatever it is. Uh, it's going to be really cringe if, say, for example, they fucking mind control the guy again, and then someone flips out and lightsaber kills somebody, and then someone else flips out and they all fight, and then someone does force explosion, and that's what the sound was, and boom, they're all dead. Yeah. And be like, see, this is what the Where's Jedi our... do. You'd be like, well, this is just, this was just chaos. I don't even know what this is. Where's our crazy, tense, inglorious bastards, you know, bar scene or something like that, where everyone's super on fucking edge? Because at any point, you could have some crazy force power or lightsaber swing or something go off. Um, you know, and everyone's just like super like, oh shit, oh shit, what could happen? What could happen? Or is this going to be peaceful or is bad stuff? We're never going to get that. As cool as nah. it would be to open a show with that. Well, well someone just said not enough episodes for that. To... They'd have to commit to more than one season. You can definitely do this in eight episodes. Easily. Definitely. With the amount of time yeah. they've wasted, of course, yeah. yeah. Well, they I, have I, I actually think they've done movies. damage so... to the notion of fucking information per time because, like, we covered, covered at Red Letter Media that said there's not much to talk about because we're only four episodes in. Like, whoa. Three episodes whoa. of Arcane. <laughs> like, Fuck off. Why are, why are they being mean to Red Letter Media? We're also Whoever nice makes to that them. argument, I mean, that that is such a fucking dumb thing to say. Like, for, one episode <laughs> should be plenty to get people invested in a fucking story. I like hate this defense where it's just like, well, we're only four in. Yeah, well, four's a lot. Of, okay. <laughs> have they heard of things called movies? Yeah, exactly, right? That's insane. And painful. And like I said, convincing people that it's like normal, that we can go through all the... Imagine someone says, like, not much to talk about. We've already got one season. <laughs> like, oh, God.
Yeah, we gotta wait till the next season to that's see our, the you know the motivation. That's where we're going. That's our future. These idiot like shows that are so fucking terrible that people have that take. Like, ah, there's not much to talk about. We're gonna have to wait till season two. It's not. This is insane. It's conditioning people to never ha- get answers yeah. to anything. Never have anything explained. To have oh, yeah, no this, standards. The it's comparison insane. was made before, but one episode of Smiling Friends being the uh, the first episode. Much more to say about that yep. than uh, the four from Acolyte. Mm-hmm. It's ten minutes. Yeah, like, yeah. No, I was actually, I was, I was quite amazed watching that show, Smiling Friends, because it, I thought it was like a twenty-two minute show, but like so much is happening in its short span. Like I was like, but that was only ten minutes. Holy yeah, shit. yeah. Like they, it got through so much stuff. Why? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just. Putting it out there that possibly oh. that could be the case. Um, so he <laughs> ended up being essentially very anti-establishment, which what? Oh my god! Because he goes around uh, murdering them. Yeah, because he I, kills I, children, I right? He's anti-establishment. <laughs> it's, it's a fanfic at this point. Like she's just making this shit up. He's very. And she's hoping that other people will make it up too. Like this is not in your story, Leslie. The fuck you talking about? <laughs> He's anti-establishment because he goes around and murders Jedi. <laughs> it's like, okay, sure, I guess. You know, it's so yeah. Which is obviously what the the rebels are and the resistance. Is. Oh my god! I need like I need it rebels. understood. She just connected through child killing Smilo Ren to the rebels. I don't think she knows that though. <laughs> She's just. Stream of you know, right now. she's a rebel, like the like the Rebel Alliance. She's not going to remember a single thing she said in this interview. Like, she's just when I heard this, <laughs> I was I was like, how have people made videos on this statement? Leslie Hedler, the showrunner of the Acolyte, just said, you know, in a lot of ways, Smiler Red is just like the Rebellion because he's anti-establishment by killing the children of the Jedi Order. Hey, they had humans. <laughs> he's <sighs> like a human. Christ. <laughs> I guess she says rebels and resistance. It's like, yeah, as if there's any fucking whatever. Like the resistance. Matter. Same shit, different day. In Star Wars, normally, but once I locked into like, oh right, he's the, he's the voice of 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 the, yeah, the, like the the counterculture of this era. Oh, Milo my Ren God. is the it voice of the counterculture. <laughs> this interview fucking sucks. I it's never this. worth the wait. It's oh, never oh worth the wait. God. Listening to her stamble through this shit, and then it's always Hitler was just the bad boy in the third. <laughs> he was the counterculture voice. That's crazy, man. How can you see this? <laughs> what is happening? He's like a horrible what monster. What happened to Star Wars? And, and she's he's actually going the route of like, yeah, but he's Star misunderstood Wars. because he lives in a world that's oppressing him. So yes, he can kill everybody. You you haven't portrayed the Jedi as like you know. They're kind of normal. <laughs> like, they're, they're, pretty the, thrilled, man. They when they walked they in, for permission? yeah, the asking for permission thing, which was obviously ADR. And so it's like, so you couldn't even commit to it. The forceful <laughs> nature of them, you made them more chill. How can you it's say so that important. this is okay as a response to them? Just kill it's them. So important, so important to the show, and they did, they couldn't even commit in that. Does moment, she remember? So we at least know what their approach is. The Empire had a oh. giant death laser. They blew up a planet. Yeah, do you remember that's, this? That's how you commit. That is like, how you commit. Why do you think the, the rebels Empire were willing to blow them forward. up back? It wasn't because, you know, the Empire came to my house and said, do we have permission to do a test on your child? That wasn't what the Empire did. They were much worse than that. Is it okay if we blow up your planet? <laughs> with, with your permission, of course. <laughs> with, with your permission? <laughs> with your, with your, okay. We have the right to blow okay. up your planet with your permission. Can you imagine at Tarkin saying that to Leia? This is what I'm saying. Like This bitch didn't watch the fucking movies. Well, <laughs> Princess Leia, do we have your permission to blow up your home planet of Alderaan? <laughs> no. She's like, no. Like, Joke's <laughs> on you. We don't need your permit. And then Vader's like, we do. And he's like, oh. We actually, we do, sir. <laughs> Please? <laughs> I just need your signature here and here. What if okay. I give you a nice iced cream? <laughs> it's so stupid. Well, if you put it that way. Uh, pull back the curtain, Commander, and show her what she's won. <laughs> <laughs> a new speeder. My God, man. 
This is what I'm saying. Like, this is what you brought us to, Leslie. Mine was like, like the rebels. <laughs> Counterculture, man. <laughs> Absolutely nuts. Oh, right. He's the he's the voice of 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 the yeah, the like the the counterculture of this era. <laughs> sure. Which is why it's so important. The counterculture of this era is really shitty, and I hope they die. <laughs> That's what I'm learning. Uh, unfortunately, considering that note about how he was, his story's supposed to fully unfold in season two, he's probably immune now. You didn't do a good job of exploring the Jedi's culture, so why are you bragging about the counterculture? Mm. Like, both of it is bullshit. It's important to go through those first four episodes, because I think if you don't know what the world, this world of Star Wars, the High Republic, is like, which we haven't seen in You don't know what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the implication... no fucking, don't sit here and pretend like you have any clue what the fuck is going on. The, uh, what she just said implies that you understand. You needed to see the first four episodes to understand why Smilo does what he does. What exactly in the first four episodes tells you why he had to kill all those Jedi? They were looking for him. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because he killed the. Uh, well, I was, I was, I, I literally wanted to be like, hmm, why were they looking for him? It's like, well, you know, he was just being innocent. That's why. You're like, a, hmm. A, okay, let, okay. It's not a great look. <laughs> but uh, they wouldn't. Have you have you considered how much you like freedom? Yeah, that's a human thing. Oh. Humans like that. Yeah, definitely. Even though I think the argument could absolutely be made that humans don't. Well, that would be a good dichotomy. Well, it. Well, I, I think I brought it up in one of our um. One of our watches, like, the, are we going to make the foil be between the Jedi and the Sith that one is about passion, freedom, independence, and the other is about, like, um, maybe discipline, control, um, community, or, like, how are they going to make the two different? And we, we still haven't explored that yet, which is the, it, it's, it's just a crime that that hasn't been done yet in any mainline Star Wars stuff. Why do they hate each other? Why do the Sith not like the Jedi? Like, really, tell me. Like, um, why do they hate each other? Snoke not training Kylo, like, after saying it's time for him to complete his training, oh. is, like, that I will forever be pissed off about that. I wanted, like, a 20-minute scene. I wanted it to be thick and, like, juicy enough to, to you know, like... Yeah. <sighs> but I wanted a counter scene to De Yoga, Yoda's Dagobah. Like, uh, his, his speech there is just perfect. Someone who can, like, give me a dark version of that and, like, give me the perspective. Give me something! Do something! You suck! I'm so tired of what they're doing with this franchise. They've bro. done freedom. There's no but yeah, you could have like a kind of like a fight club Tyler Durden scene, right? Of like, stay with the pain, don't, you know, like maybe <laughs> anything. <laughs> I don't even care. Just give me pain, something. You know, this what is you your think. pain. This is, this is it. Stick with it. Yeah. Now I'm just imagining a fight club in Star Wars. So you got your imaginary friend who's like <laughs> going on and you, he's just leading you. On your adventure. So Darth Maul seems so on board with the Sith, and I need to know why. Like, he was just fully convinced, like, this is the way. And yeah. no exploration of it. In live action, you have to understand that the Jedi are not the Jedi that they are in the prequels. They're not the Jedi that they are, um, you know, uh, pre and post Battle of Yavin. Like, they're just... How? Explore that. What, Tell what me, are they? Tell hey, me hey, how. Hey, Tell me what the differences are. She said they're not the Jedi pre and post Yavin. H how many Jedi were there post Yavin? Hmm. Well, I uh, basically we're asking <laughs> how how much did Luke change? <laughs> well, I mean, it, Luke. It's we never saw what his Jedi order looked like. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Sorry. Part, it, it, you know, I, yeah, I'm talking post Yavin, right? Because that's a that's a time frame. I just I'm amused by the fact that in if you go by the film continuity, what would the right? Jedi the, order? drawing all the stories like we got from it people. well the idea that she's like they didn't follow the teachings or the the sort of atmosphere the 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 society the operation of yoda in dagobah so because there's nothing else in the movie <laughs> to go from other than when oh, luke yeah. becomes a jedi because you know they haven't done this yet in in their own continuity in the movies they haven't shown us depending on what third parties remember they described it themselves as non-canon so what does 
What does the Jedi look like post Yavin? What does the Jedi Order look like after the Death Star got like blown up? They're about to show I mean, us with Rey rebuilding it. it, right? And then all they've told us is that it fell oh, the fuck right, apart yeah. with Luke. That that's their new continuity with Ryan that they haven't well, actually she, fleshed or was out. She, was she thinking like about the old Republican going, "Wait, I don't know enough about that to confidently say that." Uh, yeah, you know, after Yavin, yeah, that's right. The Jedi Order pre and post Yavin. I find this all. This is just lip service. She's just saying, like, it's it's not necessarily this era, this era, this era. And you're just like, describe any of those. Do it. Uh, describe your era. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's Do the it. difference? Do something. Like, she never going to elaborate on any of these points. Like, no, it's different than other things. It's still human, though. And the interviewer, yeah. dude, if, the, if I wish the interviewer would be like, what do you mean by that? Like, just like, can you just something ask her to, to <laughs> something? Can you explain how are they different, Leslie? There's just no this isn't a conversation at all. And that's what's most fresh. Like, I, I don't know which one of them annoys me more. Leslie and her bullshit spin and, and oh, it, empty answers or the interviewer just doing fuck all. It is kind of funny. Can you to expand say, on your point, Leslie. Oh, I think I left the oven on. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she yeah. doesn't remember what her point was. <laughs> To summarize a pre and post Yavin, by the way, it's just like uh, all of time, <laughs> which would probably be a little, uh, more, yeah, you know. What was what was the thing basically with Yavin? I don't know. Was a bunch of Jedi got slaughtered or something? Oh, it's, it's it was when Anakin blew up the Death Star. No, no, uh, that's that's uh, a new, a new, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's it's a new hope. Basically, oh, right, that's okay. like the biting point in the time. You know, a lot of every uh, basically like when you see a lot of stuff in terms of referencing the timeline, it will be in reference to. Uh, before or after the Battle of Yavin 4. Right. BBY, right? Right, okay. Yeah. BBY! Yeah, In a different space where they're operating with less um, uh, oversight, People. number one, and they're also operating uh, well. So the Jedi are, are operating they? with less oversight. Less oversight? Interesting. I mean, it no. sounds like they've actually, the well, I mean, here, compared right? to well, I mean, surely the least would be whatever we were imagining with uh, Luke's Jedi Order. It seemed like Absolutely. they could do whatever the fuck she, he wanted. Basically. If she's comparing strictly he to the prequels, whatever he wanted. the curiosity, I would say, is that there seems to be a lot more corruption in that the, the very bosses of the Jedi aren't allowed to know about the goings-on of many Jedi being slaughtered uh, for some reason. Super sneaky at the top. Like I said uh, in one of our recordings... This is tantamount to like a, a sort of treasonous act to take full control over what the Jedi can and cannot do in the form of Venestra without consulting the Jedi Masters that are all on the High Council that are supposed to fucking. This is unprecedented, then right? To like the Jedi Council. Near 10 Jedi are dead. Uh, not the Jedi Council, the Senate. There's sightings of a yeah. horrifying monster thing killing everyone who has a lightsaber. You're like, we, we, we need to deal with this. And it's like, yeah, we're not going to tell you. I, what are they going to say when they find out? And of course, the answer is. Maybe they all die before anyone can get this out, which is getting more and more absurd every episode in a funny way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Think of all the Randys that know now. All the little creatures and people around all these planets that find out about yeah, this obvious shit know. happening. Not a beaver. They know. He's the beaver's yeah, the beaver everything. knows the fucking pip droid. Well, I got his memory wiped, so maybe not anymore. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> That's the piece. That was a close one. And the moths yeah, eat I, everything. The I moths, would fucking, they know it all. I would love it if on the High Council we had a scene of the... Well, first of all, I don't want them to touch Yoda, but if this was not shit, having Yoda be like, so you had a bunch of Jedi die and you decided not to tell us because you didn't want us to have a political embarrassment. You're fired. Yep. Like, Yoda it's not even close. Yoda this green chick like also, submit, that would be my thing. Thing. submit your dumbass whip and go home and never practice the submit force ever again. Dumbass <laughs> whip. Yes. I want to see Yoda roast the shit out of this chick. That would I, be yeah, I want him to say, like, what makes you think you yeah. had the fucking power to just say, oh. nah, none of us are going to know yeah. about it? How, how I, I want to see Yoda... Go I want to see Yoda go off like Otto when he's yelling at you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to see him snap. Oh my god. My Stupid grandson is a fool. <laughs> oh, that seems so good. Oh, it's so good, man. With... I think a little Take more time, hubris. Leslie. Like, of course, we're doing the right thing. We're doing the right thing. We're doing the right thing. This is how we've always done it, and that's the right thing. You, you know, know what? Stopping a horrifying oh, Jedi okay. killer probably is the right thing. Yeah, I was about to say that doing the right thing of investigating some deaths and then trying to apprehend the person who was responsible. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, seems like the right thing, but... Yeah, know. but Fringy, think about the horrors they did to the lesbian planet. We're going to find out next episode, so how about that? 
Yeah, but what? But that, what about all of the Jedi, like the Jedi that Soul brought, who weren't there, and whatever that was? Who yeah, all the Jedi were part of this system that generally seems to mm -hmm. operate in a way that favors the average person. They haven't shown us anything that's definitively I mean, horrible yet. I mean, you know, they, they mentioned the prequels that hadn't been like a war in the Republic for a really, 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 really long time. Yeah, who knows like how much the wreck on that uh, statement? Well, I mean, I, I suppose they're inviting it by setting something early, like that's that's close enough to the prequels that it that it's going to call it compared to the old Republic where it's like thousands of years earlier where you can. That's much more of a case of you, you're a lot more free to do whatever you want. Compared to in the, you know, how can you create a whole bunch of stories with all of this drama potentially involving Sith shortly before a character said the Sith haven't been seen for a millennium mm. and there haven't been any wars for a while? Hmm. Who cares? More lightsabers. Just woo, dump woo, lightsabers woo, into light. it. Mm. Give everyone a lightsaber. Yeah, you, get a lightsaber. you get a lightsaber. You get a lightsaber. Oh, there's so many of them at this point. That was a gold mine on that planet temporarily. Nobody picks them up or treats them like they actually have any value. It's so yeah. annoying. Not for, even Ocean. You know, or, um, when we... Even the beaver, he should be hoarding that shit. Like, <laughs> I'm rich. <laughs> I'm fucking rich. That could be life. a setup where he picks up the lightsaber from a fallen Jedi and then he gives it to someone else later when they need it. And it's like, oh yeah, that's right. Six episodes ago, he did that. The little beaver guy has a lightsaber. Everyone's like, holy shit, the beaver's got a lightsaber. Run. <laughs> I, I would be it would be cool to see a scene of a bunch of guys like from the Jawa and Obi-Wan to like and discussing the value of lightsabers and like maybe like a, the green one is like the rarest one or something like that. Just some type of scene in a bar. It could be so satisfying. These little throwaway lines. Yeah, there. black and, market stuff where. Yes, yes, you know, yes. Like, you know what I'm, you know what I'm like, hey, I got a I got a lightsaber. Like, and you, I, I have it's a real. I need a demonstration. Yes. <laughs> Yes, you know what I'm trying to build, but like the idea of one of them, or Darth Maul's, the dual wielding being like worth like, you know, just something for the fans, man. Play with it. If they cared about this, they would know how to use these opportunities. And for my example, would that be like Arcane? Like Arcane knew how to like put those little Easter eggs in for the fans without it affecting the people who didn't know what the fuck was going on, you know? Um, this show doesn't have that at all. I've kind of said this with, uh, we were talking about it in, it was Mandalorian season. I think it was like the first or second episode of the third season. Um, we had not very long ago, we had a clone war in which one of the sides in the clone wars used these super duper mass produced um, battle droids. And they all had the same super standard blaster. And you've never seen them again. They have completely disappeared on a galactic scale from the world, and that is bizarre to me. It's like those things should be everywhere in Star mm. Wars. These cheap, mass-produced blasters that we never see, ever. And I'm thinking, man, what a, what a failure of world-building it is to just never yeah. have those things pop up, to never see battle droids ever again, to never <laughs> see people who use them to guard their... You know the, their little forts and their 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 manners, and to just have them to do basic security or to do menial labor and tasks. It's just like there's it's no waste. sense of connection between one thing and the next thing. It's so compartmentalized and weird. One of the best things they ever did um, was making the stormtrooper gear like rusty because there's not any maintenance now at this point in time for it. And it's like, oh, that's a nice little touch. Fuck all. Since then, it's like if like, the little details. The, the things that oh. should happen we could pay attention to you get they would, re, they you would know re, reward your you know what i'm talking about in terms of just like um standard protocol and whatnot it makes sense for you to see worn down gear now in this in this point in time and just any other type of continuity they have no interest in um seeing them on brendock and seeing how they uh negotiate the the issue with the witches and how they didn't um yeah, there was no negotiation. <laughs> there was no negotiation. <laughs> Why well, use that word? There One of the twins negotiate. turned into a psycho murderer, and the conflagration yeah. happened. There, there was no, there was no fucking dinner scene. We they needed choked. a dinner scene where they were at a table and they were talking about things. They and choked they the dude for no reason. You can't just choke someone for no reason and then say there was a negotiation. Like it's you just... so odd. They <laughs> they open Crazy. with lies that are really obviously proven wrong, and then. The, ch the child is shown a lightsaber and she threatens to torture someone and then th th you're like, what, what is happening? And it's like, hey, we have every right to test that child with permission. <laughs>
You're saying that, what the fuck is happening? And, There's no negotiation. Why, yeah, why would they... we're not part of the Republic. Well, that line just happens and no one gives a shit, so why did you even have it? What was the point it, of having that line? It's so hard to understand how they view the Jedi. Are these people, are you actually scared for your life right now and if you are why would you let them go on the ship with them to do the do the test like you have no idea of like what the actual stakes are for the witches what they think and you just get even more confused by the lines like oh there's only four of them who would miss them like why do you want to kill them explain what's going on this is the episode to explain and you're just making it more confusing and i like to think that in her mind she thinks have these four jedi just never go home yeah, care. who would miss them? Like, what? You fucking crazy oh bitch. He's like, what's <laughs> wrong with you? Are you stupid? What's wrong what with are you doing? Because I'm just like, the, after a line like that, you need to explore their perspective. I need to know, is this bitch fucking retarded? Or is there like a reason for her to be this hostile? I just don't understand. <laughs> I just don't understand anything anymore. Shows insane. Nothing makes sense. Nope. The Star Wars universe used to be a universe of like logic and basic cause and effect and you could really imagine yourself living there and i can't do that anymore i can't say oh yeah i can imagine being in this world because everything's just nonsense everyone's a psychopath or they're 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 legitimately stupid and nothing means anything and i can't imagine myself in that world anymore nobody dies <laughs> like nobody, like and it, when they do it's fucking stupid it's just i don't understand man like Reva and Sabine just broke the game. It's just there's no rules anymore. Children may be uh, recruited by them. I mean, I I know that sort of the idea. I mean, if I can sort of unpack it, I'm assuming that the idea was that would be great if you would unpack yeah, I was gonna it. Say, yes, be yes, showrunner, please. Love that. Yes, that'd be <laughs> give great. us something, anything. Yeah. Maybe if we're lucky, you'll put it in the show. <laughs> that parents give up their children almost as an act of public service. Like we have a poor sensitive child. They would be better with you guys to train, et cetera, et cetera. How come that's not, you haven't even, any of you've this? never even put that in. Why isn't that in? Uh, yeah, but like, you, you can explore the idea of like, the show. they'll have a better life with you with more mouse, less mouse. Like we're, we're poor. We can't afford this. Like you will have a better life with the Jedi and, and them trying to convince them and, or, or the, whatever. There's so many ways you can play with it, but even that they don't do. They don't even put that basic thing in the show, which is so pathetic. But I think if, like Mother Anasea and like Manny's character, they don't align their beliefs with the Jedi, and I'm assuming that there are some Force users that don't. Um, oh, is it, can you stretch your imagination to to think that? Interesting. It's always been huh, so. I funny. wonder what would happen if that was the case. The analysis of the very few pieces of information we have, people have always been like indignant about the Jedi wanting the children so fucked up and everything. This like. They're getting indoctrinated right now into a crazy cult that involves what the Jedi argue is like dark side usage. Who knows what the fuck all that means? We don't get to explore any of it and everyone just kills each other. Like, this is your show. Congrats. Like, would they see children going to the Jedi as a, as a good thing? Yeah. Um, Who knows, Leslie? You didn't put it in the show. Yeah. Potentially. Who knows? I, would like to I don't know. It just. Know? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Wow. I thought Could you'd you paused there, know? but that was just awkward silence. It's fucking I don't know. I don't know. It's harder to know, I guess. You're not knowing to... is easy. How do you not know? How do you not know? Like, you're supposed to know these things. It's just. And she's I so... just write the Star Wars show. I don't know what the fuck goes on she's in it. She's going to be like, Leslie, this is your story, right? And so she's like, I don't know. Maybe it's oh. yours. I don't know, oh, okay. something about twins and one of them's evil. That's... This is as far as uh, I want. It's a human story about reliable. twins. That's, I've, I've already added loads. <laughs> a human story about twins. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it was we important that the this. audience understood all of that. that you didn't, didn't tell us <laughs> that. No! If they come up with that, then they've just come up with that in their head because they're trying to figure out how shit works. We've got nothing from the Jedi oh. about how their recruitment works beyond, like, just casual stuff that involves... You know, we've had them be like, you don't want to be a Jedi on the side of the, the crazy cultists. Sure, but that didn't, like, mean anything. We, what is the operation standard for Jedi? What we've seen is pathetic. They come in and lie about how they found them and what they want to do, and then they just say, with your permission, can we do some tests? And then what? 
That's what that's what we've got so far. Which doesn't make them seem that bad, honestly. Because if they discover that both the kids are hyper force sensitive, and then they say, Well, now we have to kidnap them. That's just how it works. We'd be like, oh shit. Though I still think that we would all have trouble with it in terms of um comparing them to the other actions, such as letting people go who are force sensitive. I don't think it lines up. They need to be definitive, careful, and informative about any of this, but she's uh, she's describing a show she hasn't created. We haven't gotten much of any of this to work with. What I was thinking since there was a group of them is, like, if they're not okay with them coming away, maybe they're okay with them having, like, a, a, a mentor or, like, someone who lives with them for a few years to make sure they actually have some, some guidance of some kind. Like, this is our job. And it's not just about you be being a Jedi. It's about you using the Force in a safe way. That's the priority. Then that would explain the full perspective. We did that, And that would give them an opportunity to explain their side of it. Instead, we get nothing. Like, absolutely nothing. I, that's why I'm so confused by all this. Like, you really... They botched this in a way that I didn't think was possible, even for a show this shit. Like, they did zero. <laughs> like, there's, there's this whole other way of looking at this world that isn't Qui-Gon getting Anakin out of a horrible situation so that he can become a Jedi. So it's, it's a, a positive coded transition to, well, maybe that was a really positive situation, but perhaps there were other ones. I don't know. You know what Darth Vader did, right? <laughs> Didn't end up well, but <laughs> the uh, there's plenty of questions that come out of why going picking up yeah. Anakin. Um, How just, many uh, kids are beloved by their parents and they don't want to see their kid go and they will fight and kill to stop the Jedi from doing that. What happens then? Also, the word the coded Jedi was completely go, superfluous well? there. Yeah, but Shmi was an example of what I was saying. She knew that he would have a better life as a Jedi than what she could provide, and th they couldn't even work with that. I find the use coded very cringe, especially in sentences where it has no purpose. And she said the situation with Qui-Gon and Anakin was positive coded. Well, that's because that sentence was cringe coded. <laughs> I just like just commit, Leslie. You you believe it was a positive yeah. exchange. The slave was released and given into a Jedi order that he, by the time he reached adolescent age, considered to be a positive effect on his life overall. I assume this, this is what I mean about it being complicated. Unless of course she feels that it's complicated, in which case say that. What's the positive no. coded thing? What, what are you what are yeah, you trying adding, to say? Adding the coded thing just it's like perhaps it's like one of those words that just yeah. makes it hard to really understand. Like just commit. What are you so doing? then you if know, the it's point frustrating to listen to. Is to go from that to be like, I want to show another example of how the Jedi might take kids from from a culture. Um, we're six episodes in, and we still don't know what the fuck you believe we should have learned from this. You seem to think we should have come away with a deeper understanding of how the Jedi operate, though. The fact that they think, the fact that she thinks she, they've explained so much of this already makes me think there might not even be a flashback. And like I was saying earlier, it's just, I... I, I we might be giving them too much credit even with that. So this show, I don't know, expect the worst pretty much. A lot of the times when you have very young, um, young humans, we'll say, because humans have come up a few times in our conversation. Mm -hmm. Eventually, a young human learns that the thoughts they have in their mind aren't shared by other people. They realize that the, the world is, is sh they share this world with other people, other independent agents. And if that, if they have a thought in their head, they have to convey that to other people or else the other people just might not know that exists at all, right? And when, when infants learn to do this and young children learn to do this and they realize that's just the way the world works, hopefully that's something that's carried through by writers when they have ideas in their head and they're writing a story and they can't just assume that all, this little, all these little thoughts in my head about how the world might work and important details about the organizations in my fiction, you have to tell us that. You have mm. to imply it or refer to it, or you have to write it down or have a character say it, or you have to have some reference to it so the rest of us agents in the universe can, can, can sort of like, like enjoy your story. You can't just assume everyone else knows it. Yeah, they want us to do the work for, for them instead of actually you know, putting that through, throughout the story. Like That's where the talent comes in, and they just skip that. They want us to like, do all the work. I can't stand that. Well, it's coded, you see. It's all coded <laughs> in to the show. <laughs> Drop it. Yeah. It's, it's world building coded. <laughs> it's coded <Phony>. coded. <laughs> ones that were not. And did the, did the Jedi learn from that? And when they did learn from that, is that why when Anakin shows up, they're like, he's too old to train. Like, we can't, 
she's implying that this event with the lesbian planet is why they introduce a rule of you have to be a certain age before we can train you. Oh wow, that uh, that very much feels like here. Let me just staple my story yeah, onto your thing here. Yep. I'm gonna exactly staple the pages onto like. the yeah, there we go. Yep. I'm the reason it was me the whole time. I've made my mark on Star Wars. They always have to do that. They need yep. to like slap their dick all over it and just like I wish I wish their <laughs> marks weren't skid marks. Yeah, man. <laughs> Rub their nasty underwear all over the fucking cannon. Like why Whoa, do I was talking that? about tires. What what are you what are you talking what? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> You can't you can't oh, be man. thinking about Tech Knight, right? That we're we're past that conversation. Oh. <laughs> we've moved on to Star Wars, all right? You gotta keep up. You know, we've learned we've learned that this doesn't work. You know, like um I don't know, those were the th this So let me explain, Leslie. First of all, <laughs> you say they've learned you can't take them at a young age because of the events of what happened with lesbian planet people. Two kids. One who did not have any uh, connection to the Jedi, went nuts and started trying to kill them all. Child 2 did have a connection to the Jedi and uh, amicably left them yeah, to pursue their own ways, life. Yeah. To me, this is evidence that it's good that we send people to the Jedi. Uh, they act as a filter. They prevent you from becoming a murdering psychopath, and they might just set you on a lifestyle that you prefer that doesn't involve the Jedi at all. Mm-hmm. This and is you know, why this is difficult for me to understand what your criticism of the Jedi is. Why would they put if that in the show if they wanted to criticize them? It just makes it so fucking confusing. If we're going with the idea that I think she's trying to convey, or wishes that she conveyed, that um, this is all bad, May was, or Osha turned out to be the bad one for whatever reason, right? That means that once in, what, 20,000 years, you get a dud, so you have to make a rule to make sure that you don't, like, what? The Jedi have been around for many, many millennia. Remember, this is a very ancient organization in Star Wars, from my understanding. So, just because it happens bad once, you, the, w yeah. what kind of a rule is this? Your reaction to this happening in the very specific circumstances around it are that, eh, once you hit seven or eight or whatever, we can't train you as a Jedi. Like, no. No, they you know, wouldn't um, do that. You know, the evil oh. twin and, and many other of her strategies for writing are all very stereotypical and terrible, like tropey ones. I wonder if uh, she entertains, hey, you know what? You know Osha and, uh, and May? What if they're just in Soul's head? They never actually existed. He's just seeing them. They're not actually there. And they reveal that in the finale, and everyone all over the world is like, well, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> and she, she's like, no, think about it. You're like, well, what about all the actions they took? It's like, nah, it was done through the <laughs> through Soul's force power uh, the subconsciously. Force. The force. Yeah, it's like Fight Club. Uh, like she gener uh, he generated those sort of beings in the force, but they were never actually there. It's Call of Duty Black Ops coded. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> it's stupid coded. You have to be <laughs> stupid to understand. It's stupid coded. Things that I was interested in, and I, you know, killing Carrie Ann off. So much of that was about. Just get ready because people are gonna the Jedi are gonna take some L's and people <laughs> the Jedi, <laughs> some the Jedi are gonna take some L's. That, right? some L's. L's. <laughs> he, he killed Trinity in the first ten seconds because he, oh the Jedi God. are gonna take some L's. Fuck we so hired her to right. be the Jedi's first big L. Oh damn! So, oh, yeah. To be absolutely clear, if I were a creative <laughs> officer or whatever, and she comes in with a pitch for a show. And she explains the list, and I'm like, all right, tell me about the characters, tell me about this, tell me about that. And then I say, like, you know, what's the role of the Jedi in this story? And she says, well, the Jedi are going to take some L's. I'd be like, please leave. Just get out. Just, that's it. That is good. The Jedi way we to have, take We've had L, the bro. meeting. The fact that you said the Jedi are going to take some L's, we're good. Yeah, it's like using, it's like if you speak to me and you use one of those skibbity words, we just, we're not going to be friends. I already know that we're just not going <laughs> to, it's not going to happen. All right. <laughs> Especially after all you can tell me about the characters is they're human. <laughs> <laughs> she's got she's got nothing to say, man. She's had so much time to make a point. Jenna nothing. Gonna take some L. People are gonna die, <laughs> um, and especially Jedi who have experienced you know interactions with Sith on this show are gonna die. Um, mm. So, spoiler alert. Well, what I can say. About do you get that? That's her basically what trying to account for the fact that, yeah, you know, Caddy Mundy's line still will make sense in Phantom Menace. Like, 
fucking won't. It already doesn't. I, I, I you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to <laughs> craft quite a web in order to even begin to convince me that that's possible at this point. How the fuck could that be the case? They already fucked it up huge. He already, like, knows! It, uh, it's just... Why do you lie to me? I why mean, do you do this? All the effort they had was Sol not being able to get that message out. I can't believe... Because uh, for those who haven't seen it, at the beginning of our episode 6 coverage, we're memeing about what they'll do to prevent Sol from getting the message out, and then they unironically have the power cut out twice. For no reason oh. at all. It's some of the most embarrassing lazy. shit. Yeah. And, lazy, then, lazy, and then the power lazy. cuts in, and <laughs> the evil secret person trying to kill him on board is knocked out. So he has everything working in favor of him, and then he just leaves. Doesn't tell him anything. Gotta figure out what Where the fuck the go? reason for that is. I don't know. Where the fuck did he even go? Like, what are you doing? Like, you, you're just... you're. Oh, I don't know, man. What happened? It's crazy. What happened? What a goofball. What happened to you, Sol? Like this guy. What a goofy goober. Uh, the about uh, Manny's character in Osha is that, you know, he's looking for, he's looking. Why does it say Manny's character and Osha? I don't know. I guess, uh, yeah, well, I mean, we, 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 we do that sometimes. Sometimes, you know? yeah, but I, but I'm not like so intimately involved with the production of these things. Eh, I'll let just... that slide. I, yeah, I'd love to. Uh, I'm, I just wish she <laughs> told him smile art. That's all. Yeah, it's odd. It, it's odd. More that... accurate. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. 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 Looking for an acolyte. He's looking for a pupil. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's pretty clear after this episode that he sees potential in Osha. Osha, obviously being force sensitive, not having trained, but. You know, in the Sith world, does what do you that? Mean, uh, yeah, I was about to say she has trained as a Jedi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but not in the Sith the world, fuck? the world that's been extinct. Oh, <laughs> the Sith <laughs> world. Well, the world of what is when she says Sith world? God, I wonder what she actually means. <laughs> who knows what the fuck yeah, she means when she says Sith world? You can apply that to she... everything she says. That like, could what be a... does she fucking mean? That could be a carnival for all we know. <laughs> Welcome to, welcome to Sith World. world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have to be this tall or <laughs> this height to get it. <laughs> How loud can you breathe? And you have to get an audio score and it'll turn it into like a crusty sort of... of you know, the sheave coaster. Lightsaber or mole and you slice it on the lightsaber. <laughs> What's your Sith name? And they just have your regular name cut in half and then Ilo on the end. <laughs> Ren. <laughs> Order Darth 66 Ragl Darth Raglo. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just like a line of different words in a thesaurus that mean Darth evil, Lolo. but just with a slight tweak. And I was like, <laughs> you're Darth Sinistero. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Maybe no. that's a real character in Star Wars. You're Darth Evelius. Robot chicken. Robot chicken can pull this off. Maybe. Oh, I want to go to this carnival. No, it sounds more interesting. They'd think that was brilliant. They'd high five you, Franny. They'd hire you. Yeah. Woohoo. <laughs> you did it. Dude, free. They'd be like, Sinisterio, how'd you come up with, where do you get your ideas from? Yeah. <laughs> where do you get your ideas? It's genius. <laughs> well, let's, uh, I get him. I get my ideas. left. I, look, all right. A, a master of the trade never shares his secrets or something. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't think that's, I think, uh, I think chefs do share recipes with each other, though, you know? <laughs> to help each other out and they can learn and refine. Yeah. We're not sharing our homework here. World does that, Matt. Is there a difference? We don't know much about their policies on training. You know, mm -hmm. we know that, like, you know, a little bit with like um, Tyrannus and and um, Ventress and stuff. You know, we know a little bit, but most of the time, those are people that started as as Jedi, as Osha did. So mm -hmm. uh, the question so then becomes: Well, what, is he? So going I love that. So I like how she she walks just herself into those nails yes. out. Walked herself into. Oh wait, no. What I've done here has actually been done many times before. Yeah, fucking what? Smilo used to be a Jedi. He admitted yeah. that in Episode Six. This is so because she was saying, "Oh, it's interesting." As someone who doesn't have training, oh wait, well she does have training. 
you know, as as a Jedi, which you know we've seen that a lot before, and it's just like, oh, whoops! I just walked myself into yeah. saying that what I'm doing. You started to realize everything she has to before. offer is just repeated shit. Dude, but it's so hollow. fascinating how that's been happening. Oh yeah, you know, twins. Usually there's a good one and an evil one. Um, <laughs> um, well, you know what we're doing here is it's like it's you know we've never seen a Jedi, a former Jedi. That, oh, um, <laughs> she's realizing in this interview how trite all of her ideas are. I like the term that kept coming up in your acolyte coverage, where it's just like they're twins and one of them's bad, as if that's like a log line for the show. <laughs> like, yeah, put that on the poster. There's a secret evil twin. Mm. <laughs> oh, that sounds reliable. Give me your elevator pitch. Uh, you should twins be laughed out of the office. Bad. You should be like, "That's hilarious." Yeah. What else you got? And then they're like, "No." And you sort of look Stop up from doing actual work things. and think to yourself. Dolphin. Have you got any friends to bounce ideas off of? Because this shouldn't have made it past them, let alone to me. To be able to really turn her in some way. And so I'll tease that, that that's obviously something that's... But I don't even think that's a tease. I think it's something that if you're watching, it's very clear that's the next step. But what I can tease about it is that... Why would it be clear well, why, that that ought to be the next step rather than it actually doesn't work at all? <laughs> like yeah. you basically get somebody who has who is absolutely <laughs> resolute. Somebody who... Because, I mean, if you know, if it was like if as I know that none of these characters are particularly well written, but if Jackie was in this situation, she'd have like answers to all of the the, the things that he would um bring up every time that he because that was what she was presented as, right? She's like very well read and uh and basically like down to the down to the letter, like follows through on all of the Jedi doctrines that she's learned. She'd be yeah. the kind of person who'd be able to just like relay really easy responses to a lot of. I don't know why we'd assume, like, oh, well, yeah, the natural course for somebody who's Force-sensitive who gets picked up by a Sith right after that Sith has is, is committed atrocities right in front of her, that, like, oh, well, yeah, I mean, obviously the next step is she's going to get turned into a Sith, or at the very least will be, like, tantalized by the prospect. It's just silly. I'm tired of it. It's actually getting really boring, this idea of, like, how these characters have, like, no conviction at all. It's way more interesting to me at this point to just have characters who absolutely, there's no way that you're going to convince them out of it. Where they just be like, are you are you serious? You think you can have one conversation with me and talk me out of, of an and ideology that my I life. believe to be just and correct? And I've seen where your path leads. You know, like Obi-Wan, right? He's the kind of guy who would absolutely just stonewall. I mean, we see it, right? Yeah. When he's talking to Count Dooku, it's just like, yeah, what do you think? Like, what do you think you're doing here? You think this is going to work? I'm not interested. Oh. But, but like, I, I, I don't know, why, why is it way more interesting from a writing perspective to be like, well, I know what's interesting, my character having no conviction whatsoever. She doesn't really, you, you know, know, she just sort of... When they created it, they thought to themselves, okay, so we, we gotta get it past the whole we killed your friends and family thing, right? Let's do that quickly then. How are we gonna do it? And it's like, just, get I, they, uh, one of them, oh, he, uh, Yord arrested her, didn't he? Yes. Yeah, okay, get that in there. He arrested her, uh, unfairly. What else we got? The kind of Jedi. She voluntarily went with, sort of, kind they're, of. They're just the Jedi in general. All right. Anything else? Um, well, you know, she she liked Jackie. Well, I mean, you that know, wouldn't have worked out though, because yeah, they don't do the whole really relationships a... thing. I which, think that's solid. So yeah, those well. three reasons. That's solid. You isn't can't that just hilarious? be friends. Isn't that hilarious though? Considering how, exactly how many relationships with Jedi and Padawan are like friendships. That, that we've seen you can't stop people from having no. friends Obi -Wan like, you and can't Anakin do that. Were friends I, like, well we've seen I, soul is clearly dealing dead. with attachment issues even uh vanestra pointed it out that he's a bit too attached for the average jedi but the, it's a realistic level of attachment you wouldn't expect him i'm glad they have the scenes allowing the actor to show that it's affected him to lose 10 people in front of him that he knew very well well let's go all the way back to the beginning to the beginning of A New Hope, where Obi-Wan says that Anakin was a good friend. Like, this has been... Yep. I mean, like, from the inception of Star Wars, this has been a thing. One of the earliest yeah, pieces yeah, of information. Yeah, friends with each other is, like, that's just ridiculous. Yeah, the there's that, no that's way. That's kind you, of the yeah. thing, right? It's something that you could talk about, is that for as much as there's discussion about not having attachments, I mean, we see it pretty frequently. They absolutely have attachments to each other. Well, that could be a point of contention between the Sith and the Jedi on what attachments are allowed and what is, is, is it too, like, like, what does that mean? What kind of attachments? Do, what do the Sith think about that? Or that, how does that play out? What are the differences? 
Um, it's you, you can't like you can't have people not be friends. Um, like obviously the whole band of brothers kind of you know especially that Marshall um, you know no one gets left behind kind of attitude where you get very much you know attached to and you know reliant and develop relationships with people you know in in the military and that builds you know strong bonds and. It's like I just I can't see how that wouldn't happen with Jedi. It's a positive. It it's only a positive. It's, it's like you said, building a stronger bond and having that camaraderie, like band of brothers type thing. It, it's <clears throat> it's an important element, even in the police force. Like it's something that they really um, try to encourage. Um, and the fact that they would just exclude that completely in this is just bullshit. That's mm -hmm. why it was frustrating when the dude was getting strangled by the witches that they didn't even react. Yeah. Like, no one gave a shit. Well, Kilnaka like, made a really? noise, but that was it. <laughs> that's it. Wait a like I see that happening to someone I like, and I'm like, oh, you, this is like e ending instantly. You're force pushing that bitch over, or you're you're lighting a lightsaber if, and you're if, moving it. Like if the that's Jedi just not acceptable. Are waiting for any excuse, that was it. You know what I mean? That was absolutely. You just tortured like one of our people. You've lost any right magic. to self defense. We will kill all of you if you make even a single move that's offensive against us. Give us the children right now. Like it could, whipped out could the be that simple. Right there. Well, now you've reminded me of another thing that's frustrating about the show. The idea that, like, Smilo logic lauded <laughs> um, Soul out of killing him, where he's like, whoa, I mean, you got me. So, you know, you can't, <laughs> like, and he, he did the same thing as well, like, later on, where he's saying, like, oh, yeah, Osha, you know, heat of, heat of the moment, it's okay. But now, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't use that lightsaber on me. And and all of it is just ignoring. It's like, dude, you you can use the force. Like <laughs> at any point in time, you could use your abilities in a way that's going to cause harm to people. But like, it, it, but but she probably thinks like, yeah, these are good arguments he's making. Actually, these are compelling arguments. You know, Soul would be in the wrong if like right after disarming uh, this highly dangerous individual who who just that moment showed how dangerous he was even without a lightsaber. It's like, ah, oh, well, you know. He's got you there, hasn't he? Yeah, you never thought of that, Soul, did you? And they're like, ah, yes, I am a good writer, me, who <laughs> wrote this show. I can't believe it. I, it's so stupid. <laughs> I was always really hit by Obi-Wan's line in um, A New Hope when he says, uh, Vader was seduced by the dark side. That made me feel weird because <laughs> I was a kid. And I didn't really understand what that word meant. And then later when I did, I was like, what's he talking about? Um, Why would it make you feel weird if you didn't understand the word? So she, as an adult, later understood what it meant and then still felt weird about it. Ugh. Surely, surely she understands that. Oh, I think we've just discovered but... why she did what she did in episode six. She took the word seduced from yep. Alec Guinness's Obi-Wan and decided it was sexual. That's... Well, Alec Guinness, I mean. I mean, he is a stud, but I still yeah, like... But... You you get it right because she's she's wild. alluding to an episode that hasn't released yet, being six. Which I guess she's actually telling us that part of what got um, uh, Osha to chill out was seeing him naked, seeing his dick. Yeah, specifically having a scene so where she stupid, looks and sees man. his dick. Like seduction. Like, do you understand? Strictly has to be sexual. These so interviews are fascinating stupid. because they give us answers to things we didn't even know were going to be questions. I thought. Yeah. That I never would have thought that was the origin of that scene. That she watched A New Hope as a kid, was freaked out when he said he was seduced, because she thought immediately Anakin was sexed into the dark side? What does that mean? And then as an adult, she found out what the word actually can mean in different contexts, and still said, that still doesn't make sense. Unless, in my show, I'll make it that they get sexed into the dark side. There we go. God. Anakin saw Palpatine's dong. He yeah. Bad. Uh, That's pretty much it. These are the people who write Star Wars now. <laughs> what, what happened? I, 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 f I imagine that if Tony Gilroy was in this call with us, <laughs> the invitation is absolutely open, Tony, if you're watching this. But if he was in this call with us, would his brain like explode? You, you know. Listening to this interview, he's like, what the fuck? You know he would, he would laugh with her and then be like, <laughs> but, but, but you know what it means. You know what it means, yeah. You know what Word yeah. Sam is, right? Like, come on. You know what Obi Wan meant, yeah, yeah. You and know, she's like, he not really, mean... and he's like, mm. okay, fine. That that it is like anyway. <laughs> moving on, like that is crazy. <laughs> that is actually wild. Yeah, not stuff I expect to hear.
But uh, and it was um, I'd throw TOJ in there. Like she got this imprinted her from A New Hope because she's fucking deranged. And then she saw Kylo <laughs> doing the fucking with swallow the shirt run off. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah swallow red. red. <laughs> and then it was like, oh well, you know what happened, right? Like Palpatine, he just you know he was like, oh this robe, I gotta get it off. <laughs> <laughs> like. I, I Senator, believe... is that a lightsaber under your robe, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> well, I can't believe. <laughs> Did she think there was a cut piece of dialogue? Like, Veda was seduced by the dark side of the Force. She That's why they called him. Was one, one day, very hot. He invited him. To... He was... That's, That's why they called him. Right. He, he was a stud. His workout regime was. It was intense. Palpatine <laughs> was rarely clothed in his office, and many of the meetings <laughs> were a steamy Again, affair. Again, this feels this like a fucking <laughs> robot chicken joke. Yeah. That's why they call him Creamy Sheev, man. That's how they get the origin of that name. <laughs> it's fucking disgusting, man. We can oh. hear him yell unlimited power through the walls. <laughs> <laughs> many people falsely assume Anakin fell to save his wife, but he fell to simply be with her. Eve himself. <laughs> a kid, and I didn't really understand what that word meant. And then later, when I did, I was like, "Do you think she's about? like memeing? Um, or like so she's, she's bullshitting?" With... Well, she's I mean, not... go from the clip, she right? Seems to be earnest. We know how humans work. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, I can't know what's in her head, but just watch the way she says the words. Intercourse. Look at her facial expressions. What do you think? Why is she telling us this, if not to inform us as to why she constructed an episode that hasn't released yet? That she's trying to be spoiler free about, but that we know involves someone getting naked in yeah. front of another character to convince them that they're not yep. as bad as she thinks they are. No other benefit to this statement other than that. She's trying That's to. That's what I mean. The, the, to me, that. every yeah. piece of evidence points to she is very seriously explaining that seduced put an idea in her head from A New Hope, and she's pushed it all the way into a TV show where she wanted a character to seduce sexually yep. uh, a character that would not, you know, be on their side whatsoever to a point where she might just be. This was her vision. Um, a complete. I mean, what what better encapsulation of modern Star Wars is written by people who didn't fucking understand Star Wars? They were watching it and be like, "This is me. This means this." And then someone next was like, "No, not even a little bit." Because <laughs> I was a kid and I didn't really understand what that word meant. And then later, when I did, by the way, there is room for a dark side user to use sexuality as like a, something of a, 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 you know, like a really sexy hot woman convincing a guy to join her yeah. and her team. You, you yeah. can do that. It's I just don't think it's suitable kind of for the man. This just ain't it though. Well, first of all, he killed a bunch of people she described as family. She killed a bunch of people uh, who she considered innocent. Killed a bunch of people he attacked, and then killed no, someone that, up to this point, we've been told in several meta references and a part of the story that she was interested in potentially sexually. It's a relationship. Exactly. So why are you telling you me that this is the perfect setup for seducing her? What is wrong with you? She like she loves a bad boy, you know. Plays by his own rules. Doesn't take no for an answer. You know, he's a rebel. And especially the conversation that they have, like, none of this is convincing. She doesn't even address the fact that he tried to kill her, not just all the people that he killed. Yep. Like, it's... That it's, didn't come none up. None of it worked. <laughs> it was so none weird. of it worked. Hey, dude, you swung a lightsaber at me. What the it's fuck? Like, yeah, you, well, what are you about? fuck you. Put your fucking clothes <laughs> on, bro. I'm not looking at your fucking dick. You tried to kill me. Fuck you. Like, where's where was that scene? Well, and then, <laughs> as I showed earlier, there's people being like, oh my god, are they are they an item now? It's like, after, what, five minutes? Jesus. That's what I'm saying. Me and Mark genuinely, like, are they going to kiss? Like, we're both simultaneously, like, what? Because anything could happen in this show. I was, well, I, I mean, was. that 50 just 50. seems like the, the whole, like, shipping culture just infecting the actual writing. That's why I said, like, this is Raylo part two. This is the verse Raylo. That's all it is. It's like, it's the same bullshit. I, and um, it just annoys me because why she would that be, be of any that. interest to anybody? Why would someone be like, "Oh, that's an interesting idea for a story"? It ain't. It's stupid. That <laughs> I was like, "What's yeah. he talking about?" Um, so with with the way that um, someone is turned to the dark side or someone joins the Sith, it's to me, it's all about seduction. It's all about appealing to the part of that person. Um, or the thing that person wants the most, you know, with Anakin, it was to save his wife, you know, it was, it was to, it was with Osha, it's cock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Veda was seduced by the sexy dark side. Well, yeah. Dark what, what side, is big like, boobs. What is it that Osha wants that he's offering? Nick. I, like, I mean, <laughs> what else? What do you want? It's simple. That's according to this show. 
That's it. You can kill all her friends. Fucking take a swing at her with a lightsaber, but well, whip it out and like. Are down. we gonna believe whatever the people end up analyzing and inventing for the show, or our lying eyes that shows I'm gonna kill him and sees his cock in his ass and is like, hmm, actually, <laughs> she puts up what it. like a few seconds of you killed everyone I care about before she gives up on that. She didn't even put like a lot of effort into it. She said it no. so casually, like you killed Yord, you killed Jackie. It wasn't like any emotional, like just what a botch scene. It's like it's it's. It's even well, and, worse. And his counters were so bad that, that if she had said, you tried to kill me, he may have just said, yeah, what's yeah. being alive is lame. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and she might have bought that too. She's like, you know, he's got a good point. There, actually, that, yeah. was, that was her reaction to the Jackie thing. Like, him, what he said about Jackie was like one tier above him saying, who's Jackie? Like, like that would have been just as like substantive as what he said. Like, just saying, like, oh, that would have went nowhere. Like, what does that mean? How do you know anything about their relationship? And like, why would you assume that? And why would she accept that as an answer? None of it made any sense, man. It made both of them look so stupid. And his, his helmet thing, we didn't even discuss that. The, the, that. the attempt of adding some rules to his helmet, but then it just doesn't even really... What did you think of that? Like him saying, I, I use the helmet, cut the sensory deprivation, but at the same time, no one could read his mind like Magneto? Like, how the fuck does that work? I think they want us to think that all of his standard senses are down, but his force is skyrocketing, and so that's how he's he's like Daredevil or some shit. Yeah. Uh, don't dare. Don't I know, dare. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Was to stop the suffering of the person he loved more than anything in the world, more than his own, you know, self. That's why it's so tragic. Like he 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 almost like put her over so much stuff that he he couldn't see the forest for the trees. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anakin <laughs> couldn't see the forest for the trees is an interesting way of putting it. As he's <laughs> slicing down all of these children, you know, he's just, he's not quite seeing the forest for the trees. Nope. <laughs> That's the Skywalker. There's just too many of them. Kids. What are we going to do? Um, <laughs> and, uh, those stupid hats. With May, it was revenge. He was definitely, Manny was definitely, you know, feeding into well if you want revenge then you know come with me and you can do that so oh wait sorry um he said that he thought that she wanted more than just revenge yeah he was annoyed when he found uh, out that she wanted uh, your revenge own, yeah your own like story against you but he he expressed dissatisfaction with that that it was just revenge that she was after so hmm hmm you forget your own story who knows just wait, wait until season five, bro. It'll yeah, it'll, it'll make five. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Osha is going like, to be wow, a different I'm glad tactic. I hung in there. Like, what Sorry. does Osha want? You know, and what does she want? You know, more than her present moral code would allow. Would when would her? What would her present moral code crumble under if she was offered? And mm. I think for Osha, it's something more <laughs> emotional. And I think if you've been oh. watching the show, you know. Oh. Close enough, I think you'll you'll know where that's headed. This, this statement is so fucking... That's yes, what I'm saying. Knowing that it's cock, that's all that it took. This statement is just so painful to listen to. All he had to do was show her his fucking Yeah, dick to be absolutely fucking, clear, you know I mean? if he spends you, all of the next episode philosophizing and completely convincing Osher of his position, it would still be true that he got the hook in with his dick. Yes, exactly. He could have a phenomenally written episode, but it doesn't matter. We saw the beginning. We saw the origin of this relationship. You can't win, Leslie. You're fucked up. She keeps tainting her own ideas with this shit. It's crazy. Um, You're evil. And I think you have the... big pee pee and sexy <laughs> muscles. So now... Yeah, when, when Soul says, now how I could you betray you the Jedi? How could you betray me? And she's like, do you see his dick, though? Like, <laughs> yeah. Come on, bro. Like, you guys, she's trying to explain it to the Jedi Council, like, describing his dick and <laughs> shit, trying to fucking justify this shit. It's such a stupid fucking route to take. Well, like, May we... turns to the light side, and then she's like, we gotta save Osha, and then he's like, oh, she would never turn, and then May is like, has has she seen his cock, though? Like, <laughs> and, and then Sol is like, what do you mean? And she's like, we gotta get it before she sees it, and uh, when they finally catch up to her, and she's just standing with Milo, it's like, it's too late, she's seen it. God, Squ I'm just picturing Squid Games acting in that scene. He'd be acting his ass off while we're just laughing. <laughs> yeah, he's he reading the so script, hard. and he's like, <laughs> "Sees, sees cock. What? 
what? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> you know his face is. He puts the paper down and he's just, Jesus Christ. I thought this it was be Star Wars. Funny that like, <laughs> what happened? It'd be funny if in that shot where she looks down awkwardly, she suddenly just went wide-eyed and her eyebrows go up. Oh my. <laughs> I'm just imagining now, I don't like him doing it. You know, the Palpatine scream when he does the spin, but it's just him. Oh, to the oh just, yes. Oh, it's yes. Just, <laughs> it's just little Pete. It's just screaming as he spins around. Oh, <laughs> I know. Soul having a fight. <laughs> oh, no. Big, big flopping. I mean, hey, seduced, right? That. Mm hmm. May, May is That's full. That's scream, just... you know? Well, I'll just put oh. it this way. I don't think. Oh, is that? What God, was that? It's so what? awkward. What was oh that? My God, this interview fucked up, um, dude. And I think with May, May and Soul, it's just. Or is she thinking like, "Oh shit, what can I say?" Well, I'll just They're put stalling. it this way. I don't think. I don't what? think Soul is. Uh, Soul's a very powerful Jedi. I don't think he's totally in the dark about who's on that ship with him <laughs> so why did you show us that it was clearly the beaver that it, told him yeah <laughs> yeah why, exactly why did you make him a fool the entire time just crying and, and it shouldn't like, be that he, it, he was powerful enough that he you know he wasn't in the dark it's like no he's powerful enough that he should just know instantly it was your Obviously. last chance to make him an interesting character like it's showing him is her. utterly annoying and stupid that from soul's pov you're speaking directly to osha about this oh god this was horrible what happened ah i'm hit with the stun gun and I, I could see that it was may that did it to me down i go wake up there's osha oh i guess nothing happened yeah that's great <laughs> it's like it wouldn't have made sense from may's pov that he would think that she would have to give him a story mm -hmm. like ah, uh, yeah. you know well, well, of course. She says, like, know, she ran May, off or something, right? A fight it between Osher and May. May wins. We know that Obviously, May wins. there's no Osher chance, yeah. Osher's not, like, able to use the Force properly anymore. Yeah, the idea of those two fighting is just is pretty stupid. Well, the idea of those two fighting and, and Osher winning is an impossibility, mm -hmm. basically. And that's what I'm saying. When she tried to attack her, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, she just... She's shit, but she'll still fuck you up. Like, fucking mechanic, mech neck. Hmm. This went all day. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, she thinks she's pulling a fast one, and I was like, I don't think you're pulling like, a fast. Like, let's see how that works out. Let's see how that works out for you. Why maybe. are we? Like, the both of them are just talking about how stupid of a plan it was. It's like you're the showrunner. Yeah. You you're made her make that decision. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't understand, smart, man. Yeah, what yeah, a dumbass. This video would be ten. This video would be ten minutes long if you cut out all the fucking yeah. like fake laughter. Like We've established over the course of the interview, you've got the the tattoo giveaway and being able to sense it because he's a powerful Jedi. These are the two things that everyone complained about. And now we've got the showrunner being like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> God damn. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, the incompetence. Yeah. Um, but again, I think like not, you know, nodding your your head to something and saying like yeah this is this is what's gonna happen like manny's reveal it's like this is probably what's gonna happen again it's not it's not the tease as much as it's the execution like mm -hmm. you know do you do you know how we're gonna do that not what are we gonna do um i feel like in a in a, in a spoilers a post spoilers consumption age it becomes you know uh <laughs> Jesus. That so this is where, oh, if you were allowed to please. ask any questions that go outside of the mold of being super nice, you'd be like, so tell me a showrunner, the reveal of the Smileran being Chimere, what am I to gain from understanding that? You understand twists in films take a classic, you know, uh, Sixth Sense being the, the entire film, Bruce Willis was dead, that completely changes everything in terms of understanding all of the dialogue and interactions, as well as the meaning of... Basically, the whole story is one of the best twists ever in terms of just being like, holy fuck, that has rocked my world. Um, I'm so protective of them. I'm not even going to explain the many twists of, of how the prestige works, but it changes everything with how we understood everything to work. We've often talked about this. We usually say you need to provide a world that makes sense with how it is, but then the twist changes everything in a way that's not like damaging or completely removes that previous understanding, but can bolster and... and pivot things in such a way that opens up a whole bunch of new understandings and uh, opportunity for entertainment and insight. 
what did I gain, Leslie, from it being Chimera? What 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 does it mean that it's him? Well, he he was he he knew how to make a poison. He was uh. Yeah. He you was get like, to see his dick. <laughs> like that's it. That's what you'd say. He he, he like, affected a different voice point, right? when he was coming. He was he was like weedly and stuff. You know. Ah, oh, jeez. And you're like, okay, I... that's that then. The, 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 and I just she talks about the execution of the twist, and what she's solely referring to is just you have a, a corpse fall, and it shows him without his mask with two lightsabers, and then you see a full shot clear of him. Now that's Maybe how you they're... execute the twist properly, and it's like. That's still nothing to do with. That's the Maybe shot. they're emphasizing the differences in the performances and like seeing him like Weasley and then seeing him like smug. That's not something that's, you got to do more than that. Like that's that's nothing. That's, that's not what I'm asking. Worth. Character, not that. That doesn't mean anything to me. That he mm -hmm. he appeared more Weasley when he wasn't the Sith Lord. Okay. Yeah. Who cares? Seen it a million times, but do something with it. I don't. Uh... I don't know what to make of like the fact that she's talking about how important it is to nail something like this when there wasn't the is it even a twist? Is that a twist when it it twists <laughs> the information get the whole point of twist is that you had information and it gets turned in a particular direction that you didn't think possible or rather didn't think yeah. was the case. My information that was twisted was well Chimere is he the Sith Lord? Probably not. Oh he is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow, what so a, it's twist. a twist! It's a, yeah, it's a it's shitty true. reveal. That's all it is. Not a twist. This doesn't. This really doesn't deserve. Recontextualize the yeah. story. I'm glad you broke that down the way you did because this doesn't deserve to be called a twist. I think that lowers the concept of, of, of what a twist is. This isn't a twist. It's a dog shit reveal. It's just like a wasted opportunity. Yeah. A, a twist involves the audience That's thinking why, yeah. things are going one direction, and then all, exactly. of, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, we're going this way. In a meaningful way. this way the whole time. Yeah. Recontextualizing the way you view the story. But, like, it, you know, I love twists. And I don't, I don't want this. This cannot be the standard for your twists. Like, and it's a frustration for me that we would ever be satisfied by the fact that there is simply a twist. And it's something that I've talked about. It's one of the many ways that iteration has killed Star Wars. Is it has to be a mystery. It has to be intrigue. But it's always for something that doesn't... Maroc will probably be, never be beaten. The fart cloud. That was one of the best like, examples <laughs> ever. Uh, this <laughs> this one's up there, but I think the far cloud is better, right? It turned out to be literal gas, and that was it. Well, if I can mention just one real quick, um, and I know you guys haven't seen it, so it's be easier for me to semi semi spoilers. But there is a mystery in the anime Attack on Titan of what is in this particular basement, what's in the basement, and it's 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 carried on over seasons. And when you finally get the payoff. Not only did they really nail the execution of making it meaningful, but the way it recontextualizes the entire story and sets up so many other things is incredible. And it's just something so satisfying and so simple. And it's, it's, it's like when you see things like that and you go to this, it's just really frustrating to even think, to, to even compare, like just the lack of inspiration and the, the, how much they botch the, botch the execution of all these things. Like, like I said, not even worthy of being called a twist. Um, it's just frustrating and, to watch. And it's, it's great when it makes a second viewing like a like a fresh yes. experience. There, there's nothing it's like a like, twist. Wow, that's just yeah. The, the, the particular twist that makes you want to rewatch the entire show from the beginning and watch. Um, uh, yeah, attack. Someone in the chat saying Attack on Titan has some phenomenal twists that makes you want to literally hit pause, restart from the beginning, and listen to everything this character said. Every single scene with them, every expression they ever made, it's like no fucking way. Well, that type of shit. And when you feel, when you hear shit like that, ah, you, it's just no comparison, man. And yeah, fuck this show. <laughs> yeah, well, a twist like that needs to be carefully planned, and I don't think there's any careful planning going on in that writer's room. There are no stakes to this twist. It doesn't alter anything really. It was yeah. a character with a couple of lines that no one knew anything about, and no one cared about. It turns out he's the bad guy. Like, okay, nothing. And a twist isn't a twist mm -hmm. just because it's unexpected. Like if Smilo Ren took his helmet off, Chewbacca. <laughs> wow, what a twist! What a twist! I, I I've in, <laughs> didn't expect uh, that. Yeah, and it, there's things you can do with it. Like in that same show, I've seen a basically a reveal improve something that I thought was a fucking plot hole or like a, a moment of stupid plot armor, but it actually made it it made it make so much more sense and be so much more satisfying. You can you could do so much with your reveals that just change the entire way you view the story. 
and um, mm-hmm. just, it pisses me off. You know, it's probably the one of the reasons that like I'm not like an anime guy to any of that degree, but that's one show that I'm like fantastic work and it's one of the ones that should you know deserves the hype that it gets because the payoffs are just so satisfying shit like that and then we got the accolade mm-hmm. fucking hell mm-hmm. that's where mm-hmm. you get the like subverting expectations and the like you know don't tell me anything and you know blow my mind i mean there's so many things that people have sent me who work on the show like so many fan theories that people have sent me that i'm like yeah that's exactly correct like i'm not then gonna like pivot and be like no no no, that's not what happened you know like you understand though if you had told me i have pivoted because people guessed that smiler ren was actually horned lady from thingy and i turned it into chimera instead we wouldn't be able to tell the difference because there's no setup. yeah it doesn't make any yeah. yeah there's no real connection between the two it's <laughs> it's one of those situations where i it's got to be somebody might as well be th- this person i guess kylo ren the reveal for him being a little boy is more of a twist than this because there's more you can do with that like oh he's not like he's young there's like he's still a little boy you know that's it I, that pissed me off he's like, fuck who is this but at the same time that's more interesting than oh it's that guy say so what but this just oh, yeah, it's like know. of course we haven't met him before it's a big galaxy mm-hmm. it's full of people who knows who this guy is Ugh. She seems to be proud of it, though. Except that people, like she her. said, don't, don't tell me anything, as if to avoid spoilers. Like, yeah, please don't tell me anything, because I'm not fucking interested. <laughs> people have guessed stuff that I'm like, yeah, that's, if we get a season two, that is exactly what happens. Yes, you are correct. And, but to me, I'm like, oh, that's because I did my job, not because oh, I, God. you know, like, I left the secret out. It's like, oh, no, if you're, God. if you're. This is actually something that we've said before, <laughs> that if you can guess uh. twists. Because they set things up properly, Smoking then they have it. done their job. Yeah. But ooh. I agree with case, what you're saying, right. but it's just not true with her in this case. No. You know, it's like Jeez. actually, it was one of those guys on the forest planet who looked like the mission control dude in Deep Rock Galactic. It's like, oh, you didn't expect it to be that guy, did you? It was this random dude over here. Like, Turns out it was oh, Bog. You got me. Uh. One of the most oh, satisfying things. Mog the whole time. <laughs> well, actually, that makes sense that he's a Sith plant because I was wondering, like, oh, is he a Sith plant because of how he's behaving? But it turns out it was just Mog. terrible writing. Mog should be the Sith Lord after all. Yes, yeah, definitely. Be good. That would make the Mog. show good. Make him, make him Palpatine. Please. Oh, Darth, Darth Mog, Mog is such Darth a good Mog. name. Mog. Yes. Darth Mog. Yeah, Darth Mog. Um. Yeah, but like, like on that point of like them setting it up so you have an understanding. If you can predict a payoff because it's well constructed but they can still surprise you and how it they how you know the execution that's one of the most satisfying things because it's all that makes sense but it's even crazier than i imagine and this 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 that's what you should be aiming for right but this is not that whatsoever if you're engaging in the story and you're starting to see where it's going and you you know whether you're excited about that direction or not i can't that's not that's nope. not my business. <laughs> That's not you my should business. Be invested in it it right? felt like yeah. the real mystery was again, we know they did something. She's murdering them. Mm-hmm. So we already know that. So the question is how? What happened? You know, it's not No, by the way, it's already a fuck up. We don't know they did something because she's murdering them. She could just believe that they've done something and she's murdering them. Mm-hmm. Like she's uh, she's already got it wrong. Well, like, well she's killing uh, them. They the must have that. done something. She's already been lied to. Uh, she was told yep. her sister was dead when she wasn't. So there's precedent for her having a completely skewed version of the events that actually took place, which I assume is going to be part of the point of the next episode. The soul is going to well, tell her some stuff her... that'll help explain why the Jedi weren't super evil, while uh, Smilo slash the mask is going to tell Osha why they actually are super evil. Well, I think this is a slip up of her in this interview. This is basically probably confirmation that. You know, they actually did do something, even though there is a very real chance that they didn't do anything, and this is a misunderstanding or she's been lied to. Mm, maybe but you're she's right. she's saying, oh, of course they did something. That's yeah. why she's trying to kill them. She's already she left- played the thing about what's going to happen. She tried to dodge spoilers for other things, but this thing, she's. Cut- I think you might be right. That's actually a good catch, because she's, um, she's very definitive about this point. People in chat are pointing out something interesting. Like she said... Um... You know, if, if if you're not interested in where things are going, it's none of my business. It's just like you, it's her you're business. Su- you're <laughs> supposed to design something that people can get excited about. 
It's not my like, business. Like, isn't what? that entirely your business? <laughs> like, the, that's what I'm well, saying. It's I, like, the thought process behind that. It's crazy. Well, I'm not yeah. going to hire someone to write a show and give them $180 million to make that show. And their attitude is, that's not my business if you're interested or not. You're, you're a restaurant owner. Like, People don't enjoy your food or the quality of it. Oh, that's not my business. Like, I'm, I'm paying them. you a shit ton of money, sister, for you to get people to give a damn. So get to it. It's literally her business. It's such a, I can't, everything about this woman. This is, how, how did you find this, Mahler? Like, what is this? What did she Why do would to she get reveal? this job? Why would she how did do you this, this interview? Job? It's a good interview. Like, this is such a revealing interview, man. Like, it's not, oh, wow, you didn't see that coming as much as it's, yeah, but as, as we're. Take your time. Oh, my God. Dude. <laughs> Take your time. Fuck. Going back you to your question it. about the twins and the, the, the okay. theme of that. Um, the you're going to see twins. two sides of, the theme of, of twins. almost every character. Almost every character has two sides, as we know. Whoa. I mean, And a twin is two, Whoa. and characters have two sides, so that's like twins. That's like full size. So there. Writing Amar <laughs> easy. We um, know. I mean, that's all yeah. what all Star Wars is about, right? Like, well, th <laughs> that's, well there you go. Well, all right. Pack it Mahler, up, boys. I'm surprised you didn't put the buffering noises like you did with the Mulan <laughs> video trying to be positive. Because <laughs> uh, this is brutal, man. There's so much to work with here. What a joke. Wow. It that's all comes full circle about. back to twins. Two <laughs> things. They're sort of one twins? thing, but they're two things. <laughs> if you said to it, what are the two sides of Master Yoda? What do you think she'd say? The inside and the outside. <laughs> it's well, like you have you have Grandpa Yoda stuff. awkwardly walking around, and then, then you have, have Jumpy the Yoda jumping around, flipping. Yeah, probably would say that. <sighs> there's there's light and dark in everybody, and it's all about the balance of that. And in my opinion, the High Republic is a world that's out of balance. It's that there's just too many Jedi and and I, um, oh no, uh, we're doing the uh, thing. Uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, no. uh, right from Star Wars. No, Dawson. incorrect. Too many Jedi, wrong. No. It's out of balance because there's too many Jedi, so we got to hack them down. Hey, Rags, oh, do you remember God. the video we covered? I've referenced it before, but it is an yes. old one. That tried yes. to argue with a fucking table how the yes, force yeah, being in balance is about equal users on each side. And they actually I try to explain remember. the course of Star Wars as a story has always been trying to correct to have the same amount of users on both sides. And it was horribly oh. incorrect, constantly misremembering which people were even around at what times. So That's many right. people. I do remember that video. I'm Forget pretty sure uh, it, but I remember that Freddie video. Prince Jr. as well believes that the idea with the Force is to correct for the amount of users. So you have to but have Lucas equal dark side and light side users. Oh, so fucking. I can't it's believe so it. Lucas was specific about it. I mean, he's explained it pretty clearly. You don't even need him explaining it because the ending of Return of the Jedi makes it pretty obvious. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> You the light is the balance. The light you... is the balance. The idea that well, no balance in the in the the force is the idea that you you know you've got to balance between the good guys and the guys who shoot light uh, lightning out of their fingers. Yeah, and it's so <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> you did a specific amount of Sith. It's, it's, it's so, so straightforward. Stupid, the and it, I think what's annoying me as well is that though, like. Yeah, I imagine they'll try to like she would be the kind of person who would try to invoke like oh well you know like Eastern philosophies right and the way that they have influence on Star Wars which obviously they have but like to come away with this weird interpretation that balance means that you need to have an equal balance between the thoughtful restrained compassionate side and the 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 crazy rage filled murderous psychopaths yeah <laughs> who shoot lightning out of their heads and build and scream unlimited power destroy. yeah exactly <laughs> the whole point is that the dark side is like the path of least resistance to gain power but at a massive cost and that the light side is the harder path it's the more difficult the one requires path. more exactly more discipline more self restraint more composure the light is the balance it was good it like it, it, it would be like if she was watching in Return of the Jedi when Luke threw away the lightsaber saying, like, no, I'll never join you and going, ah, and see, that was where he made the biggest mistake of his life because he didn't understand that he needed to find a balance between uh, 
being pissed off and chopping off Darth Vader's head. He needed and, to uh, quickly and find and train it. a Padawan so that there would be two and two and there would be balance. Yes, ASAP, <laughs> immediately find one. It, like, it, it, it might be one of the most destructive, like, modern... Because it feels like it's a much more recent thing. One of the more destructive uh, beliefs that's kind of, like, infected the writing for Star Wars is the idea that balance in the Force means, well, you know, we got to have some Sith in there too, rather than the light being the balance. It's 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 pretty clear cut. The light side's the good one. <laughs> well, so okay, I, I can't believe. It. I if thought it was the six that... films told the story of a prophecy leading people to make all kinds yeah. of crazy fucking decisions because they thought about different things in different ways. But it turned out the prophecy was was correct. It just was in a way that nobody expected. Being this is the chosen one. He's gonna clean up the force. Everything's gonna be balanced. Woohoo! Fucking annihilates the Jedi. Wow. Which is what a shit prophecy. Thanks, chosen one. And then, you know, next three films it circumvents in a whole way that he actually annihilates the dark side himself. And uh, we clean it all up. We come to a nice conclusion on the six films. It's, you get the redemptive arc. It's all given reason for why this happened. And Star Wars never had an additional story told. Mm. There is that. Yeah, if only. Oh, somewhere. If only. I, 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 it, it's high cut. Why I can't believe this. Like, yeah, no, there's too many Jedi, man. You gotta like again, there are ways to make interesting, poignant criticisms of the way that the Jedi operate, right? Like it, the Jedi as an institution isn't necessarily inseparable or um not distinct from, you know, the ideal of being a Jedi or what the light side represents. There can be a mismatch between those things. There can be um there there can be uh an exploration of whether or not there are there are customs or rules that they have that are yielding results that aren't very effective. Questions about whether or not the Jedi should be more actively participating in um the the way that society is run and managed, or rather or whether they should take a step back and and pursue like more of a, a hands off approach or anything like that. You can explore all of those things, but like it really does seem like the the most you're going to get is maybe the Sith have a point, and the balance means you got to have both. You gotta have good guys and people who shoot lightning out of their hands. <laughs> like, I, I, it's like I it's can't... infantile. Like, oh, we need to have as many bad. We need to have as many bad guys as we have good guys, so they're the same number on both. This sides. This is just so they can make their movies. Like, it doesn't make any sense. But this um, is by following this rule, it's easier for them to pull out like these random villains anytime, right? In a Probably sense, get Smilos think, and Kylos. In a sense, I think that's a part of it that this enables them to keep telling stories, mm -hmm. but. I do think another part of it is just a fundamental misunderstanding of, like, the point of Star Wars. That exactly that actually right. stems from an earnest belief of, yeah, that's, like, that's how it works, right? Balance means you gotta, you gotta have the good and the bad, rather than balance is aggressively pursuing the light side, aggressively pursuing that path. It, and it's 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 it's, it's, uh, it's baffling. I can't believe she said this, but then again, I also suppose I can. Half this interview, like every other thing she said, is like I can't believe that she how thinks did, this makes any sense. How did she get given this project? What has she worked on? Who does she, who does she know? What has she done? Like what? Who? She's got to have dirt on someone, right? She collected enough cereal box tops. Well, she's, in, I mean, Harvey Weinstein's, Harvey Weinstein's ex assistant, assistant. So yeah, uh, there's a good chance she does have stuff on some people. Yeah, she definitely's got. It just makes sense. Being in that position, she's gonna be able to leverage some some power of some kind. But for fuck's sakes, man! Like they couldn't find any. They couldn't find anyone else for this. Yeah, there's no one out there who gives a damn about Star yeah. Wars to write it. All right, you've tried okay. this over and over again, having people who fucking hate Star Wars. Can we just just try like maybe maybe someone who actually likes it is passionate about it and wants to take the just, time to fucking redraft? Jeez, just try to show that is just decent can we can we aim for decent maybe i don't no. want to yeah you know, I, I, I don't want to shoot for the moon here too quick can that's we just, a bit can much already aren't you our well, no, can we get a decent the equivalent of lukewarm it's like you know <laughs> reheated oh. the equivalent of that the Sounds inside big, of the time no one watching star wars is expecting it to be the fucking prestige it's that we're, we're never expecting like s tier unbelievable storytelling don't need that because we've so people love the concepts in the world so much just give us something that's coherent I think it's really unfortunate you know? that that's where we're at though that we're yeah unreasonable to expect essentially yeah. like empire uh no. with any frequency that that you know if it, if it reaches the threshold of okay with 
I mean, even then, you know, like Disney Star Wars has been a consistent stream of really, really bad, and then that one exceptional show, and then back yeah. to being really, really bad and across the, the board. Whole- Andor makes the conversation so confusing. It's like, oh yeah, Andor, but yeah. <laughs> is what's the story on that again? That was made way before the other ones, but didn't just not released, and it was it part of the reason like I had time to redraw. Get a, a team that got to make the show that they were like a uniquely talented set of writers and directors. Yeah, seemingly like a lot less oversight. Um, I I don't know. It's a miracle that it exists. It really is, and it's soon to not exist. One more season, and it's out. Yeah, one more season, and that's it. We're done. Well, hopefully it makes enough of an impact to, like, justify its legacy. Because I think Andor is one of the very few things that deserves to be canon. They, they, they may be balanced individually, but their power is not. Um, they balance so there individually. Needs to be an, that, that makes it worse. But their that power means that, isn't. That I mean, needs to be, there needs to be an evil balanced. organization to balance the, the decent so, organization. Well, wait, so did, so <laughs> So does she think like that, on an like, institutional old... level? Does that mean that like she believes that in the old republic where you had like m- many, many more Sith that it's like, ah, see, that's when they figured it out. They had it mm-hmm. right there. When you had all of the Jedi and Sith fighting each other in massive quantities with, with regularity. Well, let's imagine her take on what World War II should have been. To bring balance to Europe doesn't mean destroying, you know, the Third Reich and liberating <laughs> Europe. It means we need to have, well, we should have as many, you know, this and that, and, you know, we need to share. Well, we've already had the take that that the equivalent of fucking Hitler was counterculture. That's what he is, (laughs) anti-establishment. And that he's a lot like the rebels. Yeah, he's bringing balance to Europe. (laughs) So nuts, man. Um, And so uh, it was always the plan to hold... um, as much detail about what had gone on with these Jedi that may are hunting to hold that off I as mean, long as possible. Hold it I, off. You've I mean, given us nothing. Pretty, it, it, it's pretty obvious that you've deliberate. I hate this form of like constructing mysteries where you just like go out of your way to omit important information to people rather than it being a case of, no, you're presenting things in a way that makes sense and is logical to the viewer, but it's like context or little things, you know, there might be things that have a greater emphasis put on them and then smaller emphasis as part of misdirection. I hate that it's, it, it, it is a case of you watch the episode and go, this is obviously incomplete. This looks choppy. Like it looks like you've cut out you know, to go from, like, Osha escaping from the room to, oh, the whole place is blowing up, so you you omitted something here. That's not, like, a compelling mystery. It's just a case of me having to sit there and go, okay, so what's it gonna be? What's the explanation gonna be? I have to wait until you actually, like, provide it. I hate yeah, the yeah. way that... Kind of just cheated. It. It's shallow. It's kind of cheated. Yeah. Well, not shallow. It's, um, it's, 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 um, it's not fair. I think that'd be a better way of describing it. It's, it's just... not fair to the viewer. It's cheap. It's one of the cheapest ways you can do, execute um, that type of story. And it's just, I, I do like those type of stories too, where like you're seeing like um, someone, like a, a murder mystery or whatever, and someone's describing the night, and you get to see the scene from their perspective, and then you see it from someone else's perspective, and the little changes throughout every time you get to see it, and it's actually building something that's coherent and you can follow. But with this, it's just like you said, there's just chunks missing from this story that you ripped out to try to make something, you know, a mystery, to, to inject a mystery into this that you, because you didn't have the talent to write it in an organic way. And it's so annoying to watch because that episode was like a fever dream of like, what the, what? I'll <laughs> burn down the witches? Like, what is happening? Like, I, it's just, it has, there has to be another side to it. But like I said, the show is so trash that so we might not ever get it. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, that was always the, that was always the plan. And I do think it's kind of fun to have people like yourself be like, they killed Kelnaka. And they'd be like, baby, we got to. Oh my God. It's so fun to hey, hear baby. you think the most interesting character and be like, ha ha ha, you killed him just like that. Uh, we had to kill him. I mean, it's not like I'm the god of this universe and I literally write prescriptively what occurs. You know, I just, I had to. He had to die. There was no other way. It simply couldn't be done. He was doomed to die. He pulled the gun and he grilled his grass and then he got killed. Why is it fun 
for her though to tell people hey baby because positive star wars. <laughs> star wars i love star wars star hey. wars is great i love star wars hey baby hey, hey. hey. Yeah, fuck is did, what baby. the fuck is wrong what, you, what the fuck was <laughs> that what, what the hell you should put like a yogi bear spin on that all of a sudden you grilling grass again in there <laughs> you better put out the fire before the ranger gets back what the fuck is the show our oh, writers are smarter God. than the average bear well if Life you ever needed so reassurance simpler. that the show was going to make uh, sense Yogi, i don't think the, the rangers to the gonna like us grilling i promise grass. you everything will make sense Colin. i promise you everything will make sense well but like <laughs> was that interview not one of the most sort of oh god <laughs> we're never getting well, yeah. anything good out of the act we're doomed no it's we I'm are so depressed fucked we're fucked we I was gonna say life was so much simpler when we were just making fun of the trailer and the alien who couldn't close his eyes and shit. Like yeah. you know, we didn't know we didn't, we didn't know. know we were in for this shit. Ugh. What a that terrible was day. one of the interviews ever about yeah, one of, of the shows time. of all time. Awful, awful, awful. Well, that interview was like <sighs> water being waterboarded. <laughs> 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 I feel, I feel, if i had an eternal darkness sanity meter like i'm just like, bubbling at the bottom right now i'm like i'm starting to see pink elephants and shit like fucking hell man and so oh, i mean God. i very much enjoyed the discussion but holy oh, yeah, shit that sure. interview as a as a video was just abominable we reached so this is the i am i'm that was what a terrible day yeah <laughs> These are the people in charge of Star Wars. These are the people who are given such incredible power to write and create and shape these shows. That's the woman who gets $180 million to create a show. Could tell any story that you want. You have basically carte blanche to do anything in this essentially new era. Go to these places, that places. You could have Jedi, no Jedi. You could just... Sky's the limit. And beyond, really. You can do anything. And this is the story that got told. This is the story that got told of all the possibilities the out there. All about how Star Wars got... Fucked right into the ground. <laughs> fucked right into the ground. <laughs> turned know. upside down. <laughs> oh my god, man. Which yeah. takes us to the final topic. Uh, the article. Star Wars' biggest problem is the fans. Oh boy. Very, uh, yeah. very suitable. <laughs> And, and it's all well, pointing I mean, fingers at Darth Vader, and it does make me wonder, like, what what are we to make of that as an image? Who are the fans? Are they the pointing fingers, or are they Vader? Because if it's the problem is the fans, it feels like the pointing fingers would be the ones saying, you're the problem, to Vader. Is, yeah, they screwed this are up. We, are we Vader? <laughs> it, doesn't make any, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Alright, you know, fine, I guess we'll be Vader. Uh, the internet has never made it easy for people to speak their mind. What a star. Can you link us, uh, oh, can you link us the article here? Already. I can. Link yeah, you locked me already, dude. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'll have to. I, I kind of tripped over mind. myself with that one, so I'll go again. The <laughs> internet has never made it easy for people to speak their minds. You know, I think it's actually made it the too easy. Heard, <laughs> yeah. <if anything. laughs> it's made it too fucking easy. It's made me reconsider my stance about? on the First Amendment. Jeez. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Is it the not arguable? It's the pay to go see all this shit. It's so easier than ever to speak your mind. <laughs> speak your mind, not just in a way that you get to speak it, but in a way that allows the whole world to see what you said. You can talk to the entire world and not. Or are it's we just, doing the modern interpretation of speaking your mind, meaning no one should be allowed to respond? I should be able I to mean... speak, which, you know. You know what? That's probably what they're referencing because the other, the 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 former is. Uh, I is mean, a bit it might even be simpler than that. It might just be like, well, it used to be that the only kind of things that got heard were the things that were specifically done by major orgs and publications and like news, um, uh, like media, right? Like traditional media. Now anybody can go out there and speak their mind on you know particular movies or TV shows or anything like that. Like an absence of a monopoly on uh, information. Anyway, oh, it's, the first sentence it's, obviously taking us out, but that's all right. <laughs> Let's see how much further well, we can get. It'll, it's, the second one's not, not much better. Start. 
Convenience of digital connection aside, there have always been online trolls and toxic comments ready to pounce on anyone who dares bear their authentic self in public life. Their authentic self? Um, so I can convert all if, that into there are always people being, who respond. Being toxic is their authentic self? <laughs> and you're pouncing yeah. on them. Exactly. Yeah, because, <laughs> like I need to know someone's authentic self to fucking shit on their terrible opinions yeah, we're sure talking there's... about their opinion not their fucking like they have to add that and it's such a weak it's such a weakness when i see something like that when like, i talk about star stand... wars my true self yeah stand by your your find your position get your arguments in line and stand by it if you actually think you it's know, true you don't need i don't give a fuck about your authentic self like you miss the days where a... someone could say something dumb and then you could go no it's this and then they go no it is what i said and oh shit you know conversation instead of hey stop responding to me you'll be yeah. rude <laughs> No, they, people don't want to be distracted with the truth. Like, being corrected online is just this fucking crime. I don't get it. Uh, you the killed my opinion. You brought it here. The term oh. public life is weird here, because I think she's talking about social media, but you would use that to describe, like, real life in opposition. Like, uh, it's just, the wording is really dumb. Very dramatic. Oh. Uh authentic self in in public life and the newest round of controversies and unfounded criticisms directed at star wars projects demonstrates that the beloved sci-fi franchise is no different so they're I, saying you I, could I never want, express like, yourself but you can definitely not express yourself through star wars i just i just love how it's written in a way where it's like well i guess that just closes off any conversation at all about whether or not anybody, you know, it's like, well, unfounded criticisms. Okay, I mean, surely there's some founded criticism, right? Surely that would have to be conceded. No, they talk about some guy with two brains' his birthday, Fringy. It's absurd. It's nonsense. No, there are saying. children they starving. To, they're never mm. willing to adjust the, the, the reasonable criticism of the show. And if they would, it'd make it so much easier to listen to what, what the rest of they have to, the rest of what they have to say. And... Just skipping it is just frustrating, man. I think, like, just like, I guess it's interesting because that was what, uh, what was that guy, the, the campier, where he was like, oh, well, no, there, there are criticisms, but you got to watch my video to see. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that was so slimy. If you want to know about the correct things to say, I'm right here. I guess I have more respect okay. for that than this, where they're like, nobody can say anything anymore. Except, leave me alone. Let me be wrong. <laughs> uh, da -da -da -da. Oh, where even was I? Viewers have been... Re I did, oh, that's probably it, yeah. Uh, for decades, viewers have been relentlessly attacking Star Wars performers and creators with the renowned push against... Renewed sorry, renewed push. push against TV shows like The Acolyte, demonstrating the venom with which a particular set of audience members scrutinize everyone's favorite galaxy. Now I'm just imagining Venom hunched over his desk, typing out comments on Reddit about how he doesn't like the new Star Wars show. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? This my show was pretty galaxy? lame. <laughs> <laughs> it was lame. I didn't like it. The we hate was... the Acolyte. <laughs> You're now my third favorite galaxy. <laughs> the uh, real the... one, and then the one from Star Trek, I guess. I don't know. They always make it about Star that... Wars when you know if you were to drill down, it wouldn't be that. Because you'd present all the shows that don't get attacked, and then they say, yeah, but it has to be either female-led or female-created. And then you're like, so what about... Uh, this, this, this. Well, like, what does it have to be... Why would it have to be about Star Wars at that point? Surely it would apply to anything. Why would it have to be Star asking, Wars? Well, yeah, because this one's wider, trying to tie it into an idea of uh, historic vitriol in terms of the star wars you know fan base right they said for decades right so that going back to yeah. even the ot uh if they're talking about it like that but it's like you said if they're talking about like broad current day trends that they believe that they're observing then what does like the star wars part have to do with it and they always have to put it in like the most aggressive way imaginable like relentlessly attacking star wars performers and creators rather than just being like no jar jar was cringe nobody liked him and anakin's performance wasn't that good like that, well, the, that's I mean, too simple this aspect. is a case of uh, the specific words that are being used are obviously evocative. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Or, or provocative. Uh, provocative. I mean, you know, 
Like, uh, uh, I mean, of course, unfounded criticism is pretty obvious, right? But like, ready to pounce, right? Rather than, you know, (laughs) prepared to to criticize, for instance, um, or uh, a particular set of audience members carefully curate everyone's favorite galaxy. You can just switch the words out and completely change the tone of the writing. Yep. Um, yeah, you're right. A lot of this could have been like changed and still gotten their point, but without being so defensive. Well, no, I mean, aggressive. it's meant to be this way. It's meant yeah. to be. It's meant to be strongly worded it, and harsh. It shows but, this. but like it, the, the wording locks you into a. I, this is part of the reason why I do find it fascinating. Like, I don't get the impression that this comes off as persuasive because it, it's like if you agree with what's being expressed in the article, then I guess you'd probably be like, oh yeah, no, I mean, I agree with all of this. But if you don't. Like, you've already got a mismatch in terms of uh, disagreement on what you think is actually happening right now. Because, you know, someone would be like, well, what are you talking about? Like, I'm not I'm not ready to pounce on anybody. I'm just saying that I didn't like the show, for instance. Yeah, the show's bad. Yeah. And, and then already mm-hmm. it's like, well, you've lost them with the first paragraph. Yeah. You've already You're lost them because that you've... that something else. Yeah, it's you, not... you, you <laughs> go into the gate declaring this is the issue. This, when... this isn't an olive branch whatsoever. This is them. You know, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, it's just this like... is a giant. This is not an olive branch. It's a spear, and they're poking yeah. you with it. The vitriol of these persistent voices has subsequently yeah, spread right. throughout the internet, making it feel impossible to say anything positive about Star Wars without turning every discussion into a heated debate. You know what? Conversely, it's impossible oh, to say anything true. negative about Star Wars without an, a bevy of articles and videos telling about how we're fucking they racist. <laughs> 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 say, daring to express their negative opinions. That bold is just style. That's not a hyperlink or anything. That's just bold. I do like. Uh, well, look. You have a big it's rant like about Kiadi Mundi's birthday being wrong, and then they're like racist. <laughs> You're like, how are you gonna argue this one? Come on, like. Call me obsessed or nitpicky or whatever, but you can't you can't go that direction this time. You wouldn't care. Yes, they can. Care yes, they can. <laughs> <laughs> we can and we will. You wouldn't care. Yeah, I would no. Just it's like the... you to kind of stick to, you know, just sort of stick to. Also, you know, respecting the accepted canon, that would be kind and of. And hey, nice look, if we're going to be going talking about the idea that balance in the force is light and dark, then you have to accept the balance of the negative opinions. Yeah, <laughs> then, exactly. Exactly. It's, it's an important point. Sith. I think you it have should to be um, look right at balance. I think it should be acknowledged, by the way, that if the show were amazing, everyone was loving it, eleven out of tens and stuff, and they still had that retcon for Kiadi Mundi, it probably would have been noted, but it wouldn't be anywhere near as controversial. Like it feels no, but, like I it mean, got, that's... you know, it, it's like rolled out into hyper controversy through responses. Just like it got highlighted, then respond, spawn, 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 all the way up to there are starving children in Africa. Yeah, <laughs> all they had to say was "Whoops, we fucked that up." Yeah, My bad. We really uh, wanted yeah, to no, see it. It, it is interesting, right? That's a it. lack of recognition of the part that you play in making these sorts of things become a bigger deal than maybe they ought to be. It's like um, when you're trying to correct like a coworker or something like that, and like instead of just taking the correction, which could have taken ten seconds, you're yeah. watching them trying to justify a mistake over and over and over again. Till now, you're frustrated when you didn't even really care. You were just trying to give them a tip, and now it's turned into a thing because they're, you know it's the stuff. Well, yeah, it'd, it'd be like you, you know, you said two, two plus two is five, and then someone's like, no, no, it's it's four, and you're like, hey, you know, like you don't, yeah, what the don't fuck respond. is wrong with you picking on me for yeah, my opinion what's, about numbers? What's what's your problem? Oh, here you go again, <laughs> trying to correct. Me, of course, there's Bringy. Bringy knows and everything about math. This toxic <laughs> negativity, all right? I can't. <laughs> I'm fucking. Oh, God. Also, if it's toxic, then why does it taste so good? We would be ranked happily as some of the meanest, bobinest, uh, uh, disallowers of positivity for Star Wars, right? And they would say, we are probably contributing to them making it feel impossible to say anything positive for Star Wars. And then I would obviously do the, you know, that Will Smith presenting meme where he does the thing, I'd be like, with yeah, our, yeah. our Andor stream? I'm like, so how does this fit into the narrative? How do you, because of course they, they would call us grifters in a heartbeat. I'd be like, how do you... How does the 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 shill mind comprehend this? <laughs> like, what does it do? <laughs> and uh, yeah, I have to imagine that they would probably say something like, "You did it to throw people off your scent." That's all you did. It's purely tactical maneuver. Yeah, lies is what it is. 
The unacceptable abuse that Star Wars prequel era actors like Ahmed Best received from fans in the late 90s and early 2000s has been well documented. And since then, negative Star Wars voices have only been amplified by the mainstream spread of social media. So that that was bad, um, abusing actors for doing their role in a story. You have to recognize that that isn't an exclusive Star Wars problem. That just it seems is. to be a weird, a weird. Let's go to Game of Thrones thing. because we've seen it recently with our House of the Dragon, where Kristen Cole's out. Even the, before the that, group, the group Cersei, is exclusive Joff to uh, isn't per genre or IP or gender or yeah. uh, age or the, the emotional level. It's it's humans. They just do this. It just it. seems to be, yeah. It just seems like, to, because we, again, we've seen it with Kristen Cole's act. We saw it with uh, 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 um, uh, what's his name, John Walker, kid, in, uh, yeah. Falcon and Winter Soldier, who also got harassed because people thought that he was the character he played. Yep. Like this is some bizarre thing that seems to manifest with certain people on the internet. It's the really, really bad. It's not a, a Star Wars exclusive problem. It just seems to be a problem that exists in general. You the actor who played Joff. Go ahead. Yeah, you get you get enough people watching a show, and it's just going to be like you're just playing the statistics that one of mm -hmm. them's going to be a psycho weirdo, and that's just yeah. what happens when you're previewing something to millions and millions of people. Uh, Jack Leeson, the actor who played Joffrey, the prince in Game of Thrones, he got her like just completely assaulted online to where he pretty much stopped acting for like the last 10 15 years or whatever it's been um yeah and it's insane Cersei, it's his ridiculous. mother it's, skylar it's, from breaking bad the list probably goes on and on and on it, it, it's longer than any of us have been born this has been going you know longer than any of us have been alive this has been going on it's just a part of life really really Earth. really bad behavior um it's, you can't be it's, but like to to try and like use that as a, a thing to like bundle in for people like having criticisms of the acolyte is really what are you doing you know like what it. like do you do you feel like you're you're being honest when you when you do it like that they can't this must feel slimy like they can't it's just no it, it's this so is look through you know, while you're talking uh while you guys were going over some of the first paragraph um I just looked at the articles that this, uh, well, I don't want to say this guy because they're a they, them. So who fucking knows? But there you go. Um, but they, the articles that this guy's making are like, it's just mega shill content. It's super brand defense, mega shill. It is, you know, the fans are bad, um, repeating articles. Lee Jung J. Uh, I, I, you have forgive me. I don't know the pronunciation of that. But uh, three days ago, Lee Jung Jae delivers a powerhouse performance in the Acolyte's latest episode. Um, the Boy season four delivers its harshest reality check yet. <gasps> the Acolyte's most shocking twist changes everything. Clickbait bullshit. The Acolyte yeah. foreshadows one of the Jedi's darkest moments in Revenge of the Sith. Those sounds like the headlines of like someone who would write something this stupid, and he already lost me with the authentic self thing. He doubled it just, up. Such a self report, man. He double dipped on a an article. House of the Dragon season two forget forgot about Aemon's biggest problem. He he did that one twice basically. Hmm. So even the, yeah so. Hmm. Leslie yeah, Headland's groundbreaking sure, yeah. series has been relentlessly oh. <laughs> review bombed online, causing the acolyte to possess a huge disparity between its positive critical reception and abysmal audience <laughs> score on aggregate websites like Rotten Tomatoes. How amusing! Uh, groundbreaking. Uh -huh. You see, you could never have because obviously the implication with review bomb it means they're not doing it genuinely; they're just doing it to attack. However, right, the critical yeah. response is positive, and they would never do it disingenuously. They would never have reason to do anything dishonestly. So now we know the answer. It's a good show. There you go. Just wanted to make sure that was settled. Like that's the that's obviously the fucking tone of this. It's like it's good that we figured that out. We've got the answer. Let's move on. I Since... guess digging a grave for Star Wars is groundbreaking. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Since the majority of these hate-filled criticisms are either overreactions to alleged continuity errors, I love alleged, <laughs> alleged. Like it's just—it's just, it's just like an the, obvious uh, fuck up. Just, 
I think I like the double dipping on the on on how much you can disregard the opinions. The majority of the hate filled criticism. So it's like it's it's a majority of the already all encompassing hate filled response to the audience. You know what I mean? It's like you double dipping on the idea that you can disregard anything that's said. Yeah, there's no valid criticism. Don't even entertain the idea that there's valid criticism. It just yep. is. It just isn't. That would be nuts. Anyone Heist... who doesn't like the show is just a hateful person, and they're toxic troll. Blah blah blah. How are you supposed to get something like that out out of an unalleged state? I mean, the show's made. It's out there. <laughs> Everyone can see it and see the breaks in continuity. Like, what else are you supposed yeah. to do to prove it? Take it to court, like... obviously. <laughs> he had movies in this, this fucking in show. He was in the prequels. We saw him. He had lines. Dude. He asked about the droid attack on the Wookiees. Imagine somehow it, it was a part of a high profile case that a key piece of information was in truth whether or not there was a plot hole in the Acolyte episode. And they had to like actually argue it and make sure everyone understands whether or not that's the case. They just have lawyers be like, Keanu Mundi was not born yet! And the other lawyer is like, that's false! It was non-canon, it was a part of something that was decanonized, this is absurd, your honor, this, this, we need a mistrial. Like, this, this is absurd, we can't have this. Oh shit, I want that scene. Hell yeah, it would be great. Uh, we, 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 the, the alleged. It's, um... Funky narratives. No, I was just, I was just thinking about how, um, it's such an such a like an ill-used word there's so many just be honest with the truth which is you disagree it's not that there are like what is not possible but what does it mean to be a, a, like this is a case where you can just ascertain whether it is or it isn't like in in very just with like a google search well that, that's what i'm saying like obviously they just it would never get to a point where you have to refer to it as a legend either you've heard it and you go nah it's bullshit or you go oh yeah i guess just say that matter um either overreactions to alleged continuity errors within the star wars universal backlash aimed at attacking the show's long overdue inclusivity the bad actors spreading them are clearly spinning controversy out of nothing and this manufactured outrage can be directly traced back to the demographics of the original trilogy what <laughs> what wait what this man wait the bad actors um, spreading them are clearly spinning controversy. I don't know. He's got that in bold. It's very important. Uh, I will say, I mean, I would say that Star Wars is long overdue in terms of, like, getting a diversity of more alien POV characters in the in the Star Wars world. Yeah. I don't think that's what he's referring to. I don't think that's what he's referring to. Too, he's, too he's much saying, white people. That's pretty much saying it. That's that's white, yeah, white people are the problem. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just like, saying, I'm just saying, like, we, we need slimy. more stories with, like, droids as main characters. Or, yeah, yes, I want a POV droids, story aliens. of an alien. Yeah, I want a, anything. That's why I always... Humans. Literally a jelly I, person who's, like, just a little jelly blob on the floor but has a little oh tube my two fucking eyes. Yeah. I realize I Hanar I from Mass Effect to be the Bro, main character. Are we counting Ahsoka? That was what that was, but it doesn't feel like it. She's just orange. I never even think people, of people. Okay, oh, I never yeah, think she, of. Yeah. I never think of that as an alien. I just is, said I want an alien POV. We got one a, technically. She's a lady with a weird hat. But she's yeah, saying. I was, I was going to say as well, but she was also disliked, hat. then really liked, and she's now aiming to go back to being disliked again because of the way they've handled her writing. To me, that's actually the best evidence ever of the actual problem. Nothing to do with the character in universe or who's playing them. It's all to do with how much you can write them in a way that the audience responds in a positive manner, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yep. Always been the case. And uh, I don't know what fucking yarn they would spin about why she was liked, disliked, liked, uh, or vice versa. The reverse. I just think that it's... Uh, it's fascinating to watch, and if we get another shit Ahsoka season, I think the Ahsoka mm. stock is going to crash. No, she's done. Probably. She's got one last chance, and like the fact that she's so boring that I literally just totally forgot she's an alien. <laughs> because when I said I need a POV story from an alien, I, I wasn't even thinking about her. But we did technically get one. But um, a and terribly I, written character. Horrible. You know, it's just like. Ugh. And I I mentioned this last time as well, but I think it's one of the many, one of the millions of missed opportunities. But the. Anakin's stupid episode when she was underwater, that should have been the reveal for something in her species as to why she was able to survive underwater instead of just skipping it. They could have did something. We could have learned something that. about her. We could have done something, you know? It's it, Either could, she could. literally drowned, she was there for 12 hours underwater, or they do something and explain, like, at least this is something her species can do to justify it. I don't know if I want the sudden reveal that she's got four lungs or whatever. 
I would take that over like literally nothing. <laughs> and it's just she, she, you know, she was. Yeah, but literally nothing is what Dave Floyd is really good at. He filled it like ninety percent of Ahsoka with literally nothing. So, yeah. Was, uh, hey, when it's literally it. nothing, no damage is being done. Exactly. You know, what I was thinking Damn. about Andor. If season two is really good, you could have like a couple of outcomes. One could be a lot of people end up hating it anyway because it's a part of Disney Star Wars. That's definitely possible. But another could be it will amplify how much everyone hates all the shit ones because it'll be like, look. You can do yeah. it. It's right there. And it would be a unique thing for everyone to be chill on that one. Season two coming out, be like, wait, oh, this is actually kind of fun. And it, and it, for a moment, a brief moment, you just get everyone sort of celebrating it, sharing memes about how good it is or something like that. Yeah. And that'd be crazy. What would they say to that? What would they say? Oh, they'd what find a way to make it so that you know what I mean? somehow we, we were still monsters or whatever. It's, it's always a I'm thing. I'm just sick of it years of it now when the answer is obvious well <laughs> get ready out. for more of it uh the original star wars movies were a product of a different time given the franchise's uh, current popularity it it's hard to believe there was ever a time when uh, no one on earth had ever watched one of george lucas's star wars movies the first Didn't film earth be capitalized it's a planet arguably that it's my favorite planet <laughs> but like you should that you should capitalize you should capitalize maybe earth. it's you're not earth. referring to dirt the earth is a well you're not referring word. to like dirt like moving earth or an earth mover like you're maybe, maybe he is. you're referring to the planet fucking capitalize your planet show some goddamn respect the first film in the original trilogy originally titled star wars upon its 1977 release was shown to the public during a decade of classic hits like steven spielberg's jaws in 75 and rocky in 76 this was a time when Hollywood relied almost exclusively on traditional tropes to tell stories exclusively through a Eurocentric white male lens. Listen, you're. This is not Jaws. saying the thing that you think it's saying. This is saying a different thing to what you think you're trying to say here. Is Jaws a film that is seen through the lens of a white male? <laughs> a great, a great white male. Just, how do you say that male. about fucking Jaws? I just, I, what? If they're trying to, I, I don't know, the balls on these people for these the reaches that they do. Throw incredible. fucking alien in there and tell hey, me what? that's a Wait. white male lens, the creature killing everyone, said... you know? Sorry, Pop. You can't, what it, that would make as much sense. Chat, hmm? Stardust and their viewers just joined. Say hello. Howdy. I've, it's like a, it was like a white message in chat. I've never seen that before. What? Is it like a new feature? It, oh, is it like a raid? Like, like a Twitch raid or something like that? Well, I doubt Twitch can raid YouTube. <laughs> you know, at least <laughs> well, not in like an official like, capacity. Like it, right? Oh, oh, Stardust is a is a streamer. Oh, you're There's right. Videos. I've never seen that before. Stardust okay. and the viewers just trying I've to say hello. I've never seen that before. I guess they're okay. trying to integrate raiding more. Which makes sense. They're always a thousand years behind Twitch on features like that. Well, interesting. I say that as if I... YouTube is worse than Twitch. It ain't. But yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, Mark is saying, yeah, she's Dev's friend. Oh, okay, I gotcha. I feel like I've heard that name before. I'd, I've never seen that before, that the notification popped up, and it was white, with white well, text. I mean, so I was like, what is this? And I had to highlight the text to see it. Like, oh, just okay, in time, we're talking thing. about how Jaws is a white male film. Uh, yeah. I guess. <laughs> didn't you know? Didn't you? Couldn't you tell? I guess I guess you gotta be able to swim, but I don't know how else it could, you could take that, I suppose. It's so. kind of weird that he would be saying, you know how, you know, these amazing, classic, iconic films were made back then? That's because they relied on a traditional <laughs> tropes of a Eurocentric white male lens. So what do you think about that? Like, yeah, it's like, why are you, don't think this is the, why are you categorizing uh, them that way? Why are you giving if, them all to the white males? What do you mean? Like, these are I, just amazing I, films. You don't need to do that. Maybe Cameron Barnett is the ghostwriter name for Wait, Synthetic Man, and he's feels, trying to sneak this into the article. It feels a little divisive, you might say. Um, I never... <laughs> I don't think about these movies as, like, a white person movie from the white no. lens, or a black well, so movie, or an Asian You may movie. find this shocking, but Rocky like is considered inspirational to almost everyone all over the from world, everyone. from every place, yeah. everywhere. It's crazy. Rocky, is, it's a human story. It's not a fucking white male. Oh, human. Uh, Leslie off. talked about humans. She, uh, Jeez yeah, Christ. she does human stuff. Listen, I, 
I would say as an outside observer, after watching that interview, stock in humanity is uh, it's gone down a bit for me. <laughs> so we're uh, y'all need to step it up. It was such a bad interview. You have noticeably lost stock in humanity. Like it's gone down a few ticks. I don't know. Like, I'm oh. not gonna look at y'all the same way. Just watch Rocky and Jaws. <laughs> you might go Just back watch up. Watch Rocky and Jaws. Uh, protagonists were almost always played up as ultra-masculine tough guys, while supporting cast typically consisted of domestic female characters or problematic stereotypes. And as films released during this insulated time period, the original Hold Star up. Wars movies are often construed as possessing a similarly narrow narrative focus. Sheriff so Brody? He's like giving us, so he's giving us like a, a checklist of how to make good movies? That's interesting. I don't know, uh, it's... Okay, all right. I think this is going to eventually try article. to explain why why we all hate the new stuff isn't at all to do with the writing. It's just who they cast now. That's why. That's the only reason. Despite taking place just, on, well, in a he's galaxy... He's not going to talk about the writing, right? He's far, not far, no. You already said it's alleged, Rags. <laughs> that's as far as he's going to go okay, with it. Oh, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> the, the idea of alleged writing is a funny concept to me. <laughs> alleged <laughs> writing, you mean? Uh, despite taking uh, place in a galaxy far, far away from the filmmaking conventions of Earth, Star Wars' original trilogy features a mostly white cast. Female characters with largely unrealized potential. Well, Jesus Christ. Are they saying that about Leia? What are they fucking talking about? Like, why is the white the cast being mainly white? Explain to me why that's a bad thing. They just throw it in as if we just understand that this is inherently bad. I don't even need to elaborate. It's, Whenever... so, it's so slimy. I just don't, I, it's gotta be, like, I don't want to know what it's like to look at the world this way, and I'm glad I don't, but what a bizarre way to look at, like, storytelling, to look at it yeah. through racial lens. When, Everything through this racial lens it just skews your, ugh, I, Yeah, like, I, my favorite movie of last year was Godzilla Minus One, and it's all a bunch of Asian guys and a big lizard, and I'm thinking, like, man, I never once did it even occur to me that I couldn't connect with anybody or there needed to be more racial diversity or anything. I just, I, I, I just, it just doesn't exist. That part of my brain just isn't there. Yeah. I felt things. And I, I'm not even, I've never been Asian or lizard. So like, it's gotta be proof <laughs> of something. Yes. I, the, the first act of that film is I actually liked it the best out of everything, including Gl Godzilla and all the destruction and everything, because the story and the characters were working so well. So, I mean, yeah, it obviously has nothing to do with the race or anything. It's always My been a very clap when, lame topic. And I, I think it can be cringe when that happens sometimes, but at the, there's times when it's just the movie earned it and everyone gave it a genuine clap at the end and like... I don't, I don't mind that at all if it's well earned. And there was a lady behind me like sniffling and like crying throughout it. Really, you know, the, the emotional beats hit hard. And this isn't a giant lizard movie. Like no one expected it. No one cares about race when we have those fucking things to appreciate. Like just fuck off. I'm sick of that. We're still a just, while back. The unrealized Mom female I... characters thing is still throwing me off. Yeah, because yeah, we didn't have like a prominent and you know pivotal and important central character in you know Princess Leia and everything she does. Um, if they're not the lead and they're not the hyper focus, if it's not mainly about them, if they're I not guess the key to everything, they have to be the lead. Not, they have yeah. to be gay, and she has to <laughs> kick everyone's ass all the time. And if she they has don't to have, have a terrible that. shitty personality, I guess that's sh that's the, shitty the blueprint too, no that we really need. That's what's making art really good. Ugh. Um. Mahler and I watched a movie, uh, it, was, it was offline a while back, called uh, When Evil Lurks. Mm. And it was, it was pretty, I, I would recommend it. I would recommend it. And it's a Portuguese horror movie. And I was thinking, this is cool, to because I don't think I've ever seen like a Portuguese movie before. Uh, so we went into this and we were like, oh, hey, this is interesting. This is new. It's cool to see how, you know, other people make movies. And it was nice to be like, oh, this is just different. This isn't like oh downtown LA. Yeah, there was some oh, da, da, da. some conventions it was really that nice. were a little. Uh, <laughs> it's everything is at a skew in terms of oh they decided to do that that way. That's cool and that works. And then it's like oh that eh, that wasn't this. Okay, yeah, well <laughs> that's fine. And the all your standard shit like just with writing, pacing, everything that you'd find to be worth uh, a sort of analysis. We we were interested in the angle of just yeah this is it's the same but different in terms of because we liked a lot about it. I'm trying to remain relatively spoiler free here because uh i think argentinian i'm sorry someone said argentinian i said portuguese i wow. apologies argentinian 
See? Oh, see, like, it just so, goes to show to that I don't even see. See? Yeah, I don't I even yeah, say, you know, I was you, so you, focused you, on the movie. That makes your point even more like more potent. Like you don't who yeah. gives a shit? Well, Argentina and Portuguese. Whatever. It's a good that's movie. That's what I was gonna bring who up is that uh what we ended up talking about, of course, were the ideas, the characters, yeah, how everything yeah. unfolded and what it meant for a world that they were creating in this. We weren't going like, yeah, but there was there was no white people in it though. Like, I don't know, man. Like or however uh, however many gay people, or however many lizard people there were, because he didn't need any lizard people to get a, a, into this one. Obviously, that was necessary in Godzilla, not necessarily necessary in Star Wars. But you know what? Wouldn't mind some more lizard people in Star Wars as well. There you go. It's uh, always strange to see this angle of attack, but I mean, it's not going to go away anytime soon. Apparently, they uh, they keep trying. They sure do. I mean, one of these days, if they call us racist hard enough, it'll, I don't know, like, work or something? I don't know. I just... Yeah, because they said there's I no LGBT plus storylines depicted on screen in Star Wars. Have they done... What is an LGBT plus storyline? Is it one that simply has someone who is LGBT, or that the storyline itself has to be related to that? Good question. Well, I think it, it depends on who you ask. I and then, would... is it the character or is it the actor, too? Well, because I wouldn't say that a straight storyline. Yeah, is I, I would never have described. A, you know, I would <laughs> yeah, never. Yeah, you're fucking. Oh my god. Yeah. It's now, so if, if if it's a story that specifically relates to someone and their gayness or whatever or whatever one of those things are, then yeah, sure. If that's like a an actual important central key element of the story, but I wouldn't. I would not consider Arcane an LGBTQ plus storyline. Nope. I'd just be like, yeah, it's some of the characters are gay. I, I mean, as we just said, I think it's as silly as describing something as a straight storyline. That's not a thing. We never. Yeah, yeah I don't do that. that. I don't see. I just don't. I don't. I'm not like, all right, let's categorize everyone in this story. It's like that's just not how my brain works. Like, is it a part of the story? That's something you can discuss. But describing it as a gay story, I just don't understand that. Like when she said, "This is the gayest Star Wars ever." What does that mean? What does that mean at all? Is it the, mon the most gay people in it? The, 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 well, it's, maybe it's they just... clear it up, because you got a... While powerful female leaders like Mon Mothra and Carrie Fisher's iconic Princess Leia are outspoken uh, forces for good in the trilogy, the latter's relationship with the Force and her father is glossed over in favor of her brother. Just, from, just, just, every, just so everyone knows, that her brother, that's Luke Skywalker, yeah, the main, main character. Luke Skywalker is the, the, the it's primary... Kind of, you know, primary the character, you could say. You could the... say. Oh my god. Uh, and Leia's infamous bikini scene at Jabba's palace in Star Wars Return of the Jedi feels like fodder for a generation of male fantasies. Pretty First sure. Off, famous bikini scene. Or what about the females that liked it? Well, so I was going to say, how do you deal with I... women who either want to star in scenes like that or believe that it's empowering for women to have scenes like that? How do you, yeah, how do you deal because with that? You ignore that, it. that would be the you L. You ignore it so you can't have the, your narrative. <laughs> this is the aforementioned L in LGBTQ+. And nice. they're into that sort of thing. Oh, I thought you and meant also... it's just an L that they wouldn't want those scenes. <laughs> <laughs> Jedi's taking L's. First then. off, if you don't want those scenes, that, that is, is a L. big L. And you are you should put a L what? on your didn't, forehead. Didn't she request that because she had been dressed up throughout like the entire thing? She wanted to actually be able to show some shapes. That's, like, wasn't that I, her request? I've not seen the source for that, but I've heard people say it. So uh, I thought it chance. was really weird when she specifically requested that she wanted to lay on Jabba mm. all the time, and she wanted to get his, <laughs> his lightsaber. <laughs> oh, let's, let's move on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, his lightsaber. Yeah. For me, all I have to like, all you need to do is look at the context of the scene. This big fucking gangster alien has her he's doing whatever he wants with her like it, like even within the scene it's not really her choice like you and can they, they cut the the hut cream scene so at least oh you know. i don't oh, christ <laughs> and God, she kills him it. she kills him how like how is that not an empowering scene when she fucking murks him with her bare hands and strangles sure. chokes his fat neck with chokes she the uses, shit out of him she ah, uses the object of her <laughs> enslavement her yes, chain yeah she it's, uses it's that dramatically on point yeah him. She was Honestly, like, I'm going to kill scene, you, man. and you're going to think about it while it happens, you fucker. It's, argu it's arguably Leia's best scene, when you think about it. it <laughs> and you can tell now, when he's strangling, he's like, oh, I actually oh, like oh, this. Oh, this is awesome. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had a giant boner during that you whole thing. can't stop me today. from doing one last <laughs> <laughs> It's 
Princess Leia, she kills him, and then she's like, all right, I, I gotta go open the back door for Max Rebo because they're gonna make a show when he's alive in it, so I... Uh... Yeah, he gets out of there. He, he, oh, it would be so save cool. Biff Fortuna. If as the, the barge was crashing, you see little uh, Max with a parachute. Just like, I made it! <laughs> Max Rebo and, and Bib Fortuna's holding on to him. Yeah. <laughs> like, really tight, and they float down to the second. You'll see us again! It's like Jesse and James from Team Rock. Yeah, yeah Red blasted off again. Missed opportunity. That would have made more sense because he was alive in Boba Fett. They just skipped that. Yet. Tim and Max blasting off again. The original trilogy's premise still feels magical to watch and provided formative memories for many uh, of Star Wars' older fans. Also the younger ones. The films hold the fuck up. Uh, creating such an impact on viewers' minds that many still consider the first three movies the definitive guide to the Star Wars experience. Well, yeah. Yeah. They're the foundation from which everything on Star Wars was built. <laughs> like it's, uh, it's not a surprise that people would say you could go back and do it. Never mind. Unfortunately, this mindset's reliance on the original trilogy's outdated aesthetic severely limits the <laughs> understanding of what a Star Wars story can be. Okay. Outdated if, aesthetics. It could be meaning, gayer. Well, if, white if, people that are gay. <laughs> <laughs> like, either they have to commit to one of two things. One, they have expanded well beyond it, and that's why everyone hates it. And it's like, so that was a failed experiment then. Or two, they haven't yet expanded, and that we hate all this stuff. We just need to do why? it harder. <laughs> because uh, maybe you should expand elsewhere. Then is it? Are they saying that like Star Wars fans are just so? locked in to what Star Wars is. They won't allow it to expand. Even though, just, why are we pretending as though fans just don't like any of the Star Wars content that's come out post-OT? That's not true. There's shit tons. In the form yeah, of... Don't mention that at all. Going strictly with even just our perspective here, uh, with still plenty of things we've liked in between and alongside a bunch of stuff. But then if you go to the expanded sort of general audiences, you know, Mando Season 1 was pretty well received. To the point where they made another two seasons. That didn't turn out well, though, did it? In the aftermath of the original trilogy's popularity, Star Wars broadened its appeal to accommodate an entirely new generation of fans to the franchise. The prequel's Queen Padme Amidala made up for the original movie's oversight by showcasing a powerful fictional queen whose bravery and political wisdom co competed with the likes of Count Dooku and then-Chancellor Palpatine. I like the then-Chancellor Palpatine. <laughs> What oversight? Like, I'm, I'm sorry, Leia was a better character than fucking Padme. What well, oversight I mean, I, are we talking about? I here? certainly think so, and I think that we watched her Jesus. in action. She was organizing battles. Like, I don't even know why they're saying this. We just talked about how she fucking murdered Jabba with her bare hands, strangled him with her fucking shade. Like, how is that not? How can you call that an oversight? Just. I'm so done with this fucking arc already. And the it's introduction so of Ahsoka in 2007 Star Wars The Clone Wars gave younger viewers a powerful heroine to grow up with. Increased efforts at telling diverse Star Wars stories came when Disney launched, Disney purchased, sorry, Lucasfilm in 2012. Though many well, of the Mouse House's listen, Star Wars uh, releases have been marred by online hate. It's interesting that they say that a uh, diverse Star Wars stories are intrinsically linked to the sex slash um sexuality of the character and not the nature of what the story actually is what they care about well i don't think they if we're supposed to believe this person's being 100 percent honest they don't believe they wouldn't believe someone like you saying that they'd be like yeah you think the writing is the problem huh uh-huh yeah. sure though it would be cool if there were a wizard that could zap into their head the the truth which is that we're telling the truth and how they would deal with that how would they come to terms yeah, with like the reality? If they knew... all, all those people that I called racist all these years, I suppose they, you were, could they still... were actually being honest with me when they said that they just hated the fucking writing and it was shit. If they were willing to entertain with a hypothetical, like how would you respond to the notion that it, it, you knew it to be true, that we were telling the truth, that we really just want better writing and it has nothing to do with anything you think here? I don't know what they would say. They'd probably be like, yeah, but it's not true. Like, okay. Yeah, That's why I like to ask those type of people, like, is that the only possibility? Is there is there another possible explanation at all? Can we even consider it? Just to see what they say. Yeah. Like, if they're locked into it, if they'll even, like, admit maybe they could be wrong. Just as, like, a baseline, you know? Mm. It, was just, it reveals a lot from the beginning. While Disney did make some decisions that caused legitimate controversy within the Star Wars fandom, such as removing the beloved Legends continuity from canon, many alleged controversies of this time period unfolded because problematic Star Wars alleged viewers chose... <laughs> They chose outrage over trying to understand change. 
What? Chose outrage. The narrative quality of... They woke of... up and chose violence. Yeah, so... that's how it feels. Like, the, the, uh, the narrative Sometimes quality you is... you just gotta wake up and choose to hate crimes, you know? That's just... Look at this line. Those days. The narrative quality of Disney Star Wars trilogy, sequ uh, sequel trilogy aside, the movie's progressive decision... It's like, what do you mean... Putting that aside, that's like the whole. Aside, that might be the central point. That's honestly. It. <laughs> put that to one <laughs> side. The most potent thing they've said in this entire thing. How do you put the narrative aside? You fucking moron! And it's, it's just that yeah, sells ignore, ignoring the story thing. of this story. <laughs> We, you, know, you have to focus on other elements. The movie's progressive decision to hire Daisy Ridley as Rey and John Boyega as Finn marked important firsts for the franchise's leads. Yes. Don't worry about the story, but we have a woman and a black guy. That's what they just said. Well, well I'm, I'm waiting for them to I, say I, that. I was... guess technically, as leads, it's a first, I guess. Well, it didn't. But all it, people it, can talk about is how much they wasted Finn and how much of a not character Ray is. Exactly. And which one are they That's bringing all, back? No one... It's the one nobody wants to see anymore off. <laughs> I mean, no one talks about oh, raise a woman and Finn's black. No one gives a shit about that. No one talks about that. No one cares. Yet these casting decisions also resulted in constant online harassment for both actors in the aftermath of their performances. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, get the fuck out of here. What? Everyone wanted Finn to be a character. People no, are still no, pissed let's, off. Let's just rewrite history that they just rewrote back to what it was. When TFA came out, people were over the moon. People were going crazy. People were celebrating. Yep, people they were, were really John Boyega and Daisy Ridley would have been showered with, you know praise and excitement and they were pretty sure daisy ridley's on record as saying that's what happened and then it was different with tlj it's like yeah it was yes yes huh yeah. well that's because she was less woman no yeah that was that was clearly it or, or it, became more woman well or I, I should have probably it, finished the that, sentence here it says with many detractors trying to drag star wars back to a less inclusive past that that's oh the, my god that's the story that's they're going why. with that's yeah, oh not like we have all of these problems with the story that you could just... Um, at this point, it's not even worth pretending that they don't get it. Um, we've, not just us, obviously, but channels the world over have been very explicit time and time and time again about what the problems are, down to very, very nitty-gritty specifics. These people don't want to listen to that. They don't care about us actually having problems. They elect to ignore them and to paint us with a different brush. This is a like, malicious outlook on our position. These people want to hate us. These are yeah. bad faith actors, and they're not Breach. good people. Breach. I, I'm. It's hurting me that we're fucking. We're talking about Finn, one arguably one of the most wasted characters of all time. Like I don't even think that's like too much of a statement to say. The potential that he had. Up there, yeah. He's up there. It's like mm -hmm. of of all time. Really, it's insane. Everyone wanted to see the stormtroopers arc change. Like it's it's interesting. And, and he had a, 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 an 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 actor with like a good, per, you know. Well, uh, he got reduced so down bad. to Ray. That was his thing. Ray! <laughs> And, and if anyone's ever seen it, there's a clip online of John Boyega watching the trailer for yeah. TFA with his friend, and he freaks out and he jumps. It's such a fun, like, bro moment. Everyone's had one of those moments before. And that's a dude who could not wait to see himself be a Jedi. And I've said it before, Kylo versus Finn is the best fight in Disney Star Wars in terms of actually having something I cared about. And they did nothing with it. The moment Rey force grabbed that lightsaber, the, the, sh the movie was over. The whole trilogy was over. Finn's character was ruined in that moment, and it was all downhill from there. Well, they didn't even acknowledge the lightsaber slash that he got from Kylo. They just, Ryan just wrote it out in the next movie. He just woke up and bumped his head on the fucking thing. I was so pissed about that because I wanted to know to what was going to happen to him. Little Gooster, little Gaster. That's what he was in the trilogy. Oh, Finn, Finn the Clown. That's what he was. Absolute bullshit. Flash forward to, to The Last Jedi's release in 2017, and this online hatred uh, reached a fever pitch. Kelly Marie Tran's heartwarming performance as Rose Tico draw, uh, sorry, drew the ire of a racist internet horde, causing Tran to quit Instagram, which is still to this day yet to be proven, uh, that story. Yes, we still, we don't know the reason no reason was ever actually given. In order to look out for her mental health. Disney, admittedly, did not handle the backlash well. Not only did the final film in the sequel trilogy, 2019's The Rise of Skywalker, greatly reduce Rose's screen time, true, uh, but the brief lesbian kiss featured in the background at the very end of the movie felt disappointing for audience members who waited so long for sincere queer storylines. In this instance, it felt like the most vocal opponents of the sequel's central performances had won. Bro, everyone hated that movie. Everyone, for, yeah, first off, everyone hated that movie. And a lot of people took that as a pretty well, 
clear by their logic opportunity to should we not then have been like oh thank you disney you've removed many many of the things we didn't like we like this but it's like no I remember people saying that um, it's people like us's fault that we got Rise it of Skywalker. It was people who shit on TLJ. It yeah. was their fault that the Rise of Skywalker happened. Never mind that nobody liked it. We nobody. never asked for what that is. We wanted good well, writing. I mean, it's, it's, so, it's a really stupid idea of, oh, you, you offered criticisms for this film that I like, and then in response they made a film that nobody likes. See? You got what you deserved. Yeah. As, as if there's a one and only way to respond to the criticism that was levied at the last jedi the one being rise just of... you know like oh what's up rise of skywalker didn't fail just on a writing level either i mean it was a badly made film it was butchered in editing and the sound design was, it was rushed and... uh they yeah, there's so much behind the scenes of just they didn't know what the really fuck was happening they just had to finish it frankenstein film just yeah. stitched together Thankfully, the most recent installments in the Star Wars universe have built upon the franchise's contemporary legacy by including more representative storylines in an age of digital hate. The lesbian relationship between Val Sartha and Cinta Kaz in Andor marks an important step forward for LGBT plus inclusion in Star Wars. So why wasn't Andor hated then? Curious. In a... Curious, curious, how, how curious. Do they, how, how can he score away Andor? It's weird. Must it's like it's, it's an the, anomaly. It's the elephant in the room. It's an anomaly. It's, uh, there's a lot of elephants in the room. Actually, it it's a very, a very crowded room. It's a lot of uh, someone needs, someone needs to do something. But that's this the one is not that's appropriate. Just, that's the one that's just the clearest counter. Like they should be aware of that counter when they're like, how could you just skip over Andor's existence when you're trying to just oh, beat us down with this shitty point? To oh, be it's crystal just, you know, clear, Andor was a big ensemble cast. Yeah. It wasn't hated, but it was maligned as boring. That that is true, but you understand the difference, Even right? That Anyone it was boring. Yeah, this is yeah, not the same as Last you know, Jedi being wrong. flamed to pieces because as yeah. they think it's about inclusive relationships being told. They've made a well, point yeah, in that, this that... article about how there are no LGBT plus storylines and they're celebrating Andor as having one of it. So that means that Andor should have been flamed to pieces as well, but it wasn't. It was said to be boring. But what's that got as a connection? It was met with a bit more. Yeah, it was met with more apathy than it definitely than yeah. it deserved. But I mean, we know why that happened. It was because it followed Obi Wan Kenobi, and it was about a more obscure character. And it was it's, way it better. Was <laughs> it, was just, <laughs> it was way better. Yeah, so much better, way man. way better. It was slow paced, but I was never bored. But I can understand people being bored watching it if this is not something they're going to have like the patience to watch play out. But I was like, oh my God, this is Star Wars for adults. I'm so down for this. The Empire isn't a piece of shit. There's some good performances here. Like, like guns are actually ranged weapons. They're not fucking being stupid. Like if you're going to disarm someone, you have to use your brain. I, it's just it's just ignoring all that and saying oh but it was boring yeah good for you what if i found it entertaining then you have nothing now like you have to actually make a point and i haven't seen anyone tell me why andor is badly written or all i've heard is it's boring or it's not star wars and those are both like meaningless to me what are you gonna do with that uh as does the relationship between osha and may's mothers in the acolyte likewise kelly marie trans 2018 article in the new york times demonstrates that performance performers can reclaim their stories by publicly disavowing those who only have the courage to tear others down in private, providing an inspiring example of how actors can stand up to Star Wars' most toxic audience members. Demonstrate performers can reclaim their stories by publicly disavowing those who only have the courage to tear others down in private. What does that mean? Is she saying... Oh, she's, when he says she's private, she's disavowing does he mean, like, anonymously or something, and that she was reclaiming the character being liked by doing an article saying that uh, she yeah, disavows those confused. trolls. Basically, is what well, I'm getting from. And this, this was 2018. Trolls... We're talking six years ago. I don't know what her opinion is now. Who knows? Yeah. So, yeah, and as James just said, I'm pretty sure she blamed social media, not angry Star Wars fans or something, you know, or toxic. Haters of the it's, TLJ. And it strikes me as odd that if that was really the case, that she wouldn't just outright say that. You know, especially in that yeah, environment with Disney and the message that Disney wants to send and, you know, da -da -da, defend the brand by uh, miscategorizing people and da -da 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 -da, take shots at the fans whenever possible. Surely, you'd think that if that was the issue, it would just be safely said. But I don't know. 
as nobody knows the bigoted campaigns against obi-wan kenobi's moses ingram and the acolyte prove star wars online hate isn't going anywhere anytime soon or away anytime yeah soon. i hate bad shows well i, I was gonna say this, this is applicable to everything yeah. that was shit the, the, this is they pretend, they pretend like star wars is the only thing that's coming out that gets criticism like there's shit tons of things coming out that people love hate and are neutral on constantly it's called media it's everywhere Therefore, yeah. it's up to Star Wars creatives to boldly navigate the turbulent waters of the beloved franchise's fandom. In a recent interview with the New York Times, Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy herself acknowledged that women in Star Wars are often subject to audience attacks because of the franchise's vocal male fan base. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, the shitty ones. Uh, yeah. They just don't like women because... Hear that? You know Any women, women in chat? You don't exist. <laughs> you, you don't get to be you here. You love him. Tell they, me no, why all the ladies, good. they love these great female characters. They're, who are really, they're really showing them. You got to tell me why Reva was good. You can't, you got to <sighs> stop just calling me racist and sexist for not liking her. She's one of the they... stupidest characters I've ever seen in my life. So how do they explain men hating male characters who are shit? <laughs> like, can't. how does that work? Oh my God. Because uh, most of the poorly written characters I can think of are men. Yeah, and no, yet, there's, there's more I am, shit I am men a than male shit women, somehow. I guess. Cause Which, cause, I don't know. I don't know how you score that away. If if the vast majority of Star Wars characters in the Disney era are shittily written, and typically speaking, I could be wrong on this, but I think there's more men than women, then we have more criticism for the male characters than we do for the women in like a core on Earth? sheer or... amount. No, in Star Wars. Disney Star Wars specifically. Um... Well, yeah, because well, Mando's a bloody now, bad TV I show. Mean... Book of Boba Fett's a pretty bad TV show. Obi-Wan Kenobi yeah. is probably the one that I think we agree is the worst. And these I are all male-led. So, yeah. Oh my goodness. Yep. Run. Mm -hmm. Um, Where was I? Uh, acknowledges female audience. Uh, as well as espousing her belief that storytelling needs to be representative of all people. This sentiment echoed as if you've covered it even close to all the people of Earth in, in like an interesting I, I, cultural I, way. Yeah, or, or just in the, the sense of like, whoa, speaking to a lot of universal experiences of people and then exploring those in a variety of different formats and, yeah. and different genres and, and different structures for narratives. What, why is that not part of why is that not the most important part of uh, any kind of conversation like this. Uh, this sentiment because, echoes. This... Well, I mean, look, it's 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 the the title of this section of the par of, of of the article. The future of Star Wars should be focused on representation and inclusivity. It's all not that. deep, compelling characters, interesting writing, cool plots, you know, Good premises, you know, expansions of established lore. None of that. But yeah, imagine it's it said we're going to focus on meaningful stories that should inspire and expand the notion of the human experience that we can all understand and grow from. Also, you know, something really, really core. Exploring the differences between the Jedi and the Sith, like we've been begging for years for. <laughs> really understand. They would say they have done that. They'd be like, "Yeah, the acolyte did it." There you go. Like, oh, okay. Oh, if if that's <laughs> the if, oh my god, you might be right, and that um, pains me. This sentiment echoes the similar views of both Headland and director Sharmino Bay Janoy, uh, in who is set to helm Star Wars' upcoming solo Ray film. In an interview with the, Ver <laughs> still can't believe this happened. Right, good luck. Janoy well. expressed her appreciation for the franchise's passionate fan base, but she also acknowledged it's best for her to drown out those voices in order to tell her stories. That's always a good sign. Always a, a, a <laughs> an optimistic harbinger of things to come. <laughs> yeah. huh? This delicate balance between creating Star Wars content and maneuvering around its most toxic elements highlights one of the most difficult struggles facing the franchise today. The most vocal what a viewers are bold. Look, <laughs> it's like half of that is bold, and the other is the underlined. Link. Oh yeah, okay. It all seems odd. What's the link? Yeah. Like, I think this is the it's about full version of um, putting text up on screen in a video essay. I know. I would it's say weird. it's a it's about as difficult fun. as it is to make a good film, <laughs> like which I mean, it isn't easy making a good movie, but I mean that is the solution here. Mm. You know, we've got too many uh, examples of people having a lot of fun with even Disney created Star Wars content that is considered well executed. So obviously, we could try that, right? We could try it. Let's give it a shot. See what happens. Make something well written, focused on characters, humanity. I mean, she used the word human in that interview at some point. She knows about it, uh, Leslie, so... Might be able to wedge in something there, and just see how it goes. 
The most vocal viewers of the franchise wield the power of the internet. I can't not think of Boogie. If <laughs> That's like his whole ass catchphrase, man. <laughs> like, in order to push a bigoted agenda that originates from the prejudices of an earlier time. While mainstream Star Wars content has grown to produce meaningful narratives while being bogged down by hate. Uh, in the it's, background. It, like, these oh, shows so have been tiring. so shallow. They've been so shallow. What are you supposed to meaningfully take away from something like the Acolyte that's going to be applicable in terms of navigating day-to-day -day life compared to some of the more like fundamental, essential sort of themes that you'd be getting in in the original trilogy, for instance? Like when you're watching Book of Boba Fett, what are you going to be walking away from? Like, you know what? This is making me think about this aspect of my life. And like excuses uh, uh, can know. be made for slavery. Mm -hmm. The value of water in Boba Fett. That's going to be the one. And even with this, what? like, make sure do? that you like make sure you get your two liters of water every day. Yeah. <laughs> from, I, I just so, find it, like, to say, like, oh, well, they're meaningful stories. Yes, that explains why everybody forgets about them two weeks after they're done and people yeah. don't reference them. Meanwhile, people reference lines from the original trilogy constantly, like, all the time. They're just enduring parts of. Of, um, okay, of all right. Culture. If what you're saying is true, then why would people have collectively celebrated this tragic moment from the very meaningful and impactful show Obi Wan Kenobi together? Why people oh, wouldn't yes. remember <laughs> this if what you said was That's true. true? Yeah, two years <laughs> since we lost that character. Yeah, i I like how I like how the way that it works is because there's a, a, a disproportionate number of comments compared to the likes. You know, ah, uh, people do not agree with this. It's like who, <laughs> who, who? <laughs> Well, so agree with this one remember when this retarded loser just like didn't kill throw herself her fucking here? grenade? Like, why wouldn't she just she throw a grenade the, the whole it's time? It's so stupid. It's so stupid. It's, why do well, they want to make this... women look stupid? Why? What? Well, what's the end just, goal here bro, with Disney? Nope, yeah. John, this was... was a character who showed up in Obi Wan Kenobi for a few episodes. Oh, okay, he gave okay. Kenobi a pep talk, basically, like you know, all the things he should have been able to figure <laughs> That's out. That's how himself, he knew she was going to master, and she fucking just had to carry him and tell him it's going to be all right because he's a bitch. And then she had a big sacrificial like death at the end because that's what they have to do. They have to make them like have this Remember big him? incredible moment. And she refused to throw a grenade against a crowd of stormtroopers. She's a moron. You have a Wade. <laughs> Yeah, Wade, he Wade. died because Wade Reva threw a floopy thing at him. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Where's Wade? Where's Wade? Oh my like, God. starting the episode out with that. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> it was so yeah, fucking funny. Just, yeah. oh, Jesus Christ. Do you, uh, Kenobi is definitely the most insulting. It's like TLJ part two, um, a TLJ for prequel fans almost. But do you I think, think it's um, worse? Than like Boba Fett and Acolyte, just writing wise. Uh, I think the problem is that the Acolyte can never approach uh, Obi Wan Kenobi in terms of pissing me off because the yeah. Acolyte is yeah. in like a realm that I don't care about. I don't care about these characters. I don't care about the era it's set in. Whereas Obi Wan Kenobi is one of my favorite characters in Star Wars. So you know, seeing yeah. him get dragged through is uh, not the shitty writing funny. blender. Yeah. And and they got back you and McGregor and it you just uh, hate to exactly. see that talent as they, you hate to see that talent wasted you know? as Otto Especially Hightower would scene. put it these are symbols of legitimacy and having them yeah. is frustrating because it's like so yeah we why... got the canon uh, why you gotta put it like that Molly Terminator Genesis <laughs> Genesis I can treat as like a goober clown movie that doesn't exist Dark Fate has That's Sarah Connor yeah yeah you're so right man like it, it's it, how it works, it, i couldn't it, yeah. believe they got han luke and leia back for for teal i couldn't get i believe they actually yeah. had the real cast members so it made it so much i remember i'll never forget how hyped i was for tlj and we can never have just no again. way this is yeah this is no way this was, is not going to be one of my favorite movies ever i can't wait that, click press one play. Oh, oh yeah, yeah never we're never gonna get this the real sequel trilogy unfortunately while mainstream Star Wars content has grown to produce meaningful narratives while being bogged down by the hate in the background, opinions about Star Wars has grown so loud because both sides are vying for rhetorical victory. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, these controversies are unnecessary. True fans understand that the Star Wars universe is a sci-fi wonderland where anything can happen and anything <laughs> belongs. And the future looks bright for those who have already opened up their minds to the compassion that all audience members should have learned a long time ago. The Dude, I just think that the writing sucks. Like, that's it. I just think yeah. that It's such a funny thing, like spending like, the whole time it. being this divisive and then ending on... Sunshine and rainbows yeah. for everyone. Yeah. Can you imagine, and then, and then, like, 
and instead of this being an article, this was you listening to him face to face. You'd just be dead pen staring at him like, dude, it's just it, oh, sorry, it's just the writing. Way, it's just the writing, like, bro. So what is the deal with the like the whole ending the the thing with like the acolyte is streaming on Disney Plus? Like what's the deal there? Is that is that like something is that like what is that? Why do these articles keep ending with that? Um I don't know if it's somewhat of a an etiquette thing or if it is because is they're an paid. Etiquette thing or is it like an affiliate yeah, thing? Is don't that know. like because I don't know, man. Like it's it's just it's so awkward that it keep these articles keep ending with like, hey, by the way, make sure that you go watch the show over on Disney Plus. New episodes airing every Tuesday. After I just called yeah, you well, for an if, entire article, <laughs> go if watch these our articles. Show. If these articles are essentially meant to be commercials for the show coming out, it would make They're sense awful. that there's no <laughs> part of the article even bothers for a second to take a magnifying glass to the writing quality and say well do some of the fans have a point maybe the scenes aren't that well written maybe maybe the characters do things that don't make sense and that is the case i mean in preparation for this i mean most of the coverage i watched of the acolyte was like you guys talking about it but i watched the first episode clean like no commentary and you loved it and i just i want to no <laughs> <laughs> but I gave it a chance. I'm just like, I sat back, I went into it, like, I didn't, I heard all the buzz about the Acolyte, but I was just like, I'm going to block all of that out. I don't give a shit. I'm just going to sit down and watch this and try and get immersed in it and see what happens, see if I like it. And I didn't. Immediately, <laughs> like, the first scene, I'm just like, okay, this is dumb. Why are they doing it like this? Why is she doing that? I guess Carry On Moss is just done now. Yep. Cool. Done. Rip. And why are they using like daggers? And like, why did this character use a force power here? But it was already established that why she let her friends. Like, why did she use a, a force power here? But then didn't in this other scene where it would have been a a perfect opportunity to do so, and it would have been useful. Like it's just so inconsistent. I can't get invested. Yeah, like, I, I, I was bored. Like it's just bad writing. <laughs> Fucking hell, I don't care if it's diverse or whatever. <laughs> Just write consistent characters that make sense. Straight like, people things that make sense. And so. white people made bad shit too. We've pointed that out. It's, it happens. It's crazy yeah. how you just went through your entire experience with the show without talking about diversity and inclusion and the color. <laughs> it's so irrelevant. You just said no, it was shit and I mean, it made like no I sense. Said, I want they more drugs. I want more aliens. Fuck yeah. I want yeah. that. Give me my slime bowl yeah, character. It's just a bowl you know, slime I'll even around. take a gay alien. If that's what it Whoa. takes to get more aliens in Star Wars is to make them all gay. Then you know I what? I I'll take it. I'll I'll take it. Uh, I guess. What is like really mm -hmm. frustrating? I guess about the way that the conversation is engaged with is like, why why is it not a conversation about the nature of the stories themselves and like what they you know whether or not they're because we've talked about it. Like there is a there is a very clear formula that seems to exist for a lot of Marvel shows and for a lot of um the Star Wars shows of like a general narrative structure that gets repeated over and over and over again. Number of action scenes per episode. Um, generally, like consistent in terms, not consistent in terms of the writing, but consistent in terms of they keep getting repeated over and over again of, of certain kinds of like narrative arcs and ways of creating suspense and drama. Like the actual way that the stories are constructed is consistent in a very bad way, rather than offering like a diverse set of experiences in terms of the kinds of stories that you're getting from Star Wars. Um, why is that not part of the conversation? That like that, that part of the reason why these shows are becoming so predictable is because the formula is so apparent, rather than being really unpredictable because there's different approaches, different narrative structures and arcs and um, types of characters or genres that are being explored or um, mediums that are being leveraged for you know whether like different types of animation styles or or um, I I just find it so strange that it's not like framed through that lens of like well what you know how how diverse are the stories in terms of like what you're getting as stories. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, uh, uh, oh well. With how the show gets <laughs> received, mind. this is a, another article. We ain't reading this one. I'm just showing you the title of it. Th this is where we're at. With two episodes left, the acolyte has us wondering. <laughs> yeah, you who the with villain that one, really huh? is? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Because there's like good and be? evil in everybody, you know? So who it's like two sides of the be? same coin. 
I'm imagining him just like murdering all those Jedi. Yeah, and then this sure article is like, but who's the real villain? Just mm. cut to the three holes in Jackie's chest. And like, that's all you need to do right here. It's so stupid. Who am bad well, guy? Well, tell, okay, tell this to your snap neck, all right? <laughs> <laughs> if you gotta tell it to him. Tell it. <laughs> As this force goes hey, to heaven, you're you're the... wondering who the real villain is. You didn't even get killed oh, by the real oh, villain. Oh, oh, it is perfect. It's got to be like um in the in the it's a trap. The Family Guy one where like he spawns and just like Stewie his neck is snapped. I'm like, yeah. don't worry, Yord. Yord, don't worry. You were killed by a morally gray, ambiguous, complex character, not the villain. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, oh, I that's it a relief. Morally complex as my head was spinning around. <laughs> yeah. And then, since we're God. essentially on the topic, I'm not like reading all the stuff surrounding this, but uh, I just thought this was really funny. Star Wars actor Tamira Morrison wants to star in The Mandalorian <laughs> after Pedro Pascal stole Book of Boba Fett episode. Quote. I would actually like my character to visit the Mandalorian, the Mando Fort or something, and come in there and kick some real serious ass as well, Morrison said, sharing his hopes to reprise the role of Boba Fett. Quote, the way he did and came into my show and stole an episode of my show, so I'd like to do the same thing. <laughs> you know what? I wish this was the kind of controversy that Star Wars was known for. Yes. This is so much more fun and interesting. <laughs> I just want to get my popcorn out and go like, yeah, you get him, Kamora. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, go get him. Uh, Kick so some just, ass at his show. It's so awesome, because he's so right. You just came in and took an episode of my show. <laughs> it's like, yep, what are you going to do about it? It's like, well, nothing. There's, there's speculation in this article about whether or not there'll be a Book of Boba Fett season two. It's just like, why? What? Do you remember, there, there was barely a season one. It was, <laughs> it was like the this... travesty. Yeah, I... Uh, uh, it, it, Star Wars is in a weird place, you know? It's, uh, it's having trouble. The fact that the audience can't even tell who the bad guys are anymore after they watch them... <laughs> <laughs> what can you say? But who's the real bad guy? Hmm. hmm. Who could it be? Well, you know what? Uh, this is the last one for the night, and it's not Star Wars, but okay. it's pretty fucking funny. You want to read it out, I'll take right? it. I need a break from Star Wars. I'm all Star wars out. All right, this is a, this is a, a tweet from Screen Time. Mm. They oh, gotta pay like shit. ten thousand a month or whatever for that gold check mark, right? That's expensive, know. something like that. It's like a that's a lot of money. Well, look at for the that engagement; it's clearly working. Oh yeah, Emma Roberts blames internet culture for Madam Web flopping. If it wasn't for internet culture and everything being made into a joke, I think that the reception would have been different. And that's what bums me out about a lot of stuff, even stuff that I've done, is people just make such a joke out of everything now. Um, <laughs> people didn't start memeing on this movie until the fucking trailer came out. <laughs> you should be like, glad that you scraped out of that movie some kind of meme relevancy in popular culture, because... Man, yeah. like that's the only thing that Morbius had going for it. Yeah, if you remove <laughs> Imagine, that aspect, the memeability, well, it's just dead. Yeah, that's it. Remove the memes from Morbius, and you've just got a shit film no one watched. Yeah, memes the, are why it, it lasted should, as long as it did. Absolutely, the Madam Web memes were <laughs> incredible. I don't. It, it like, brought joy to people's lives. I would, I would happily advocate for a Madam Web too. By the same team, it has to be the same team, and they have to believe they're making the something good, team. so that universe is not <laughs> happening anymore. So it's pure. Yes, so it's pure. It, I wish they could have continued on set when they they wrapped the first one. They were like, "No, we're going straight into Madam Web two. We're recording yeah, together. This is Lord of the Rings, corruption. everyone. We're doing this." <laughs> and they make a trilogy. Oh, it would have been so fucking cool. Oh well. I haven't seen this movie yet, Madame Web, but I actually plan to genuinely because um, because. I, I've heard it's a funny bad watch. Yeah, I love we that shit, so. we rated it as a rare kind of bad that I honestly miss, where you can watch it and just laugh with everybody about how hilariously inept this whole thing was. Yeah. Especially when you combine the stuff that the writers were saying as well about their own script. Ooh. Well, yeah, and remember we did the episode on how uh, Chris Duckman was like, the studio clearly ruined this, and then you check all the quotes from the director. Uh, no, actually. Yeah. <laughs> the director yeah, felt... Like, yeah, no, that's... This is my movie, and I had put thought into it. And you're like, you know what? That's great. That is That's great. Good for you. 
Madam Web is fucking hilarious, man. And like, then get it, get it, <laughs> definitely watch it. John. Dakota Johnson fucking making um, fun yeah. of the movie just was the icing on the cake. Oh, yeah. My God. Oh, and, and of course, Sydney Sweeney when she said, um, "You may have." What was it? She said on Saturday Night Live, "Like you may know me from yeah. Euphoria, yeah. you wouldn't know me from yeah. Madam Web." <laughs> it's like, oof. Listen, that's yeah. our girl right there. Yeah, the best yeah, PR yeah. ever. Those two. Hey, if any of you two want to come on EFAP, like. Just send us an email. I'm man. sure they Go, would. Yeah. yeah. Shoot us a yeah. Give us a ping on Discord. I mean, we're we, we're They'll down. Jump for it. right in anytime now. We Ugh. your your move. You need to understand that your movie brought us joy. Okay. Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. From the opening scene, John, I was pointing and laughing at the screen. I was like, "This is so fucking incredibly stupid." The very like, opening I, scene is retarded. Like, in a oh, way, it's kind great. of demeaning, sure, but also consider that a lot of movies are terrible and shitty and miserable, and you just want to be done with it, and you get bored, and you don't want to finish. But if your movie brings unironic happiness and joy to yeah. my life and the lives of dozens of people, then, like, that's something that, that's, that's not <laughs> yeah. nothing. Maybe not best kind of bad. That's the best kind nothing. of bad, for sure. <laughs> there are many comedies who specifically set out to make me laugh and never do, and you've been able to do that. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, you're right. It's gonna have a cult following for that in the future, man. So yeah, cool. this will be one uh, that we reference for a long time. Where we're like, like yeah, we need to go see Madam Web. You remember back Cat in 2020, whenever three, but they made Madam Web. Catwoman is cringe, but rewatching it's probably not gonna make me laugh. <laughs> Madam Web will fucking make me laugh. Like break mm, out the drinks. No, I don't know. Catwoman's it's got some legendary parts. Let's, just, <laughs> let's not uh, yeah. underrate it. Shouldn't, that's all shouldn't, I shouldn't underestimate it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Shouldn't underestimate it. But I know Madam Web guaranteed. Like that's comedy gold. So yes, I, think I, have, a, I have an investment in Spider Man. Like uh, it'll probably <laughs> have. I don't know if that'll maybe multiply the comedic okay. effect. You need it. Effect. You'll need it. You'll as part it. of the Spider Man. <laughs> oh package. my fucking god! It's even better if you have investment in Spider Man character or lore. It'd be even yeah. better for you. This is fantastic. Um, right. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. And so concludes the next chapter in the Acolyte arc, the Acolyte, because uh, we we are not yet finished with the season. Two episodes left, everybody. I mean, uh, is it Acolyte or Acolark? I like Acolark. And you have Lark in there. You know, which something. Oh yeah, because of all all the all these boids in the in, in the show. So, what can I say other than that is it, clearly the internet is sane and great conversations are taking place as to the problem, and Disney are learning and things are on the upswing. Uh, it was really nice to get an insight from the the fucking showrunner about the state of the show, and it's completely instilled in us uh, positivity and excitement about the future of it. We can expect maybe even more than two seasons. Wow, could you imagine three seasons of The Acolyte? It's going to go down the same fucking road as Rings of Power at this point. It's going to be this little event that everyone gets together to watch. It's it's the bonfire. You toss it on, and everyone just keeps warm and has a chat, and it's really nice and chill. And then Disney are like, why don't right. you like it? And you're like, We've told you for years. <laughs> I don't understand what's uh, being confused here, but you know, we'll have to see what happens. Um, Star Wars as we've said on other streams, has become a really interesting bit of storytelling, not for what is in it, but for what is the meta surrounding it, watching what happens next, what decisions they make, what they end up saying in interviews and stuff. <sighs> but that wraps up this chapter, as I said. So, I very much appreciate it. Uh, everyone sticking with us. A surprising amount of people are still here. You're all, you're all cringe mongers, mm -hmm. clearly. <laughs> <laughs> See what his bitch is in that interview. Um, yeah. But before we head out, uh, Jedi Brooks, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you and what you're up to? Well, it's Jedi Brooks on YouTube. I've been taking a long ass break for the last few months. It's been a while since I've uploaded, but I haven't been sitting on my feet or sitting on my hands. I um got an almost two hour video coming out. Well, um, you, eh? I haven't just been I haven't just been sitting that's on good. my hands. That, that's good work. that you're not sitting on your feet. That would be <laughs> that would be really awkward. <laughs> don't you try i corrected myself you have to be pretty limber <laughs> no i got I a my big a big ass video coming out um the top five ruined mcu characters just really going in Ooh. full detail you're gonna um, give away your number one really, 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 
Can you give us a, a little teaser for maybe like one of them or um, I will you you are the first time I came on EFAP was a big inspiration for a portion of it. So that'll be definitely a semi spoiler. Is that our fucking clue? That. <laughs> that's your that's, yeah, that's your clue. Either way, it's what a video that I definitely think you and anyone in the chat would would, would really enjoy. Just uh, my goal would be through to go through the nostalgia all the way to just the desecration of the characters. And you all know what I'm referring to that. And I'm probably going to be end up making a video on the acolyte after. I just want to wait and see how the season closes out. I don't yeah, want to just yeah, rush sure. into it, you know. But All right. just give me some time. Jed Abrooks on the is. YouTube. All right, John. What about you, buddy? What are you up to? Where can people find you? Uh, John Graham on YouTube. JCJ Graham on X. Um, I do Arby and the Chief. I'm doing Hard Justice, a new show with Halo Reach. Uh, but I've been taking a break for the past month just because I'm moving to a new place. And it's a big pain in the ass. But I'm going to get moving started back up again ass. pretty soon. Yep. Yeah, I hate it. it. sucks. Moving is such a pain in the ass. But it one thing that it will do is it will... Um, last time I moved, I realized how much just crap I needed to get rid of. Nope. And I yep. swear I dropped yeah. like half the shit I had. I just I chucked it or I donated it. Oh. I just went through and I'm like, the less stuff that I have to move, the better. Trash, trash, trash. And that stuff piles up. And so it was like a way of like just dropping all this this weight you're carrying mm -hmm. around. You don't realize how your possessions just pile up that you do not give a shit about. Yeah. Same, man. In my old place, in my bedroom, it's a room full of garbage right now that I just need to throw out. Well... Like just time to do it. stuff that was yanked out of my storage and everything, you know, it's just, you realize how much you really don't need. But anyway, yeah, that's, uh, that's me. John oh. Gray, I'm on YouTube. Um, Yo. alrighty. Uh, Rags, Fringy, anything you guys want to mention? Um, I've been working on some stuff in the background. Uh, I don't want to give any dates cause, well, you know how it goes. Uh, but hopefully some stuff will be out, you know, in a bit. Uh, I definitely have things in the works, so... Uh, until then, EFAP is where you will find me. Editing dungeon Voice. working, you know the deal. You have an announcement, Fringy. It's we've we've finally reached the assumed endpoint of the Halo episodes, right? Oh well, sure, but I mean, I figured I like what's do have we figured out exactly when they're going to be releasing? No, it? <laughs> but the knowledge that they are a complete thing now. Uh, we're yes. mostly, I believe, clear of copyright, but you never know what YouTube will pull. Uh, right? <laughs> so yeah, the next thing is getting them all uploaded on the Moolah side and leaving them for like a week to make sure they don't fucking do shenanigans. And then we'll announce uh, some kind of release schedule. Um, they are, they've been worked on by Fringy extensively. All right. So as much as you guys clamor for Acolyte coverage, you must appreciate coverage of horrible tv show I, season that's now season came out ages ago and no one cares about it, dude it's funny it's... on other streams i've got people asking me like did they ever make a season two like yes it's crazy but it's it is extensive like not to toot my own horn lots of lots of references lots of references visual references uh like it's 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 good it's good stuff um it's just you know it's look all right it's it's getting it done it's a it's a wacky adventure but yeah it's done yeah. it's it's done and ready to go um it's just yeah it'll just be a matter of uh when and hopefully that's soon yes and have you been doing all the acolyte coverage too fringy uh well we've been work Moller and I've been uh doing the acolyte episodes the both uh, you guys yeah we usually yeah, split it in half the turnaround okay. on episode well, the turn to get them out, get them out real quick. The turnaround on episode all, three was crazy. It was, a it was all really good and snappy. Yeah, I really enjoyed watching right, thanks. through those. Hey, so well done. Right to work, trust me, bye. The adventure's nearly over. Yes. <laughs> um we uh still obviously getting to catching up with super chats, everybody. The the the, the thing is like the amount of things I've had to get done recently have been awkward to get the three of us in time frames we can definitely answer everything. They're all saved. They will absolutely be read and answered. Um I believe we are still two EFAP episodes behind the regular scheduled fleamery, so we're gonna have to come up with two for you. We've got a surprise in the chamber coming out soon enough. Uh, there's nothing crazy, but I think you guys will like it as a bonus episode. And then we might do a meme fap then as well at some point, so we need to catch up on that. But um, yes, what, what, what is this? Two, 292. We are eight episodes from 
the anniversary, and technically speaking, it's I more like it. six. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Lots of stuff we have to take care of, as you can imagine. Uh, but we're getting it sorted to uh, hopefully entertain. But uh, thank you so much to everybody who hung out with us for this whole stream, and thank you, chat, for the same mm -hmm. thing, as well as the kind donations and messages. But for now, we're going to go ahead and say good night, and we'll see you for whatever the next thing may be. Toodle beep. Yeah, yeah, we'll see you later, everybody. everybody. Thanks yeah. for being bye, here, everybody. and we will bye see bye. you later. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.